Welcome back to the ESL Pro League Season 5 LAN Finals. Across five days and all week, we will be having competition. On Sunday, we will be crowning a new champion. I am here this morning with Yanko, with Vendetta. How are we doing, boys? Doing pretty good. Had a decent night of sleep. Can complain. Always it's important? Pretty, yeah. It's, like, breakfast? Well, it's a rarity, honestly. I had a big breakfast, and That's I had nice. it in about like two minutes as well. <laughs> So, I was day one. I mean, we, we saw a lot of competition. We saw SK kind of dominate the field. We saw all these different teams. Any yeah. impressions? Yeah, SK looking definitely like the, the main favorite to take the tournament, even though it was just day one. But that being said, we're only in day two, and we will have teams, you know, get knocked out of the tournament, and we will have teams secure a spot in the top four. So, obviously, a lot of important games today, and, and hopefully we see some of the teams uh, step up their game from yesterday, the likes of G2 may be a bit underwhelming for what people would right. have expected that loss to Cloud9. But I mean, they all have uh, a chance to, you know, exonerate themselves today, so to speak. Yeah, I think that's very clearly two teams that stood out yesterday. And that was SK in, in the first group and obviously North in, in Group B. And uh, the, obviously the bigger worry for the other side is that there were so many uneven performances from right. what we saw Fnatic start off tournament well, then get smashed by SK, uh, you know, to the point where it wasn't really a contest at all. And that's obviously worrying if you if you want to have, you know, look at other potential dark horses to actually contest these two uh, group favorites so far. Well, I mean, let's, let's check it out right now. Let's head over to the Group B standings. We'll show you this is the second half of the day yesterday. Obviously, North kind of breezed right through that. 3-0 and o for them on the day. I say breeze, but they did have some close matches in there. Uh, Team Liquid ended the day at 2-1 and one, and Mouse Sports at 1-1 one and one after that phenomenal regular season out of them. And perhaps some of the disappointments that you could see. Optic 1-1, one and one, they looked very, very dodgy yesterday. But Navi at 1-2 and two is, a, is a little bit worrying for a team of that caliber as well. Yeah, it definitely is. And, uh, you know, you, even though, you, you know, talked about how Mouseports have had an impressive regular season, you still would probably have Navi as a bit of a favorite going into that kind of a matchup. So to see them go down to that, uh, to them in the, in the sort of fashion they did, obviously it did go to overtime. So, you know, it wasn't a stomp by any means. Still somewhat surprising. Yeah, and one guy who had a great game, we saw North at 3-0, Yanko, was, was config yesterday. Was back to having a phenomenal day. Uh, great performance from him. Really led his team in this 3-0 effort. Yeah, had some very interesting words for his uh, opponent <laughs> wasn't bad, in wasn't those it? videos, and he actually yeah. put it on the server, so <laughs> I love it. I, I think it's a great bit of fun that the players can have, but yeah, great performances from Config, obviously a very aggressive player, so that, when he has a good game, it's going to mean a lot for North, and North, yes, close games, but actually this is something that is, you know, a big deal for them because previously when they would have close games, they would have problems closing them out. Sure, more so in playoffs than in group stages, but again, we saw MSL talk about how they are a different team now, how they worked on their problems, how they are a better unit now. So let's see if that can continue through day two and then uh, in the playoffs. We've been hearing that rhetoric out of the North camp for, for some time, so it is good that at 3-0 they're starting to show it. I mean, did you did you like what you saw yesterday, Vendetta? I mean, it was definitely, uh, definitely comforting because normally, as you mentioned, or as Yanko mentioned, the, we have seen some uh, some <laughs> turbulent times for, for North actually closing out games right. that they should be able to win. And they were able to do so, you know, without necessarily the, the that duo of Magic and Config being on fire, because Magic had an extremely poor showing yesterday for him being, you know, for, for his normal standards. So the fact that North are still able to win versus high level of competition without necessarily having their, you know, their second best player firing on all cylinders, that's obviously a good sign, because I, I think it's just a matter of time before he gets going as well. Yeah, and definitely uh, poised themselves to make it through this group with a really well done at 3 and 0. See how they do today. That's going to be later on. Uh, team Liquid, another team in Group B who had a solid day, 2 and 1 for them. And one of the players that we, we, we kind of really liked watching yesterday was someone who's been under some fire recently. That was that was Nitro. He actually it's always had question marks around him, but he, he stepped up to the plate yesterday for Team Liquid. He absolutely did. More so against the North American teams, right? In that game against Optic, he had a, a great game in their dominating uh, win on Nuke. I think if Nitro can really, like, take that into into the matches they have today against the European opposition, that might be the extra step that they really need. Because in the game against Navi yesterday, it was really only JDM uh, showing up for that game, pretty much. Yeah, and actually, one, one thing that has me a little bit worried for Team Liquid is the fact that Twice2, we talked about how he uh, so seamlessly had, uh, made his transition into the Liquid lineup, at least in the, the online part of the, the Pro League. He hasn't really had much to show for so far in the first couple of games right. that Liquid has played. He has actually been struggling quite mightily compared to what we've seen uh, going into this. So for me, yeah, it's great that Nitro is showing up as well, but you can't have guys like Twist, who's supposed to be a big contributing factor, drop completely out of the server. Yeah, I think that's that's the key. He did have that tweet yesterday that said he played poorly, but he was doing his job within his role. So yeah, he was they happy were getting, that I mean, moment. they're two and one, so yeah. it could definitely be worse. But obviously, you'd still expect to see a bit more coming out of it, just in terms of the fragging department. But, you know, in the end, it's all about getting a W. Yeah. 
especially against those European teams. They did yep. not look good in their European matchup yesterday. Uh, next team we have coming up is Mouse Sports. And actually, Oscar, this is a team with a great, great regular season. But Oscar, I mean, he was part of some of the craziest plays we saw yesterday. The, the defuse on Nuke, the one on three, he almost wins. <laughs> and then the one on Cobble, the 10 seconds sticking defuse. But outside of that, he's just been a force. He's been a beast for this team. Absolutely, he completely translated his play from the online uh, part of the league to the uh, LAN playoffs. And yes, 1v3 that he didn't win, but then also had a 1v3 that he actually won uh, against Navi here in the first half, which was one of the most important rounds of the game. And uh, this team is a lot more than Oscar. And, and I say this because for Mouse Sports, it was, all, it was almost as a synonym that they have one star player, whether it's Nico or, or Oscar, who has to carry the team across the finish line. Mouse Sports now look much more uh, uh, like a real team, right? Where Oscar, sure, he's he has a lot of impact, but it feels like it's not what they are relying on, basically, to win games. And I think you can't really rely on it to win games against teams like uh, Navi, North, etc. No, I definitely echo the, the same sentiment, really. The fact that the mouse are doing it by committee instead of just having one guy go off and, and win the game for them. And overall, you know, if you're talking about consistency, that's going to bring you results over time more so than, than just relying on that one guy to do everything for you. Nice. Well, now we're going to move on to Group A. The other three teams are all going to be fighting in Group B to, to kind of make it, to try and make it out. Navi's going to try and recover. But this is the Group A standings we saw yesterday. And this was a little bit more crazy because SK Gaming, the level of dominance they displayed has got to be scary for all the other teams at this event. They went 3-0, and but they didn't drop a single round on the terrorist side of these maps. Fnatic is close behind about 2-1, and one, but, I mean, they just looked amateur like, up against SK. Their other matches went pretty well. Uh, G2, 1-1, one one, Cloud9, 1-2. That Cloud9 Fnatic matchup is going to be huge in deciding how this group plays out. And then Envy and Immortals to round things out in fifth and sixth. Immortals still looking for that first win. Anything jump out here? Uh, well, I mean, it's as expected, Immortals having issues uh, with KNG coming into the lineup. Right. Again, we had worries about how that uh, would work out in terms of just how they define their roles, how effective KNG is going to be if he doesn't get that op in his hand. And we haven't really seen anything that, you know, makes us hopeful about uh, Immortals continuing on in, in this uh, group stage here. I think they're going to have a rough time on day two as well. Uh, as for, for Cloud9, I expected kind of a bit more, especially with how dominant we saw them versus G2. That was just a very uplifting result. And then you see them falter to Envious right after. So. Still a lot of question marks, really, surrounding these uh, fringe teams in Group A. I really expect uh, tiebreakers in this group. <laughs> I think Immortals and Envious can show us uh, a lot more than, than what we saw yesterday, especially Immortals. So I think it's going to be quite interesting. Yeah, well, we'll see if those tiebreakers do come into play. But one team trying to make sure that they don't have to deal with any of that is SK. They're in good position to do so, but it was Fur, One of the guys who was not a very high-spoken star last year. It's really this year that he stepped up to the plate. We've always known he has this ability, but now it's starting to get consistent. And this is scary stuff. I mean, Fur is a has been an absolute monster. There was there was a reason why you know people are you know going with the moniker Fur God for for such a long time. He, yeah. When he came onto the scene in 2015 uh, with the rest of the Brazilians, there was a reason why people were were looking at him and you know, not necessarily fallen to be you know the best Brazilian uh, player or to be the poster boy of uh, Brazilian CS. Obviously, Equal Zero happens, takes the world by storm, but. Fur has definitely shown that he can may like keep an, a similar level to what Cold Sword has been doing for the better part of the, the last year and a half. You can see every now and then Fur gets called out a little bit for hunt, hunting like Eco Frags <laughs> or against pistols, right? You can see even in those highlights with the MAC-10. And yeah. I love his reasoning behind it. He says that I don't trust my teammates. I, I, <laughs> my, my teammates like <laughs> pistols too much, so I have to take like matters into my own hands and secure the round for us. But I mean, obviously his stats may be getting padded slightly because of that, but still, uh, Fur is just such a force especially on the CT side, uh, being super aggressive, finding openings for his team, even by himself on cash, looking around smokes in A main. You know, even it, it's one of those situations where you know it's coming, but somehow still he like beats you to it and, and he still manages to find the, the opening kill for his team. Yeah, and what a benefit having him on SK is to them. Moving on to Fnatic, a team that had a little bit of an up and down day yesterday up against SK. They looked very, very rough, but uh, someone who's playing very well for them is Dennis. I mean, he was a guy yesterday. We, didn't, we only saw him once on the mainstream, so it was kind of a little bit unfair. But in the other two matches, Dennis had 21 kills, 28 kills. He had over 100 ADR in one of these matches. He was playing phenomenal for a team that where, where their stars just didn't feel like they really showed up. Yeah, I mean, uh, the thing is that when you talk about Fnatic and the stars not showing up, everyone on that side could, could potentially be a star. That's uh, kind of the luxury problem that they have. Uh, and even so, you know, even though Dennis is the one who's topping the charts in that sense, I still think we saw decent performances from, from guys like Wolfmeister in terms of like statistical prowess at least. Uh, which is uh, obviously beneficial, but having Dennis just firing on all cylinders is obviously going to be massive, especially because he has that potential to do so much for you early on in the in the you know in the games with the pistol rounds and his strength on pistols. Right. 
I like how all the highlights that we saw from him were actually with pistols. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that, that proves your point. And it's difficult to, you know, play as Fnatic right now because the two maps that they won were was their best map, Inferno, and it was against slightly weaker opposition. And then they get blown out of the server by SK. So coming into today, which Fnatic are you going to see? I think they need to show much more on, on maps besides Inferno. And I don't think they're going to be getting it today, at least if you're their opponent, you don't want to play Inferno against them, right? So if they can do that, they have a good chance of of uh, qualifying and making it out of the groups. Yeah, important to note as well, JW and Crims each had good games aside from Dennis against Immortals and Envy, so that was nice to see. Uh, moving on, this is a team that you just called out, G2. Going to have to see more stuff out of them, but a player you can always highlight for this team, someone who always brings the big game, is Kenny S. Phenomenal yesterday with the AWP. He had a pretty, I mean, even in underwhelming performances, he had some very, very cool highlights coming out. Yeah, but Kid, Kid is always going to bring the highlights into the server, as you can see the crazy no scope. That's, that's unreal. Them. And this is a game like this is in a game that they're losing 16 to 14. You know, keep that in mind. So the fact that you're able to find some sort of highlights from it is pretty, uh, pretty incredible, as is. But yeah, definitely need to uh, see more out of G2 and uh, see them not fall into their old bad habits. Really, of just relying on four spice and individual skills to, to carry them through and actually see some of that tactical prowess that they've said they've implemented to their game actually come uh, come into play when it really matters and when they actually start struggling. That's uh, that's going to be the big thing for me on day two. Yeah, I mean, it feels it feels at the moment like SK is kind of locked in their position. Any other? The, the, it seems like like SK, or, uh, I mean G2, Fnatic, and Cloud9 are going to be the three teams fighting for that second and third spot. Any ideas who's going to get out of that? Anyone you're leaning towards? Either of you guys? I'm still going to lead with uh, what we the initial you know gut feeling and what we thought during the uh, first day. Uh, that's going to be G2 and, and, and Fnatic. Really, I wasn't necessarily too impressed by Cloud9 because they were so up and down. I think that is inconsistency could come back to haunt them. Uh, but uh, again, I, I'm pretty safe to at least with the G2 making it through. Uh, through groups with SK and then, yeah, Fnatic and Klan are still going to have to duke it out. I actually think this group is wide open. I, I'm not really confident that the Immortals can make it out of the group, but I right. still think that Envious can even make it out of the okay. groups, right? I, I think they have a couple of favorable matchups in, in front of them. I think they've been playing good fundamental CS. They have a lot of structure now, good game plan, and you could see how, you know, some of these teams get completely broken down when they play against someone who has a lot of structure. Like Fnatic got dismantled on their T side uh, by uh, SK. That's it's something that Envious is also capable of on their CT side. Obviously not the same amount of firepower, not the same amount of coordination, but if they have a good game, if they have a good day, if they get fired up, we can definitely see a couple of extra upsets here. As I said, I think this group is definitely going into tiebreakers. Yeah, well, let's check out the schedule. We'll see exactly who's coming up with what some of the important matches you'll see up on the screen. We did change a couple things from yesterday uh, when, we, when we showed at the end of the day, but here's going to be the A-Stream schedule. Fnatic versus Cloud9 is going to start us off. That's going to be a huge match. You do not want to miss that one coming up. Uh, G2 taking on SK, Fnatic taking on G2, and then over on the B-Stream, G2 Immortals, Envy Immortals, and SK Envy. Uh, and then obviously some tiebreakers, if they will be needed, we can go over those in the format of that if, if they come to be. This is going to be the second half of the day for Group B. Mouse Sports taking on Optic, Mouse Sports taking on Liquid, NRG taking on... We have a lot of Mouse Sports on the A stream today. Mouse Sports uh, getting into action, yeah. <laughs> that's not bad, is it? Probably because of those clutches, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, why not? It's been exciting stuff. Uh, the B stream is going to have NRG and Navi, North taking on Optic, and then Liquid taking on North as well. So, I mean, both of these groups right now kind of posture to have a potential for tiebreakers uh, at some point. Yeah, no, I think it's almost an inevitability that we're going to see some tiebreakers. Whether it's going to be Group A or Group B, I don't think. Uh, it, like, that's not necessarily sure uh, which which one is going to be. Well, one of them will definitely have tiebreakers. I'm certain of it. Any any matches kind of jump out outside of that Cloud9 Fnatic one that that we have coming up at the start of the day? Any anything that you guys saw? Fnatic G2, G2 SK. So just basically every single <laughs> yeah, match. Yeah, we, have, we have a lot of we have a lot of great games in Group A. Uh, looking a bit further further on in Group B, I am actually very looking forward to Liquid North, the, the last game in that group, because I think it will have a lot of impact and also they might end up playing Nuke, and I want to see how Liquid can fare up against North on that map. Will be interesting to see. If you guys want to kind of test your skills throughout the day of who's going to be playing well and who's not, play some ESL Fantasy. Fantasy.eslgaming.com. Get involved. Pick your team. Pick all the players you think are going to have a good day. Speaking of fantasies, if you want to become a pro player, the best way to do that is by going through the nice. ESEA Mountain Dew League route. It's the direct pathway into the pro league. We've seen plenty of teams moved up and down these past two seasons going through the Mountain Dew League. That's where you can do it. Sign up today. We're going to go to a break. When we come back, it is going to be Cloud9 taking on Fnatic, a rematch of the Season 1 Grand Finals. You don't want to miss it. A lot of implications for this group. Stay tuned.
Athletes aren't just born. They're molded from the core, a core of strength, a core of laser focus, a core that can handle anything, a core that sweats the small stuff, a core that's the difference maker, game changer, world shocker. You see, hard work makes the athlete, but the edge of a core i7 processor makes you unstoppable. Get your team apparel now at shop.eslgaming.com.
Welcome back to the ESL Pro League Finals Season 5. Like we said, Cloud9 taking on Fnatic. Huge implications for Group A. The winner of this match puts them in great position to move on to the playoffs. It's also a rematch of that Season 1 Grand Finals. Completely different lineups, of course. Yeah. But actually, it has been about two years since even the Cloud9 organization has beaten Fnatic in a head-to-head -head matchup on LAN. So this is, this is a little bit historic in the sense that these guys just haven't done it in so long. Yeah, and I mean, it's just a pretty long time since they even played each other. Uh, I think you have to, well, you have to go back into yeah, last was, year, actually, yeah, before... Uh, yeah, before you find a matchup between these two sides. So there's been quite some time for these to, to kind of feel themselves or, or like have a look at each other and, and uh, gauge the new lineups that they, they've fielded now. Still, though, I mean, uh, you got the Fnatic lineup here, JW, Dennis, Flusha, Crims, Olafmeister, all very familiar names, obviously, for people who've been around for a while. Or if you're fairly new, you've probably still have heard of these guys. You've probably point. definitely still heard of these guys. <laughs> Uh, obviously, the, you know all star uh, all star players pretty much in every position uh, from start to finish, and uh, one of those teams that you look on paper and just assume that they're going to be one of the best teams in the world. Yeah, and like we well, like we mentioned in the pre-show earlier, it was Dennis who was yesterday pulling a lot of the weight, and then JW had a good game beside him. Cribs had a good game behind him. All these guys have shown indications that they're coming back to some kind of peak individual level, which is which is really cool to see. Um, who, who's going to be the danger man ne next to Dennis today, Yanko? Who's going to be that guy you expect to step up? For me, I always kind of have the, the need to mention JW simply because of his play style. His play style is so unpredictable, so hyper aggressive that it can really, you know, just break down teams and, and it makes you so annoyed in game, right? Because yeah. you're losing to something that doesn't really make sense, that shouldn't be happening. I, I think the likes of Olof Meister have now hit a, a very uh, high level of form that he is going to, you know, do his part in every game more or less and he's going to have one of those games where he just takes off. But for JW, I mean, just having a guy rushing you with an auto shotgun, how, how, <laughs> how does that affect your game plan? That's going to affect it a lot. Speaking of unbridled aggression and perhaps wondering how you're losing to some crazy plays. Stewie 2K and Cloud9, their opponents are going to be coming up. Automatic next to him is obviously that kind of deadly duo that we talk about with Cloud9, but nothing Scoodle Shroud, kind of the veterans around them. Uh, th this team has always had a lot of question marks on it, but at times it looks like they can get over that hump. At times it looks like they can be that team we expect them to be. When stars align, this team is fantastic. That's uh, that's yeah. just the, the honest truth of it, about it. But the problem is they don't really have the stars aligning for them uh, all that much. You get consistent performances out of Automatic and Stewie most of the time, and then every now and again you have one of the remaining three step up to the plate, and that's when you see Cloud9 and their like, potential threat level, really. Uh, yesterday we saw nothing ha have a pretty good showing, honestly. Yeah. Uh, which Shroud is obviously a good. Game as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, especially in front of the game, everyone on that Cloud9 side actually did well for themselves, but on, on uh, Cobble, where they did get a little bit manhandled. Uh, nothing did, you know, a fairly decent part. And if he can carry that over into day two and we'll see the, the normal performances coming out from Stewie and Automatic, then Fnatic definitely have something to worry about. Well, like you mentioned, we're, we're used to seeing this kind of play out of Stewie and Automatic at this point. And Yanko, is it really just a case of saying they just need more from the supporting cast? Uh, it's always tricky because they're, they're so inconsistent in their performances, the likes of Nothing Shroud, Skadoodle, right? Sometimes they have great games and that's how Ben said, when stars align, this team is amazing, but it doesn't happen uh, very often. I think that also we saw Stewie tweet out that today they're going to play without any respect. He, they felt like they gave too much respect to teams yesterday. Today they're just going to come out, play their own game and I mean, it's going to be a bit difficult doing it in the first game of the day against <laughs> Fnatic. That's not probably the, the team you want to no start respect. off exactly, playing against yeah. with a no-respect st style, right? So uh, if they do manage to, to do it, then they're in a great position. It's going to give them a boost of confidence uh, for the rest of the day. Yeah, especially opening the day with a win like that. That, that would be incredible stuff. Um, th that's the thing. It just feels like most of these players, they perform. They give you just enough hope to keep believing and then sometimes don't meet up to it. Either way, speaking with Stewie 2K this morning, it was Stunna. He's got a pulse of how this team is feeling heading into this first matchup. Hey, thanks, Moses. Stunna here at ESL Pro League in Dallas. I'm with Stewie 2K. These guys saw a an okay day yesterday. You guys were able to grab one W, did catch two Ls, though. Talk to me a little bit about what happened yesterday. Um, with SK, it's usually pretty tough against them. They're the best team in the world right now. And we struggled a lot against them. We played them on the best map, but we were confident on it. And I, I guess it just didn't go our way. And against G2, we played with a lot of confidence. And we knew what they were doing on Inferno. They didn't change anything. And we just played with a lot of confidence. But when MV came, I felt like we didn't play with the same confidence. We kind of eased up uh, later on in the night. And uh, I guess we took it a little too lightly. How important is it for a team to have that confidence, though, on LAN? I mean, your team, any team, really. I think confidence is probably the most important thing on LAN because 
Um, a lot of people don't make the same plays like they do online, and when you have the confidence to do the same plays you do, it usually catches some people off guard because people don't expect it or nerves will be hitting them, stuff like that. Okay, well, today you're going to be kicking it off with a group stage match against Fnatic. I mean, how are you guys feeling going into this one? What battleground are you looking to see them on? Well, I can't speak for my teammates, but personally, I think they're not the same Fnatic as 2015. So I'm pretty confident against them. They're like a hit or miss team right now, kind of just like us. If you catch us on a good day, then we can be one of the top five teams in the world. But off days, we're like any other team. All right, I hear you. Well, that's, uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the stage here for you a little bit and say, you got anything you want to say to Fnatic? Good luck. <laughs> All right, well, that does it for us here. Take it away, Moses. A lot of confidence in that interview. Yeah. I think we had Santa Kiss, our <laughs> confidence counter, got up to seven. So that was quite quite nicely done. Uh, if you believe, Stewie, if you think that Fnatic is not the same team they were in 2015, put it in the YouTube chat. Cloud9, vote for your team to win, or C9, excuse me. And FNC, if you think Fnatic is going to win, get your opinion heard, get it out there. All that fun stuff. Yeah, be a part of it. Be a part of the ride. Yeah. I mean, it is a bit funny the, the amount of times he mentioned confidence, but actually for, for these players, when whenever you talk to them, to any of the teams, they are going to mention confidence and like yes. the, the psychology uh, of a player within the game as a really, really important part of the game because you look at the best players in the world, when especially Opers, for example, right? When Guardian, Kenny S were the best Opers in, in the world, it looked like they could do whatever they want. They would just jump around. And, you know, when Guardian got into a slump, you, you wouldn't see him go be that aggressive anymore. Yeah. Well, just to throw something in, uh, throw some excitement at you, Nuke is going to be picked between Cloud9 and Fnatic. And I mean, this is an interesting thing because we've seen Fnatic for a long time ban this map. We've seen them play it a little bit more recently, try and get involved in it. This is also the map famously. Cloud9 started with Automatic as the in game leader, busted out a Katowice to upset SK. Um, what are we feeling with this map, boys? I'm feeling confused. <laughs> Confusion is the feeling I'm feeling because Fnatic is not a team that loves Nuke. I, I actually, we're, we're get, they're getting live right into it, so we're just going to have to speed things up. Yanko, any quick, quick thoughts from you? No? Go no, Fnatic. Got nothing. Go Fnatic. <laughs> Go Fnatic. I think this is a great opportunity for Cloud9 to actually steal a win. Great opportunity for Cloud9 to steal a win. So that's going to be it. We're going to head over to your casters. It's going to be Henry G. It's going to be Sadikus. They're going to take us away in map one. Yes, thank you very much. And I had a good sleep, so I'm confident we will have a good cast, Henry. Yeah, me too. Confidence, Kofefe. It's all kicking off today. Kofefe? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Did you not see that Donald Trump yesterday? No. Um, oh, Twitter no. now, Kofefe. It was no. like a secret word. I think it means confidence. I think we cracked the. It's like a tweet. Oh, made. Okay, so now he's, he's making up words, too. Yeah, exactly. This, this yeah, man yeah. is revolutionary. He will change the world. Yeah, exactly. Not well, in a good way. Nuke then, Matthew. We saw Cloud9, a turbulent team this tournament, had two pretty poor results then against. Um, G2, 16-4 and Inferno. So they said confidence is what they're looking for today. They want to have a lack of respect for their opponents, but they're going against Fnatic, who are almost the kings of that sort of mentality. Do we yeah. think they have what it takes to actually go up against them? I, I, it's, it's tough because I don't know what to expect on Nuke from these two teams. Sure. And it certainly is a momentum-based map. We know that. There's definitely ways to shut teams down and be aggressive on the CT side. Not, not all the way. You, know, you can't push everything like cash, yeah. per se, but you can get someone in toward the hut. You can check out what's going on in ramp. Push in radio once you get a little bit of information. I'm not sure what I expect. I think, yes, it's a possibility. I'm still not convinced by Fnatic after yesterday's performances. But I don't know if I'm 100% on the cloud well, line train either. Well, we saw Fnatic have two great results early in the tournament. Then they played against SK Gaming as well on cash. And they looked like an amateur team, I have yep. to say. Like their T side was abysmal. They got battered or 16-3, 16-4. I wasn't sure what it was. I think it was 16-4. Okay. But like, it was a basic, yeah. their T side just looked so stacked and they couldn't really work out how to break down the SK defense. They looked poor throughout. And it, we didn't get to cast them on the A stream before that. So that's the only really showing we got. I'm sure in other games, apparently they were very good. Apparently Dennis was lights out. Yep. But hopefully it's a good game. It's the first of the day. It's always a little bit difficult to gauge who's going to turn up. Like the, the analysts always say, we're looking for automatic on Stewie for Cloud9. For Fnatic, we're probably looking for Olaf Meister. Very poor from what we saw yesterday. He's on like zero for 12 in that cash game. So we, I really want to see him turn up. Let's get into it shall we it's nuke the first game of the day group a and it's going to be cloud nine studying on the t side here they've got three sets of armor two smokes molotovs and flashbangs as well suggest something a bit more technical than maybe just the upper rush what we're used to on this map and uh that suggests with the lobby control coming in as well maybe just smoking towards heaven and main entrance as well or go towards ramp and try and do what a lot of teams are doing right now get the ramp control then go up the ladder itself have to smoke for heaven yeah scar's gonna throw that out positions are set Oh, 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 yeah, no. big miss throw. 
So if they go in and expect that to be covered off, it's going to be a massive blunder for them. Crims already hitting a first shot on Stewie as he walks out from the vents. They're actually okay. The second smoke through is actually good because they're going toward the vents. So the first smoke misses. It gives them information of the upper site, but it still isn't where they were going. So it's not a massive loss in sure. that sense. However, Crims did have a gap to work with, and he was able to punish at least one player before they made it down. Dennis has gotten automatic. They've got a bomb plant out of this, which is good for Cloud9 money-wise, but it's a one versus five. For Skadoodle, starts it off. No damage taken in return. Second shot. It's being dynamic. He's changing his angle, but Dennis is going to get there in time. Yeah, Dennis, we saw so many highlights from him yesterday, especially with that USP, known to be one of the best players in the world with that particular weapon. It was a bit of a blunder of a Roman Cloud. And like you said, though, the upper smoke towards heaven, at least, not that much of a big deal doing a vent dive. I guess that's supposed to be like smokes and mirrors, but the bunny just throwing that up there, trying to take vision away so they can't necessarily take you down when you're going for that final vent push. But they get the bomb down, sure, and they're actually be force buying here in the second round. We're seeing a lot of teams do this at the moment. It seems to be a trend uh, in the current meta. So usually you eco this round, maybe some PT-50s, and you get AKs in the third. They're going all in right now. And JW's brought up the auto shotgun. It's always fun to see that on this map. Hiko was probably the first player to really show us what could be done with it. Kind of dropped off towards the end of his, I guess, career, quote unquote. He's not really playing right now. But uh, let's see point. what he can do. Stewie. Good positioning. Crims didn't expect him to be so close when he dropped out the smoke. Gets him with the Tech 9. Well, this is why the Force by the second round can be very powerful. If they assume you're going to be an eco, they're trying to farm some frags and some many of those SMGs you're pushing through, and you're patient as a terrorist player, you get that first pick as a 5 and 4. Sure, some damage has been inflicted, but now the CTs, they're panicking. They've got to work out, okay, do we need to force some rotations here? Do we need to pull someone back from outside? And for now, plenty of time remaining, 5 and 4. We still have all the smokes, the Molotovs, the flashbangs as well. Skadoodle setting up for what looks like a smoke towards upper once again. This could be a full on upper take. They are getting players on silo as well. So with this sort of play, you can do all the smoke towards upper, get on the catwalk and then pin to the upper bomb site, taking all the attention away from outside and then kind of wrapping them from the inside uh, bomb site. Molotov bounced straight down. That should land top hut. Actually spills over slightly as well. So GW lands in it as he tries to get the corner, but he's still got the shotgun ready. Fires in, saw Stroud before he was concealed. He's trying to trace out exactly where the sound has gone, but he's slightly off. Doesn't matter, he gets the assist. Olaf closes it oh. out, we've got a blade battle. It's going to be nothing that wins that against JW. Yeah, he picks up the auto shotgun now. Two versus one, 20 seconds remaining as well. Has a chance within this one. The problem is the bomb down on the upper side as well. So auto shotgun, not ideal. Two players to find as well. Does he just save the armor? I think he's, he wanted to go towards ramp. His teammates told him, okay, you've got no time. What's the play here? I think he just has to save. There's no point. He's still got, like, he farmed money with that knife kill, right? So he can afford to save at this point. His team is getting 1,900. So him having 1,600, that's fine. He can take the lack of money on the chin. Yes, that's a good point. Because he gets no income, but he's still relatively even given that. And they night. can drop a tech nine as well. So at least they've got something to work with, right? So that kind of makes sense. And JW, the double auto shotgun spray down. Not bad at all. A little blade battle, like he said. Nothing getting a bit of extra Blades cash there. glory. Yeah, right. So Stroud gets the auto shotgun. And nothing still with his Tekken and head armor. No nades here. So what looked like a promising round. They actually got the first two frags then. Cloud9. No plant down though. Shut down by Fnatic 2 0. This should be the eco now. And maybe something gets done this auto shotgun. I'm not so sure. That's why Shroud is hiding in the corner and hopes someone walks into his crosshairs. Teammates go outside. He's ready for the reaction. He might get $900 from the shotgun. Fnatic's actually started off well against Watcher. They're overwhelming Olaf. Pistols outside of all places. Interesting. And it's Dennis that has to compensate. Does find two. Spots the third, M4. Gets all three. Goes down to 14 HP, but he's dropped the bomb down. Shroud never had anyone push toward him, and he's going to start to walk in now. Dennis, oh, ready for it. 14 HP. Not enough. Not enough to do anything with that shotgun. Shroud trying to fire quickly onto Crims. Puts him low enough <laughs> that if JW had been found, there might have been an opportunity. Bit of an interesting round there. All these shotguns on either side. It's quite rare to see that. JW, I guess you could probably call him one of the cheesiest players within CSGO. Loves to experiment with these sort of weapons. And our new kid's probably the most viable for the auto shotgun. He's got a lot of it so far. He's currently on four frags. It's 3 0 though. Cloud9 coming close to picking up a round, but not quite just yet. It's going to be round number four, the first gun round, of course. Orp coming up for flush up. Not the same story for Skadoodle just yet. He's on the AK 47. It goes across the board, really. And we'll see whether they go for a faster approach. It looks like more of a default round here. I'm assuming we'll see quite a standard play from Cloud9. Smokes outside. Try and get towards Secret and see if they can open up a pick in that sense. Flusher with the AWP, interesting enough. Not JW. That's a strange adjustment. Flusher not known to be an author. Well, he's not, is he? 
So I guess JW's main role is auto shotgun player <laughs> on this map, <laughs> apparently. It's a good role. Demolition role. Yeah. Heavy weapons. So Flush is playing. Right now we've lost the, my radar because we've got a sweet camera, but it is actually a good camera to show these smokes because that's actually a wall of smokes going diagonally to yeah. cover off Annex as well. So you can wrap on the entrance and still cover off the player. So out. yeah, you can actually hug that smoke and like you said, still see a bit more and you, you can actually fake out a little bit and you have no chance of CT's pushing around from garage, right? And trying to get behind you in the smokes, but Crims, he's got the counter to that coming from the secret step. It's gonna be three kills in favor of Fnatic and the auto shotgun, bit of an audacious play there, but Shroud and Skidoodle pull two frags back. Still have a chance in this round. Ska missing an opportunity good considering nade. the low HP. Would be a good nade, but he's gotten away from that Crims somehow. Ska's gonna go for a plant. Crims is actually in a position where he could, oh, I can't push through confidence. There it is, count number eight. He could have gotten potentially a denial. He goes through, good damage done. Crims has no HP, so can't act upon it. He's got to wait. Flasha does get Skadoodle down, however, and that allows Dennis to walk in from ramp. And it's Shroud that gets found. So very, very straightforward for Fnatic, and Flusha two kills on the hop. Absolutely. Flusha, good job there with the AWP. Like we said, those smokes that go in front of the main entrance and by the garret as well. So it kind of allows you to pick in towards garage if you want to as well and like we said stops the backstab when you go down secret like ct sneaking through the smokes behind you but crims was there on the secret steps himself he finds a pick and his teammate chiming in as well so cloud nine getting close they're finding picks there comes down to three on two the bomb planted once again they have enough for a buy here but it wouldn't be great so they're going for a partial here meaning they get some upgraded pistols some body armor as well a few nades not investing everything leave the money about the 2k mark as they'll have maximum loss bonus into the next round 4-0 now for Fnatic. still with the open flusher seems like that's gonna be his stomp ground towards outside he spots one fires off a shot can't land it just yet but he'll be falling back he's probably spotted the vinegar pistols at this point and wants to make sure he stays alive he gives away that all that gives him a real fighting chance so he goes back towards ct spawn yeah smart to play at the long angle keep an eye on flush on that up I'm, I'm i'm intrigued i don't think well we've always said it's about the fanatic team maybe not this current lineup but like they had a, a period where all five players could potentially orb and it was like it was lacking consistency. I think that was the main thing we took away from that previous lineup they had, because every different map and every different round someone else was orping. But yeah. this seems like a, a strategy, at least in terms of the yeah, setup of Flusher. With Twist on the team, especially. Yeah, exactly. Skadoodle sitting in the lobby waiting to see if anyone's going to push through. No one does, so nothing tries to take the fight instead. But JW batters and bruises him down with the shotgun. He's going to get a kill on Stewie as well. He's getting lots of money, isn't he? Yeah, not doing too bad. Automatic. Get the combo by Dennis, even though he had a decent position to be already downstairs on the ramp. That's why Dennis was playing at that box. He's able to take down Shroud as well. Missed thrown flash. Somehow still blinds up the player in heaven. The second try is nothing with a shotgun. Takes down Crims, but it's Olaf ready for his arrival. Johnny on the spot. 5 nothing Fnatic. Fnatic looking pretty strong here. Cloud9 back on another gun run hit. The scooter will bring out the AWP. I think he certainly can afford it. He's got $6,600. Here's the replay of Dennis. We say he's a decent tournament so far. This time with the AK-47 getting it done in the ramp room. And no all for Skidoodle. It's not really required on Nuke, I have to say, but Skidoodle not really known as a rifler. I think his primary role, of course, everyone knows him to be the main orb for Cloud9. Looking at the scoreboard there. Stewie, one to five. We need him to start turning up if he's going to have any real impact. Upper rush, change of pace, and automatic get it done. Right through from JW Olaf and Crims who gets an assist in one and JW still just trying. Not even going for the full reload because he knows they're there. Oh, he's gonna get Skadoodle as well. It becomes a pump shotgun rather than an auto. Somehow the bomb makes it down though. Yeah, a bit desperate now after another upper rush. Watered by Fnatic, they will get a plant down here, but it's a five on two, very unlikely they can get this done. Nothing, and it's a decent clutch player, but so much to do here. It's a difficult retake for the CTs, but they'll just bite their time. They'll give too much away, nothing opens things up. The refract coming in from Dennis, nice work from him. Skidoodle now, 20 HP. Lower side, if he gets one kill here, I'll be impressed. Decent position, there it is, and now he'll be taken down almost certainly. There it is, so Flash Air finds the fifth and final frag. Easy to use for Fnatic, not too much pressure applied there. Upper rush, the Cloud9 tried a few defaults, tried the upper, ex upper executions, excuse me, and now they're going for the upper Rushes. He's trying to experiment and see, okay, where are they putting their numbers at the start of the round? Can we surprise them? Unfortunately, that auto shotgun seems a bit of a nemesis. It's doing so much damage there, not necessarily finding all the kills, but it's very mobile weapon, obviously, and causes a lot of damage in close range areas. And it's actually shutting down Cloud9 here. 6-0. Did it take a tactical pause here? 
maybe so. Yeah, it looks like they are. So maximum loss bonus, bomb down again. So they're getting a lot of money coming in. Every player can buy. I would say let's get the AWP out for Scoodoodle. They know it's Flusher outside, not known to be an AWP. Maybe he can find that first pick, and he does indeed buy the AWP in round number seven here. So this will be a much slower process for them. Probably the same smoke towards outside, but Scoodoodle going first, and maybe getting boosted up in the red box, trying to find that first pick. I think this makes sense. Let's try and out AWP Flusher to start. But Scoodoodle has got a very good spawn. He could pick towards up if he wants to, looking towards main entrance, or maybe towards the ramp itself. So JW sits with seven kills, but it's Dennis that leads the way at nine and one, as we saw it. And we get underway with Cloud9, desperate to come up with something. Valens, the coach, would have had a chance to talk during that timeout. That's true. See if he's got any input based on the fact that they're getting basically shut down at Squeaky and Hut time and time and time again. Yeah, so Scudero went for that other pick, but it's Crims to strike first. Stewie going down once again. He's having a really rough game so far. It was. Skadoodle went for that manager's pick, but Molotov's out of position, now smoked as well. This is all redundant at this point for at least another 15 seconds or so. I'll we'll have to hold up in the 5 and 4. It was Dennis who finds that first pick of Ramper once again. He seems like a real solid Ramp player. And it's when you get the AK-47, that's when you become a lot more powerful as the CT towards Ramp, because you can hold tighter angles, go for the one-taps. When you have the M4, you have to be a lot more defensive. You can't really go for those kind of jewels as such. You just start spotting for information, then falling down. But as soon as you get the AK, you become a lot more confident in your ability. And that's what Dennis is doing right now. Takes down Stewie, and he hasn't even fallen back. He's still got control of the Ramper. But Olaf Meister, this is interesting now. And they are lining up smoked. Oh, it's a nightmare. And he's got enough frags there. That's enough. Got the five on three. Full back. You've won the round. Yeah. That's perfect timing from Olaf. Yeah. And it's such such a oh, Cloud9 looks so hesitant. They finally say, all right, that's enough of inner. Let's go outside. And he's there. Ah. Oof. Second. Automatics made it through the doorway after smoking himself in, but he's got nowhere to go. Crim's waiting. Crossfire set. And it's an AWP versus five. So Cloud9 coming into this said they're gonna have a lack of respect for their opponents, but look, we said. It's Fnatic who are the kings of that, and they're pushing everywhere, even when they get the first frag. Olaf's still probing towards outside. Dennis is pushing ramp, and it seems like Cloud9 can't handle it at this point. So, watch this. What have you got? JW picked up an AK to drop it over because it's more expensive, and I wouldn't be surprised if he buys a shotgun again himself. Yep. Yeah, Flusher dropped him the shotgun to keep the op. Loves it. Money management at its finest. Well, there it is. So, no bomb going down that round, so it has to be another partial buy for Cloud9. Seven to nothing here. And number eight, they have got the smokes to work with, suggest either an outside full execution, which looks like it will be, I won't even detail what could the other options could be at this point. They're gonna try and get down Secret and try and get a bomb plant nice and quickly, but Hoffmeister once again with the first pick, Crim's rotating towards Secret. Smoke as well to slow them down. This looks very comfortable for Fnatic at this point. You can see Automatic is like, well, I can't push this, just have to sit behind the smoke. Yeah, very good rotation from Crim's, because they identified that Flusher was inside Big Garage, through one smoke only, left a gap for Heaven, but beat them across, made it, Olaf couldn't catch them from heaven, but Ooh. Crims gets downstairs immediately. He's been very good on the floor. Now he's down below. He'll shut down two players at corner. I almost would like to see some guns for Cloud9 to try and take over Secret. We haven't seen any Secret takes really from them. So well, they, they did try one round, but then Crims actually had Secret waiting for him. So they did True. smoke in front of the main entrance, but he got shot down. But they're doing very good fundamental CS right now, Fnatic. They're just getting one frag and guaranteeing the round. So they go for the really flashy stuff and go for multiple frags, even though they've got Deagle, which is all Crims there. Very calculated play. He gets Two kills, he could go for the third and get the, the highlight reel, but he wants to make sure he guarantee all five players surviving. Look at the money building up now, $10,000 for Dennis. Not too bad at all. No all for Cloud9 once again, 8-0 though. And is this another fast play from Fnatic? Dennis has got a decent spawn, won't be pushing around, drops an incendiary at the start. And you can see Cloud9 now waiting for any pushes coming in. They'll be holding up in the default. Probably won't get caught with smokes out once again. It's gonna be automatic on top of the silo. And Flusher once again with the AWP looking in that position. Smoke lands in behind blue, so there's no peek through it. I got a second one inside of the garage, a third one in front of the main door. I've got automatic above it coming over from Silo that wants to drop down. He'll avoid flush yet. The smokes should mean that they can slick, slip in in front of him as well. And it's Crims again who has to be the one to shut them down. Olaf starts it. Automatic gets spotted. He could have dropped down without being seen, but he gets found. Crims gets found by Shroud instead, though. Even better, they finally wrap around to take down Flusha, and this is the best round yet from Cloud9. Best chance of picking up number one, four on two, surely. He's doing a decent position as well. That's an easy frag for him. That should be the round guaranteed. It's just Dennis now. He has had a great game so far. Still has the AK, finds another headshot. He still has a shot within this one. Shroud low HP as well. Bomb going down secret, so that's going to be on the back of Skadoodle. Surely going to be planting and lower. And once he gets it down safely, that should be a secure. Dennis, though, in the T lobby.
pretty far removed from this situation, so I don't see him doing much about this. But let's have a look. Even if he doesn't win the round, he's got to find as many kills as possible. He's got loads of money to work with, so is his teammates. If he gets one or two kills, that keeps limiting Cloud9 going forward once the loss bonus has been reset. Shots Kadoodle. Holds the angle at Vents. Not blown up. They would have heard him coming that direction. And they get their first 8-1. Yeah. They do it with three players surviving, which is crucial because now they hit a reset. Sure. It's a nice shot from Shroud. He got three kills in total. Like, we saw him struggling earlier on in the tournament. Hasn't been his best. I guess an Inferno in that G2 win, you pointed out he's known to be a very good pit player. That was a very good performance from him, I have to say. He's looking decent today as well. That was a nice round for him. Five to eight at the moment. We go into round number 10. Another auto shotgun for JW. This is bizarre that he keeps forcing it. A lot of players will bring it out early stages of the game, then they'll move on to the M4. He seems to be very stubborn about the fact he wants to use it every single round. Lots of money available. It doesn't have to be that way. No, but again, you mentioned it. Hiko had done this in the past. Yeah. It is a positional weapon in this sense. So smokes go down again. Same style. They throw one at blue, one in the garage itself, cap underneath the left side, so could be taken advantage of. And then one directly bounced in front of the door. So it's not the wall, but it's choke point smokes. Means there is an opportunity to go towards CT and get a shot. No one's there this time. Although I say that, Olaf's just gotten into heaven. And he now on the AWP. He doesn't just wall bang catwalk at that point. Might even be worth it just to fire it and expect someone to be close. Flush is still in the garage, by the way. He's right in front of three players. Does he strike at any moment here? Problem is he can't go searching for nothing because as soon as he does, Skadoodle's still watching toward him. So it's a battle of patience at this point. Outside, upper, Olaf. Trying to figure this out. He's walled him. Automatic through the edge of it. It's going to be Flusher that goes out and gets two, just like you said. Found Skadoodle, who's waiting for him as well. Quick scope. Olaf saw the gun barrel. Took an easy shot. Shroud's left to try and clutch this back. He's found two. But Olaf's there with the AWP, and it goes 9-1. Reset in place. This is going to be a complete landslide of a half. Yeah. Well, like you said before, they did manage to keep three players alive in the previous round, so money's not completely in the bin at this point, but as good as. Uh, this is Flusher, though. What a great kind of disciplined play from him, not overfacing. He said he had players around him. He was aware of that, giving information to his teammates to be aware. He had main entrance covered, and his teammates all off. You could see with the AWP, not overfacing, didn't want to give anything away. So many angles to check that is watching the top of the ladder. Then Flusher strikes as soon as he gets attention, gets two frags, secures the round, and this will be a force back to Cloud9. And scout for Stewie. I'm not sure that's going to have too much impact on the map like Nick, but let's see what he can do. Maybe he gets a couple of tags, allows his teammates to get in towards that upper site. Well, it that once again, of course. And a couple of AKs for Cloud9 and Stewie trying to get things done here, but JW did strike first. Yeah, this is a bit desperate from Stewie. See if he can get a tag. They now know he has just a scout outside. He backs off as a result of it. The AWP has got a longer angle than him. Sliver gap for Flush out of play. Well, they will be eco next round, so be very careful here. This will be 10 1 if they drop this one and then. Potentially 11 with the eco going forward as well. Stewie's still with the scout. And once you know he's got it, you've got the five and four. They're unlimited by wide and face. May then commit to the other side. They won't have the utility to go for full execution here. They're hoping a player like nothing can really step up from the catwalk position. He has snuck by. So he has a chance to cause some damage here, but Stewie spotted, taken down. Good greeting party for Flusher, however, as he goes back up. Nothing's already wrapped around. Still within a reason sure. here. Flash goes through, he times it perfectly to find Crims before blinding himself, but it's Fnatic that pulls back to grab the bomb, and it's nothing that has all to do to try and compensate. And flash back into the hut, continue to work around. He knows they're in there, but he needs to find an angle, and he needs to do it quickly, 23 seconds. And he's also got a player that's going to be watching, I believe, coming behind at main entrance. Not quite, he's got the first, excuse me, it's Heaven, so he's actually got the first player down, bomb in his possession, but there's a player right behind him, and there it is, Dennis. I was wondering when the peak was going to come in. Yeah. He's able to get the kill. Good attempt there by nothing, but a very difficult round. If he got the bomb down, that would have helped their financial situation. You can see now it's uh, pretty desperate for them. So it's going to be 10-1, looking very likely to be 11. This was a play for nothing. So after losing the first two frags, he had to step up here. This kill, I'm surprised he got it. He was, okay, spotted him just before he got fully behind. From my POV, he looked like he was blind when he actually hit the shot. But gets three kills in total, not quite enough. Keeps Fnatic modest at least. You can see Crimson at about 2k, JW3, but getting into the latter stages now. It's going to be a very weak fight to Cloud9 in the first shot once again. This has been the storyline for almost every single round. Fnatic finding the first pick and then just running away the round. Cloud9 having nothing in response. Yeah. 
getting a bit redundant at this point. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Shroud. Quick one. Just jumps off the silo. I don't know if he was tagged in the air, which caused him to miss the jump all the way to the top of A main, but either way, it didn't matter. His teammates were already dead, and he was as good as. It's going to be 11 to 1, and the money's never even come into question for Fnatic in this entire half. So, what have you tried on Cloud9 so far? We tried the defaults, we tried slowing it down with the AWP, outside executions, not so many upper executions. Maybe we go back to that. The tactical play doesn't seem to be that deep. We haven't seen many fakes, and a lot of teams are doing that on this map these days. And now, the change of pace. Let's just go for a fast play outside, dodge you up with this boost, and just try and have a contact play. Keep it simple, automatic, great opening fragger. Just about picks that one up on flush out, and now they'll try and attack the upper bomb site. Automatic, spray in. Tank oh comes down to 24, but then all off is perfect position to take down two. Nothing does respond. But it's damage done because it's now a man advantage again for Fnatic. The shotgun for JW is going to be playing a slightly different game now that they've taken over main, but it's still going to be Dennis that's able to find Shroud with no trade available. And nothing's on 43 HP. Yeah, that's enough. Thing. Once again, one minute remaining. Still with a chance this one, but the low HP does not help him. JW thinking about pushing this. Perfect angle for it. Should be able to take this down. There it is. The auto shotgun. Being an absolute menace here for Cloud9, he finds his 14 frag. I think overall with that weapon, he's only really had the auto shotgun overall. Yep. And now it has to be another recap for Cloud9 as well. They're a fourth stage loss bonus, and all of Meister, great timing there. It's taken down at that point, but he's already got two frags, and the damage is done. This is looking like a very one-sided affair. Cloud9 not really turning up that lack of respect so far. Uh, it's Stewie, uh, sorry, it's Automatic that's calling now, right? So. This is the problem. I haven't really seen that much in terms of tactical prowess. I haven't seen any fakes. I haven't seen any really detailed executions or even the outside smoke. Probably send one player down. Your other your teammates are towards ramp. That's very standard these days. Like just something like that to force a rotation first. And then you're trying to capitalize on that point. You're trying to fake out the CTs. They're all just sticking in one position and trying very basic strategies at this point. And Fnatic, they're just loving it. Looking very good right now. 13-1. As yeah. we go into round 15, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes 14-1. From what I've seen, I would say that's very likely. No one stepping up for Hard Cloud9. Hard to believe Cloud9 let it go to this map. I mean, yes, you, you mentioned Fnatic are playing very good fundamentals, but <laughs> Cloud9's not really doing anything to try no. and isolate. Well, that's what I mean. Like, there's, there's either defaults or very standard executions. Like, nothing that's going to trick a team like Fnatic. Who are Seven maps, and it's a best of one. And, and they're finding the opening pick every single round, so why would you even fall for a fake at that point? Like, we've got this man advantage, wait for them to make the next move, and that's a real trouble for Cloud9 right now. The fact they're giving away that first pick consistently and finding themselves in five on fours at the start of every round, you're just going to have such a rough time here. And Cloud9 did beat SK, I was just reminded, in groups on Katowice, so perhaps false sense of security on this map. Well, they looked much better there, right? This is when, True. that was the first map Automatic started calling for them, and, uh, I, and I did. They, did, they did lure SK into that pick, if you remember yeah. as well. They they wanted it to be baited. But I remember, they I remember much it. more in terms of full upper executions. Like Molos obviously were flashbangs, and they were like running away with it and allowing their star players to have some control with smokes down, flashes going in. Where are that? Why have we not seen any of those? Like that I was. Wonder, I wonder if it's just a matter of trying to play Fnatic at their own game style rather than play your own game. Play loose, play free, try and play for picks. Well, once again, it's a five and four. Yeah, and that's, that's clearly not working. So why have you not gone back to those executions at this point? Scootle does trade on Crims. They've gotten to the outside door once more. Three versus three, but Olaf again. Ooh, fires a little bit early. So Shroud's going to be prepared and ready for him this time. He's going to blow a hole in the door so that he can try and utilize it rather than just walk in towards Hut. Bomb planted. Made up. Dennis times it. Olaf's able to distract. Perfect play, but it is Skadoodle in the back lines. Able to take him down as Olaf tries to bait in shots and get some positional control. It's nothing that wins the round for them. So Cloud9 do get two, but still not much to work with. Well, we are hoping to see an impressive game from Clan 9 this morning, but so far, not so good. Looking quite stale and fanatic, confident, kind of rolling back the ears in terms of their play style, pushing everywhere, auto shotguns are out. It's been impressive to watch so far. Very impressive indeed for one team. Cloud 9, not so much. We'll see if their CT side is anything near what Fnatic's was. It is brought to you in part by Intel. Lenovo Legion, Xfinity, ESEA, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, Logitech G, and Zowie.
Fnatic is looking today more like the team you guys expected, yeah. putting them as a favorite in this group or in this tournament, saying it's about time that they arrive. I'm partly due to the fact, okay, I'm a little more convinced, but partly due to the fact that Cloud9 has been anything but impressive. Yeah, pretty uninspired so far. They haven't really mixed things up at all. They look a bit lost in terms of the tactical game. Nothing really to impress me in terms of, like, like we said, fakes or just even standard sort of defaults where you're doing the smokes outside. The idea of the smokes outside, right, it means you do it every single round. So when you wanted to use them, great, you can go down there and try and go for jewels. But then you keep doing them and you send one player down. The idea of the force of rotation from maybe ramp or from full upper. Yep. Then you can go back and attack as a unit on a weaker part of the map. And that doesn't seem to be happening right now. Cloud9 just seems to be lost and this is the problem with NA as a general, right? They're lacking tactical minds and natural leaders, right? That's been the main problem for this, this region. Yeah. I don't think Automatic is the leader they need to become a world-class team. Yeah, it's, it's shocking that no one's emerged as a really standout in-game leader. I think Stanislaw perhaps leads the way right now of the active leaders. Sure, absolutely. And I, I think that uh, that's encouraging. Because, yeah, it seems to be a management it's just, issue. I think if you was very good. Of course. Yeah. We'll, we'll see more of him later. Yeah. Um, the thing is, well, I'm sure Automatic is very comfortable when they win the pistol and they get rolling and Stewie's finding all the frags and he's getting lots of entry kills himself. And that's easy to call in that scenario, right? When you're, when you're rolling, you've got momentum. It's, it's great. It feels amazing to be in a game leader. You're just making everything cool. It feels perfect. But as soon as you get into these sort of plays, you're just going to pick every single time and you take a pause and work out what the problems are. That's when you find out if you're a natural leader or not, whether you can kind of rise up in these sort of situations. I I think this game's over, but if they win the pistol, maybe they have a chance here. Then they're sitting the way towards ramp room and automatic. I like this. Pushing lobby, getting lots of intel here. Tons of intel. Hut cleared, no one inside it. They haven't spotted it. It's gotta be ramp. It is. Stewie's gonna stay to fight rather than drop back. Manages a kill on Trims, but they're already on wow. the flank. Good shot from Shroud as Dennis wanted to cut them off. Automatic has to hit that surely. Looked like it was a bit shaky to start, but he has the bomb now down. He's still shaky at range against JW, but they've got the advantage. Nothing's gonna take him down. And it's just Olaf trying to wrap back around from outside to get the bomb. And a minute to work with when he does arrive on it. They're swarming it, though. And double peak. Well timed, actually. That was quite cool. Yeah, they had him coming. Synchronized. No bomb going down. Not out of the woods just yet, because they know the Fnatic force by will be coming in round number two. Don't have to force by. A lot of teams have also been experiencing on the T side. Taking a full eco here, then getting Galil's out in the third, even if you get the bomb down. Kind of a bit of a surprise by in that sense, but they will be force buying. It's going to just be Tech Nines, Deagles, Armor as well. They've got one smoke. I assume that goes towards maybe the vent or connect. Oh, main entrance, I should say. And maybe try and get the bomb down. We'll see what comes in though. Two here. R9 with a much needed pistol here. 13 3. High in the sky. Blast for Skadoodle to try and get position as they continue to push on him. He's gonna be careful with the scout. Nothing's not gonna be careful. He doesn't need to be. He's got an M4. So two headshots for him. JW does find one and so does Crims as well. This could be falling apart. It's gonna be nothing to step up here. Gets two fragged. That will do. Now it's a three versus one. Crims now bombing his back main entrance. Crims trying to go back around with the Deagle. Stewie's directly in front and he will get him down with the UMP. But a great round from nothing. Yeah. To hold off outside and then get back in her and cover off Hut and entrance. I think he's been the most impressive player so far. This whole this tournament, one. yeah. You know, like he's, the games we've classed at the least, like he's the only one that's consistently fragging and looking confident with himself. The other guy's quite patchy and we'll see whether they can step up here. They've got at least the lead for now. This is what we needed from them. So it'll be 2-0 and a full eco fanatic. Not a single dollar invested into round number three here. So Glocks across the board. No armor, no nades. And there's probably rushing ramp by the looks of things. Just trying to get a trade. Very unlucky they will. So we have Stewie though to do some damage out. That's enough. This is quite standard for ramp. Get the information. Don't give a gun away. Don't give your teammates to back you up. But Shroud gets two, but gets taken down eventually. Yeah, gifted one as they lined up for him. And it's Cloud9 to find yet another. So hold your breath, fanatic. Here we go. Or rather, don't hold your breath. It could be a long time. I forget how that saying goes. I think it's don't hold your it's breath because then you will suffocate and die. Exactly. And nobody wants that. Well, here we go. The first gun round. Your no. silence was uh, awkward, Henry. Do you want that? Do I want what? You sounded hesitant that I said no one wants to die. You didn't. Well, yeah, I don't know. I'll get back to you. Okay. I'm seeing how this event goes for me first. 
five AKs and is going to be a fast play. From what I can see so far, I can see two players making their way towards red. Nothing, not really anticipating this. This is a very impressive play from Fnatic. Here. Not default, but it's going to be Skadoodle. Was there a gap there? Watch this, though. Nothing's actually just slipped in the smoke behind him. He knows where they are. Shoots Flusha. Can't find the kill, but he's done good damage. Problem is, now that he shot Flusha, he's stopped up, but he doesn't have the confidence to try and push down in behind it. Secret. There was a gap in that smoke, by the way. Was there? Yeah, so Skadoodle was in heaven, and there's a gap right in the middle of those two smokes. I'm wondering if they did those LDLC smoke from T-Spawn. They look very quick to actually get out there. Let's see from the start. But nothing. It's still searching for Flusher that he did damage on to. Automatic's rotated down. That's why he can afford to stay in the yard and Automatic can cover off secret instead. Do you see what we mean now? When I said those those standard smokes for just did, nothing can slip behind the smoke and come behind them, right? That That's limited Was you do the smoke that Cloud9 did. It means that's not yes. really a potential threat. Yes, that's a great point. I think Nip throws the wide smokes too. They do it slightly differently. Yeah. So Dennis will continue to hold off the position at lower. Bomb still waits at lobby. Flushy was tagged up, has dropped down, gone all the way back around, climbed back up on the silo. He's trying to be careful as he walks back toward the lobby. Doesn't want to fall and die. 20 seconds remaining. No smokes. They have got HE grenades and... So three on three, I do favor this towards Cloud9 in this particular scenario. It's a funny map like that. Skidoodle finds one threat, but Dennis in the vent. He's going to strike 10 seconds now. Can Fnatic get this done? That's tough. It's desperate. Skidoodle hits a very important shot and flush a planting 14 HP. Tries to fake out and bait Skidoodle in, but he walks around and makes no mistake. And even then, there was only six seconds, exactly. so he was fine. So that, that's a calculated risk there from Skidoodle. Even if he doesn't make the quick scope or no scope, he still stops a bomb going down and manages to win the round. There's the gap in the smoke. Yeah, gap. exactly. So able to spot all off jumping. So, yeah, there's smoke you can do from T-Spawn, right? Like I said, LDLC, that's the first, like, assistance is the first one way to do it. You can do it from T-Spawn, they fly all the way over. They're fine, but there sometimes has gaps in them. I mean, they're very quick, but sometimes you have that little gap, and that's what's good to get that first pick. I was wondering if they did those, I'm not 100% sure. Partial buy. 4-0 now for Cloud9, getting back into this game. Scar's gonna sit and watch Outer. He's actually got the eye by power sticker on his gun. A throwback. <laughs> To happier times. Didn't actually mean throw when I said throwback. <laughs> that was the Freudian slip. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Works, though. I'll take it. That one in the, uh, the wind column. Check off another one. So pistol's only for Fnatic because we go 13-6. Cloud9 closing up the gap after winning three. Four, excuse me. JW is going to take down Shroud, though, to start off with a Deagle. Yeah, and Dennis side. has made it oh, inside. Automatic, thankfully, was crouched because the crosshair placement was good for a headshot. Slightly like tilted horizon for Automatic, thanks to MTV. Oh. If it'll be tilted or not, you might have Tech 9 just jumped around the corner and took him down. It's going to be JW and Olaf there doing the same. It's now down to just Stewie. They've yet to pick up a rifle in the Fnatic side inside of the site. However, oh. they've got position, and Crims looks straight down and assassinates Stewie. It looks like. Fnatic were giving way too much room there. Do we have a tilted horizon? Or is it, maybe it's just this monitor. I think it's the monitor being on a, a slant. Yeah, it is, it is those slant. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, Cloud9, they said they're going to have a lack of respect there, but they're leaving the upper bomb tank completely open almost there as well, focusing towards outside. It's Fnatic with the Deagles out. Oh, oh, this that's shot. good. Okay, not really much to do about that. It's a lovely shot with the Desert Eagle. They saw him in that upper bomb site, automatically did what he could, and Skadoodle missed a key shot there, which allowed his teammate to go down towards our vent area. And now Cloud9, oh, it was looking so promising, but look at the money now. They get an orb short, sure, but clutching a straws. Another gap in the smoke, and nothing. This is the problem we've got. With these smokes oh. coming down, but he doesn't make the frag. That's an absolute nightmare. It's gutting. You hate to see it, Henry. You do. As you would say, that's not that skadoodle. Oh, I thought he was just going to shoot into the door as well. Never would have won the round. He had knives behind him, but it is apparently over. 15 to 6. Oh. I'm st are we? I still think I'm st Maybe I'm tilted. <laughs> I can't tell you've got me confused now. I know. Someone get me a protractor, compass, and a ruler. I'll figure this out. <laughs> 15-6. Oh, God. <laughs> He's falling <laughs> off the stage. <laughs> He's rolled into a pit below yeah, the desk. That could have been a lot worse. I could have broken my jaw on the desk. Then. Yeah, you, you, you have a tilted horizon now, haven't I've you? actually done that before. <laughs> I'm smashing my face on a, a desk. I did that in school. It's not as bad as Alex smashing his forehead off a monitor. Oh. Or a laptop. 
Okay, that was a bit of excitement towards the end. I was about to say pistols, and it's going to be nothing with the Desert Eagle. CZ, and it looks like it's going to be 16-6. Nothing really the Cloud9 side can do here. Fnatic have ravaged Cloud9 here on Nuke. 13-2 to kick things off there, and Cloud9 with a chance on the second half of the winning the pistol, getting the 4-0, but it fell apart against the pistols and came to its logical conclusion here. Just Shroud. Tall order, can't do it. 16 6, Matthew. Cloud9 said they're going to have a lack of respect today, and it looked like Fnatic had the same idea, and they come out on top. Yeah, I'd say Cloud9 had a lack of respect for the game of Counter Strike in that map, to be completely honest with yeah. you, Henry. That did not go well, and as you say, defaults and basic executions, the fundamentals were not really there at all. Yeah, I, I think this is something they really need to work on. That does not look like a map they really have worked on that much, and I'm sure they have, but in terms of the tactical stuff that I saw, very standard. Like, it looked like a new team on the map. They've been playing it for a couple of weeks, and they've got like the defaults down, one execution, no real fakes going on, and they're just hoping the likes of Stewie and Automatic can really turn up and turn the tide of the game by having a lights-out performance, but that didn't happen. Stewie was non-existent, same story for Automatic as well. Nothing their best player. That shouldn't be happening. He's very oh. decent, like a very... A veteran of the game, right? But he should not be top of the scoreboard consistently. Yeah, for this, this team. isn't three years ago. Yeah, this is not three years ago when nothing was uh, was incredible, and it's certainly not three years ago when Moses still played the game. Because thankfully, he's on the desk to lead us through all the analytics. Thanks, Matt, for that beautiful shout out. Uh, we didn't we didn't get a lot of time to touch on it before we went to the casters before the match, but I know Vendetta specifically during this game had a lot of a lot of passionate feelings and thoughts about the map veto process. So I wanted to give you a chance to, to explain some of that yeah. in hindsight. A lot of, a lot of mixed feelings uh, about the veto, specifically because both teams just went straight away from their strengths. Yeah. Uh, that was obviously the, the big uh, question mark that we sat with there after seeing the veto. Uh, none of these teams really play Overpass and Nuke, which was the two remaining maps. And obviously, well, you could tell that this was kind of Fnatic's uh, ace up their sleeve. Uh, by having practice new, Shout at out least, to uh, yeah, no, no, yeah, uh, at least a far, far uh, greater extent than what we'd seen out of Cloud Nine. Uh, but yeah, no, again, I think if you're if you're Cloud Nine, you're actually truthful about what you're saying that you want to play with confidence. You're not going to come into, you know, the the next games you have today with respect for your opponents and whatnot, and then you go away from every strength you have. You're, I, I don't know what kind of logic you're following, but it does not make sense in my head. I mean, to build on the joke, right, it, when he says we're going to have a lack of res respect for our opponents today, it's like they had a lack of respect for their own map pool, going away from yeah. maps that have been good to them, leaving the veto process to two maps remaining in the pool that they just don't play. It's Three times total in 2017, they played overpass and nuke combined. Yeah, and that's a crazy thing, especially when you consider the maps that they would have had left. Uh, you know, considering if they just go through a pretty standard veto, right. they probably could have ended up on a map like Train or Cobble or, you know, something to that effect, or maybe a Cache, for instance. Like, I, th I don't think necessarily Fnatic would have been going away from that if Cloud9 ended up banning overpass and, and nuke right away. Yeah. So... Like, if, if you're Cloud9, you're just setting yourself up for failure and you're not... Jump on it, Yanko. I, mean, I think it goes both ways, right? Looking back at Katowice, uh, they let Nuke through versus SK, who was kind of playing the map at the time, and, and that was a great map veto for them because they were very well prepared. Here, when you look at the vetoes from Fnatic as well, the only choice that probably uh, Cloud9 had was leaving Train in because the rest of the maps that they play were banned out by Fnatic, Cash, and Cobble, for example. You don't really want to play Mirage against Fnatic. I feel like Inferno is an obvious veto, so in the grand scheme of things, maybe they were probably better pe prepared for Overpass than they were on Nuke. Maybe they were expecting Fnatic to actually let Overpass through, but that didn't happen. And don't make any mistake about it. The way Fnatic is going to win Nuke against any team is going to be on the CT side. They're not going to have amazing structured T sides like we see from North versus Pro, Phase, Astralis, right? It's going to be aggression and individual plays on the CT side. And auto shotguns, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> a lot auto of them. Auto shotguns, flash hopping, <laughs> on yard, things like that. But the usual. <laughs> I mean, it was just aggression all over the place. And the way you combat that in general is just you need to have, you need to group up, basically. You want to eliminate those unknowns of getting pushed from all different sides, group up, go secret with five players even if you want or four players at least, take control of that go towards the lower bomb site, use the molotovs and the smokes to clear out those close choke points, to negate a couple of angles you can get shots from, plant the bomb down and give yourself a winning chance, this way Cloud9 was a lot it was spread out a lot around the map and you know you could see a 3v3 situation happen or a 4v3 and in a span of five seconds, it would end up being a 1v3 for, for Cloud9. Fnatic was just so aggressive, pushing all over the place, and Cloud9 couldn't really get, get a breather in that game.
Yeah, and over on the Beast Room, actually, we have a small update. It is going to be uh, Immortals taking on G2. Uh, Immortals actually up 13 to 9. We're going to pull that up on the screen. Actually, 14 9 now. It's been updated. Nice. Yeah. So we're, we're going to just uh, take a glimpse of these last few rounds. And this is such an important match. I mean, we highlighted so much Cloud9 versus Fnatic having a huge impact on how Group A would play out. But, I mean, here, if G2 drops this one to an Immortals team that hasn't yet gotten a win in this, in this group stage, this now puts them at a, at a huge danger of not being able to make it out of the group. Yeah, no, uh, well, I mean, not only that, but it kind of just spreads this, uh, it, first off, it gives Immortals a fighting chance to get back into things, and uh, that third spot is, is more open than ever. Uh, also, just to highlight a couple things as well, I mean, someone you don't normally say on the Immortal side of things that leads the way and is the power player for this team, Lucas, sitting at 30 kills, 12 deaths, and 142 ADR. Well, you say that, but Lucas was by far their best performer during the regular season of okay. Pro League, which is completely, and I, I was completely baffled by that yeah. every time I saw him, because he's not, like, he, <laughs> he topped so many statistical categories for them, but not necessarily in terms of frags. He was doing a lot of damage every time. So he was right. in the top five of the NA Pro League for the longest time in just terms of ADR, but you wouldn't believe it when you saw Immortals play, which is kind of weird. So, but Lucas has definitely been stepping up as of late, and uh, one of the big issues I've had with him is the fact that whenever he's gone to LAN events, his performance has dropped off significantly. Like we're talking like a cliff dive into, you know, the pits of the, you know, pits of hell, kind of drop off where you go from online just posting good, uh, good performances and ratings, and then going to offline just being completely invisible. So it's, it's really cool to see that he's <laughs> kind of turned it around now. It's happening. I mean, also another thing to to notice that Immortals had a 10-5 T side, and that's with G2 winning pistol and being 3-0 up. So, you know, 10-2 yeah. basically T side uh, for Immortals, a very, very dominant performance. Now we see again, they win the, the, the clutch round and they're on match point against G2. Yeah, th this would be this would be surprising. A team that, that has you know shocks, Kenny. I mean, Apex. These guys that we've talked about for so long, yeah. uh, dropping this one here. It, would this would this be a new low for G, for G two? I mean, is this kind of a lot of the excitement around this team starting to starting to kind of fade a little bit? I mean, it's hard to tell. Obviously, like what went wrong for them without having seen the game in, yeah, right. in full detail. So I, I think that's uh, would be unfair for us to call. But obviously, this is a very unexpected result. But I'm not sure if it's off of the back of Immortals being very good on it. But we know how that Immortals have been. You know, teams like SK, for instance, on in the past. So it's not like they're complete slouches on it. I think also it's always with teams like G2, for example, the super teams, right? You're always trying to find a way for them, you know, to say, okay, but they. Surely they're gonna make it. You look at all the talent in the team. You know they have Smith as a coach as well. They have all the ingredients for success, but the results simply aren't there for them. And it's been a, you know, a, a decent amount of time now that they've yeah. had this lineup. That they had time to change things, to practice, to figure out roles and all of that stuff. They didn't have a mad schedule in terms of land tournaments, right? So that they couldn't right. put in the, the the practice time actually. So why isn't this happened. Where are the results for G2? It's weird. Yeah, no, but all, pretty much all they have to show for is uh, obviously the, the win at Tours, and, and that necessarily wasn't against the, the highest level of competition. So, yeah, G2 are just in a weird spot, right? I mean, I, I haven't seen them in a while, but in Kiev when they were playing, they were actually looking amazingly strong. Yeah. They lost that quarterfinal to FaZe, who went on to win the tournament. Yeah. Mm, one of the big reasons was because FaZe won all six pistols in a best of three. <laughs> you know, and, and there were a couple of close maps there, so you felt like, yeah, G2 had a great showing, you know, after a while. Uh, they, they couldn't qualify for Katowice and so on, but that, at their actual first land big tournament, they performed well, and you felt after a month now, they're going to be even stronger, but that's not happened. Well, let's focus on Immortals a little bit because, I mean, obviously, let's, let's focus on the good things, the, the team that's winning at the moment, just because when this team had that, that trade FNX for Phelps, you know, it didn't really, I never really had a lot of confidence that they were going to build in any kind of, like, contending team. Um, and then even even further so when FNX leaves and KFG comes in. Um, but it, but is this showing a little bit of promise, something that they can build on moving forward, at least? I mean, it's definitely showing promise, and this is the area to beat G2, that you have to take that for what it's worth, regardless of, you know, if it's underperforming from uh, performance from G2 or whatnot. I, again, hard to tell without having seen the entire game. Yeah. But uh, definitely a promising signs, and for, for me, very surprising just because I expected Immortals to be pretty much dead in the water uh, with bringing KNG in. Because I, I was one of those players, uh, one of those people who actually had very high hopes for Immortals when they brought FNX in, just because the kind of reliability he brings to a team, and that always seemed to be the bit of an issue for, for Immortals, actually, just having that even keel uh, in that five to, to kind of balance them out, because they didn't really have. Uh, yeah, they didn't really actually have any any sort of experience to play off of them. FNX coming into the lineup that brings that in, in boatloads. So I was super hopeful about that and uh, obviously even more disappointed to see him leave. So that's why I yeah didn't really have any hopes for him at all. This is super weird. 
they actually had Lucas on top in that tower. And they still get <laughs> two for two. I don't know how that happens. But yeah, the Immortals was always a team that they always have upset potential, right? But the yeah. problem is, I, I feel like they're a very, very streaky team. Oh, yeah. As a team and as individuals, you know, the, the job. Oh, that's not bad at all. What that's a way how to end, end it. <laughs> and I was actually going to talk about Hanny as an example, like how yeah. he always performs well in Katowice <laughs> in Poland, for some reason. That's it. You <laughs> know, and, and he has an amazing tournament there, but we really don't see that level of, of play uh, from him nowadays. So I think for Immortals, the big problem is they are never, you never look at them as this team that has mad structure, you know, and, and yeah. mad fundamentals, and they are going to beat you like that. It was always when they make upsets, it's someone having a crazy individual game, whether it's Henny or Phelps back in Bolts the day. And, uh, Bolts, Bolts and, and, or in this game, Lucas, that's the main reason. Someone just goes off and gets a lot of kills. And you can see them gradually. That was the FNX Phelps swap, right? With FNX, you lose that playmaking capability you had in Phelps. You need to do more as a team. So that was maybe a hope for them that they are, are going to become uh, better in regards to coordination, team play, strategies, right? And I think that's the next step that Immortals needs to make. They still have good individuals. KNG, in my opinion, is, is a good addition to the team. Uh, uh, time will have to tell, but yeah, with work, they can become a consistent contender. I think that's the thing, because always when you see these fringe, uh, fringe, you know, tier two, uh, not tier, uh, tier one teams that, you know, have upsets every now and again, the thing about them is that, yeah, when they win games, it's because of individuals stepping up to the plate and going out uh, and just having an amazing game because obviously right. they possess that kind of skill, but none of them have the ability to grind out games. And that's what you see with every tier one team. All the team, best teams in the world have that, pretend, uh, have that ability to not play well, but win games. And that doesn't exist for Immortals. And I don't see how the addition of KNG is going to add that to the team either. That's what I was hoping to see with FNX because, as you said, with losing firepower, you're going to have to build other strengths, and that's going to be more team-based. I feel like that's how you more or less grind out games uh, a lot of the times when you get, uh, play against top uh, competition. And adding KNG to that makes I, I don't really see that adding the same kind of effect to the team. But, uh, you know, it's still early days, so I could be completely wrong. But Yeah, still upset potential, though, out of Mortals, as we just saw. Let's take a look at the standings of Group A as that's updated. Fnatic with that win go to 3-1, and one, nipping on the heels of SK. G2, Immortals, Envy, Cloud9, all tied with one win. Cloud9 with those three losses. That hurts a little bit, but other teams will catch up with the games played. Uh, but still a lot of tiebreaker potential in this group now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's up in the air, as so, you said at the beginning of the day. Yeah. So, absolutely, but you look at now, we have a lot of interesting matchups. For example, Immortals, they're one and two, but their last two remaining games are against Cloud9 and Envious, the, you know, right. quote-unquote, weaker opponents in the group. G2 in a terrible situation where they're basically in a do-or-die do place, and they have to play SK next, <laughs> who yeah. has been the most dominant, dominant team in, in the tournament. Cloud9 with a 1v3 scoreline. Still, a lot of things can happen. Yeah, taking the words right out of my mouth. G2 gets no break. They play the other Brazilian mm -hmm. team up next. It's going to be SK. They have to see if they can even take a single round off of that, uh, away from that T side of SK that's been so dominant. Tall task for them. We'll be right back. you to your limits anybody, 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 once again. Black Equalizer brightens dark scenes without overexposing bright areas. Use the S switch to quickly access the setting and switch between save modes.
athletes aren't just born. They're molded from the core, a core of strength, a core of laser focus, a core that can handle anything, a core that sweats the small stuff, a core that's the difference maker, game changer, world shocker. You see, hard work makes the athlete, but the edge of a core i7 processor makes you unstoppable. This is your chance to actually make it into the pro league, be a professional Counter-Strike player. That's the thing that Mountain Dew League provides. Penguin, you know what? If anybody has a shot at 2-0, it's Penguin. Beautiful Counter-Strike. You usually only see that into the professional level of things. We are the one of the youngest team in top 20. Many teams can underestimate us and we can uh, surprise them with our tactics, show our Polish power. Start your esports career now at play.eslgaming.com.
Howdy, future pros. Back on Nuke today, and I got another slick smoke to help y'all with your tea side. Playing Nuke can feel like hell, but with this heaven smoke, you'll be winning round after round. The first step to executing this smoke is to shoot out the back left skylights. Once this is done, you're gonna run around the silo, position yourself over this line. Aim just to the left of the second rail, post slightly above the roof, find mouse one on your gaming mouse, and press it. And just like that, your heaven will be smoked perfectly. As you can see, the smoke's starting to come in. So he's the master, and there's the first headshot, looking for more. He's very, very good with this gun. Knows they're going to be close to the The flash means they've got to be there. Lines up the headshots. He's got number three. Bomb down as well. There's the fourth. Nico <laughs> nearly goes for a deagle ace. Now if he goes down, five on four, just like that. And it's going to be even more for flush. A double kill, triple kill. What a what? God, same as that. Uh, but they flash over, and they push, you know, A with all five. Only able to get oh, two kills now. But I think that is all that they will get. Oh, oh no. Oh! What? what? This is somehow going down to a 1v1 as FNX takes down nothing since he runs out of ammo. Doesn't have armor, mind you, but still, he's upgraded to an AK, but he might get caught reloading here. They both jump out of the open and FNX. Oh my what god. What is that? He destroys Cloud9. Finally, we've got a good shot of this. Just and then the oh, pranked him. Fiali! What is that? Fiali! He's in a 1v2 and it's so winnable. He's got 12 HP. Nico's got 6 and Rain's got 18. I wouldn't put it past him. Oh, get help! Get help! One yet by phase. <laughs> Second round four. So yeah, look at this. The fact is, as well, he drops a smoke and then it's listening. That's when he said, We can get past that. We can push through before it goes down and not have the gray screen. Bang. It's actually the play that works against them, and he's so hungry for that. He's at the point. There it is. Boom. Finds Kiyoshima. He's normally in the apartments area. He knows that. Yes, welcome back to ESL Pro League Land Finals. The road does not get any easier for G2. After dropping over past two Immortals, it's the next Brazilian team, SK, and they've looked even better in this group stage so far. Undefeated, no rounds lost on their T side. G2 boys certainly have a hill to climb with this one, and they need this win. They're losing tiebreakers as well. It's looking like we might have a couple of those matches later on. They need to start picking up some wins. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, I think Echo mentioned it. You know, this is starting to look like do or die for uh, for G2, and it's not obviously an easy situation to be in if you have to go up against the, the best team so far in the tournament to, to do so as well. And, and even then, you know, if they manage to, to overcome the obstacle that is SK, Fnatic is waiting in the wings after that. So yeah. it's not an easy time for, to, be, uh, to be a French Counter-Strike player. No, it's not at all. And actually, we can we can bring their roster up on the screen. We'll see who. We, I mean, we know all these names. We've gone over this plenty plenty of times. Um, where, where are we at with this team though right now, Yanko? We talked a little bit about towards the end of that match. Just a little bit of. Is it just a feeling of disappointment that kind of persists with the squad? I have no idea where we are <laughs> at the <laughs> yeah. moment because you would expect so much from them. As I said in the first land tournament that we saw them play, they actually did show up. You know, it, it was what we would expect from them. But ever since then, even at these low tier, lower tier tournaments, they weren't as dominant as you would expect from, from this lineup. And at this tournament in particular, they have been really underwhelming. And that, ha that ha that's happening with them playing some of their best maps, like Inferno, like Overpass. Well, I mean, Stuchu put out a pretty funny tweet that was just saying, one of these three players dropped 30 kills in the last map, Shox, Kenny S, and, and Lucas. <laughs> I mean, that's the big thing. Right At the moment with G2, we're not even seeing the stars really coming to show up, um, which is kind of a dangerous prospect for a team that's now got to go up against SK. Um, and, and I mean, obviously we know who this whole roster is, but if there's any team whose stars are showing up consistently, Cold Zero has been doing it for two years now, ever since he joined the roster. Yeah. Fur coming in, I mean, as a second player, he's been incredible. And you mentioned the fact that, you know, Cold Zero has been doing it for two years. He hasn't, yet, he has yet to show up this tournament. Yeah. Like, because he hasn't had to. He's been chilling. Yeah, you know, he's been sitting back in his lazy boy, just having a good time watching Fur, Phelps, and Fallen kind of do most of the heavy lifting. And that's, again, a terrifying notion if you're G2 going into this because you know that Fur is feeling, you know that Phelps is on point, and Fallen is getting back to uh, his own godlike form. So when you have Colzera just waiting in the wings as a fourth guy to just destroy your hopes and dreams, 
it's uh, not a fun situation. And uh, in addition to that, you know, we I don't know really know where G2 wants to go with this. Uh, you know, what kind of map they if they have a map they, they could be favored against SK on. Like that's obviously a massive issue. So yeah, that, that, I mean that's the next question. It goes if if you're on the G2 team, wh where are you thinking? Where are you taking this to, it, to get back? It's on a the very horse? difficult situation because they actually beat SK on LAN on overpass in a very dominating fashion, but now they had this underwhelming performance, very underwhelming versus Immortals, because they lose 16-10, I believe it was in the end, or 69, yeah. with winning both pistols. So they have that, they have a difficult loss against Cloud9 on Inferno. You know, if you're SK, actually, you're feeling pretty good right now, because you veto out Nuke, you don't play that, that's a very strong map for G2, 4-0 and zero on that one. G2 is also 7-1 and one on Cobblestone, but... You know, SK has the luxury of even vetoing Cobblestone if they like, and going back to right. Overpass. You know, the, the, SK is the team that has the the advantage here at the moment. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all the advantages you can see up on the screen. That this is this is the roster we're looking at. Even Fallen, kind of. I mean, plenty is being said about Cold Zero Fur. Phelps is playing very, very well. Fallen's getting a little bit of a resurgence of form. And if it's not like the high impact games, it's the high impact rounds that he's able to bring out. Yeah, and that's all you want. I mean, you don't necessarily need more when you have three others doing uh, doing a lot of work already. Right. And even then, you know, the guy who rarely gets brought up because of how uh, how high impact all the other players are. Taco, again, he's not failing to do his job at any given point either. So even though he's not necessarily dropping 30 frags every other game like some of these players are, he's still just being a consistent factor to the point where like you can always rely on him to get one or two frags whenever he, his, his bomb sack gets attacked or do the right decision to delay you know, a potential push or, or just yeah, make the right decisions, which is uh, super beneficial. There's no real weak point in this SK lineup. That, that's got to be the most intimidating thing if you're, if you're a G2 player at the moment, is just finding a weakness in the squad. Absolutely. I think the problem also you have is after uh, against a, uh, such an aggressive team as SK is, you really, if, if the default is not working for you, if the players are not on point individually, as G2's players are not at the moment, you kind of want to switch to that more strategical style that they claim that they have been, been working on. But again, that style is meant to just give you a, an advantage, give you a higher chance of actually winning your fights when the time comes, right? The utility makes it easier for you, you eliminate some spots, you know which spots you need to focus on, you flash your entry fraggers in, but still, that makes it maybe a 70-30 or an 80-20 situation in, in, uh, in your favor, but you still need to win that situation. It seems like G2 is even unable to, to win rounds or, or win those duels where they have an advantage, as, as you guys point out. None of, their, none of their players are showing up individually on top of everything else. Yeah, not a lot of advantages for G2 going into this matchup. And if you agree with that kind of a sentiment that we're putting out there, make sure you get your vote heard. SK or G2 in the YouTube chat. Let us know who you think is going to win. We're going to pull those stats up. We see the percentages of who, who thinks who's, how many fans we got of each one. We're going to pull the vetoes up right now. I mean, we were kind of curious where this was going to go. Now we get to find out. And the one silver, silver lining for G2 here is probably that SK is also unsure about their map pool yeah. at the moment. You can see this was, you know, you, you wonder about this. They let Cobble through as the last map because recently SK has also been really, really strong on it. So, so that's something where they kind of play more to their own strengths as well. They don't want to target G2's weaknesses because if you want to go for that, you would probably feel more comfortable uh, on playing Train or Cash. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I guess with the two last picks that SK could choose between, which is Cash and uh, Cash and, and Kabul. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we either, even saw SK go with Cash, given considering how well they played versus uh, Fnatic. But again, different team that they're going up against. Uh, but in the same sense, I think Fnatic and G2 can be, you know, compared to be pretty similar in terms of just how they how they approach the game in terms of what kind of mentality they have and how much individual. Uh, skill actually plays a part of that. So, yeah, a little bit interesting to see them actually allow Cobble to go through, but from what we've seen from them so far, it's been pretty solid. Also seeing G2v2 Inferno after that loss to, to Cloud9, you would expect them to be very comfortable playing that map against SK. I kind of dislike this from SK, actually, because Cobblestone is the only map left in the pool that G2 actually plays and that they're probably going to feel very, very comfortable on. Now, sure, SK has looked much stronger in this tournament than G2 is, but you can never underestimate them. They always have that ability to bounce back, and I would have much preferred to have seen Train come out here from, from SK. So, so this is opening a little bit of a window of opportunity, perhaps, for G2 to kind yeah. of slip through. Yeah, and um, it, it is still the best of one, right? And yeah. uh, we do know that they have the potential to, to have that. All they need is that one game where somebody goes off. If Shoxi, yeah, he's been underperforming so far this tournament. Well, the entire team has been underperforming so yeah. far this tournament. But if you have one good game from Kenny S, that could be 
you know, the solution that you need, uh, or one good game from Apex where he just goes off. And we know that Apex usually is very, very solid when it comes to playing Cobble as well. Like he, he is kind of that uh, starting, uh, the, the one the one that starts everything for, uh, for G2 in many ways on that map. So if he gets off to a good start, that could be all they need. Yeah, well, they're going to need a lot out of, uh, out of their star players that we haven't seen quite yet in this tournament. We're going to head over to your casters. It's going to be once again Sadikus and Henry G to take us away. Take you away to a place far, far away, if I could. Jason, just you and me and some candles. Sorry, Henry, you're not invited. I don't want to come. That's absolutely fine. You guys go. I'll stay here, do the casting. All right. It's going to be G2 I'm and SK Gaming. <laughs> um, SK on the T side here. Three sets of armor. Fallen and called the utility players in. Shoxy. Oh, my God. Getting native to oblivion there. That looks like a bit of an anti strat coming in there. That's not bad. Oh, doesn't really work if it doesn't kill him, though, does it? Because he's still good enough that he'll take down fur. As NBK sits top the half wall, he manages to take down Taco on the CZ from a decent range and then jump across the wall to make sure that he's safe from the intruders at long. One of which is called Zero, he's gone. And he's just falling oh. remains. So G2 starting off well after losing to Immortals, shockingly. And SK, who played very well yesterday, called Zero, not included. I won't say he didn't play well, but he didn't stand out like he normally does are up against them now. This is uh, this is an interesting battle when you look at it that way. Yeah, so you're going from one Brazilian team to another. SK Gaming looking the most dominant in this tournament so far. Not really giving much away at all in the 3-0 victories they've had. It's going to be the pistol they're going in favor of G2 on the CT side. So a good start here. We'll see if we can get two rifles out. A rare opponent in the Famous and uh, UMPs, of course, as well. And we're going to have the force buy from SK Gaming. No bomb going down in that pistol. So Tech-9s, PD-50s, and a Deagle for Coldzera. One smoke being deployed to B-site. All five players on this side of the map. Shoxy up close and personal on the other platform. Wait for the flashbang to come through. You should get a few frags here. So is MPK looking quite comfortable. Four kills coming in total. Oh. Down Shocks at least, but he'll go down immediately after. So they manage another kill in this round. Just two so far. One for Taco, one for Fallen. Indeed. No bomb plants. So, fully go Matthew. Yep, a it chance has to be. just to maybe try and get a bomb down. Very unlikely. You normally just try and aim to trade some frags, maybe get one or two. That'd be nice. But uh, G2, Shoxi not even buying a weapon this round. Okay, what does that mean? What, do, what, does, what does it, it all mean? mean? So he gets the head armor. Single pistol. Yeah. So what obviously against unarmored players, the USB's fine. Has lots of one tap potential in this sort of range. That's great. Good grenade. Seems to know Taco's there as well, pushing in on him. Double yeah. nade, yeah, he's, he's gone. The question is if he pushes too far and someone's watching from the corner to catch him off. So yeah, has to look, has to look, and then bye-bye. That'll do. Taco, again, ah. coming down to just the pistol for shock. Builds him up some money. I imagine they'll run that couple off set up with shocks on this map. No doubt, Kenny, I think that films with the Moss. Fallen, picking one up in return, takes down shocks, but it's Kenny that's going to win out the round. Famas, not UMP, although we do still see two of them. Yeah. It, it seems like the FAMAS has made a few more appearances. Obviously, we discussed the nerf of the UMP in depth on this broadcast so far, but if you're not aware, it's had its range is slightly nerfed, right? So it's, yeah, it's I think not it as becomes, powerful. Yeah, but I think it becomes situational now based on map. Sure. Because, you know, maps, obviously, Dusty's not in the pool, but Long A, for example, you wouldn't want to use it anymore. You'd want to use the FAMAS. Map like Cobblestone, lots of open angles and large, vast spaces. You probably want to go back to the FAMAS, but again, time will tell, and each player will have their preference. The first gun round here. Kenny S, of course, on the AWP, top of middle for now. He will be backed up by Apex, is in danger with the SMG. And five AKs for SK, no falling AWP. But to be fair, he's been lights out with the AK. He's been tremendous across the board, really. Of all disciplines, kind of tracking this tournament, looking very good indeed. Cold Zera, not at the best tournament, but he hasn't had to. They've had great results, 3 0 so far. And it's been firm and uh, fallen, and even Taco at times as well have been stepping up. And we're going to see him all being on the CT side. Look out for that. It's the MBK, though, striking first in danger. Cold Zero gets a frag in return, though, 4 and 4. Plenty of time to work. This is almost a bonus round for G2, right? They've still got SMGs and a Famas as well. It was difficult to win these rounds, but if you do, it sets you up fantastically going forward in terms of the financial situation. Yeah, financial situation. Just like an investment in Bitcoin, Henry. Yeah. That sets you up fantastically. Maybe in the next 10 years we're, we're looking into it. Noted. So, over toward B. Phelps leads the way through. But taken down immediately and Shock's playing Hobbit Hole with Kenny to bait him in. This is very good positioning from G2. Shock's 
didn't need to move. The shot step. Oh, yep. Kenny should have been dead. Absolutely. And you don't want to leave Kenny alive because he gets one more and cold as a result. Wait, shocks. Bang, bang. Gone. Apex steals that one, oh, but it's all right. Well, okay. G2. They're turning up here. They've had a really up and down tournament, only picking a one victory so far against Envious, which is 16 14 on Nuke, I believe. Every other game has fallen away from them, most notably against Cloud9, 16 4 on Inferno. No one really saw that result coming. Bad tournament for Cloud9 as well, but they always seem to have those games every tournament. If you think about the Star Ladder as well, they'll have rough tournaments and then they'll have that one game where they get something rolling and cause an upset in the group and almost determines the outcome who makes it out. It's always quite interesting when they're in there. Technized out for SK Gaming, five of those to be exact, some smokes as well. And nades being deployed towards the upper platform from G2 here. It looks like another smoke execution. Very common. You've got the tech lines out. Smoke's all over the place. Molotovs, flashbangs. And he's trying to get the bomb down here. You have a chance to win the round, but we'll see what they can do. Go from Sharks and Body as they continue to look rather untouched, unscathed, unchallenged to start things off. Phelps will take a bit of nade damage as he locks himself in toward Ebox. Smoked off. Tech 9 in hand only to work with. And it's Kenny that's staring down. Not, not only that. Jump in through the window, Apex somehow survives that, the Tech 9. Inaccurate for a change. Apparently so, 5-0 for G2. That was the full execution from SK Gaming, so all the smokes. Molotovs on the tree as well, flashbangs going in, but mowed down. G2 playing in front of those smokes and sticking together, denying the plant as well. Looking very promising now. That's a big point as well. The fact they denied the plant means we don't get an AWP for Fallen, and no one really fragging too hard for SK as of yet. Fur, like you said, being the star player for them so far, 0 and 5 for him. And Kenny is still on the AWP. This time, Cheney's position was top middle last time. Goes towards Danger. And he can get some action here. Three players on this side of the map from the SK side. Phelps goes out towards middle. Flashbang's good. And Fallen finds a first frag. Oh, down he goes in the flames. Got to one HP and wasn't quite out of away from it on that last tick. So Body and Phelps back. That was going to give, as a result of that, Molotov kill. G2 the lead at 5 0. Taco has uh, apparently. Taking some speed. Just bouncing around. Can't calm down, Henry. Well, we'll see if he can. He's going to have to step up going into this situation. It is a four on three in favor of the French side. Taco low, 34 HP. They've got one smoke to work with here. No real control of the map. No one to drop down and Taco holding towards the other platform that is hoping they can get a pick in their favor. Just trying to run the clock down and waiting for a CD to make a mistake. That shouldn't be happening. Kenny is patrolling A by himself. He doesn't have to give much away there. On the top middle, get some intel, and it'll be very comfortable. So his teammates can focus on the B side of the map. We'll push with Fur. They need the entry, that goes without saying. But they pay me, so I'm gonna tell you anyway. Body waits, falls back, good angle, but Cold and Fur get two. They're gonna take down Body as well. He goes low. They've turned this round from a four versus three to a one versus three as Kenny. The MVP has it all to do. Bomb's going to be planted in behind the statue. He's Molotov off left side, which means the planter has to stay on top of the statue. But he has an angle, and Kenny, I think, is going to back off this and give up. I think the money's fine, but he's just playing the long game. Yeah, money's more than fine. They've got 12 7 on Apex. Yeah. So it's still right. It's just playing the number game. It's making sure, yes, he could go in there, maybe find a couple of frags, but him saving his AWP just sets them up further, looking at the bigger picture there. So he gets to save a Tech 9 as well. AWP, he's got a smoke, a flashbang, and a diffuse kit. So it's worth saving up. SK Gaming, great recovery, though. That was a three on three situation towards that B bomb side, which presumably would favor the CTs. They'd have the crossfires enabled there as well. SK were lacking grenades, but Fur, like I said, if you inquire so far in this game, he finds two very crucial frags making his way into that B side. He was um, fallen as well, chiming in. Kenny Esto doesn't really fancy that situation. Saves his orb. His money isn't amazing, right? So if he goes down, he would have to go down to $0 to actually get the orb out in the armor. So it's a good save by him. The replay is called Zero. Fur, doing some work. Fur, great shots there. Take down body and MPK. So round number seven. That's the lost bonus gone now. So SK Gaming needs to be very careful here. After the reinvestment of the grenades, they do take themselves down to uh, less than $1,000 per player on average. Losing this with almost guarantee an eco going forwards. Kenny S. It's nice to follow him sometimes, see what he's up to. He's going to be towards danger once again. No orb available for the SK side. There's a double orb setup for G2. This is quite a scary double orb setup, I'd say. Turbulent at times. Shoxie and Kenny S. It can be amazing or a little bit disappointing. We'll see what kind of combo turns up today. Yep. That's a question. That certainly works. Phelps goes down. Flash gets shocks out of dodge. He could have actually potentially take another shot down the lane there, but he plays the safe game and he's Molotov off. He's still going to hold the stairwell. Missed shot now. He's got to make a decision. 
Smoke's down on either side. He should be able to get to Chicken Coop. Not quite. The smoke didn't cover off Bolin's position, and he reacts quickly to take down Body behind the statue. So it all falls apart in transition for G2. Wow, Fallen's just going absolutely wild right now. Three headshots with that AK-47. We said he's been good at the AK so far. Finally taken down by Apex. MBK chimes in as well. It's going to be a two versus two situation. Fold and Fur and Cold Zera. Separated from the bomber, Cold Zero is in towards drop down, but MBK stepping up today. Been a very quiet tournament for him by his standards, at least. And now up the fur in towards the connected position as well. Bomb down on the upper platform. He's to find his first frag. MBK of another stellar shot there. And Fallen, I'd like to see the replay from his POV, how he got those frags. He's been great with the AK 47. Unfortunately, though, the bomb does not go down. So it's going to be a really difficult round for SK going forward. And here's the replay right now. Fallen pushing for that smoke. How confident is he? He has those first two frags, but then it falls apart. And Shoxy will open things up with the AWP, AWP shot towards the upper platform. 6 1. A force by though, Matthew. UMPs and two Tech Nines with the flashbangs and smokes. Yeah, they're going all in. Back into this game. Drop down, and BK has to back off the window due to the flashes. The timing is good. Shots only manages one. Flash again, body's in the open. He's gotten to Hobbit Hole though, and he still finds an angle that works out. As it is going to be NBK to take down Taco, swinging back into the mix. So they stand against the force by rather unscathed. It was an interesting start that they got three players down drop so quickly, but they just yeah. couldn't handle the position at all. Didn't Hobbit. really have the range or the grenades really to do much with it. And set body doing a decent job there. Gets a couple of frags and brings round number seven in favor of G2 here. SK have only one round so far. That's been another eco here. Most spend is at second stage at $1,900. So brought in Desert Eagles PG50s. Quite a fast and loose game from SK so far. I haven't seen that execution too much. We've seen it once with the Tech Nines, not too much with the gun rounds themselves. They've been relying on Fallen just firing crazy opening frags, and it's going to be tackled to go down first here from what we can see. MBK takes that shot. That's on the platform, and it's going to be quite a clean round here. Objective for SK, maybe get the bomb down, just cause a dent in the economy for G2 overall. One or two kills would do, but the money's looking pretty decent for them. Apex with 10k. 6k on MPK as well. Shoxi and body are low, so they want to win this round as cleanly as possible. MPK might be dropped here, but just about survives. Not bad. Not bad. That'll do. Phelps really not in this. Deagle might get one. Ooh. Walks into it. What a one it was. Placement. I thought it was going to be a little bit low, but the steps apparently work in his favor. He knows what he's doing, Henry. He seems to be more integrated now, obviously winning at IEM Sydney. But the first few tournaments, it was it seemed Phelps was a bit of a loose cannon with them. Yeah, they're obviously still working everything out. The fact is, when they come into tournaments and they say, we're not even sure what our best map is right now, suggests there's still work that has to be done. But uh, yeah, it's looking better and better every tournament. 3-0 so far, but it's his group stages, right? It's difficult to gauge how good they are. We saw this from G2 as Star Ladder. They turn up and get the 3-0 in the group stages. Then they just fall completely flat when the actual playoffs begin. And from going from one of the hot favorites of the tournament from the form we saw in the group stages, and it's almost a disappointing tournament overall when they got to the playoffs. So it's, you have to take the group stages always with a pinch of salt on these best of ones, and it's always very up and down results, you know. This is kind of clever because Shock's just cleared all these positions, so he's actually just kind of following him along. I think because he knows that almost wants. To, well, I guess he could survive. He's got two K. Yeah, he's got the M4, so he can get armor with his teammates next round. That's fine. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing at first. Like he wanted to go for the exchange to get another kill, but really he's just creeping along and had a chance to fire at Chalks and didn't take it. So yeah, so he's still got two K, so he can buy with his teammates and get armor and grenades as well. It's absolutely fine. So it's uh, not a bad situation to be in. So a one, no all for Fallen once again. You can see how they've been limited with these four spies and lack of bomb going down. I think they've only had it down once after round they won. That was in round number six. So round number 10 now, 8-1 in favor of G2. This is a T-sided map still, technically. It's a lot more balanced since the addition of the CT steps. But overall, SK with their form so far, and considering G2 has lost to Immortals as well, the second best Brazilian team compared to SK. I think they'd be running away with this one, but they haven't really turned up today. Still early days, though. SK can still get 8-7, and it's another buy round for them. Oh, flash. Apex will back off to hold the angle of the smoke. Fires into it with the silenced M4, so it won't reveal any tracers, but he is going to be pursued. I'm going to set up oh, slightly higher. See above the smoke as it dissolves, but set up for smokes very likely toward the doors, or are they going to back off? Bombs going back, so perhaps they're just going to play a default and try and evaluate B as well. Long air control has been obtained. They've left Phelps there, boosted up. 
he has a choice now. He can either show presence and go for an attack on this side of the map and try and force a rotation, or he waits for the backstab after his teammates are fully committed towards B. He comes in, goes through the connector, but look at the CTs towards middle. They're actually hunting for information here and pushing through the mid doors. They haven't discovered him, but it's a nice shot to get damage inflicted. Just about survives there. This is going to be quite a messy round from both sides. Spray down, MBK takes Taco. Good body. This yeah, is good positioning. Past. Good timing. He's gone all the way past Phelps, who stays out at long. What's he's Phelps doing nothing. at this point? Phelps has been way too slow, way too long, because body's there. Fur runs back and thinks he's safe. Useless. Yeah. You have to strike. As soon as they started losing frags, he needs to be running. Knife out. Get the connector. Let's try and get part of this round. Not eight seconds, dude. Like, you're saving. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And Cole just has to hope no one checks inside of drop, which they're going to do right now. Jumping in. Gets the first, but there'll be a follow-up shortly. Kenny. And one above. Down. He's down. Yep. He manages to get Kenny at the very least, but yes, down he goes. So Phelps really so rules Phelps, himself out and no money for that. He's no got to hold everything. No money for Phelps or Cold Zara. That's a good point. It was after the round, yep. Yeah. Phelps, that was really disappointing for him. He does so well to get that position. He expended so much utility, right? To get him in that position, he had to use like five flashbangs, smokes, Set, uh, Molotovs, excuse me, towards him, getting boosted up as well. The idea is, okay, cool. You're boosted up here. You're waiting for CD rotation. Get him some information. We'll go back towards B. We'll get a pick. Then you come in. So he needs to be, as soon as they start interacting with the CTs, and as soon as they say, oh, they're pushing us. We're getting jewels here. He needs to get a knife out, at least challenging for rotation. So he's still in that boost position after three or four frags have gone down in the round. He needs to be part of that round. He, he needs someone a bit more assertive in that situation. He's known to be an aggressive player. Where is that aggression? He's very tentative there and had to save no money. That's a almost useless save because his teammates can't really do much of this. I can see them force buying though. They're going all in Matt once again. This could be a really bad call. They've got one M4 and we're going, okay, they're not going all in from what I can see. They're actually leaving three players of uh, about $1,000. So with the maximum loss, it's not the end of the world. I thought they're going to buy all the nades as well. It is get Tech Nines, Armour, Phelps got the M4. Let's see how this works out for them. Looking for double digits here. G2 could be 10-1. Apex waiting for the gap, sees it, backs off, nade down, and a smoke as well. He's going to put himself in danger rather than get out. Bit bad smoke, though. Yeah. Goes back out and thinks about escaping, and he gets caught off by a Tech-9, held by Fallen. Try and make up for it. No one can push down the danger. They get him through the wall. That's not bad. That'll do. Another gun grabbed. Three in total now to go along with Phelps, who had the M4, and they've actually got a chance in the round as a result of it. It's always those sort of situations. You think G2 now, they can lock this victory in, up against the pistols, and they've got one M4 to work with. It always seems those rounds that elude these sort of teams. And now SK looking assertive here in round number 11. I need to get three guns, like he said. Lots of time to play with here. I'm going towards drop down. They'll make some noise. Body will hear it, but he pulls the nades out, and it's going to be the window. It's one. Look at the second frag. It'll be difficult, Ooh. but a lovely shot there from Body. He helped Bifer. He's fallen. Takes down body. Brings it back to a winnable, although not really, situation in one versus two. And MBK says no as he gets in position immediately. 10 1 G2. We could have two straight one sided matchups. So, yeah, they get maximum loss bonus. So no bomb going down once again. This is beautiful. He's great. Well done, body. And it's going to be 10-1. Round number 12. And like I said, they forced bought, well, not so they partial bought into the, the previous round. They do get the all-power this time, but they are lacking utility. Phelps, no nades whatsoever. Um, similar story for Cold Zero. He had to opt for the UMP instead on the T side. Not ideal. Fallen, though. First time we've seen him with the AWP on the T side. Let's see what he can do here. He needs to try and find this opening frag, but it's the double orb setup once again. Shoxi and Kenny S, that formidable duo. Shoxi towards Chicken Coop for now. Throws a flashbang in. Looks like he wants to go for a pick on the other platform. Sneaks past Fallen, and the duel will begin momentarily. I think he spotted him. Yep, certainly did. And dead. Bye, Fallen. Thanks for playing today. Unfortunately, your numbers did not come up in the lottery. Okay, backs off. Gives Drop a bit of space, so Shocks will watch the D-Box side of it. Furr's gotten down there, and MBK trying to rotate around to compensate for just that. Gets met from the window. So good read from Furr as he heard him wrapping around. Well, four and four. It's limited now. One smoke remaining for the SK side. What's going in? We can see, I think it's Phelps once again in that long A area. This time being a bit more aggressive. He can't just sit there in that boost position. Or we could just find Apex at a horrible time at this point. And he deployed. Phelps, does he push through? I don't think so. Has to go now. But once again, the frags are starting to go down. This is the role he needed to do before, but he might be a little bit too late once again for bailing him out. Shot Kenny to take Taco. But look at Phelps. 
could actually win this. Back's turned from both of them. Oh, he fires immediately. If he'd waited, if he'd walked in, he may have gotten Apex timing. You never know if he'd turn or not, but he's now got it down to one-on-one -on -one spots. His foot goes back, and it's a straight duel at this point. Apex has managed to shuffle over to the right side. Hide Apex. His right, excuse me, Phelps is left, but you're right. Apex just has to hide six seconds, get the lineup, and he misses the shot. Phelps is able to win it. They'll get the second round finally, but they do it with only one surviving. And why doesn't he just hide him behind the tree at that point? That was insane. Yeah, that did not have to be a fight. I think he got a little confident that he would win it. I guess he's just hoping that Phelps' knife out tries to get towards the bomb. He hides behind the tree there. He's, he's guaranteed a duel. And he's got more chance of winning, and the times will be super low as well. He could even make it into drop down. I guess at that point, he doesn't know if Phelps jumped back. It's unlikely considering the time remaining. I'll just got into a drop down and turtle up and try and survive at that stage. But there it is, SK Gaming. Phelps, like we said, managing to get towards long A this time, being part of the round, gets a connector with enough time to actually win the clutch situation. 10 2. Resets the loss bonus once again. Actually got the fifth stage once more. That's a 1v1 as well. Lose this round, coming to double EK for SK. Falling with the opening shot this time. Takes down Kenny S towards danger. Nice work from him, a five and four. SK not out of this one. Or game, I should say, just now. Uh, okay, gets taken down by Fur. It's Taco that will hold the angle inside of the smoke. Once again. Phelps makes them towards danger, and his teammates just in a default formation around now. This time, going to be joining Phelps. We'll probably see a full execution towards A. That's a little flashbang towards B, just to take the attention away from that side of the map. Hopefully, hold a rotation there with Shocks and Body on that side of the map. They've got the five on the three right now. So, just grouping up, choosing one area, presumably A as well. It's likely there's going to be one player on that side of the map. 34 seconds remaining. This should be quite a clean round for SK overall. And this Apex goes absolutely wild. Not known to be an AWPer. Not there you go, get rid of it. to be an AWPer. <laughs> yeah. Miss one shot, I'm out. Yeah. Thanks very much. I'll go back to the gun I'm good at. He's going to have to be very good. It's five players oh. walking in, and Fur's already got him down. Knew exactly where he'd gone. Checked it, covered it off, and Taco gets the safe plant in behind the hut. Shocks. It's going to be greeted by Cold waiting on the off wing. Body. Peeks out, sees him, and... It's over to the M4 instead for Cole to try and take the long duel. Furs low on HP. Spots him, but doesn't come back in because he'll go down. They need to keep all the guns up. SK winning two in a row. Exactly what they need if they want to make this toward 10-5, which is winnable. Again, you said it is a T-sided half, but it's still SK, and they're capable of great things. Yeah, that Phelps clutch has got them right back into this game. It's actually gone to them two rounds in a row. And G2 now feeling the pressure in terms of the money. You get the double orb set up as well, but still Apex. He's down to the shotgun. MBK is just on the CZ. I think he had to drop an orb over. So they're really investing everything they've got into this double sniper setup as well. So UMP, CZ, Max 7. They could have got more in terms of rifles, but they wanted to allow Kenny S to give it his first pick. Shoxy towards middle this time as well. So he's being a bit more proactive. He's trying to make something happen at the start of the round. Looking above that smoke, cannot spot anything though. So he still needs to probably commit to this and see what he can do, considering the lack of firepower on his team. And smoke so coming in and take away his vision slightly. That's actually towards danger. So he can stick around for a little bit. Falling though, I think he may have spotted him. Oh, there it is, takes him down. Right, nice repeat. Precise. Quick. Convincing. Cold Zero is going to take down MBK though. And again, they find themselves in a favorable situation, if I'm not mistaken. This is it for the buys on G2, so they could yep. well find 10-5. It's looking that way. Took them a while to wake up, but they got there, and Kenny might put them back to sleep as he gets Taco. Still held his position in toward Chicken Coop. Molotov's gonna try and put him out. He's got a smoke in front that allows him to fight forward aggressively. Fallen just waiting for it, finds his second kill in the round, and Apex is gonna try and save the AWP. Yeah, Apex already really can do, like we said. Not an AWPer, won't be going for this clutch, and we'll see whether he can hold on to it. It's currently by the connector for now. I'd say he really wants to get a little bit further away. It's not gonna really matter if he finds kills or not. It's the last round going to the next one, so it's interesting that he's holding towards the connector. I'd just be well out of this. Your team's got no money next round. It's really not worth trying to get one kill here. But he's got no armor. Open hand, one flashbang. And doesn't know that these will be hunting him down. So he should be absolutely fine. But that's actually gaming once again. Fallen. Slower play this time. As soon as you get the orb out, it seems like he's hitting the shots again and taking out Kenny S. That time was Shoxy as well. They went all in in that double orb setup. Didn't really work out for them. Only finding a couple of frags. But that was down to NVK with the CZ. Managing to kill one and think cold zero as well. And then Kenny S with the first orb shot. You can see how overwhelmed he was. Once he was towards Chicken Coop, Molotov lands on him. He's already deployed his smoke like five seconds before as well. So frustrating to watch that for him. 
and it's going to be the only thing of the round. Looks like Apex will save his AWP as well. So yeah, SK right back into this game, Matt. Like, he was looking bleak at 10-1. I thought, okay, this is it. G2 finally woken up in this tournament. Here's the repeat from Fallen. Boom. You can see Kenny is burning alive on the replays. Yeah, the, he put the smoke out early, which was an interesting thought. Unfortunately, it went forward of where the Molotov landed, and then his intention to use it aggressively didn't really work. Apex gets towards danger in our last round of the half. They will force buy in, quite obviously, so they'll go with the UMPs from us and then the saved AWP, which Kenny now has. First got Apex down immediately. Now they're waking up. Yeah, looking more convincing. Ooh, oh. Kenny. That's quite aggressive considering the call was just made there pushing the corner. It goes spar off with an AWP. And Cold Zero's got NBK down as a result. This round's done as well. We are going to get our 10 5 half, Henry. Certainly are. This will be very important. Double digits on the city side. Still a great half. Both teams will be happy, all things considered. After going down 10 1, it finished the half 10 5. SK Gaming will be happy with their recovery. A bit more assertive towards the end, there, especially when they kind of sorted the financial situation out. I think that was a massive problem for them overall. Lots of force buys, lack of bombs going down as well. As soon as they stabilized, got the AWP out. First time they hit some great shots as well. Fallen this is the AK round. Looked amazing. We said 10 5. Both teams will be happy with that. It's going to be a very important set. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, Lenovo Legion, Xfinity, ESEA, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, Logitech G, and Zowie. Well, a look at either side of things as we switch sides and start off halftime number two. Not only is everyone playing on Zowie monitors, but all of those computers, Henry, are oh. lightning quick because they're on i7 quad, quad cores, excuse me. Oh. Which is why the server conditions are excellent. That's that's important. The servers are i7, the PCs are i7. It's the best you can possibly get. Go get them if you want to be as good as these guys. That's a bit much. Yeah. That a bit much? Well, a bit too much. let's not give anyone some <laughs> false hopes here. They'll be, they'll all be calling Intel and saying, "Why do, I'm why am I still out, Silver I'm Two? It. I'm going all in. Why am I still a Silver Two? Well, it's not Intel's fault, son. Maybe you should. Uh, put but it would help. It would certainly help. It would. But it is SK that's had the change of momentum going in their favor. As we mentioned, they made a comeback from a 10-1 situation to bring this 10-5, and now with pistol, they could find themselves in the game. Collins. Oh, that off testament to it. But Fur is found, and Kenny and Shocks go to work. That duo that won the dual tournament, the That's HTC right. 2v2, yeah. seem to be stepping up again here. NBK gets cold, and it is down to fall. And the man who got the kill to start it off way over toward B you know, is limited at the doorway. So G2 find 11 rounds already on a T side. Absolutely. Very fast and assertive pistol there from G2, straight toward that A site. Looked like SK Gaming would run away with it. They got their first frag there, five on four, but Kenny S and Shock, like you said, going to town towards Long A. That player boosted up in the CT Long A area as well, but his head blown off with a 180 shot. That looked tremendous. 11 5, of course, the force by coming in from SK Gaming, following the AWPer, of course. He only gets a Deagle, no armor, wants to make sure he gets a sniper rifle in the first gun round. That's if they do not win this one. It's always a chance, considering three Mac 10s on the T side. Second round by. This is a little bit peculiar. This could come back to haunt them. The Mac 10 against armor, especially you know you're up against armor. Not known to be the best. It's uh, a cheap weapon, sure, but the UMP is not that much more expensive. I'd say you almost definitely want that. This could actually be a bit of a blunder from G2. Oh. It's 
fallen back. It's Apex that'll catch Fur, who did get a kill on his body before him. It's going to be straightforward. Processional at this point. Kenny manages to survive. He has a hat trick. You know what a hat trick is, Henry? We well, score three goals in hockey. Well, it's football as well. Do they use it in football? Okay, well, hockey's cooler, so we're going to go with hockey. Hat trick hero. Mm hmm. Isn't yeah. that the next hockey game tonight? There is, yeah. Pens versus Preds, and if the Pens play as bad as they did in game one with the first period aside, Preds should win that. Well, I'm sure we'll be there later. Live from Pittsburgh. Bar. <laughs> Pitt yeah, Pitt Pittsburgh, not the bar. We'll, we'll be at the bar. Okay. Fair enough, 12-5, and it's going to be a full eco here for SK. Looking down the barrel of 13-5 against G2, have had a real rough tournament. As we said, most notably dropping to Cloud 9. 16-4, no one really saw that coming in Inferno of all maps. So that just goes to show you how difficult this tournament has been for G2. Not really set the world on fire as of yet. They've won uh, DreamHack Tours, really a premier tournament in itself, but it was, at least it's on home soil. A bit of morale boost, I guess. Just talking over this round, it doesn't really mean that much. SK can, can really do much there, I'm afraid. 13-5. Now, let the games begin, Matt. Here's a replay of a MAC-10 kill. Let's have a look. <laughs> You're so punctual. <laughs> a replay of a MAC-10 kill. There it is. That was great. <laughs> Worth the replay, in my opinion. Hey, listen. <laughs> Don't knock on production, okay? I'm just saying. They'll make your mic sound really weird. Or just mute you. Well, MAC-7s, UMPs, <laughs> they've fallen. AWP holds there against that M4 kill, takes down MBK, tried to have a little fast play. This is another bonus round that we described in the first half. You've got some SMGs left over, MBK trying to be a bit sneaky there. Trying to find the unarmored heads of the potential CTs on the other side. There are two available to him, but he gets taken down by Cold Zero with the M4A4. Didn't drop too much HP as well, so he'll be surviving. Just leaving the drop room open now, but this is an A-side contact play, and Fallen could get caught with his pants down, but not today. Good shot to take out Apex. Gonna continue to watch him towards stables. He gets still tripped up by the shoulder peak and the jumping shots is gonna push through the smoke and gets away somehow. With damage done, there's still a man down. Two, in fact. No if kits. I count correctly. Maybe Blue needs to teach me how to count. His body's gonna plant the bomb in behind the hut. It's Kenny that catches off Phelps. That's very well done, and you're right. No kits. Every kill is significant for Three G2. Three of them in the vent room as well. Three, two, one, go. And Kenny says no to the first one. Kenny realizes there's more there and tries to find a better angle. Shock's underneath Falcon. He needs to be aware that Cold has made it in, and he certainly is. As they're going to shut down everyone on entry. No access for SK. We're going to find 14 rounds G2 relatively early. They got the first two kills as well there. Falling with the orb frag and Cold Zero and MDK early on. They had that contact play towards long A, and it is burst out. They probably had intel that Fallen normally plays there by himself as well. Top middle, bit of a gamble. Didn't have protection from long A area. Hits that first shot, sure. But then he has to fall back towards connector. The utilities deployed. G2 overwhelmed. Like I said, no kits. I Many SK don't really have time to go for a full retake there. To push through the choke angles, uh, choke points to stay really quickly, and then he has every single shot. They had three players in that vent room and got punished for it. Has to be a force by him. 14-5, UMPs, two max sevens as well. And no kits, of course. A little bit of utility to play with here, but this is a real dicey run. I'm not sure how you win these ones, but the Mag 7 always seems to deliver on Cobblestone. Something about that weapon in this map. We'll see if it works out for them. Fallen with that aforementioned shotgun in middle. Same story for Fur, who's a long A. So shotguns deployed on the A side of the map. UMPs. Looks towards B. What is that peak he's doing with the crouching? I don't know. I, 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 okay, I like it. He's just hoping someone's gonna walk around the corner at the right time, so he's yeah. trying to crouch peek and pre-fire. Just wants a pixel then. Just an awkward course. angle for the T. Yeah. It's kind of funny that you're that repetitive. I'd get sick of doing it. I'd get bored and then just walk out carelessly and die. He's still doing it. Very committed to it. My pinky finger would hurt by now from pressing shift. Or control. Or control, you're right. Actually, I don't even remember what I have. I know what I'm playing, I don't actually think about it. Muscle memory. Phelps does take down at least one, swinging out from the flames, but he'll burn alive to Apex as MBK gets Taco. It does mean they have to trade back, and they manage at least one, so we stay level. However, it's two shotguns and a UMP against the AK of Shocks, which has good position all the way deep in the site past the statue. He's swinging in to watch Evox. Spray transfers not successful. It's Kenny that gets the kill, but we find map point for G2. It's group stage. A group of death when. Group A map. It's definitely provided some interesting results. Up and down, some 
very one-sided affairs throughout. SK Gaming just reminded one at home with 3-0 here, and I think the stat was yesterday, they didn't drop a single T round in day one, which was kind of insane. Like, that's kind of unheard of, really. Um, but now, looking down at G2, have had a really rough tournament, 15-5. They have to give another force by here. Max Evans, UMPs before him. He's got the scout, and his blows off. Kenny has had to kick things off. Why not? Yep. They're back. The boys are back in town. I don't know if anyone knows that song, so I can't sing it now. Cold Zero is going to take down MBK. Buddy, the smoke is tanked up. He's got to be very, very careful. And somehow with a flash, he thinks he's fancy enough to find more than just a kill. He goes for two. Comes out with none. It's going to be Apex. And has to clutch back, but it goes down to 14 immediately. So uh, I would say we've got at least one more. Yeah, get rid of the guns. Doesn't want to give them up. Goes to the CZ instead. And he's just going to be a sacrificial death at this okay hmm. we should have kept the AK. <laughs> well he was taking the scout to throw it over the wall too by the way sure. he's getting rid of everything get rid of the scout you're not having this well 15 6 g2 with plenty of cash and uh apex doing some damage down a couple of kills it's phelps taking them down a different platform nice work by him could use the angles using the smoke to his advantage as well it's going to take nine rounds in a row now for sk just to force overtime very unlikely but if ever there was a team to do it this would be it they never give up, never surrender. We'll see whether they can actually do the possible here. Fur uh, kicks it off nicely there with the first kill on Apex once again. Fallen waits in behind the wooden door. Kenny with the AWP crosses the angle. MBK will lead off. And it's fur tagged up so heavily early in the round. That's going to try and hold the angle, can't do it. NBK with the shot, opening up. Missed shots for Fallen, dead absolutely when Body comes in as the second man to the equation. Could be the end of the game there alone because it's only one kill so far for G, excuse me, for SK as G2 is finding the entrance. However, Phelps gets one back. But Kenny, it's oh. down. He's got to be very careful. Taco just continues to fire in the same position. No hiding in behind the stable wall. And the HP now does favor. The CTs. Oh, what a shot. That's very good. HP is gone now. Take that back. There is 11 more for G2 to work with. Well, it's match point. Taco in a two versus one. Bomb makes his way towards the A side. Taco looking to push through the smoke, but Shoxi takes him down. Bye bye, SK. It's to be 16 6. What a performance. What a turnaround after losing to the lesser. Brazilian team, Immortals, G2 bounced back with a 16 6 victory over SK. have looked the most formidable team so far in the tournament. 3-0 so far in the groups, and they can't turn up on Cobblestone. And if they'd won that game, they would have been straight through to the semi-final, guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed top. And now, hi. I think they'll still make it through. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hola. How you doing, all right? Bonjour. So, what does that mean? This means Group 8 has got very interesting indeed. It was already kind of back and forth. Was well, it is the Group of Death. We couldn't go through it with a straightforward. Well, exactly, right? So that's exciting. We've had some interesting results today. SK Gaming, not as strong as yesterday, it seems. Maybe it was a bit of a flash in the pan for them. That's not the same team we saw yesterday, I have to say. It's not at all, I have to say. Now, interestingly, Go on. Um, there's a man on the desk who, Ooh. unlike me, I needed the makeup artist to fill this divine beard in to make me look like I a did. real man. Mine was fine. Yours was fine, and so too was Jason Moses O'Tools. Listen, when Henry gets his going, we're all going to be put to shame. It's, <laughs> it's going to be a dark day. It's going to take a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's already working his way up towards November. I mean, yeah, he is. He's, he's, he's getting an early start. Yeah. Uh, welcome back to the Xfinity Analyst Desk. This is the ESL Pro League Season 5 Finals, Day 2. Uh, that's that's a nice win for G2 there. We, we talked a lot about how they had been disappointing leading up to this. Before this map, it had been zero T-rounds lost for SK. They lost 10 T-rounds in the first half. It was a much needed win for G2 yeah. as well uh, in a tough situation on the on the table too. But that's why I pointed out that I don't think this was a good veto process from SK. I think they were maybe a bit overconfident with their performance. Now, sure, SK was undefeated on Cobblestone with this lineup on land coming into the game. But as I said, you look at the map pool for G2. Cobblestone is the only map that they could get because, you know, SK is going to veto out... Uh, Nuke, they're not going to play like overpass after after the game against Immortals most likely. So that's the only map they can get. They're very confident on still. They're seven and one themselves on land, and I really do feel strongly that SK should have gone for either train or cash. Both both of those maps, even though they're not as strong for SK uh, as, as Cobblestone is, 
I think they would have had a better chance when you just look at where the confidence is for both of these teams uh, right now against G2. Yeah, I think the differential between the maps in terms of how strong they are is just like very, it's much smaller on, on a map like Cobble than what it would have been on Cash, from what we've seen out of G2 at least so far. So for, for G2, in many ways, it was a dream veto. That uh, was the best case scenario for them, and they took full advantage of it. And we talked about how you know they, they only needed that one guy to kind of get things going for them. It wasn't Apex, it wasn't Kenny, it wasn't Shox, but it was... It was my boy. It was your boy, the yes. natural born killer. NBK, he has had a pretty terrible tournament leading up to this point, but I think it's safe to say that he kind of made up for it. Because no, you know, he broke your heart on day one. But I know, he did. But he he's, did he's coming into you know, he's into a warm he's been, embrace now. He's been hitting up now. the ACA pugs. He's been he's been hitting up the ACA rank ass. He's right. doing a good job. It's, it's clearly working. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, he he obviously had a great game. But what's very important is which position does he play? And he plays around the drop zone. Yeah. You could see a number of times him holding drop by himself, getting a kill or two before dying, which is a lot of work because for SKT side, drop is actually one of the most important parts of the map that they hit. Right. And they go for that B execute. That's where Phelps sometimes uh, goes by himself and he actually makes the difference on that flank, getting great timings to get that kill and kind of split the defense from the CTs. In this game, that couldn't happen. And also in, so in some of those rounds, it, that, it, it did seem like Phelps was a bit too passive on his flanks, as Henry pointed out during the cast, like he had yeah. to be a bit more assertive in those rounds because he was in no position to help out his team once things start going wrong. Yeah, and I mean, now this is this is with SK. I mean, they mentioned on the desk as well. This, this still keeps this group wide open uh, at the same time. That could have that's could have secured them moving on into the semifinals. Still a very good chance they'll be going through, but uh, leaves some possibilities for movement. Um, let's touch a little bit. We'll get a little bit of a B stream update because this was kind of crazy. I didn't even I didn't follow this map at all throughout that match. Um, it was Envy beating Immortals 16 to 2. So we just saw Immortals on beat uh, what G2. Map? That was that Cobble? 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 Was it Cobble as well? Yeah. 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 Um, so Frenchie's having success on Cobble. Yeah, Frenchie's loving Cobble right now. Yeah, no. Chateau. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It's right, you know, back alley for them. You're pretty so much. proud of that it's one. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the home turf, Jason. It's yeah, the home turf. Right. Um, but but either, I mean, how, how does that how does that kind of happen? Is that just a bad map for Immortals? I guess perhaps. But I mean, it used to be to a pretty beat decent G2 map. and then go into something like that. It used to be a pretty good map for them, uh, honestly. That's right. Yeah. Like, like and, and again, uh, for a lot of the Brazilian Brazilian teams, the map that they kind of make their stand on was initially a Mirage, and then they you know, transitioned into Cobble, and they played the similar way uh, a lot of times. What we saw from the Pro League season, or the regular season, really, with Immortals is just non-stop aggression towards that V-bomb side. They would rush that happily 15 times in a row, wouldn't care, you know, it's, you know, they wouldn't have a single worry, and it would actually work out pretty well, because Lucas would do... Uh, Lucas and Steel, actually, are pretty pretty solid at finding openings as they run through smokes uh, on right. B Plateau early on in the round. That creates space for, you know, FNX to play that position towards drop room earlier. Well, it's, it's kind of funny as well because the last Pro League Finals, they went into it with like an undefeated record on Cobble and then dropped yeah. like three maps. So in some <laughs> Pro League Finals, not kind to Immortals Cobble. <laughs> Let's check a look at the updated standings for Group A at the moment. We'll see how all this has shuffled things around. Three and one, SK and FNX tied at the top. G2 and Envy tied at two and two. So this, this makes things a little bit more structured, a little bit more uh, organized, I guess is the best way to put it. But still, a lot of teams tied, a lot of chances for tiebreakers in, in here at the end of this group. Uh, anything jumping out to you guys? I mean, the French team's kind of making a late surge. Yeah, late surge from the French, but it also means that Fnatic have an opportunity to, uh, to you know, get a grip on, on a first yeah. spot. They're going up against G2 in the next matchup. Obviously, that's going to be massive for both teams involved. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting again if G2, you know, if this was a flash and a pan from them, or if they've actually find uh, found their stride a little bit. Also, I mean, something that's very interesting here is you look at the last matchups that you have. SK is playing Envious, most likely. Let's assume that they're yeah. going to, to win that game. They're four in one. We have the Fnatic G2 matchup, in which uh, if we have Fnatic win, for example, we could have a three-way three -way tie for that third place between uh, G2 Esports, Envious, and also the winner of Cloud9 Immortals. So yeah. that, that that's uh, uh, something that's very, very possible. Again, we could also have a bunch of three two ties if G2 beats Fnatic and if we have an upset in, in terms of Envy beating SK. A yeah. lot of possibilities. We're going to head to a quick break, but when we return, it's going to be that last match in Group A. That's going to figure out if we have the tiebreakers, who's going to be playing who. So stay tuned for the resolution of Group A.
Athletes aren't just born. They're molded from the core, a core of strength, a core of laser focus, a core that can handle anything, a core that sweats the small stuff, a core that's the difference maker, game changer, world shocker. You see, hard work makes the athlete, but the edge of a core i7 processor makes you unstoppable. Get your team apparel now at shop.eslgaming.com.
Welcome back to the ESL Pro League Season 5 Finals. One more match in Group A. Well, actually, three matches going on at once. So on this stream, we are going to be featuring G2 taking on Fnatic. And then there's also going to be two other matches being played at the same time. That's uh, SK, SK Envy and Immortals in C9. So this is the schedule we have up there so you guys can check it out yourselves. Um, and this is going to determine whether we have the tiebreakers moving forward. But all three of those will be played at the same time. Uh, here, like I said, Fnatic, G2, and kind of... Uh, well, actually, first things first, we've, we've swapped someone out. We've, we've brought in the beaver. Yeah, look, Jason, it's great to be here. I've just heard there's some standing desk rules, and I'd like it if uh, either of you can give me the the rundown. Okay, so you're not allowed to not allowed to sway, no moving. No swaying. Yeah. What if I have a natural sway? No Dean Martin fans in the house. <laughs> natural. Right. I, I don't think the swaying is I'll in any way acceptable. I'll stand as still as humanly possible. Yeah. All right, cool. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, let, let's just get right into it. Fnatic G2, two teams that, you know, have had, had their ups and downs so far in the summer. Let's we'll start with Fnatic, bring that roster up. Um, one of the big things, obviously, whenever we discuss these guys is the resurgence. Are these players going to find back their form? And at the moment, it seems like Dennis, who, I mean, even at the end of the Fnatic roster and, and when, when they were performing very well at the beginning of last year, Dennis was still someone who was so consistently at the top of the scoreboard. He's still doing that here today. And then it just seems like everyone else is kind of stepping up in turn alongside him. Yeah, just looking at the way they played against Cloud9 in that new game, just aggression all over the place, auto shotguns, you know, flush on the Talking about no respect. Yeah, yeah. That, that's like the, the fanatic of all. That's like vintage fanatic. And that's what you want to see from them. That means they're, they're comfortable again. They're, they're feeling it. And, you know, prob perhaps that game yesterday against SK was just an off game for them. You know, the things didn't really go their way. Maybe they gave SK a bit too much. Respect. But when the fanatic is playing this way, that's when they're at their most dangerous. Yeah, and Dennis, you know, he's known for his uh, pistol master star right here that we're seeing. He's always, you know, getting multi frags on the pistol rounds and winning the pistol round for your team by getting a 3K. Or, you know, sometimes we even see him get amazing aces. Is a huge step in the right direction to kick off a half. Um, just to go back to that JW thing with the shotgun, right? Like I watched him the other day was on train by an auto shotgun on the CT side for the whole half, right? Yeah. Normally for Nuke, you can kind of, you can see how that makes sense. He can take jewels, but train, he was playing like Ivy aggressive with a shotgun, just getting I, it done. Well, I remember that. <laughs> he got three yeah. kills actually with an auto shotgun. And then he can pick it up and, up and get the ace as well. I, yeah. I mean, the question becomes, because we saw it on Nuke, and I, I kind of wanted to pose this question that we just didn't have the time for it is, it seems like a weapon that yes, it could be effective in certain situations, but if you get it rotating, if you get it moving, it's really out of its element and it seems like such an easy concept to just not go at the shotgun directly he's taking the mickey that's yeah. not a style that is is like if he can make it work fantastic to him please don't copy but, but, okay but on a map like nuke when you have a shotgun just in hut you know the shotgun essentially just has to play in hut isn't it just that easy to just go outside i mean it's obviously very highly situational no matter how much jw forces like the close range encounters he's still going to eventually find himself in a bad spot right. but you see that logic of you know that the shotgun is going to be hot or squeaky just go somewhere else well you can't really even allow one player to just have that effect on you what if they realize that and just leave JW on the upper bomb site and have the rest of the team cover other areas of the map, then it's going to be very, very difficult uh, for you to penetrate that defense. So it kind of goes both ways. Yeah, and uh, throughout this match as well, this is uh, G2 taking on Fnatic. Remember in the chat, let us know who you think is going to win. G2 or FNC is the code for Fnatic. Get that in the chat. We'll, we'll count all those votes. We'll have a good time with it. It'll be a good laugh. I can count pretty quickly. We got actually we got Blue out there doing the counting. <laughs> yeah, we do. Blue's on the counting. He's actually he's in the back on the laptop counting up all the votes. Yeah, yeah. he's good at that. He's gonna get up to like a. I think they said 2,000 some votes registered last time. He'll get up to 2,000. Sweet. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, yeah, their their opponents obviously going to be G2, and I mean we we've seen both ends of the spectrum with these guys. Um, so uh, I mean we we've talked a lot of if they're going to show up just seems to be the actual question, and we're just going to get right into the vetoes. So uh, bring up that map. We'll see where these two teams are going to be doing battle, and it is going to be on overpass. Historically, not really a French map, right? Like, this is interesting that they're allowing this one. This is through. a map in Kiev, though, that G2 looked phenomenal on against SK. This I is where they had Kiev, all those... So. Yeah, that's what. That's why I was bringing it up. I just really <laughs> wanted to take a dig at you. It's all about you, Chad. All about you. But no, this is where they had that CT aggression, like over towards Monster, through the sewers, everything in the mid-round. Yeah, the very, very, very strong mid-round aggression. But you look at Fnatic, and this is where they kind of run into trouble, because against Cloud9, it was up to Nuke and, and Overpass. Maps they don't really play. Here you can see they decide to live in Train and Overpass. So they're not feeling comfortable on their Nuke enough to play G2 on it. And, you know, you wonder whether maybe Fnatic would have been better off leaving cash in. I guess that's the, the biggest, like, you know, talking point, cash or overpass. What do they leave in? Because on overpass, they had some wins online, but on land, they just got defeated two times uh, by Navi at uh, Star Ladder, basically. So 
I, I think this must be like they obviously going into this matchup would have prepared for a specific map. It seems like they decided to go for overpass over cash. Yeah, to build on that, which is really interesting, you've got one team, which is G2, who lost overpass to Immortals earlier in the tournament and are confident enough to play it again, right? Over train, yep. happy to pick that. And then you've got the mindset of Fnatic, who are now are completely scared of Cache. Like, it just shows, I don't think you can ever be scared of a map if you think it's one of your better ones. And obviously, in this case, Fnatic don't think that the Cache is one of their better ones, whereas G2 are confident to play that map again. Yeah, I mean, what, what is the logic here, though? Because we, we talk all the time about how, you know, even if you're very, very good on a map, you kind of veto your opponent's map if they're strong on it as well. I mean, how, how do you kind of reconcile those two concepts? I think for G2 is probably, the veto is probably a bit more clear-cut. Inferno Fanatic's best map has to go. Mirage, we never play it, has to go. And then when you look at the remaining maps, well, Train, it's a better map for Fnatic than Overpass is. And Overpass generally is a good map for us, despite the result. So when you play SK, you don't want to play Overpass perhaps against them. Right. But against Fnatic, you're more than willing to do so. So again, the ball was kind of in their camp, and it was down to Fnatic to pick their poison, in a sense, between overpass or cash i agree with chad i would have preferred them play cash instead of overpass but maybe they have something in store for g2 yeah they looked at, they look really prepared right you know you see vugo with a tweet earlier about the ace up the sleeve with the nuke pick i don't know how much in that matchup that's an ace up the sleeve sure fantastic they, they played it i don't know how much of like a, a gambit pick it was for Cloud9. also we probably shouldn't forget the fact that Fnatic did get thrashed yesterday by sk on cash so <laughs> that yeah. loss in itself maybe was what tipped their map we to, to go for overpass instead of cash yeah, it could be another situation. Remember, I mean, the entire Ace of the Sleeve thing could have been the fact that Cloud9 with that nuke pick caught SK off guard, and then Fnatic laid the same trap for Cloud9 and they fell into it, so that's just, like, perfect. We've... The reverse trap card. Yeah, the reverse trap card. Yeah, I explained the Bear Cave to you before. doesn't work in <laughs> Maybe later in the tournament. No, let's try it again. I want to hear that again. Uh, so the Bear Cave is when we had the FaZe versus Astralis, right? They, yep. uh, they let Cobble through, they lost on it, only to play it again later in the tournament to win on it. It's the Bear Cave. I love it. As opposed to the Lion's Den. The Lion's Den is where you go into the other team's best map. You can coin these terms. Yeah, we, yeah. we can. Yeah, we'll we need some thing. kind of a dog. We need a third animal to come up with. Maybe uh, uh, the Beehive. <laughs> the beehive? <laughs> the, Say, what's the Beehive? I don't know okay. how we're going to work that into the something. Beehive would be pretty scary. We'll give it a thought yeah. during this map. We'll, we'll get the important questions answered in the next post game. Um, either way, I mean, it, it can't really actually be just so simple as to say with these two teams who shows up. Right, because that, that's still very much a question that we have about both of these squads is such an up and down affair, even throughout this very group stage, much less the last three months or so. When you see the, the Fnatic from Nuke, right, that's the Fnatic of 2016 that could play any map and with that style when they're just off, they could beat any team. G2 definitely has more routine, more practice, more structure on a map like Overpass, but you could see against Immortals, they won both pistol rounds and still couldn't really make that game really that much competitive, right? So uh, for G2, they really need to repeat the performance individually from Cobblestone, and that way, if Fnatic repeats their own performance from Nuke, we can have a, a very, very close game. But I think it's going to be very individual heavy. Yeah, do you think that either of you, do you think this is going to be a brawl? Because these are two teams who historically love the Force by, but have recently transitioned to more of a uh, current meta form of Counter-Strike by having strategies and that kind of stuff up their sleeve, execute and playing more of a standard style. Do you think it's going to be a brawl with the Force buys? Uh, I think it very well could be. And, I, and Chad, I love the initiative, asking questions, nice. getting the conversation started, but we're actually going to take it over to the casters. Sorry, Chad. It's going to be a Sadikus. It's going to be Henry sorry, G to take sorry. us away one more time. He's a keen one, that Chad. Yeah, he's, he's trying to get his name out there. Eager isn't? Beaver. It's yeah. perfect. Eager Beaver. It's That's perfect. Good. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, so the Beehive is when you walk into a stack, you okay. get swarmed, and the mouse trap is when you get flanked. Someone shut the trap. Yeah, that's good. We'll try and kind of work that into this cast this time. Do you know what the Jaden round is? I don't know. We're going to talk about coin terms. we got to get the most famous one of all. Though. Yeah, what's the Jaden round? Uh, we'll explain it later. Yeah, we'll well, if it happens, we'll bring it up. Yeah. It's yeah. very rare, but it does happen every now and then. Every now and then. Speaking of every now and then, we see Overpass, and it's G2 that just beat SK, who's very good on this map, on Cobblestone, playing it against Fnatic, who had a great morning, unlike yesterday. A lot better off against Cloud9 on Nuke. Absolutely. Really one -sided, well, I think it was the most one-sided game we've had so far. Well, G2 have already Thank played you. this map today against Immortals, and actually managed to beat SK, but lost to Immortals. That doesn't really true. make sense. No. But there it is. It was like 16... Uh, like 10, I think. I'm not, I'm not actually, I don't know. It was, it was a win. That's all I know. It was a win. Um, it was it was our 16 10 uh, in favor I of think Immortals. That's actually correct. Yeah, and um, it was an overpass. We didn't get to watch that game, so it'll be interesting to see how this one pans out. Like the analyst broke down, it's interesting that G2 is so confident to play after that defeat, but still, we'll see what they can bring to the table here. It's going to be Fnatic starting on the T side, ladies and gentlemen. Potentially our final map of Group A today. Could be some tiebreakers, depending on what happens. Uh -oh. We've got three games going on right now. Are we live? We are live. Uh, I don't think we are. 
Let's just have fun. Because Kenny S is not moving. Oh, there he is. Okay. So. All right, he's moving. I, I wasn't sure. He stood and spawned for an extended period of time and didn't really go anywhere. So he's actually still standing still over by Park Sign. Maybe that's where he's playing. I guess he is. Yeah, that, look, that looks like an angle held. He has also removed the silencer. Okay. What did you call that before? Uh... I, I, I don't, did I have a name for that? Yeah, it's probably not safe to say that word. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. We'll leave that. Four sets of you armor. You can do it to the M4 as well. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> four sets of armor for Fnatic One Smoke. Usually best if you do it at birth. Yeah, true. Much healthier. Yeah. Cleaner. Yeah, exactly. Better looking. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gets cold God. in Canada, you need a toque. <laughs> it's going Dennis. to be smoke into all day, and they're going to be committing this sudden apple looks of things. Yeah, they are. Apex in the corner. Dennis didn't quite spot him getting that close inside of the bathrooms. So he's just going to sit back. Apex is going to hope he walks in a closed line. They've got three on the A side, including Apex. So they're in good position, and on top of that, they're also pushing NBK through Monster. He's going to have all kinds of information and read as to exactly what Fnatic is up to as they start to backpedal ever so slightly, bring the bomb to Connector, and it looks like they actually are going to head over mm. toward the B site, which does mean, does mean, excuse me, NBK has to be a little bit cautious. He has gone back in the site, but he has no further information, which now means he's going to have to call for a rotation. He's the only one in the site, no one near the window yet. He's going to hear them working into the sandbags, and he wants to hold it off. Good headshot on Dennis. They now know he's there, but they're going to plant the bomb. He's going to hold the angle. Not only that, Shox has found Olaf trying to push through. It's on to JW. He goes down. And despite the plant, they'll get the defuse. Does mean Fnatic can buy early. So Fnatic there, getting decent map control towards long A, bathrooms and middle itself. They used the one smoke they had on towards the site near the truck area slash CT spawn. That was to pull some rotations, but it seemed to think as well. It actually didn't commit. They gave away their one smoke, which is fine. It actually worked quite nicely in the fact that they had four players from the CT side on the A side of the map. They go back towards B. It's a very fast map in terms of rotation. They're going to be connecting it towards B very quickly indeed. They get in there. It's only MPK waiting for them. But as you can see in the replay, he did a tremendous job of waiting for the monster tunnel as well. Lucky that no one came up that area. He was actually looking towards short. Nails two headshots. Bomb goes down short, but it's G2 picking up the round. And it looks like we're back to classic CS. A lot of teams being forced by in the second round for getting the bomb down on the T side this time. Full eco, AK's in the third. A chance for Kenny S to find a few frags here down 7 HP, but he wants a bit more, it seems. He finds two in total, Apex with a third as well, and a fourth. And it's going to be Crims now with just a P250 in the five versus one. Kenny S doesn't really want to go down here. It's not really making sense for him to stay in this party zone, but it looks up to you, fine. MBK gets the final kill there, 2-0 for G2. Very clean round indeed. A bit dicey for Kenny, but he manages to get two kills. 4-0 his current total. And here comes the AK-47 from Fnatic. So you can see how G2 adjusted their buy. They actually went quite a rifle-centric approach there. Managed to get four rifles in total. They're expecting these AKs coming out in the third round. So instead of having UMPs and Famuses and Scouts and stuff, they make sure they have enough for a full buy here going to round number three. So they can at least challenge the AK-47s. Olaf's going to head out toward long corner quickly. Actually, just sit to park to make sure there's going to be no aggression pushing through the early buy. We mentioned it. Five AK-47s. Means they've got to be cautious. Apex. I like the boost. That's actually quite nifty. Smoke down as well. Nearly spotted the gun barrel sticking through. Anyway, with it, two players out. Need thrown. Can't capitalize, but JW hits the second man in behind. Shocks. Good entry from Bonnie. We'll open up the doorway. Good trade from Shocks, but it's Crims that gets the upper hand, taking back NBK. Shocks will upgrade to an AK-47. But it is Fnatic that have the advantage. Absolutely. Bit of a brawl there. It's all to connect to position. Trades all over the place, but Fnatic coming out on top. Three from two now. And the bomb's still down toward the T spawn area. Fnatic, though, plenty of time. They don't have to rush at this point. Separating the CTs, of course. It will be Shoxy towards B side of the map. Kenny S is shortening on A. He's got a smoke, uses that towards bathrooms. And Fnatic, like we said, plenty of time to work with here. They still have smokes and flashbangs. So sticking together, making sure they trade. They should be absolutely fine on paper here. But Shoxi and Kenny S on the other side. The two star players for G2. Could be a bit of a fly in the ointment. We'll see what happens as we hit the 35 second mark. Looks like a contact play walking in towards B here. Don't even have to use an A necessarily, but Shoxi in a nice position. And actually will be taken down. Grims pre firing that angle, manages to overwhelm the B side, and that should be the round concluded. Should be. Should be. Bottom planted. Kenny S, they go against. Not on an AK, he's on an M4. And I think that M4 he's going to hold on to. Way out toward the T stairs. So Fnatic go 2 1. Early buy pays dividends. 
Yeah, absolutely. You could see G2 knew they were up against the ropes there. AK is coming out with the bomb down and the pistol as well. Means you get AK's armor and smoke grenades, and they had to try and be a bit more proactive at the start of the round to try and find that first pick. A nice boost, like you said, but didn't really amount to too much. We had two players coming from the T side towards the connector position itself, finding the advantage and slowing things down. Contact play towards B, took down shocks at short. Situation very comfortably. The Kenny S4 will save his weapon. The money should be absolutely fine for the CTs. Not amazing. They could bring another AWP if they want to. Kenny S saving the M4. He could drop that to Shoxy. Shoxy could drop an AWP over, which he will do. There it comes. And the game begins. Big round of either side. You can see Fnatic with the reinvestment of all the grenades. They'll be taking out pretty low of their cash as well. Two players on low $500 as Dennis and Crims. Kenny S, let's have a look at where he'll be going. Towards B for now. Not going hyper aggressive here. Just watching towards Monster for a B rush. But we have got Shoxy looking for this first frag. Getting closer, flashed off, has body going. He actually shoots body, but the timing was there. It was always going to go the way of G2 in terms of frags because they had a perfect crossfire on the aggression. Not only one toward the front benches, two toward long. There was nothing Fnatic could do in that overwhelming situation. I like it. Calculated aggression. Clearly off the start, they made that call as a team. Yeah, sending Kenny S towards the B side of the map and then pushing middle and long A as well with two players. Pincering, good flashbangs used. A bit of a team, not team kill, but team damage coming in from Apex, but he managed to make up for it. He got a frag towards the playground position. Three on two rounds, certainly not over yet. We've got JW and Crims, a formidable duo. Round number four here, one minute remaining. They still have the smoke, Molotov flashbang. As they are separated though, Crims towards B, and you can see the bomb, JW, over in the playground position as well. But the CT's playing this correctly. Not giving too much away, not over committing. Allowing Kenny has to hold B by himself. Fully committing to it, just watching towards the bomb site. And this is quite clever from Crimson now. Drops that smoke just to take vision away from Kenny. So he'll be calling for backup potentially. Drops an incendiary to buy himself some more time. The CT's aren't taking the bait just yet. So Crimson, does he fully commit to this and try and find one frag? If he does, that actually opens up the B side, forces the rotation. But it looks like he'll be waiting for his teammates. Actually, he'll be coming from Connector. Up towards short and joining Crims. Good read to try and check over toward jungle, but Kenny on the AWP is better posted. JW can't close him off either. He's only 48. So two AKs oh, firing no. at him. That's a lot different. JW catches off both. Shocks and Kenny down. He'll plant. He's limited by the sandbags, but a flash out should give him room to move. And a smoke. He's hit Apex through it. He was down to 34. The nade could do it. It could indeed. It's a little deep. And he's on 18, tagged in through the wood, and gets a little over ambitious with the Molotov. Very scary round overall there, JW. Great attempt in the three versus one. Kenny S missing a few uncharacteristic shots there, I have to say. I thought he's going to nail that second one, but JW finds the two kills. Plan comes in, and Apex, like he said, tagged up through the smoke. Holds his nerve, takes JW down, gets a defuse and saves the AWP as well. So that's going to be Fnatic still with enough to buy here with that bomb plan going down. Won't be the best to buy, as you can see, the two players are at the 2.5k mark. Here's the replay of JW. Great work. It's actually getting towards the B side. Those were lovely shots to get the bomb down. Couldn't quite find the round, but limits G2 going forward as well. Have a look at that by MBK on the Famous. Body, same story for him. We are seeing less and less UMPs. People opting for the Famous instead. Round number five, both teams. And the barrel of an eco here. Kenny S with the AWP. Boosting up in middle, trying to find this first frag, but can't get anything going just yet. Two tech nines for the T side. All off mice on the orb. So another player having a go at it. Normally JW, we saw Flush on Nuke. This is main orper, which is strange to see. Now it's all off Meister. Yeah. Back to that old trick. Look at Shoxy, by the way. Actually made it all the way. Just saw that. Yeah, yeah. The perfect position all the way up toward the door. He just needs to hold that now. And now they've got three players at B. This is very interesting from Shoxy. If he can be disciplined and not push too much until they fully commit, it can cause a lot of damage. Dennis is the one that's close by to it. Bombs near him. This is the one way they can get through and toward A, hence why Apex is still on the site itself and you can only leave three in B. Nate goes down in front of Kenny and does no damage. It's just far enough away. Chox has actually elected to push instead. He's timed it well because Dennis is gone. He's They're taking the bomb. It. They're not watching it at all. His timing is everything. This is going to be an easy assassination. Look in your top left of the corner of your screen. One right in front. It might even go for a knife here. No one away, but he's got the bomb. That's a big kill. They've got to go back toward him. He's going to back off, try and keep this elongated, prolong 
The inevitable exchange allows teammates to do the rest. They're still trying to clear the site whilst going back for the bomb. They've managed to pick it up, which means they've managed to get an access point. But Spotty takes down Flusha. It is all off against two. So they had to take the site and get the bomb at the same time. No scope battle. Kenny's going to win that. Close for either side, but Kenny comes out on top. Yeah, nice move from Olaf Meister there. Great movement, but overall, Kenny S winning the no-scope battle, like he said. It comes out to Shoxy, though. Sure, he only gets one kill, but that's enough just to throw a spanner in the works. They had no idea that he could be coming. I think most teams in that scenario, if you've got to leave middle from Adobe, you have one player just watching the back, just to stop that being a possibility, but Shox times it to perfection, finds a player with the smoke out, takes the bomber down as well, completely thwarts their attempts towards B side. 4-1 now, G2 looking very good here on the CT side of Overpass. Has been a Rico for Fnatic, P250. PT50s, two of them, JW and Flash, pick those up. No armor, no nades. Very easy round. Can yes, maybe a little bit too aggressive, but hitting the shots all the same. Wow, Kenny. Okay, all three inside of the stairs. Can work his way back Wants down. More. Them and does want more misses. It just Why? barely. At this point, though, they're gonna win the round out. You're right. A little bit aggressive. Five versus two. <laughs> this one's a highlight reel, doesn't he? I'd say he already got it with those three. Yeah. It wasn't really worth throwing. Yeah, sure, they recovered the orb, but he'd done the work at this point. He knows he were pistols. Why go into the mousetrap? Yeah, that is the mousetrap. Good call. Maybe that's what we should call the mousetrap when it's just pistols, you know? Yeah, okay. 5 1. Fnatic, no orb this time. 5 AKs. In terms of loss bonus at the third stage right now, that's um, $400. Oh, not a great buy, to be fair. 5 AKs and. They have got the smokes, but lacking everything else. Dennis, no nades whatsoever. Going to run number seven here. In terms of aggression from the CTs, looks like they're focusing towards short. MBK, Body, and Shoxy actually pushing and taking the game towards Crims here. Let's see if they can get this kill. Crims waiting for it. Timing is everything, though. Takes his vision away for a second. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, NBK kills Body. That counts as a kill for Fnatic. So they win the exchange. That's a bit of a mess, isn't it? JW now looks elsewhere on the map. Gets the smoke set. Goes back toward the back stairs as Kenny mobs his out in toward the bathrooms. There's up oh, through the wall. Tags Olaf. Tags him out though. When you're getting run down, he takes out Dennis. JW gets the response. 21 HP for Olaf, but still in this against NBK. And I think NBK is posted and just going to concede. Yeah, so G2 trying to apply the pressure there from short. They pushed three people through that tunnel and then they actually had the numbers working in their favor. It's a very, very tight area of the map, though, and you can see how dicey he can get. Pushing through, MVK taking down his teammate as well. So essentially, Krim's got a two for one there. Hiding by the monster tunnel, and that allowed his teammates to get in towards A, had the man advantage, capitalized at that point, and now, like he said, MBK is saving his weapon. Money is okay overall for G2, especially if they save this weapon as well, they should be fine. You can see there's 6k currently on Shoxy. They'll get 1400 on top of this, what they've got right now, so we'll see what it pushes up at. There you go, 7k, 5k. So, yeah, saving that 8k is absolutely fine. That helps out with the one player that's got a little bit less than everyone else. So, they'll be buying into this, or almost certainly going to be coming out. Shoxy can drop that for Kenny S. When you have these limited buys and you're available to you, it's a pretty wise idea. There's a replay of how that just kills body. Yeah. Double orb set up. Okay. Shocks and Kenny, not surprising they're the ones wielding it. So it's Kenny toward long, had the spawn for it. Shocks is in the mix to be already out the window. I'm not sure if he's going to get to monster fast enough. So flash in. But they've already done the same on the other side. He just checks the angle. He can't go aggressively because they could be posted at the stairs. Take it back. He still wants to get across. That's angle for him to watch towards the short tunnel as well. Crims on the other side. Let's see if he can maybe get his first pick. He has no idea Crims is there. He's changed up his position. Once again, they're pushing this. Shockster will be protecting body here. They've detected where Crims is. Flashbang will be great at this stage if they can get it, but don't seem like they'll be committing for that frag. Crims getting back up now from Olaf Meister and Flusher and JW who are in the connector. And yeah, body smartly just goes through short pipe towards construction. W takes him down. Olaf wins against Chalk. So even though he's posted up, that's the angle he had to be weary of. It works out in favor. Good kill, MBK, despite being flashed up. He now has to find a second to pull this back. And Flusher looks the wrong way at the wrong time. MBK strikes. It's all level. And the bomb back with 50 seconds toward the park has to be gathered up by Fnatic. Yeah, MBK recovering the round there. It's looking pretty bleak in the 5 on 3. But and two great shots there with the AK-47. Good timing towards short as well. 35 seconds now. Kenny S. 
He's towards the A side of the map. He's got the AWP. He's watching the bomb side for now. Wants to just get one kill, buy some time for his teammates. Won't overcommit there. He knows if he goes down without a frag, he's in a lot of trouble. So he's in the bank position right now. Everyone crossing over. Olaf Meister towards long. They need to start hurrying up now. Time ticking away as we hit the 20-second mark as well. They have one smoke. Where did they decide to use it? I'd assume CT spawn. Can yes. Kind of toying with the idea now of looking for a frag. Molotov comes in. Doesn't nail the shot. Olaf Meister takes him down. Does get it one kill on the way through, but that's not enough to deny a bomb plant as it will often put that down. It's MK again that's left against the remainders. And this time he fancies it, but Dennis is ready for the flank, and Fnatic finds a third, two in a row. Yes, and actually ends up breaking the money of G2 as well. They were tied before the double orb set up. That's the replay of MBK. Great work from the short area. Timing on this player and the second kill was phenomenal. Catches him looking towards short, so nice play there. And it's going to be 5-3. And like we said, an eco for G2. Presumably here they get a CZ, a Deagle, a B250. Shock's got some body armor, but now Fnatic looking very comfortable, but he's starting to swell for them. All that for Olof Meister once again. Seems to be hitting a lot of shots. It was a turbulent tournament from so far, especially that cash game against SK. He had uh, one of the quietest games we've seen from him in quite a while. Former best player in the world, going back to latter stages of 2015 slash early 2016. Number nine, G2 have pushed off towards short, but Fnatic playing this very cautiously, not giving too much away here. Crims once again watching outside Monster Tunnel, got all off there towards the playground. Apex might walk into his crosshair, doesn't fancy it just yet. Knows he's got that P250, so he's hoping T's make the mistake, and we've got a bit of action there towards Connector. Kenny S down to 43 HP. Well, she's going to smoke off inside of the bathrooms as they push into the underpass. Dennis has to turn around and be cautious, not to be shot at from behind. It's JW to hold one angle. Kent does win his intended duel, but he's picked up AK. He's going to well. get walled out by Flush at trying to find one more out towards the monster. Couldn't do it. Crims gets away. And we're within one for Fnatic on the T side of overpass. Yes. We go to another gun round though. Fnatic clawing things back. Three in a row for them. Absolutely right. Very cautious round for them there, holding up. All the choke points covered, watching towards Playground Middle as well. Connector spotted from the party zone. It's waiting for a mistake to be made of G2, having to look for some information now. Obviously, the lack of weaponry taken down, get the first kill, then manage to stick together and trade out. It's going to be round number 10. And an AWP back out for Kenny S this time. He'll actually be towards Long H. his position up. He's a very dynamic AWP, likes to roam around and find frags for his team. Hasn't really managed to go absolutely berserk as of yet. He's got 13 kills, a decent amount for him. Top sort of ranking for his team. Banks towards middle, I like that off the light. Swim towards bathroom, JW. Tricky one to throw because the light's rounded. Yeah. Unless for some reason Valve made the hitbox square. It probably is a square box, I'd imagine. Yeah. Probably. Lazy Valve. Minecraft hitboxes. <laughs> well, for now. Shroud would be good if it was Minecraft hitboxes. Does he play that? Yes, he does. Does he? <laughs> I have no idea. Bit of Minecraft. Is that your man? Not bad. Anyway, Crims <laughs> <laughs> gonna get that first set job. Takes down Shoxy. Five on four, but Apex fighting back here. So Crims by himself, lurking, and he's gonna be joined by his teammates as well. He gets a big frag, calls him to join him, but Body doing some good work now. So good at holding the position by himself. The anchor of G2 finds three kills, shuts the round down. It's just gonna be Dennis remaining now. He will not pick up the bomb just yet. He's trying to sneak in. Kenny is backing him up. That's why we like Body so much as a player. Not the flashiest, and not certainly not the most flamboyant on the team, but he actually manages to hold positions by himself. Good positioning, knows when to take risks, and uses the smoke to his advantage. There. Very, very nice. Run, very well recovered. Yeah, he's so good positionally. He reminds me of Crimson as prime sometimes. The way he's very sure. efficient in a bomb site. Yeah, well, those are the my favorite kind of CS players to watch. Like they're not doing anything crazy at the time. Yeah, of the, the boring ones. I get it. It is kind of boring in terms of like you watch the. It would never be a highlight reel that that frag, but it was just like okay, there's really intelligent stuff. He did what he had to do to win the round. True that. Six four. G two managed to pick up another round. MBK down to the UMP. Kenny S AWP this time. Presumably still towards long, actually in the middle this time. Okay, so like you can see, he's actually changing position about almost every single round. All available for Olaf this time. And money something to dwindle as well. To be fair, neither team that comfortable in terms of the financial situation. JW and Connector, Kenny has waiting for his crosshair in that position as well. Towards long, we have Apex with the AKs. CTs actually have two of those in their hand as well. We've talked about why that's so beneficial holding angles as a CT. Just 
Dude, W is going to go. Jump. Kenny nails it. Surely want to flash that first, but fair enough. Yeah. Well, I think the jump he was intending was good enough. But here against Kenny Apex. Walking out nearly gets caught off by Olaf being wide. He certainly is caught off by Dennis being inside of the bathrooms. The janitor comes out to strike back as Kenny now has to hold off the front of the site alone. He's got a rotation coming in from MBK. The aggressive missed shot. Flames behind him. He's going to stay inside of him and get toward the bathroom. Small gap. They're reaching him. Somehow that spread that far. I'm curious as to that. Okay, so there's the trail. It bounced inward off the garbage can. So that's actually kind of nifty. Worked out well in that case. As Body you know, again get. gets a 3K holding position and angle very quick and swift. Yeah, very good stuff once again. Pinpoint position with AK 47, 7 4. G2 managed to break the bank of Fnatic once again. 2K per player. Only a second stage loss bonus. That's $1,900. So here's the replay of the kills from Body, I would assume. Shot there. You can see it's not the prettiest, but it does the job. You just get a good position there and running to his contact. It is out. actually quite pretty when you consider how efficient it is. Yeah, true. Like managing to lock it down and bring it up around up 4G2. Fully co, but looks things fanatic. PT50s, Deagles, no armor, no nades. It should be 8 4 here. G2 looking much better than they did against the Mortals, I have to say. Though we didn't catch it. We called it like the latter stages. We were about to jump in and cast it. We went to overtime. We were ready. Well, yeah, go wouldn't stop talking. Analysts, Analysts stop talk. Stop talk. Let casters yell. Yep. Kenny just about got there in time. Blue fire in. Nate instead bounces the wrong way. Couldn't spot the edge of the doorway through the smoke. That is quite quick to pull the trigger. Splash his shoulder peeks back in, and Kenny nails it. NBK gets JW, and things looking good for G2. Rattles off a few more shots here. Like we said, this round should be a foregone conclusion. Crims finds a nice deagle shot towards Apex. And Kenny is once again giving too much away. They know he's up against pistols. He wants to get those frags racked up. And they need to be careful. The money, it's okay, right? Yeah, that, well, that's what I was going to say. It's not so much about the fact that he's going down, because in most of these situations, they're they still win, right? way ahead. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's that he has to rebuy an op, or someone has to rebuy an op every time. Thankfully, that time, the MBK is able to grab it for him. It's, it's just an unnecessary risk he's taking. Sure, like it builds his confidence, I'm sure. And if he starts hitting those shots, he gets in the zone. Just a note as well on the scoreboard, Shoxi, three for seven. It's uh, been a tough tournament for the superstars and most teams, I have to say. Like, it always seems like someone's missing on either side. Looking at the Fnatic side of things, five kills with Dennis. Actually, pretty even kill distribution. Three players and six kills. JW at the top of nine. Maybe a B execution here. But we have got MBK in the connector. This is a contact play, classically. You're walking in, trying to get as far as you can to the bomb side to his spotted, and that could work out quite nicely. But Kenny S, he's on the other side, to be fair. We'll see whether he can find this first shot. They're crouching beneath him. Oh, I thought Ooh. he hit that. Yeah, I did too. JW gets NBK on the way through. Kenny, needed, flashed, no smokes yet. Second flash will get him in full duration. He's just getting his vision restored. Good read from Dennis. The Chalks is going to go for the flank. No mouse trap to be closed down this time. As JW is found by body, Kenny. Opens back up. They still have a chance at this. That may be taken back now, though, however. And this time, Kenny can't afford to be over aggressive. Or can he? Certainly he can! Nice shot on Olaf. That was fast enough, but Flusher through the wall will respond. That's really well adjusted by Fnatic. They're reading the G2 are being very aggressive right now across the board. I'm pushing connector, long A, party, etc. Leaving Kenny at this time alone in the B site. Normally fine, but that contact player, they're aware that his position he likes to play. Normally by the CT entrance, looking towards Monster. And if you crouch coming through the Monster, yet you have the protection of the ramp. They jump up at the same time. Luckily, he misses that first shot. And they're managing to overwhelm that B bomb site. Kenny has smoked out, flashed out. Pretty much everything available to Fnatic they threw at him, including the kitchen sink, apparently. It's going to be round number 14, Matt. The auto shotgun makes an appearance once again. It's Apex and manages to nail that first shot. Take time, JW. Gives him a taste of his own medicine. And boy, is it Bitter. That that be? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Just kind of looked at you. Yeah, you kind of left me hanging there. Yeah, no. I thought you were going to carry the base on. Oh, uh, it's right. fine. You're the hard carry here, Hank. I'm just a support player. Support, okay. Well, we have got a double orb set up and Apex upgrades from his auto shotgun to the AK 47. And for now, five and four. Olaf Meister still on the AWP. It just barely fits under those pipes. Put a hard hat on. Speaking of everyone on the T side, does indeed have one. CT side up against AKs. Do not. Standard procedure. Question is, Henry, did they bring their steel toe boots for the workplace? They did. They got nice brown boozies on. 
Brown booties. Good shot. Shock sticks down Crims. Dennis with the smoke is still gonna try and push into the washrooms. With Crims gone, which will be a very likely the destination with 35 seconds remaining. The smokes are good from G2 and Apex. I'm not sure if he wants to push through them or sit inside of them, because if he stays in this little L of smokes, they're gonna walk through the bathrooms and take him down. They're gonna try and do so now. Flash off, manages to get back around the corner. Kenny's still just being patient as to MBK. Oh. Shoulder. Olaf going into Apex makes things interesting though, because MBK is just on the Deagle. Still makes it work because it's the AWP for Kenny. I didn't really have a rifle to spray them down on entry. Well, so far. Pro League final season five seems to be the tournament of the auto shotgun. It's been purchased once again. It was it's the gun that won't stop giving or appearing. It's going to be number 15 here. They certainly could oh, actually maybe, maybe he spent $4,400 here. He could have actually got a rifle, but it opts to this weapon once again. Presumably heading towards connector. A difficult buy for Fanatic, so the auto shotgun actually makes a lot of sense here. Pistols and a UMP. That's going to be in the hands of JW. Apex in the same position once again using the HE and Kenny has watching middle. What's a couple? This is where the little shotgun gets a bit dicey. Any sort of range it's struggling at, but Kenny S known to be a very good close range orb at the very scope just then. It's gonna be a three on three. They the orb. Let's try and find shots with him. Just yet, MBK doesn't need to commit towards this, but getting all the shots required. Once again, this final kill is just Crimson now. Round should be over. It's going to be 10 5 in favor of G2. Some missed shots there. Oh, Crimson, okay, that Peter Fitty could be dangerous. Good to be, though. 10 5, double digits achieved for G2. Much better showing here on Overpass compared to what they did this morning against Immortals. Fnatic, though, good adjustments throughout. They actually lost a pistol, managed to pick up that round three force by. At that stage, game was back and forth for G2 towards the end. That adjustments made and looking very good overall. Good overall, but are, is it good enough? We'll find out in the next half. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, Lenovo Legion, Xfinity, ESEA, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, Logitech G, and Zowie. side of the pool. Pulls a little backwards. G2's on our left in picture, but on the right, they favor the chat apparently favors them, I should say. 51.7%. That's about as close as you like. Yeah. Well, for now, considering the scoreline, I think G2 are the obvious favorites going forward. With the pistol, 10-5, always a difficult scoreline. If you're Fnatic right now, you lose that pistol 3-0, you're looking at 13-5, things off. So, must win, I would say, at this stage. It'll be obviously switching over to the CT side now. I see the buys coming. Maybe a little sneak peek, perhaps, as well. Four sets of armor for G2. MPK yet to buy. He's presumably going to be the utility player. So, we've got a, a little bit of a delay going on. There's one player not sat down. We can work who it is. Is it Olaf? No, he's at the end there. Quick, work it out, Matt. Who's missing? On the end? No. Which? Yeah. That's Cr Crims. Oh, it would be Crims, Flusher, Olaf, Dennis. So who are we missing? JW. JW. Yeah. There we go. Well, you passed the test. And now, Thanks. back to us in the studio. Back to us in the studio. That, see? It came to us. Uh, lower third came in at the right time. What do you fancy? G2 takes this one, goes through? I think so. Yeah, we've got three games going on right now as well. So we've got like That's true, off stream, yeah, the Immortals game. And then MVS versus... And Immortals can actually SK, pick up two wins today, despite yeah. yesterday having a really, really slow start. Yeah, I, I don't know where that one is. Like, I, ha I was trying to find them on my phone. I, I couldn't get there in time before it came to us on camera. So. Well, we'll see eventually. It's going to be 
Overpass, which is joining us. This is G2, who seem to have a bit of a resurgence today. Obviously, against Immortals and Great, but then they've kind of picked up the pace, taking down SK Gaming, like in quite a formidable fashion as well. You want to hear something crazy? Go on. Envious 10. Oh, here we go. You SK, got updates. SK3. What? So yesterday, lights out day for SK, and now dropping to G2 and going to be Envious as well. But the sounds of things, you can obviously come back. Yep. Them, but that could be Tiebreaker City. Yeah, we could, we could be... Uh, Doing another one right after this for a tiebreak situation if that doesn't go the other way. We did it last time. What fun that was. What fun that was. Yes, yes, it was. Shocks will take down JW to start things off for G2. Their T side, if they win this, could be a short game. If they don't, we could have a long stretched out one as Fnatic will battle their way back in. They're battling from the water at this point in time, but Olaf's the only one to get a kill, and he's a jungle, which means water was lost. Bomb goes down. And they'll set crossfires on the retake. Dennis and Olaf together. Try and push through for some reasonably good HP, but headshot from body is better than that. Also gets one, make it a second from the window. Try and work his way towards Shocks, who's low on HP. They've got a chance, they've got a real chance at this, both with armor, not with kits. Also finds yet more as Apex goes back in. Drive by shooting, takes good damage, but Olaf's gonna win it out, and they will get the defuse, which means Fnatic could bring this back. Very good retake. Yeah, absolutely. After losing the first two frags as well, the bomb down. G2, though, I would suggest they might buy into this second round with three kills obtained. Maybe more likely they got the fourth as well. It's, it's down to whether you get the bomb down and three or four kills. They definitely have the option to buy here if they want to, known to be a force by team. Could take the more conservative route like Fnatic did get the AKs in the third. What a retake that was from Flusher. Managing to hit the headshots required there. And we'll see what happens here in round number two. It looks like we'll go for the more conservative approach. GT buying for the third round. They get the 250s here. Nothing else. They get the bomb down. It's amazing. Very unlikely. And Fnatic prepping themselves as well for that third round force being team. Three rifles coming in, two UMPs. The Famous back once again as we get into number 17 here. No nades, no armor, of course. Try and stick together. If you can get some trades, that's great. Get the bomb down, that's godlike. We'll see what they can do. Kenny S sits toward the park. The party, I should say. He's gonna try and clear out bathrooms. Dennis waiting with the FAMAS. So noted FAMAS. Still, there is two more, or rather, one more UMP, two UMPs total as Dennis tries to get some shots in. Can't get the kill on the body. As he jumps back by, he'll do further damage. Goes out, gets one on the straight head shot, but actually managed to get two there as he walled body somehow. But he will go down. Flusher now waits after getting MDK to see if anyone else will push in that position. They're both out toward long with bomb, but a bomb plant not likely unless they can somehow work their way in magically to be. Yeah, the famous and the bomb, they've got one smoke to work with it. That could be, I guess, a difference maker. They can get a smoke down on the site and somehow get away with a plan. I think that's their only option, really. Apex can throw a smoke onto the A site momentarily. Hope for the best. Trying to get a frag first, it seems. 35 seconds remaining. His teammate in the bathroom as well. That's Joxy. Taken down, though. That should be any sort of efforts to plant thwarted. It's going to be flusher now. Looking towards bathroom. Joxy does it the P250. This is over. And Olaf Meister to finish him off. 10-7. This is the round that really counts. AK's coming out almost certainly here for G2. There they come. Five of those. No warp just yet. They do have a decent amount of utility. Smokes across the board and a Molotov for Shoxy as well. In terms of the buy for Fnatics, sticking with their guns in terms of the UMPs and three M4s. So if I'm Fnatic right now, similar sort of mentality to G2. In this sort of run, you know the AKs are coming. You might want to get a bit more aggressive and try and find the first frag. Give yourself that man advantage. You take a bit of a risk and see Dennis and Flush up doing exactly that, trying to boost up and party and see where they can get this first pick. Dennis in an open position, they were backed up by Flush up. Just trying to get the first frag and G2. They know this aggression could be coming in. So it's boosting up and playground for now to see if they can get the first pick. Body looking towards long. Hasn't detected anything just yet. And now Dennis and Flush up will be falling back. Didn't get anything for their push. Shoxy patrolling towards B. Crim's on the other side of the map there as well. JW. He's just going to be jumping up from that sandbag position, trying to get information towards connector and short. Body flashing himself out at long. Oh, MBK hit the shot. Yep. From way downtown. He got it from connector as JW was jumping up, trying to get that intel. His head blown off. That's why it's a little bit of a risky thing to consistently do. MBK spot him out on my screen and uh, managed to blow his head off. Five on four. Very good start for G2. Very, very good start from G2. That is quite a kill. MBK. Wall back in to get another one after that. 
Great first opener. He'll smoke off jungle. This is not gonna be where they go. He's just masking at this point. The fact that they want to walk in toward A. Tags down from the Molotov, though. I think they've already heard that the pack that there's been a lot of board launch. The rotation's already wrapping back in. Dennis inside the smoke. Good position. Turns around to find Shocks. Olaf's gonna win his duel. Dennis wow. flashing himself back in position. Easy win. Kenny S only on 4 HP. Great recovery there. Olaf Meister, after a very quiet performance yesterday against SK, turning up in emphatic fashion here in round number 19. That's big for Fnatic. After losing the first two picks as well, it's Kenny S and MPK to open things up. Here's the replay opening that door, looking for the shot. Boom, nailed it. And then Kenny S got a shot off as well. And then Olaf Meister managing to find some form there towards the A bomb site to bring the round in their favor. 10 8 has to be Nico here from G2. Now we really have a game on our hands. Could go either way. It's almost certainly going to be 10 9, and presumably maybe even 10 10, because the money still won't be amazing. But for now, JW will be happy to stay on his UMP. Olaf Meister tempting fate this time. Still a little bit of a dangerous scenario going up against the Deagles here. Wants to spot one player, then chuck in the HE. Spots one. Ooh. Doesn't deploy it just yet. So now it's 13-3 for NBS over SK. Who would have thought? What is going on today? Yeah, group of death is just... The Mortals beat G2. Then G2 beat SK. Then Envious presumably going to be SK. This is nuts. Immortals 15-6 on Cloud9 right now as well. Wow, this is a rough time with Cloud9, isn't it? Yeah, that's certainly... After nice. then they beat G2 16-4. So this group of death is suddenly living up to the main seems. JW takes down Shocks. The unpredictability today. JW takes down Body, though. It's pretty much all done in this one, even though they're still with three alive. There's no armor. Deagle's not finding much. MBK about to go down. There it is. So they could actually pull back on G2 as well. Which brings us into definitely a tiebreak situation, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Five players surviving for Fnatic there. Good anti-eco round for them. G2 now feeling the pressure. Here's the booster came in. Taken down by JW. <laughs> Wasn't a wall bang, but did spot one of them. So you got the double kill in that position as well. There it is. Round number 20 into the closing stages now. It's going to be the orb out for Kenny S. No head armor though, that is the issue. To be, to be fair, he's up against three AKs, so maybe not and an orb. So, should be absolutely fine. On off my step, incendiary towards the short tunnel. Once again, real aggression in the CT's time. I can see JW actually has pushed off short though. Incendiary dropped by his team, allowing him to buy some time. Flashbang, not great, but he'll be falling back at this stage as well. He's got some positional control that side of the map. So GT though, focusing on middle. They have left one player deployed towards the B side. It's shocked in the same position. Crims found those kills earlier. And Apex, there it is. Gets the opening frag, takes down Dennis. And now the reaction has to come in from the CTs. They have two players pushed off short. Epic could walk into, I guess, the mouse trap. I'm not really sure what that is, but we'll use it's, it. Uh, yeah, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bear's trap. Bear trap. And well, a, bear cave and a is lion, lion's hive. What's the, the bear cave? And um, the mouse den. Okay, the mouse is den. Yeah, lion trap. Just mix them all up. Yeah. JW, Molotov gun monsters. Late. Doesn't have time to get a gun back out. Gets a nade off, lands in shocks, but he's already got the kill. It does minimal damage to him as well as Olaf will take back Apex. Good position from the window, but smoked off. He's got to rotate down toward the site, or does he? He seems to want to wait. Because Flush is already working his way in from jungle. It's a matter of patience to work back and a smoke down everywhere. No plant yet, however. He's on top of the site. Body that's still trying to figure out if he's got room towards sandbags. MBK will confirm that he does by taking down Crims from inside of Connector. And that could be the round that itself. G2 yeah, may finally pick up one on the second half. Yeah, Shoxy's in such a prime position to stop any push coming in. And Olaf Meister, hoping for the boost there. He's, it might look like a weird position, but you can boost up on the T side, up and towards that balcony area. And Olaf Meister is waiting to see if that happens. Doesn't seem to be the case. Shoxy knows the round's over at this point. Might go hunting, but the money's actually pretty decent for Fnatic and not so great for G2. I think they just want to keep four players alive at this point. So we'll see what happens. So you want a turn of events? Go on. Mortals have beat Cloud9 16-8. Envious have beat uh, SK 16-3. If Fnatic win this, SK go from being the best team on the day, hands down yesterday, to out. If Fnatic win this game, SK are out. No way. Yep. That's what they just told me in my ear. What? After game 3-0? Because of the way the tiebreak system works, apparently that's where we line up. Oh, because it goes out the head-to-head, -head, right? Yep. Oh, God. Can you, you'd hate to see that. That would be incredible. 
amazing. I was looking at the best team in the world yesterday. <laughs> I look at no one could touch him. Yep. Didn't drop a single T round yesterday, Matt. Yeah, that's true. They didn't drop so, a single T round. And then now they're about and to be now potentially they out of this tournament. They better be hoping G2 pull through. That's all I can say. Oh my god. I'm gonna make sure that's that's true. If someone can confirm that in my ear, but that's that's the way I heard it. Yeah, it sounds a bit much to me, but we'll see. Can't handle it, Henry. Yeah, well, that would be amazing. We'll see what happens. 11-9. Fnatic still have some work to do to make a possibility. Round number 21. Double orb set up for Fnatic. Dennis and Flusher mixing it up. Not all of my story anymore. It is double checked. That is how it goes. So if Fnatic win this, it's confirmed. SK out the out. I just can't fathom right now. Redonkerous. Oh, good. Well, that'll make things exciting. Which team are you on now? G2 or Fnatic Hype Chamber? Who are you wanting? Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I, I need G2 to win. I don't think I could take the heartbreak. I mean, I think G2 and SK in the playoffs is the level of Counter-Strike higher, but Fnatic, Olaf's been stepping up today, and I'm starting to get behind them as well. I mean, it is the group of death for a reason. As Kenny S takes down Olaf, gives a chance to G2 to try and work their way in the side body, wrapping around. JW, no idea he's there, and Flusha, AWP. As Kenny plants the bomb, and tries to wall through. Just have to hold what? off. Flusha, aim up slightly, and you would have had it. It's flashy, fires into it. Buys a lot of space. I think this retakes over, not the double orbs. No, and they look to go for a Same. boost and then trip over that as well, I think. Yep, back off. So we have G2 on 12. Four to go. Well, this group, like we said at the start of the tournament, the group of death is certainly living up to the name. You go 3 0 in day one, you're almost like guaranteed to go through at that point. You're like, oh, well, we're going to get top of the group. We don't got to play. Uh, envious, and we, we should we should win that, no problem. They're not exactly uh, a, a world-dominating force right now, but they've actually turned up today. Who would have thought? I wish I could watch that game. That sounds nuts. Um, but still, G2 pick up this round. So double up saved by Fnatic. The money's okay. They should be able to spread the wealth around and drop some UMPs, Famuses, and Olaf has got enough to buy. Like you said, he's had a great performance so far. Top fragging Fnatic, 19 to 13. He's a replay of the kills he got. Wasn't quite enough to win the round. 12 to 9 now. G2 getting in touching distance of picking this one up. And I'm sure we're going to have some fun on the analyst test to work out how this all breaks down after this game. So, round number 22. Four AKs. Can he back in the orb, of course. Maybe looking towards a connected position for now. No real aggression with the CT side. Not pushing in. Dennis this time with the orb. And Flusher as well. So, Flusher presumably holding long A, it seems. I thought he would be maybe a bit more mobile considering Dennis is over on that side of the map as well. He's actually watching Connector right now. Plus, uh, patrolling long. So the orbs posted up two turrets on the A side. Dennis will work his way back toward the site with smokes down. when he moves back as well sure. to take body. Very good shot. And G2's money is not incredible. Got, oh. Yeah, got a buy in hand. In fact, they are better off than Fnatic, but if Fnatic do win this, I mean, we get closer to an 11 round spread for them. As Apex works, or rather waits after he worked all the way up long at the corner. Bomb inside of bathrooms, but it's a 2-2 split for G2. They've got to make a decision as to where they're going to go, and it looks it's going to be A as they start to rotate back through the stairwell. 22 seconds. They're going to have to be quick about it. As Flush is posted with NAWP as well, and Kenny flashing him off. Puts Apex closer, but he's taking a tag. He still baits it in. Flush is not able to respond in time. He's trying to fire toward the dumpster. As Dennis gets shocks, he'll go down to G2, or excuse me, MBK specifically. Behind the truck as Olaf works in. Good find. This is G2's round. This is a broken Fnatic as well. This should make it 14 for G2. As JW is limited on the stairwell. Yeah, great teamwork there from G2. Going in together, hitting all the shots required as well. MBK stepping up. He had a bit of a rough tournament yesterday as well. He's got 18 kills, 11 deaths. Kenny S, 25 as well. Like you said, a broken Fnatic going forward as well. Only our first day lost players on the CT side. Crims does what he can. But Kenny S finds his second kill of the round. Oh, his first kill of the round. I beg your pardon. Pause coming in now for the first time. We haven't seen many pauses this tournament, I have to say. No, we have not. No one's really taking advantage of them. Not down there. Coaches chime in, it seems. On our chance for Fnatic to kind of calculate themselves and work out what jump he has on his sleeve. On this side, we have former player Smiths with G2. So they can find what it takes.
Lawrence. He's going to be jumping with more pressure on his shoulders, I'm afraid. He's only got about 3k per player to work with here. Not really enough. And it's, yeah. do you force, I, I would say you take the partial buy here. You get out $20 and $100 in the next round. So maybe get some PT50s, maybe push middle with flashbangs and hope for the best. Even get some trades going on. Very unlikely you can win the round, but it's still 14 9 You still have a chance we're going to be forced by this. That's when things get a little bit scary for them. So G2 now looking to close this map out. SK probably watching this with bated breath. He's hoping that uh, G2 can pull it out. The biggest G2 fans in the world right now, I'd imagine. Three CZs. Two BT50s. Crims are the only one with body armor here. They're not pushing with flashbangs. They do go towards connector, though. Two players in that position. And you can see G2, they're aware of the situation. They bring in a MAC-10 body. Shock's in the UMP as well. Just trying to have the mobility to throw those close-range players. And Dennis, though, this is decent. Gets one kill, falls back as well. Damage inflicted to another as well. I like this. And she gets back safely. Bit of a slip up there from G2. Dennis. Held it as the world's best pistol player living up to his name so far. One's their first pick to take down Apex. Five on four for now. Matt's just confirming the situation as to what would happen. But for now, Fnatic do find another frag. What have you got for me, Matt? Well, they are updating it because a couple of people tweeted it, and I agree with this. If G2 win this, they go 3-2, which means everyone's 3-2 in the tiebreak head-to-head. -head. I think SK's out in that case because Envy would then be tied with them and win the head-to-head. -head. But if Fnatic win this, G2 is out on two and three, so SK which means SK wins and gets through. Not wins, but, but they go through. So I think it's the other way around. I think if G2 win this, SK are out. <laughs> okay. But well, that's they are double up. checking <laughs> it again. So anyway, bear with us. I thought it was us. double checked. I, yeah, I thought so too. Look, I'm going by what I'm told. I'm just a talking head, Henry. Yeah. But yeah, that makes more sense. So anyway, they'll get back to it. I'm sure there's lots of people in chat that have already figured it out. That's why I never get involved in this stuff. Listen, I did what I was told. I just, I just say what's on the screen. He's about to win this round on pistols. Yeah, you're right. Shocks has got the bomb down, but Smoke's off. They're already going to be going for it aggressively. No kit is the one saving Grace, but he's already on it. This is done. He's yeah. going to defuse this. No way Shocks gets there in time. Can I, congratulations, Fnatic. Ten rounds for them. And Shocks is going to get inside of the site. Already done. Doesn't even get a kill. Crims will cut him down. And we go 13 to 10. Wow. That, what a turn of results that is. No armor, no nades, upgraded pistols. Dennis pushing middle. Like we said, a bit of a slip up there from G2, allowed middle to be open. Well, apparently, there's a very nice shot from Olaf Meister towards the end of that round as we were rabbiting on. Uh, it's going to be a double orb set up on the T side from G2, though. Quite an orthodox, and there's a double orb set up on the CT side as well. So, and the battle of the snipers commence. And of course, we'll be. Oh, okay, Shoxi and Kinesis, what's up for MBK? The orb then. Shoxi no armor. Really fancies his orb then. Let's see what he can bring to the table. Watching towards Monster for now. Default from both teams. This is the final game of the group stage, and Apex striking first in round number 24 here. 13-10. Pick this round up, it's a full reset and towards Fnatic. So every round, every kill counts at this point. Money desperately close. Whoever loses this is down to an eco. And if Fnatic can get this, they're right back into this game. It's a big round, but they have lost the first frag. Bunching up towards a monster tunnel. That's G2, waiting for a reaction with the CT. See if anyone's going to be flashing over, trying to look for a kill here. Smoke deployed. Buys Fnatic some time at least. Really exploring their options though. We only got one player towards the A side. That's to be Flusher, and he's only got the UMP. He's in the bathrooms for now. G2 will wait for that smoke to expire. They can go for a full execute here, Matt. When you've got the man advantage, you've got map control like this, you actually lost control on track of A and middle um, and long A itself. You'll just be wanting to be throwing smokes over like this. Flashbang is coming in. Good reply though from the CTs. A spray down trying to come in from Crimson. He gets two, but that's it. Shock takes him down. JW, last line of defense in B. Here's the first shot. JW looking for MBK. Shocks will work his way in. Needs to open up the site. Can't quite do it. Walks in and Olaf just cuts him down. It's Kenny to respond. As GW backs off, Kenny's got an inkling as to where he's gone, but good night. he's going to have to be swift as ever. Long timing on the scope. It's going to now be 12 for Fnatic. They pull this back. And it's. I take that back 11. So it's still within two, but the money started to get now. dropped down. Yep, exactly. That was a lovely, I love that flashbang from Crimson as well. Look how much that wrecked them as well. He was unlucky with the orb waiting for him there. That flashbang was sick. I've never seen that one before. That's really cool. So it bounces it off the roof of the B-bomb off the, the bottom of the tracks in the side. I'm going to get it myself now. I'm going to have a look. Yeah, so it bounces off that. Lands right in front of the monster. I don't know where you're dodging that. And then let's get the double spray down. Shocks took him down, but the job had been done. And now it's going to be... Oh, Matt, is it a 
little of a cheeky force by here. Not fully committed. Two players on just over $1,000 here. We have one AK for body. CZ and Tech 9, the French, famously so good at these sort of rounds. It's going to be a BXQ here. Smoke towards heaven. And then we'll be flashing over and hoping they can overwhelm the CTs waiting on the other side. It's going to come down to this frag first. It's going to be down to Krim to try and get the first frag. But Kenny has to find a lot of pressure here. And then Apex takes him down. Wow. Well, tries to swing inside of the site, but body instead will get him. Rush out. Kenny, fully blinded, locked in the smoke, walks backwards rather than into what would be the lion's den in this case as there's three sitting on the other side of the smoke they'll drop into the water and just try and survive bomb is planted g2 have to hold on three kits for fanatic as they want to inch this closer cz for mbk is not sufficient but kenny's got the information as to now exactly where they are waits patience pays off gets two jw goes down and flush -a. has to figure out where he is he can't because the smoke's in his way and when it goes away shocks is there that was just beautiful from Kenny. That timing, it doesn't get much better than that. Uh, this buys himself an extra two seconds there. We're not pulling the trigger. He's not waiting for multiple frags. He's waiting for them to be comfortable. There's no player there. Look at this. Waits for it. Sees the shadow as well. It's so well done. I think that JW as well. Kenny S yes, brings G2 right back in this game. Like we said, a back and forth affair and Fnatic now. Oh, this is looking rough. Scouts, CZs, a Famous as well for Crims. One kid available and G2. If ever there was a chance to close this game out, this would be it. It's a harsh reset as well. If they win this run, only $1,900 into the next. So Fnatic, they need this. They will have absolutely nothing to work with in round number 27 if this goes in favor of G2. And looking at the buys, it almost certainly should. But Fnatic, also a team known to be very good in these sort of situations. CZs are their forte. We'll see if they can step up here. Wait inside the bathrooms. Could be map point G2. We're still waiting for that confirmation, but I think if G2 win it, I think it is SK that way. I don't know. I'm going to stop because. Yeah, because no one seems to know. Me. But that seems correct based on the three twos. Yeah. Okay. Dennis trying to jump up then to salvage anything he can. We'll go down. This scout is ineffective. Good timing. Flusha tapping with the CZ. Gets one. Tries to follow up. GW's got him based on distraction and damage to pop out. But Chonks is able to respond quick enough onto him, which means all is composed when Flusha does get close, closer. And it's just Crims remaining. And he may save the Famosan armor. I think he probably has to go for it at this point. They've got nothing. The Famas isn't going to help him too much next round. He needs to try and pull out a miracle here. Doesn't work out. Apex blows his head off. Like I said, map $1,900 into match point here. 15-11, they have to buy. CZ across the board. JW can probably get a UMP if he wants to. This is looking like a G2 victory. If Fnatic win, Fnatic, Envious, SK Gaming are through. If G2 win, they beat all other tied teams. SK, Envy, Fnatic play tiebreakers. Ah, okay, there we go. That makes more sense. So SK aren't necessarily out. So we'll play a tiebreaker if that happens. It looks, looks like it's going to. Yes. It'll be our second time with a tiebreaker. We had it in Katowice. Did indeed. That makes a lot more sense. There we go. That's been double My life is, is back to normal. I'm not taking the blame for this one. Well, that's looking like it's going to be. But I did happening. say it, so I kind of have to. Yeah. <laughs> CZs, body armor, a slight bit of utility here. Up against the full buy of G2. And they're playing this correctly. When you know the money's wrecked, stick towards long. MPK, the first shot, thing on Dennis as well. Contact play, perfect for this scenario here. It's looking very promising now. Flush though. Always a bit of nemesis with the pistols. There it is. Gets the first shot, and MPK goes down. They'll get the information now. It's just wolf back mode in towards the A site. One player remaining on the A site. It's all off my side. It's taken down by Shoxy. That should be round concluded. No kits available. Bomb planted momentarily. Might be for the plant side as well, uh, bank side as well, which it is. That's going to be it. I don't see Fnatic. So, in a win or lose, get through situation, G2. By winning this game, could actually go straight through to the semi-final yeah. based on that, because the tiebreak would be then for the two quarter-final spots. So that's how close this group really is. G2 just need to hold on to this post-plant situation. They've got the guns to do so as Flusha creeps in. He's got the AK sprays in behind the truck. That's going to give away his position, but allows JW closer. He's got body, but shocks sits to hold off on them both. They will make the semi-final. We will have a tiebreak between Fnatic SK and Envy, just to confirm, and SK are not out as we thought originally. Well, there we go. I'm glad we cleared that one up. G2, after starting slow here today against Immortals on this very map, losing that one, then beating SK, now beating Fnatic as well, since as as they're warming up. And SK, that's kind of shocking after having one of the most light tail performances we've seen in Counter Strike a long time. Not dropping a single T round, 3 0. Now find himself losing to Envious as well. I'm kind of focusing more on the general storylines because that's kind of really exciting. Our group A, the group of death, like we said, that's how it's panned out, lived up to the name.
and we're not sure how this one's going to go down. We're going to be going to tiebreakers. A, a stands for absolution. We are going to look into the tiebreakers in just a second. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to go. You were saying death. It's like Group D. I was trying to come up with something. Okay. Um, there's people that are, uh, well, they're not really more clever, but they're, 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 they're up there. Chad's pretty good. It's Jason that's going to host, though. A, a for absolution is in no way clever. That um, sounds pretty impressive. It's actually, oh, little, it's actually uh, all right, Jason. Yeah, let's if get I'm spicy. honest, let's get, it's let's time get for spicy. absolution in the tiebreaker. If 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 we we'll want to be clear, the of this, <laughs> I mean, talking about A's, I think it's obvious we didn't have an A in school for math, and also forgot the rule: you never do math live on stream. Math. I oh, literally. They, they cut off the two camera right as you said that, so it was great. You didn't actually get a chance to respond. <laughs> That's actually perfect. Nice timing. Great fire. <laughs> I quite like that. Um, yes, G2, congratulations. Welcome to the Xfinity Post Game Analyst Desk. Um, yes, that was actually very nice. So G2 goes through in the first seed. They go straight to the semifinals. Uh, much like the regular season, a good bounce back in this group to, to make it there. Yeah, for sure. It looked like they uh, hit the apex of their... <laughs> I wanted to do it again, and then I just saw your eyes, and I was like, I can't. I can't <laughs> it's pretty it. good. Yeah, never mind. I'll drop that there. But, uh, you know, they looked a lot better today. They looked oh, like I, I thought you were doing A for a Apex for A. No, I was doing it because yesterday I did, like, yeah, shots yeah, yeah. and body. Right. Well, it was funny my way. It's just amazing the contrast, like, G2 today compared to yesterday and also SK, SK Gaming, right? We yeah. were talking in the pre-show about how they are the team to beat this tournament. Didn't lose a single round on the T side, but then today they were just abysmal. They just got pretty much manhandled. First by Envias on Cobblestone, then uh, by uh, G2, G2 on Cobblestone, yeah. then by Envias on Inferno. SK winning only three rounds on the CT side in the first half. Which is yesterday they had those like super shutout T sides as well, right? So they didn't give themselves a chance. Right, and here, we're going to bring up the standings here at the end of the group. This is how everything updates up. G2, Fnatic, Envy, and SK all have the same uh, three and two record. However, G2 owns the tiebreaker of all the other teams that they're tied with. So that's that's quite nice. So this does not mean that the SK is out, despite yes. them being in fourth place. So g two yeah, like confused. we said, G2 goes through. Fnatic, Envy, SK will be playing a tiebreaker series. Um, we'll explain all those all those rules and the situations in a little bit after a break. But um, for now, this has been, um, I mean, Immortals and Cloud9, they're out. Do we want to say anything, any commiserations to the defeated opponents, or do we just want to gloss over and move on to the winners? To be expected. To be expected. I mean, uh, I think for, for Immortals, it was at least a, a decent performance, considering the recent changes they've yeah. had. So not really much you can expect from them in, uh, in this group. Any in disappointment in Cloud9, or is this kind of, you know, what we felt was going to happen. Well, they won, they won Inferno against G2, which was quite good. Did we have higher hopes, though? I, mean. I think, you know, we, we expected them to fight for that that uh, third spot. Instead, yeah. it was Envious. So let's talk about a positive one. And Envious kind of blew us all away, right? Like, yeah. it wasn't, like, we're sleeping on Envious is probably the best way to put it because they're a team who is made up of the leftovers. They, this super team happened and then they had to kind of, whatever pieces they had left, build this squad. Online, it, they didn't look like like they could uh, beat anybody, but they did okay. They got the wins they had to. They had that big win 2-0 uh, against Australis in the last game of the season. So they showed that they was there. It just didn't look like the the style that they were playing was anything too fancy. And then you had RPK in that last game for them, drop bombs and get them across the line and get them into this tiebreaker. So looking looking pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. Going to work on that one. Yeah. Uh, but but definitely, I mean, you know, I know, Yeko, you like that tweet by Hastro that, that Envy just beats both Brazilian teams, eating some Brazilian barbecue, what was it, 16-2, 16-2, 16-3 today <laughs> in their two games. Yeah, very dominant performance. I think this is probably one of the most fruitful boot camps we've ever seen because they've been, you know, on a boot camp for a week or, or 10 days or something along those lines and they just came into this tournament all guns blazing. I mean, they're not through the groups just yet. Right. They still have to play the tiebreakers, but I think they've exceeded everyone's expectations for now. Yeah, and naturally we do see, we are going to see G2 in Dallas this week, and they have qualified for the semifinals. So if you're a G2 fan, if you're not, if maybe you're just a Shox and a Kenny fan, you want to come see him, make sure you get your tickets to Dallas. Come meet all of us as well. ProLeague.com slash Dallas. The link was just below. Uh, yeah, those tickets are on sale. We'll see you this weekend. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll figure out all the tiebreaker rules, all the situations, and we'll keep you updated.
the fans roar. The moment you can't hold yourself back. This feeling the normal human will being push being you to your limits anybody, 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 anybody. once again. Black Equalizer brightens dark scenes without overexposing bright areas. Use the S switch to quickly access the setting and switch between save modes. Athletes aren't just born, they're molded from the core, a core of strength, a core of laser focus. A core that can handle anything. A core that sweats the small stuff. A core that's the difference maker, game changer, world shocker. You see, hard work makes the athlete, but the edge of a core i7 processor makes you unstoppable. This is your chance to actually make it into the pro league, be a professional Counter-Strike player. That's the thing that Mountain Dew League provides. Penguin, you know what? If anybody has a shot at 2-0, it's Penguin. Beautiful Counter-Strike. You usually only see that into the professional level of things. We are the one of the youngest team in top 20. Many teams can underestimate us and we can uh, surprise them with our tactics. Show our Polish power. Start your esports career now at play.eslgaming.com.
<laughs> Welcome back to the <laughs> Pro League. We've got tiebreakers, and you can see we're all having a lovely time. Uh, first matchup is going to be Fnatic taking on Envious, and the winner of that will play SK. It's going to be on DHN. I know, Yanko, you want to you want to explain the, the tiebreaking format? The tiebreaker situation that, yeah, that the we've got situation okay. we have Yeah, so on. each team uh, vetoes two maps, basically, and we ended up on train. We play MR3, 10K, so basically overtime rules uh, to, you know, speed things up a little bit, and we will have these teams battle it out on train. We had the same map played in Katowice, and it was quite interesting. You know, a bit of back and forth. There are lots of extra overtimes on top of that. But I have a better method for how we can solve these tiebreakers. I don't know if you guys are in for this, but I think we do scissors, paper, rock. And that's the best way for, to decide. Who's this who, done with. Uh, you can be SK. I'll be envious. I like that. And you can be Fnatic. All right, let's Good. do it. I'll shoot. Scissors, paper, shoot. rock, shoot. Okay. You ready? Scissors, paper, rock, shoot. Oh, uh, right. Maybe this is a better <laughs> format. Yep. Uh, but, you know, coming into this one here, that, that wasn't as funny as I thought it was going to be. That gap yeah, that we no, just came up listen, with. Listen, they don't, they don't all land, chat. Yeah, the, we tried. The, yeah, the, the thing is, you, we tried. Um, as long as everyone's smiling. And it's also rock, paper, scissors. You say it backwards. Yeah. I'm from Australia. We do a lot of things backwards. <laughs> well, Yanko says leaves, so. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to, whatever you want to came from that one. Uh, but yeah, so obviously getting back to Counter Strike, getting a little bit more pull, you know, real things back in. Uh, Fnatic Envy will be playing on train. The winner of that plays against SK, and, and we'll kind of go through that. And I think the the winner of that goes through, and the loser plays the loser of this first match as well. So I mean, it's just a cycle of overtimes essentially to figure out. Everyone has to play everyone. Listen, Matt, I'm gonna go by your line. This is what I've been told. I don't want to hear you questioning things from across the room. Two wins and you're through. Yeah. yeah, that's the best way to look at it, right? Cool. And I think if with, with these three teams we have here, SK, historically, a fantastic train team. Fnatic have the versatility of, of having so many AWPers and Rifles who can get a lot done to be great on this map, especially with the 10K, right? They can start off very strong. Yep. And then Envious, they have a, I'd say, more unorthodox style of the way that they play this. You know, Scream getting boosted up and connected with that Rifle being passive until they get to the bomb train and then unleashing his fury from that point. Their way of doing it, it is... It, SK and uh, Fnatic play very similar, like, in their approach. You know, they have aggression, they have multiple AWPers. They usually have the one guy anchoring that in a bomb site. So I think Envious, are the ones who have drawn the uh, short straw here, unfortunately. Uh, another problem is, like, this is such a high-pressure situation. Even for SK, they, they had a 3-0 start yesterday. Now they're in a situation where they need to play tiebreakers to even make it out of the groups. But uh, in, in pure gun rounds, it's very difficult tiebreaker to be super aggressive on the T side, right? To go for those really cocky outside rushes, outside executes. Most team, teams turn to the slow uh, pace style and that's where uh, SK is very very strong on the CT side just being aggressive and finding holes in your default and, and getting advantages early on that's something that Fnatic is also very good at so Envious maybe needs to you know do something unconventional in order to to have a good chance against these two teams I think something else you have to look out for is the way that these teams you know deal with that that wad of cash they have make sure they don't blow it too early hold on to it don't be doing double ops from the get-go maybe right. make sure that definitely happening every single time yeah definitely like, double off. I would love <laughs> <laughs> see, I would love to see, like, maybe on the T side. We saw it actually, Chris J does it in overtimes. He'll buy, like, on the T side, he'll buy a, uh, a, or a UMP or get one bought for him and then drop Oscar the orb. It's, it's like a good way to manage money going Ooh, forward. Wait. It was the, it was Katowice, right? The phase Astralis tiebreaker where, where phase first round of overtime got four UMPs nice. and rushed, rushed thinner. Yeah, I, I think right. it, was, it was something along those lines, and I think Straight it out almost of my nightmares. worked. I don't think it worked. I don't think they won that round, but it almost worked, and they had enough to buy for the rest of the the. <laughs> yeah, all right. Genius. Insane. Why not? Yeah, we'll see if there's going to be any shenanigans like that in this matchup. So the first tiebreaker coming your way, Fnatic taking on Envy for a playoff spot. It's Sadikus and Henry G. Yeah, we are. Uh, we are the tiebreak casters. It's the and you're second the time we've seen this. Sorry? You're the commissioner. You I'm the commissioner. You're keeping count of everything and making sure it's all done properly. Yellow cards. I will hand out all sorts of uh, yep. penalties and issues for everyone. And whatever Matt says, that is final. So that is final. I've got though. a lot of people talking in my ear right now. <clears> they haven't <throat> shut off the mics. So that's nice. That said. It's train again, and they did talk about this that is strategy with the uh, with the SMGs. When did we last see this? Kind of it's uh, this happened. We had this tiebreaker situation kicked off on train as well. So it's like uh, it is a bit of an like a nightmare. I have to say it's, it's weird. It's happened twice in a row now, but here we are on train. Envious versus Fnatic, and we're going to have 10k MR3. It's basically this classic overtime format. If you win it, to be fair, on train, it lends itself to like three zeros. Three zeros is like breaking the serve. It kind of compares to tennis in that respect. So we'll see what happens here. Money doesn't seem to be correct, Matt. From what I can see, you need 10k per buyout. 800 won't really do it. Won't be the best tiebreaker scenario. No, it won't be. 
Could do that though. You could do three pistol rounds in a row. Keep it exciting. Yeah, yeah. Let's not. So they're gonna have to fix that. But we'll get underway. Actually, I think the problem is we. Uh, if you look at the top, it says round one of thirty. We haven't loaded yeah, no, the overtime the config. config. Yeah. yeah so that, that will do it. We're in the regular config. That will do it. Well, hopefully we'll be in there momentarily. We'll keep track of what's going on. So, Matt, this is a. Uh, a fun day for Group A. We did say it's a group of death, and it's certainly living up to that expectation. Envious out of nowhere, finding amazing form today. It's true. G2 as well. Who would have thought after losing to Immortals today, they end up winning the group and going straight to the semifinals? Yep, absolutely. Imagine they beat Immortals. They would have just been in a world of their own. And if they beat Immortals and Fnatic had won the last game, we would have had a four-way 3-2 split. But uh, that's not the way it was, and they make it through. Yeah, you're right. It is uh, very unlikely that it went down in that regard. So we're going to Dust. Yeah, we've decided it's a new way to play the game. Dust Murray. We're going to go to Dust One. You've got spaghetti all over your mouth, by the way. Nice bit of tomato sauce. Doesn't show on camera. That's fine. I can see it. Or, or, it's all over the place. We're going to be this side. So the mic's yeah. covering it. Yeah, you're fine. Saving it, it looks for later. Nice, though. Saving it for later. Keep it in the beard. It's the flavor saver. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we train Matt. So we haven't really had the cast Envious at all this time, you and I. So we have not. We're going to see what the the new look Envious planning to be in boot camp, grinding it out. Apparently looking very good today, from what I've heard on the B stream. So that's going to be exciting to see what kind of form they can bring on train. So Fnatic, we've cast a lot of them in train in the past. Yes, we have. JW pretty lights out with the AWP on this map. It's one of those maps you see him kind of return. So that's what we're about Fnatic. Every map. Different orpers on either side, different orpers. We saw all of us on the T side of overpass orping, then it was Flusher. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's a Far Cry from 2014. Dennis as well, I think. JW is the clean cut opera. Yeah. And then in 2015, they started shuffling things around. We are live. This is it. To say round one of 30. Double up to start for JW and Olaf. It does say round one of 30, but the money was correct and they're playing, so we'll just have to manually count it if it doesn't auto switch for us. We can do that. First of four, basically. So, that said, B looks to be the intended bomb site to start things off much faster to plant on B than it is on A. But with weapons, that changes things considerably more so when you've got an AWP posted up inside of the B site to shut down the choke points. And Olaf is doing exactly that. Standard angle. Oh, he's fallen off. Thankfully, RPK didn't go around the corner at that moment. So he's capable. Oh, Olaf, you've got to learn your angles. Shoulder peak, flash out. Olaf's got to fire into it. He's already off the position, which means a bomb site should, or bomb plant, excuse me, should happen. However, Olaf gets back in time to take down RPK. Sixer gets Crims on rotation. They still have to control that upper position because Sixer's actually walking from the bottom ramp. They need to swing around and cut off the bomb site. They've got smokes in order to allow the plant, but it's not yet in position. They're actually going to back off. So they get all the way in the site, force the rotations, and they're going back to A. The man to lead it, Happy, the Lurk, is going to try and hold off the site on his own as Dennis takes down XMS and confirms they're no longer there. That's a really nice play from him. What a cool that is. Showing so much presence there. A bit of a gamble to leave the site. Don't know if there's any backstabs coming in, but the three on three, double orb set up for the retake on the outside bomb site. It's not great. Six there with a great angle there. The timing, though. Oh, no. Three players actually heading in that position. He actually moves away. Still looking good, though, Envious. And he pressures towards Fnatic. He has to consider that as well, because he knows Dennis pushes up in the site, but they want to stick together. Means there's got to be communication as well to allow Scream from the main red train to watch both sides of the bomb train as they get on approach. Good play from Happy to take Dennis. Scream's now going to push up, finds JW, and this should be Team Envious, or is it? Because inside of the smoke, knife goes out. Scream's got it. That's the safest way to do it. Getting the knife out instead of crouch spraying, not being near the situation. As soon as you have the, you hear the defuse coming, you know who the bomb is. Go in and start slashing your knife. You get sound cues out to what you're actually, what you're actually when you're hitting it. It's not like a BM thing. Some people are thinking, oh, wow, it's just showing off. That's actually the safest way to cancel that situation out. So good job by Scream. Envious there. Really nice call after getting the in Inside area under control, leaving XMS there while the teammates rotated. Smokes down, Molotovs everywhere as well. It seemed very convincing, and Fnatic took the bait, hook, line, and sink up. The round number two here after buying that double orb setup, and be very careful. If they lose this round, they'll be on like almost eco going into round number three here. So this is dangerous now. That's why Yanko described the double orb setup in overtime. Not necessarily a great idea. If you just lose that first round, you're in a lot of trouble. Smoke will be. Redeployed at the bottom of Pop Dog. It must be bizarre. I mean, Counter Strike at face value is is the easiest of esports to get into as a viewer. But it must be bizarre if you don't play the game to listen to some of the call out for places. Pop Dog. Yeah, right. It's there's always some very bizarre names. Jungle. What what is that? Yeah. In case of Chad, you've got diggity everywhere. The whole map. Pretty much. Crim 
Adams is trying to find his way through the smoke. Patience this round, considering the pace of the last one. Tesla starts it off traded, but well, XMS finds the kill. It's Olaf that had position on him from Hitch. Happy's gonna try and get through the smoke. Olaf looked this direction and the way. He does a double take. JW's got him as a result of it, since Sixer hits Olaf. But not before JW got a kill, leaving Envy with just one player remaining and 18 yeah. seconds. So we should go 1 1. Much slower round there from MVS getting picked off one by one. You can see Crims, JW, Dennis, and Olaf Meister. Leave that team A's. If Flash can get the last kill, that'd be nice. Sixer will try and go for this. Run out of time, though. Not really much you can do about this one. JW will find the final frag two for him in total with the AWP in the first shot and managing to get an AK to finish things off there. It's going to be 1 1 the final round of the first half here. And now they pull it back. Like we said, if they lost that round, they would be an almost eco for the last. So, nice to avoid that fate at least. And we go for MVS now. I'm not like an orbit. Okay, so with six out with the tech now, you seem to have an orb drop from there. It is. That uh, comes in. And round number three. Delivering to the table here. It looks like we've got two players heading towards inside for Fnatic at the moment. Olaf Meister with the AWP, that shotgun style orb towards the lower ramp. The first pick, Flashbang doesn't get him. So might find something here. JW with the other orb towards Ivy. They might do a run boost here. That's normally pretty standard these days. Here it comes. Ooh. Quite a good one. Yeah, I was going to say quite a good one indeed. JW now has to decide how he wishes to position. They're going to Molotov him off, so AWP is not going to be able to watch out at Ivy. Flash off, hold position long enough so that he can get back in that direction, and the smoke is sufficient to allow him to do so. Bomb's going to be dropped over, though, to XMS as he heads that'll lead up the stairs. Is that where they are? Yep. Yeah. So they're not down in A main, they're above. Wish to be. Just a trot. A gentle trot. RPK is close to upper. Flush it alone in the site. Throw out Molotovs at this point. 44 seconds, so he's waited to save that utility. Buys a bit more time, but there's no rotations. They have got Olaf with an AWP in the site, but he's not watching directly at lower or upper. Okay, take that back. He does have an angle, but it's wide. 30 seconds. I didn't think you could see it from there. 30 indeed. Bomb's in lower. Flush is in great position. Spots one. Walk out. Takes both. Bomb goes down. Not in a good position to take the round as RPK gets one back. He's actually doubled up to take Dennis and Olaf missing a shot. He's got to get to the bomb is the problem. 14 seconds. He's going to be the one fighting onward. Sixer has to plant immediately as well. Smoke down. He'll go inside of it. Eight seconds. He just barely gets there. Nade will put him on to 84, and he has a huge... Huge task to get a clutch. Nice flash. Starts it off. Knows the bomb's planted wide. He can't necessarily play the high side. They're going to try and get on it. He is going to go high anyway. Go Molotov. He's going to go all the way around. He's got a Molotov, but I don't know if it's going to go far enough because it is so far wide on the train. Does it reach the bomb? Yeah, it does. Oh, that's so good. He could do this alone. Sixers rotated back around as well, so they think he's upper. He's gone back lower. Chex doesn't hear them on it, and now Olaf's going to watch the ramp as he gets closer. Two seconds. I think they've just done it. Olaf's got the shot. Oh. Fnatic gets the round. That's quite close and a reasonable try from Sixer. Yeah, very reasonable try. I have to say, that was actually quite exciting for him. Hits a nice shot with the flashbang towards the lower ramp. Molotov just about on the bomb, like he said. Can't quite do it, though. Olaf Meister. And we're going back to dust one. So we like yeah, to we have to, we have to restart the half. So obviously the config didn't quite get loaded correctly. Yeah, that's why we had one out of 30 instead of one out of six, right? So that's going to be 2 1 in favor of Fnatic after losing the first round as well. Pretty standard stuff. This is how we get into double overtimes, triple overtimes. This is pretty much part of the course, isn't it? Yeah, one we, for the T I, side. We, I think we played what? A tr we got to a triple one phase played against yeah, Astralis? That's right. Was that right? Yeah, so. In phase one. That's correct. Yeah, phase one, that tiebreaker, and actually ended up uh, going through. Astralis made it in, and then who was. That, that would tiebreaker was to decide who won the group, though. So they all made it in. Yeah. I think. <clears throat> I remember correctly. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. So, no, Heroic already won that group, right? Was that the correct? And then... Heroic won the, the other group side. on day two. I don't... don't that's, that's, not, that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. Why are we bringing that up? Yeah, I'm just going to blame production on that one. They, they were in my ear that time too, guys. Sure. Well, second half coming in. I can, I'm on the server right now. Everyone's connected. We'll be getting at this momentarily. The money's good. That's looking nice. So, the numbers are going to be quite right on the top there. So, basically looking for the... So 2-1. So we need two rounds here on the T-side for Fnatic to do it. One will mean we go into double overtime, and Envious need a 3-0 on the CD side. That's pretty much all the outcomes. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Double orb set up on the CT side as well. Happy and Sixer. Happy. 
quite used to being the secondary or moving teams. Obviously, when Kenny S was in Envious, sometimes he liked to be the primary as well, has to be said. Run boost from Olaf Meister and Dennis here towards IV6, though. Can he hit the shot? Actually, that's even better. You didn't even see the toes of Olaf getting across. That could be quite problematic for him. First to four. You've called that already. Just to remind you, we've got the score in the lower bottom, the lower left. It's gone fix off. Double off obviously means one on either side spread out accordingly. Sixer's actually going to rotate his around onto the A site. Two pushed up to Pop Dog, so they're sitting at crossfire for him and giving up Ivy. Of course, walking in Ivy is Olaf. He's going to try and lurk this and get back over to B. It's starting off well for Fnatic as well because Flusha and Dennis hit great opening shots. So Sixer's AWP manages at least to catch off Olaf and give them a fighting chance to get back in the site over toward B. Even still, oh, battle because Flusha just walks out to take down XMS. The Molotov there can't see through it. 15 HP, and Fnatic's going to find their third round. One to go, and they'll pick up this, the first of our round robin tiebreak format. Yes. So I think the analyst broke it down. You need two wins. So even if you lose this game, it means you go down to like the lower bracket, I guess, and you play the loser at the next one. And then we'll work out who gets eliminated at that point. But here we go. Round number two, match point for Fnatic in the first round on the T side here. No double offset for Envious this time. And it was towards inside the side that Fnatic went. Smokes in the upper ramp as well, down towards lower. Overwhelming the frags and hitting all the AK headshots. Very nice stuff there after getting Olaf Meister posted up in towards Ivy. He showed some presence and then his teammates executed towards the B side. Run boost coming in once again. Ooh. There it goes. Oh, the oh. oh, that is so. Imagine that heart and throat yeah. moment. Like, Olaf's like, ah, wait, I'm in the open. Yeah, that wasn't as classy as the one they got in the round previous. Luckily, no orb waiting for them, so no harm, no foul. And we'll see what happens here. It's going to be XMS, though. Good positional control towards the main entrance of the A bomb site. Got in there. Means he can get lots of intel for his team. The bomb's towards inner, though, for now. Let's spread out, Fnatic. Let's pick this round up. One step closer to making it to the playoff. G2 have already there, they're in the semi-final. They did top this group, even though they had 3-2 as well, comes down to head-to-head -to -head exchanges, you know. Smoke goes to the right, JW, with Happy in front of him, is timidly looking to try and get inside of the B site. Flash in front of his face, a little bit low of the ramp, so he'll keep his vision restored. Or rather intact, I should say, not restored. Never lost it. Can't restore if you don't lose it. 30 seconds, map. Tension building, Olaf Meister by himself. He gets one frag. I'm saying they're going to win it. He's wants to show presence. Gets his kill, Ooh. can't do it. Lovely shot by Sixer. Very good. And now they can keep their composure in position as RPK snapping back to the left, takes down Crimson Flusher. JW looks to find an opening, but Happy's slipped in to find the gap between the train. We go 1 1 in this half, particular, but 3 2 overall. This, the last of our first set of overtime. Yeah. If they tie it up, we do it again. Yeah, classic strategy there. From Fnatic, VP duo of Pasha towards Ivy, Phase duo of Carrigan. You send one of your key players towards Ivy. The idea is he tries to show presence, smoke to the left, Molotov's out, pushes the CDs back. He comes out, he gets one kill. That's great, that's a cue to go inside. If he gets taken down straight away, it's kind of obvious. And then they'll be rotating straight towards inner, and you can see how Envious managed to deal with it. 1 1. 1 for Envious, we do it all over again. If Fnatic win this, we go to. Well, it's a victory for them, essentially. Happy now towards the upper ramp, gets Molotov off. That's a way to deal with that sort of situation. It means you can get brown on control here from Fnatic. JW is on the pallet right now, looking to see if any CTs jump up and just cross out. JW and Dennis. So we have got Olaf Meister once again towards Ivy, this time with the AWP. Double up set up on the T side. Long teams. Do you like to run this setup? It's certainly unorthodox in terms of traditional counter strike, but has had some proven success. He's there by himself once more, but six is on the other side, not aggressively facing him. This looks like it could be another inside play from what I can work out right now. The bomb's still down. Olaf Meister pushing to the end of Ivy. Warm in hand. Can he get anything done here? Does he just go through the smoke? Is he waiting for it to go down? Six uh, does have the advantage, but it's RPK to strike first. Refrag by Crims. Dennis, good find on entry to XMS. Molotov down toward Ivy as well to help his teammate get in. 
Scream, though, takes Crims. That's one facet gone, and Sixers turn this around once more. So we could look toward double overtime as JW goes back to the bomb with 26. It's Dennis that has to find space and an opening, and he's quite open on top of the green train. As soon as the rotation comes in from, excuse me, Happy, he's a sitting duck, but Happy's not elected to go in just yet. Dennis is waiting for it, but he's not sure where to look first. It doesn't even matter. Happy's got it. We start all over. We do, I indeed. I think we could do that a lot today. Yep. Like we said, pretty par for the course. Two one leads itself. Well, lends itself. You're really close to you this this event. What? Like uh, emotionally? Ah, uh, well, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's what you. I had some R and R, so I'm yeah. uh, back in the game. Yeah, you seem happier after you got in your little car, a little drive around. That thing's unreal. Yeah, <laughs> that thing is unreal. That is the best car I've ever driven in my life. That thing's well, insane. Go. Well, there we go. We do it all over again. Stays of train. The sides stay the same, I believe, as well. So we'll have MVS there on the CT side. Good job from both sides. Fnatic winning the first round there of their T half. He thought they were going to run away with it, but MVS managed to recalculate. Double up setup seemed to not being too strong then the first gun round for the CTs. They seem to be throwing that away. Then just did a single up setup. That's when they get back into it. Like we said, the economy, bit of an issue on the CT side. So you could be very careful when you make the decision to get that double up out. So, so rather than reset the score to keep it simple and just say first to four, again, we just start at zeros. We're just continuing the overtime process. So it's first to seven now okay. as the scoreboard and obviously the config continues through. So they'll keep it as three, three down here and that'll update. So first to seven will win now. Okay. Good to know. Well, the commissioner has spoken. The rules are final. It's true. Don't try and question him. Don't double check it this time. Don't double check anything. That's worked it all out. So the server's just reloading right now. And like we saw, like it, overtime's always really, really weird for me. Like normally, it's it's at the hell mary moment when you're in overtime. You're trying to completely change what you've been doing throughout the game. You're trying to throw some wild cards in there. So you're normally doing lots of fast rushes or crazy fakes and trying to show strategies you've already shown. When it's this sort of format, when it's like these guys haven't played on training this tournament, it kind of goes back to default gun rounds. It's got a slower pace. They know how much on the line. They don't want to take those crazy risks by doing those kind of rushes and stuff. Yep. That's so always all quite default stuff. Fnatic, all of my trying to work towards Ivy time and time again. Didn't really get that much success there. He was trying to get the pick, trying to show presence, but it could seem envious. Weren't taking the bait whatsoever. I'd prefer them to group up and trying to stop those fakes with one player. It doesn't seem to be bringing them that much fortune. No, uh, yeah, no, not at all. And, I, and the problem is as well, I think the B side op is great in situational rotations, but when you're posted up to hold the choke point, it's so easy to flash off and move. Yeah. It's better, I find, when like you actually play a passive angle and allow them to walk in. Like we saw Olaf do in round two, I think it was, where he's sitting to watch upper and I'll let them walk forward. Whereas when he was sitting on top of the spool, he was flashed and smoked off, etc. If you can get to the corner, obviously it's a little different. Well, we'll see. And now it's this with Matt. So do we knife round again? Because they are going to be... Getting back into it. it says live on my screen at least, but there's actually any we do not. We just so continue okay. on. It's that's, that's why we don't start at zeros again. It's just continue process. So flip, 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 flip. Let's actually, sorry, you'd in. stay where we were because it's a yeah, double. Yeah, envy was on the CT side. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so we stay where we are. Um, okay, then here we go. Double orb set up. Going with it once more. Happy and Sixer. Everything's been reset. So I think we well, I think we'll just go by the scoreboard in here, Matt. It's going to be one and a six. So forget about the seven thing. Oh, it's going to be exactly the same as it was before. Double orbs, CD side, single orb for JW. Very good in this map. Rambu's coming in once again. Let's we'll see if they can pull it off. Nailed it. Dennis gets the first shot. Takes down Scream. Five and four, very early on in the round as well. So that's one of the key players for MVS going down. Crims this time towards Ivy. Not off. Six of though. Round and ready to take the first shot. Here's the minion. Swings wide. Gets a shot that JW gets back through the smoke impressively. And it's up to XMS. Up a ladder, down a hatch as he goes around to try and find exactly where Flush has gone, but doesn't really have a realization at all as he gets shot in the back. And it's Fnatic that seemed to strike first this time. It was Envy last time with a quite nifty strategy, remember? Fnatic with Crims holding off RPK should confirm the round and should go 4 3 in their favor. Happy now. Doesn't really have much of a shout here. Has got the kip. Just to note as well, CTs will very rarely buy head armor in these sort of overtime scenarios. Like we said, money is certainly a bit of an issue, but doesn't look like he'll be going over this one. Might as well save the AWP, keep the money strong for the next round. You can drop that over to Sixo, who is their primary AWP now. It was known to be a really strong rifler um, when this envious project uh, replaced a Devil with that player, and he was actually looking great, and now he's 
onto the main orb responsibility, which he's not a stranger to. He's doing that at 1.6 a lot, and I think it's some good work here. It's not really a big factor, but T's going to have fine money regardless of this 10k sort of format. JW saves his AWP, so Happy does go down eventually. So that's actually really key for Fnatic here. There's fighting him, sure. They lose a couple of players, but they limit the CT money. Double orb, certainly not an option for the CTs now. And if they lose this round, they will be on an eco. Well, not on eco, forced by, obviously, for round number three. So Fnatic kicking it off in style here. Headshots across the board, focusing on that IV area as well. Six are overwhelmed. And we get to round number two. Pass play from Olofmeister. Gets to his actual name position. Gets into exactly that, the position that he can capitalize on Sandwich. is still waiting at A-Mandid for Olaf to find an opening. He's going to have to. Certainly going to have to. As Dennis now sets for a smoke that should go down toward Hell and Ivy. Block off room for Olaf. He's going to go on his own. Scream's going to spot him directly above. We can see it through the X-ray. Scream just fired down and took his head off. So Envy could get one of their own immediately. Indeed. Five and three. Two, one. Could come back to haunt us once again. Fanatic now with a lot to do here. Less than a minute remaining now. Just don't have to overcommit, but Dennis finding some room to work with here. It's a headshot on Sixer as well. Monotos being deployed. This will be the final commitment from Fnatic here. Could go back towards Popdog if they desire, but for now, trying to find the next frag. It's XMS to pick it up, though. Flusher goes down. Four on two now. Bomb yet to be planted. And Scream coming in for the backstab. This is a perfect flag if he can time it well. Scream, good shot on Dennis. Swinging in behind, Crims knows he's there but can't do anything of it. Scream's got a great round on his hands. Three kills for him in total. And we get knotted up once more, so 4-4. Four, four. Indeed. So envious. We said that was a must-win round. If you lose that one as a CT side, you're going to be going into just pistols and UMPs for the final one. So great work. Scream, like you said, amazing round as well. Great flank there. Nice awareness. Perfect aim as usual. Good stuff by him. 1-1, one, one. final round of the first half here. Of double overtime or double tiebreaker, I'm not really sure. What we, we kind of made these terms up last time, we've got them all. But uh, round of three, so we're focusing towards inside. That's what the bomb is for now. JW with the AWP as well, and it goes in towards the back of the first train. Doesn't actually land any damage just yet. Very default round for Fnatic overall. Still have the nades, of course. JW trying to work that first pick. Bomb on the back of Flush Up. Flies towards inside, and JW surely will be falling back. Just takes a nade to the face instead. W. Trying to work his way in toward lower scream. Meanwhile, we'll hold off bottom pop dog as Crims sits at the top of the ladder. He could come under fire, and he's also got a friend. He's got someone else up close to help him as XMS is going to be there. So even if he loses one scream, XMS should trade, does. Works out perfectly for Envious. However, they lose happy elsewhere. RPK should make up for that. They could be the one to find themselves a foot forward in this particular overtime tiebreak situation. Fine from Dennis onto XMS. Yeah, that's the defining killer of the round right there. Envious now left in a really difficult position. It's the final round of the first half of overtime here. RPK in a two versus one. Luckily, Dennis was dinked. He's got something to work with here. Bomb yet to be planted as well. And we'll see whether RPK can find any room to move with her. The M4A4 gives his position away by firing a few bullets there. And that might funnel them towards inside. One player waiting outside. That will be Olaf Meister trying to find RPK here. 14 seconds remaining as well. Bomb planted in now. And I think that seals the fate for RPK. He does. Okay, I thought he was about to sneak by. Doesn't happen. Olaf Meister finds the frag there. And it's going to be 2-1 on the T side. That might just do it now for Fnatic. Let's see if it does or does not. Pulled the round back in an impressive fashion. They had the same lead at the end of the first half in reverse when they were on the CT side. So you'd think that maybe this is their chance. Yeah, absolutely. So they go on to quote unquote easier side now. The more favorable side, I guess, is a better way to put it. And they will be going for the double orb setup as well. Olof Meister and JW this time. Orb for six on the T side. Four AKs, of course. And then M4s on the CT side. Here we go. One round will find match point for Fnatic. Two gets in the win. Envious still can win the half, win this half 3-0 and take it. But I'm sensing another overtime is possible. 
Let's see whether MBS can find this first round, just like Fnatic did. JW waiting for the run boost once again. Both teams trying this. Doesn't take the bait in terms of the shot. JW with an aid through. Sixer's going to jump up as well. HP left in the corner for XMS, excuse me, not for XMS, for RPK rather, XMS has none because JW hits the shot at him directly. Molotov off, they're going to continue to push down Ivy. He'll relocate inside of the site though, doesn't need to get too close or get caught off in an untradeable position. They just have to maintain at this point, Fnatic find themselves on that point, Scream. He's looking alive in overtime. Good shot on Olaf as well as Grims is tight to the angle and hitch. But it's going to be Envious that pulled this back and it's all on to flush up. He's trying to rotate around from ladder to get in position. Bomb going to be planted safe side of train. They know they've cleared the back alley. So rightfully so, they plant in that position. Great shot, Seven Scream, I have to say. Moving up to his name of the one tap king. Good job there. As he comes out of the side alley after losing the first frag as well. It looked like Fnatic would be picking that one up. I'm sure this was the replay of his couple of frags here. Nice shot there. Perfect stuff to hit on Dennis as well. That was so nice. From Scream, brings him back to the round. Couldn't find the third, but the job had been done. And now we're going to run number five. JW with the shotgun here. Had enough for a rifle for sure, but uh, opting for the Mac 7. Taking round number five, and like I said, if He's pick up that first T round. Double overtime. Or triple, I should say. Very possible. Olaf Meister baiting in JW now behind the server. Another default round here. Both teams focusing quite heavily on the IV area at the start of the round. Only three there to start. Run boost coming in, trying to bait out the shot from Olaf Meister here. Run boost can fail. It's quite rare for an Orpa to try and commit to that shot. But this is JW trying to take him down. He gets one kill, but Envy is striking back with two of their own. It's going to be the four on three now. Pressure applied to Fnatic. XMS gets in position. Dennis, good find, we will take down XMS, he's going to look above, see Sixer, but Sixer gets in with the Tech-9, and Envy is going to pick up their third round. Getting one away, they've got map point first. Money's in the bin. Yep, they could take this, that's it's... impressive, because then Fnatic, Fnatic have to go against SK and could be knocked. That's right, so just to reiterate, whoever loses this game goes against SK, right? That's correct? No, commissioning? Winner, winner stays in. But the way the round robin format works, Go they would have to play SK with one loss, is where I was getting. Okay. So. Right. This is why I don't get involved. It's fine. <laughs> I did say that in a way that made it sound like it was coming yeah. up with immediate effect. Immediately, it would be the winner of this. So. That's what I mean. Let's stick with, let's stick with okay. immediate. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's sorry do to that. Confuse you, Henry. Let's do that. <laughs> well, uh, kiss from now on. Keep it simple, stupid. No more kissing. Uh, good point. You got to pay us 10 grand every time. <laughs> Olaf takes down our PK. Happy's going to continue to push back in toward the site to try and compensate for this because without weapons, they're not going to lead. They need to trade this and keep this even and not let it get out of hand. Happy can't do much trying to spray through the wooden board as we saw them jumping away. Well, Fnatic, like we always say, the master of these sort of rounds. CZ seems to be their forte, and it's all off my to find the first shot. Picks up an AK-47 as well. Five and four now. Envious looking to get the 3-0 here on the T side. Might not happen, though, as they pick up another rifle. It's going to be Happy looking towards inside, known to try and take attention away on other sides of the map, while his teammates get ready towards outside, it seems. He's actually all the way towards the end of upper ramp. Michael for his teammates to come in. They know they've got such a huge advantage here. They've seen the CZ. They know there would be a lack of utility, maybe no kits. No orbs suddenly available for Fnatic here. As we are in the final round, 45 seconds remaining. They will be ending up towards inside from what we can see so far. And defending that, it's going to be Olaf Meister and Flusher. The former with an AK-47, Flusher with a CZ. So down. SMS with Flash in front. It's going to continue on despite taking damage to Olaf. It Gathers him up inside of the site. We could be going to another set of overtimes. It's just scream. They go knife it. Okay. Don't, don't count your chickens before they hatch with that knife. Looks like we start again. He's going to get a bomb plant. 14 HP scream. He's got it definitely going down now. Yeah, no chance he gets the gun out in time. So thank you, analysts, for coming to the desk. Perhaps next time just stay sitting until it's over so you don't jinx it. And we will go back to zeros, or I guess rather continue on at sixes. So now we get to the first to ten. No, I think this resets every time. No, on the scoreboard at the top it does, but they were yeah. keeping it locked at the bottom. But it is, it's a full reset that. regardless, right? Listen, I'm the commissioner here, Hank. So you just, just right, play along. You're confusing right. it again. See? Okay, look, they did go back to 3-3. That's what they said they weren't. I'm so sick. See? <laughs> Production, that's twice. <laughs>
I'm just saying, let's keep it simple. It resets every time. We'll just keep track of how many we've done. That's two now. We're going into third to do it all over again. Hopefully this one's a quick restart. I think we've got the config sorted now. Everyone's on the server. No restarts really required. Let's just get back into it. And you can see them buying up. We might just be going straight in. We are. We'll get, we'll get into it now. It's going to be an auto shock of a JW. Can you believe that? On train? All right. The guys were saying on the analyst desk earlier, they saw him recently in a game, lighting it up towards Ivy with this particular weapon. There was a clip on Reddit last week of him using it. And that was actually kind of cool. Doing this, so he pushed in and we get aggressive kills. XMS. off his screen. Sixer's gonna jump his way down instead to try and find the opening as Olaf goes back up. Flush has got RPK. Fanatic looking to start this one off in better form. See, it did stay at threes this time, Hank. It did, yeah. So just to keep just, it interesting. They're just messing around every time. Yeah. They're just uh, keeping it hard on the old commissioner over here. That's how he likes it. Yeah, you know, getting old. Getting soft in my ears. XMS takes down Flusha. Sixer's gonna climb back up, try and fire in before they run away, but either way, Bomb's gonna be planted inside of the B site if they can get up there and get it in time. Finally, they do. And that's why I think they considered it might be going back over to A, because there hasn't been a bomb plant just yet. They'll now confirm that there is, and JW lurking with the shotgun. Sixer doesn't even see him through the flames, takes a massive amount of damage, but it does give them time to set for his entry. And it's Dennis, it doesn't matter, it's gonna take six or it's all to XMS, he's the high roller in this situation. He's got one, looks back, somehow hits Crims. Good time for him to come alive, he's been quiet for most of these little rounds that we've had. Is Happy's gonna get JW, they've given themselves a chance as Dennis has to go toward the bomb. Taps, Happy's got a face, confirms he's not on it. Dink as well, and he's gotten punched off. Happy's gonna win it, Envy goes four. That's when aim punch can become a factor in that map, because if you don't have the head armor, so you get dinks through the wall, aim punch is still a thing. So it's still a bit of a risk not to have it, it obviously saves money. But JW there, if he has a rifle, they probably win that round, right? Because as soon as he doesn't get that kill on lower ramp, he's useless at that point. The T's already pushed down the back, it's an open plant, he can't do anything. So he's there, he's got an auto shotgun, and trying to fire it from lower round, he's just sore. So he's completely out of that round. So that's why I don't like this auto shotgun buy on a map like Train. Like other maps, like Cobblestone and Nuke, for example, it has its place, I think. But a map like Train, I'm not so sure. You have to basically win every duel you take at a close range. If it doesn't go well, you have to retake the other side of the map. You're just dumped for it. That's why I really don't like it on Train. But we'll see whether he can get into it. Envious, find the 1 0 here. And number two, no orbs on the CD side. That's so strange. No orb at all. Okay. No op, but a shotgun. Next best thing, right? You can only have some yeah. specialty weapons. Let's keep buying shotguns. Quota. It's the alligator. It looks kind of like an alligator on the HUD. In case you're wondering. Uh, I've heard that plenty of times. So I know, I but I'm not. Wasn't talking to you, Hank. It's not all about you. We've got. It is all about me. X amount of viewers today. Millions. The millions watching around the world. Yeah, and the thousands in the studio. In the, yeah, exactly. Huh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, see, our producer learned something. Yeah. I wonder if he learned how the tie break system works and that SK is not does. out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't right. think anyone Thanks, does. dude. Yeah. Well, here we go. 30 seconds remaining. Envious now committing. This is where the shotgun needs to step up, and it's not going to. JW had to hit in the corner. The Olaf Meister gets a frag in return, though. Oh, nice work from RPK and XMS. The tag team duo doing some work on the outside. Bob's out here. Four on two. Looks like the round is Olaf Meister left in the three versus one. Orp in hand. Can't do anything about it. 5 3. This is the best lead we've had yet to find a map point. So they'll get two chances at it rather than just the one that we've had. Oh, the money's bleak as well. Bleak? Yeah. I like it. So. CZs, UMPs, they managed to do this before, Fnatic. Have to do it once again. Envious. Looking to make it to the next round of the tiebreaker. Cup, we're going to call it. Tiebreak Cup. Yeah. Fair enough. It's a, it's a battle royale. There we go, then, Envious. What have you got? All of my step, blind, taken down. RPK, from what I've heard, has been very good this tournament. Continuing that good form here. Round of three. 
Looking to get a 3-0 on the T side. That should be a lock-in for a victory. 3-0 three, three on the T side, moving on to CT. That should be it, but you never know. I think we had this in that Astralis phase game as well, and it kept happening. We thought, okay, that's definitely it now. Then it does the exact same on the other side. So Dennis waiting if anyone's going to drop down in Pop Dog and Happy sitting above it, thinking about it. They'll walk by for now. Happy watching the flank as always. Must have heard the pin there because he actually looked back to the right, even though the f it was thrown above and there was no bounce. So Flusher by himself in towards the inside side. CZ is all he's got. But incendiary drop though. Whiffs it, but gets taken down. I don't think it would have made you a difference. You say whiff, but look at how much it spreads further. Yeah. So he goes down, but it doesn't but it means, significant amount of damage. But he would have like delayed a couple of sure. them coming through, right? That would have been the difference, maybe. maybe. But well, either way. He's got it. I think Envious have just done it. They'll take the first win. They'll go straight against for the immediate people who can't play along with no, score lines. It's 3-0, right? They haven't won yet. Oh, yeah, sorry. Good Lord, Commissioner. Keep up, mate. Uh, all right, listen. I uh, saved you, though. I was going to think, should I just let him just kill himself? No, <laughs> no, don't, <laughs> don't do him. that. We need me. We need me. We've got to keep the yellow cards in line. I'm yeah. going to give myself one for that one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yellow card. Uh, it's getting confusing. It's. Uh, yeah, I know. I would, say it's, I would say it's getting late in the day, but it's not really. It's only 1 o'clock, 1.30. Um, listen. In the UK, it's point. almost 10 o'clock. There so you go. There you go. That's the time zone I'm on, at least. What's your excuse? Um... A lot. Yeah. <laughs> so we well, will go to the double up for Envious as a as a complete contrast. If Fnatic pull this back and we do it again, I'm going to be very surprised. So I'm going to stick with my, we'll call it a prediction at this point, okay. that Envious are going to go against SK immediately. Okay. They even played the music as if it was over because they got them so excited. You See, did. I'm getting everyone confused at home today. <laughs> you really are. Well, here we go then. One round will do it for Envious on the CT side. It's a CT sided map, but a fast play from Fnatic here looking for some close range headshots. Actually made it to the bomb plate undetected so far. Envious to fight back right now. Decent. Decent yep. from Scream. Dennis and JW go down. It's Olaf that's going to try and find his way through. Smoke Bomb is dropped. Hang on. Don't come to the desk just yet. He's still alive, and it's Olaf. I think it's 2015. Here we go. Starts with one. Low HP above. He's got two. <laughs> and Olaf looking to try and pull it back. He's got a flash in his way. He's got one on either side of him. Six are getting closer on Sandwich. Could potentially try and peek knowing that the Molotov was thrown out. But Olaf's bought himself some space. The problem is bomb down in the site. He's got a minute to try and get there. And Happy very smartly is going to rotate around toward Pop Dog to be sure of watching the bomb if he comes through A main. Olaf Meister now. The team's fate in his hands. Envious needs to find one more kill, and they win this tiebreaker, opening tiebreaker match, I guess, at the Battle Royale. It's going to be Happy and Sixer, both in AWPs, presumably crossfire set up by the bomb. Happy, that's an interesting position, but he manages to nail it, takes him down, and there it is. Envious oh, do take that fanatic. Look at him. Just keels over backwards. Envious will what go against SK immediately. If SK beat them, they go 1-1, and then there's a chance Fnatic can pull it themselves back in, and everyone sits at 1-1. If Envious win that, they go straight through, and then if Fnatic lose to SK, they're out. So it's well, win, win two, you're through. Win two, lose two, you're out. Confirmed? Double-checked? No. No. Maybe we should let the people Let's, know what's going on. Uh, I, I, well, we've got other people. They'll talk instead. Yes. Yes, we will. Thanks, Matt. Uh, welcome back. Yeah, that was... Uh, so, I mean, it's Envy who takes it. They just should be grinding these out, don't they? I mean, they just don't seem to have any quick. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't see a lot of them on the stream because I don't think anyone expected them. Well, I definitely didn't expect them to perform this well. And uh, they've shut me up. They've done fantastic. They just took Fnatic out, it, it, with, I guess, in the second overtime, relative ease. In the first one, as expected, saw those double orbs come out. Uh, it wasn't... It was three overtimes. Was it three overtimes? I tried three to tell you that times. back there. I wasn't going to correct you on the desk, but then I decided to. Oh. Huh. Okay. It's all right. But you got into a bit of a wrinkle there. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of wrinkles. Bring it back. It all comes back. Back to you in the studio. Back to me in the studio. Yeah, so, so Fnatic's going to drop down. I mean, so it's going to be Envy playing SK is going to be what's coming next. So we're just hanging out here for a little bit uh, while SK joins the server, and it's going to be trade again. Yeah, it was very interesting to see how things develop, right? We were talking in the pre-tiebreaker uh, segment that <laughs> you're not probably going to see a lot of fast executes from the T's and, and that was the case. We just saw slow, methodical play style. You wait for the CTs to kind of spend some of their utility and then you go for the bomb site take. It makes it a lot easier that way. And JW maybe didn't pick the best time to really force that auto yeah, shotgun the all shotgun. the time. I think that's where you see how it's really bad. It's also very questionable for him from the beginning because he plays Ivy and unless he goes super close and people come Ivy, 
what happens when they go for a mid ladder split, yeah. right? The, he has long range battles with the auto shotgun. In that round, he was on the flank, yeah. couldn't do anything long range with the auto shotgun. It's just like it's very, very <laughs> like gimmicky in my opinion. Yeah, that round was a four v three as well, right? And they had full inside control, hadn't planted the bombs, so Fnatic rotated really passively back into city spawn and connector expecting it to be outside and then when they come back jw can't do anything on the flank puts a couple of bullets in a player gets him low but at that point that guy got taken down by one of his teammates and then he had to take a long range duel against xms gets wrecked and that's basically it yeah i, I mean that that's kind of what we talked about the shotgun just pretty cool situationally we've seen some good things out of it but but overall the, the negatives are just far outweighing it as a consistent purchase in a game it shouldn't be your go-to weapon of choice especially in overtime yeah especially on train yeah, there's that as well. Um, I think what's kind of cool that we're getting to see in this, though, is, you know, a lot of talk has been how, how effective it is playing in ladder room as the defense on train. So we're getting to see a lot of different ways um, that teams are trying to, to get an advantage as the terrorists trying to take the ladder room in the mid round. Actually, great point, Jason, because when you tweeted that out, I, I you know, slide it in and I said, you like, did I, slide think, in. I think that's the most powerful setup playing two ladder, one Ivy. And that way you can also play two B. So you're, pretty much your defense is strong almost everywhere except for Ivy, which is like, you have time to rotate and help that guy. And then Fallen came into that discussion and said, ah, just wait, like, we have th some that's going to change. And now we get to see them in gun rounds, on trains. So maybe we'll see their approach. Apparently it. NIP has a cool trick well, as well to take ladder room. We don't get to see that here this week. But. Which ladder room? Like a ladder room on train. in some random building somewhere? Oh, in CS. Ha, wah, edgy. Wah. Uh, I didn't Please really work. think that <laughs> Evius were playing up in that ladder room a lot. So we might not see it against uh, SK+. Okay. Envious, but we might see it when we get SK vs Fnatic, right? Surely, because if there's a time to break it out, though, I mean, is that is that something you try and keep hidden or something for the major? Is that is that a big enough trick that you I might? I think the major is still too far away, right? Okay. The meta is going to change a lot between then all the little tweaks that they have in their gameplay. There's plenty of time to come up with new ones. I don't yeah. think you should ever be keeping anything in your back pocket, especially if you're at a tournament you want to win. So, fair play. That's nice and succinct. Also, a lot of a lot of prize money at this tournament. Yeah, there is. There is you hate to see it go to someone else. <laughs> and prestige. <laughs> and prestige. Yeah, we don't play for the money. We play for the passion. That's cute. Um, yeah. And do you get paid? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, we're just waiting on uh, on SK to join the server. We're going to have them coming up on trade. And, and, yeah, I think Matt and Henry described it pretty well. It's two wins and you're through, two losses and you're kind of out. Henry just learned that it's train every time. So <laughs> 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 he's really excited yeah, to he's, train again. Yeah. So uh, I, just heard, <laughs> I just heard how surprised he was it was train again. Yes, everybody yeah. playing at home. They only play train throughout this tiebreak. Yeah, so the veto process, I think, I think Yanko outlined it, is, is every team banned two maps, and the remaining map just gets played repeatedly between the three teams until someone's eliminated. So Precisely. So lots of fun to be had. Do you want to, let's get stuck into more train talk, I suppose, and different ways that you can approach the map if we have time. Yeah, go for it, Chad. Do you got someone in mind, or you just want to, were you posing the question to us? No, I was just thinking maybe we could look into the ways that the T's can break out into that yard relatively quickly, right? We know that there's going to be the early utility used inside. Either a smoke or a Molotov is pretty usual, you know, to get that control. You know, like players like Taz use that smoke play behind it. In right. overtime, you probably don't want to risk that as the inside player. You just hold on to utility, wait a little bit longer. Uh, outside, Molotovs and smoke on team mid is pretty standard, and getting players up in, into ladder room. Very very standard, and then Ivy just having someone as the caretaker. If you right. have the T's, maybe try something super aggressive over towards Ivy early and pull some rotators back, take control of that, see if you can sneak around and, and get something done there. But it's a Hail Mary to do a hard outside strategy. I'm just trying to rack my brain if there's any way they can do it. Maybe do like a two-prong thing, catch them in a weird timing where you throw the outside execute smokes, wait for them to be almost fading, throw a second set, and then hopefully, you know, catch them off guard. Yeah, we'll have to see if that comes to play. We're going to find out right now. It is going to be Envy taking on SK on train in the tiebreakers. Matt and Henry, take it away. Got some uh, info here. It says Fur is absolutely destroying so far. 71 and 34 KD fallen, 56, 27. This is all yesterday. You know what else it said? They didn't lose a single T side. Now they find themselves in a tiebreaker having lost 16, 13 and something else ridiculous. Well, here we are. All roads lead here. Envious versus SK Gaming. <laughs> and it's going to be, like we said, train for those who are not aware. I'm aware, obviously. I know exactly what's going on. Train throughout in all of these tiebreaker encounters. So we get to see this over it's and over you, it's good and over out. again. It's good that you figured we, We've only done this once before. Yeah. And it was train then as well. But the thing is with train, that's why it's such a weird map for Dipcoming because it's so 
common these overtimes to keep going because the CT side is a really CT sided map, right? But here we go. SK once heralded is one of the best CT sides on this map. Probably still up there, but not as strong as it used to be since the addition of Phelps, I would say. So let's get into it, shall we? SK versus MBS here. They'll be on the T side, the Brazilians. Or the Fallen, of course, and double up once again for MBS. Great then against Fnatic. Let's see if they can continue to form. Let's get into it. Oh, blind takes down screen. Oh, all right. XMS walks in next. Completely pre fired, and somehow, even despite that it was halfway through the magazine, they decided to walk in and give him the kills. Phelps has gone down, so it's only a one man advantage. Flashes go back out. Sixers going to rotate. We've got a fast first round. I imagine the pace will slow, as has been the case in these tiebreakers. It always starts with speed. And actually, giving one away as Fur gets a little bit overzealous wrapping in from Hitch. RPK is able to find him, but then Falling gets the information and is able to take him off the map immediately after. A good smoke towards Connector as well. Happy has to go back through CT spawn. Bomb will be planted. Man advantage towards SK Gaming. Double orb setup to try and retake this site. This is a nightmare. Sixer and Happy now. This is when the double orbs can come back and bite you because you've got three CT terrors to find, a bomb to defuse as well, and only one smoke to do it with. Let's see what they can do. Here. It's cold to bigs down Sixer. Remember, if Envious win this, they're through. They'll win two. Have beaten both teams in the tiebreaker. And Happy, even though it's 10k overtime money, is going to try and save the AWP. So SK will take the first round. Looking that way indeed. Happy would be wise to try and save the AWP at this point. He does do it. Is he trying to salvage some utility off the floor? It's not really worth him taking anyone down on the T, so it doesn't really matter if they drop. But regardless, SK Gaming, it was further. Who got fully flashed that first one. This is, this is appreciate this. Get away with that one. The second one, you're right, was absolutely nuts. Takes an XMS on. The nice slow splatter noise map there. You like that? Little little dark, Henry. Yeah. A little morbid. See here the, his cranium cave in. Um, all right, let's. How on. much further <laughs> are you going to go with that one? <laughs> You know, I like to paint a picture for people at home. Eat, eat it later. You if you're know. listening on the wireless. Yeah, yeah. Taco over toward B is leading the charge. He's the only one thus far to go anywhere near the brown hulls. For SK, shoulder bait out. Happy misses the shot, has to fall back inside of the site. At least they confirm there's an AWP in that position. One of two. SK, great star here. Still a double up set up there after Happy saved his AWP in the previous round. Sixer, of course, in the second one. And there it is. He gets the first shot. Looking a little more aggressive now towards main. That's Fur, who was key in the previous round. He's taken down five and four in favor of the CT side. In terms of grenades, we still have the smokes available for the terrorist side. Bomb down in T-Sport. We've got Taco watching towards inside. And it looks like a frag for Cold Zero there. Takes down Scream. And they had the five on four there. He didn't necessarily have to go for that. You want to keep it in terms of trade potential for the CT side. Hold the crossfires and allow your teammates to get the retrade, uh, the refrags coming in. But Sixer, he finds his second frag of the round. Once again, that main entrance looking very good indeed today. Sixer's just going to wait for that angle. It's a tight one. Tweet like a twiga, but he can snap it over quite quickly. And take down Phelps. Pistol throw, because he knows there's one more there. He's trying to bait it out, because he knows he's got two angles to watch. Unfortunately, the pre-fire gives him up as Sixer walks around the corner. XMS is the next in line for Fallen on his AWP. They pulled this round back from a four versus two to now Fallen versus two. He's done well. AK picked up. He's done even better than that. He's got it into a winnable situation. 15 seconds. He's just going to hold this. Happy's going to have to be the one to make the move. Fallen doesn't know which way to check is the problem, so it's a flash over. Oh, he one jumps up. I don't think he did, but what he was looking at was the right side. So he wouldn't have seen him on the left, but he confirmed that he could go this way and stay safe and stay alive. His eyes weren't focused on the left to spot his opponent, but he's seen the gun barrel jumping up. How what? does Happy hit that? That is impressive, and he's going to pick up the round. We're going to go 1-1. Moment of silence with that shot from Happy. Shoots from the floor as well. That was kind of sick, wasn't it? He had no idea to fall into that close. Taps the bomb, jumps up, and hits. I think was a no scope. Could have been a quid scope. Didn't quite catch it, but very, very impressive shot. And he manages to find a much needed round there from Envious after having the double up set up in that previous round. Again, you can see how bad the money is after winning the round. They've got Famuses, CZs, and it's still the double up shot. But um, we'll see where they can hold on here and manage to get the 2 1 on the, T side, uh, the CT side. Double ops for Fallen and Cold Zera. Towards main entrance for now, the bomb. T spawn is holding for any sort of CT aggression. XMS and RPK limited in their firepower. So it could have been a 2 0 game for SK. That said, the round shouldn't have gone that far in general from a 4 versus 2 in favor of Envia. So Happy really just bailed them out. Sixer. 
Starts it off again for Envy with the opening pick. Flashing toward lower pop dog. Apparently there's an upper and lower pop dog now. Yeah, kind of makes sense. This is the upper pop dog. Cold's going to have problems if he tries to get down there. They've got the trade position set up again. Screen next and as we saw this is the last Ooh. overtime. How does he get away from that screen? Once the motive had his vision and then he goes back down, they'll go in twice and that's going to cost them. There's no need for that. No need at all, Taco. A six or ticks fallen. It's going to be 2 1 for Envious at the end of this half. That was sloppy from Cold Zera. He hasn't had the best tournament so far. And I'm not sure after getting away with that one and saying, okay, well, I've got an orb here. He's waiting for me. I've got out of this situation. He jumps down for more. Why didn't your AK? Teammates there, why not let him go first and you can at least try and pick up the pieces. Doesn't go for it. Five on one now, envious, man. Let's be real, a team when this was announced is that the scraps left over the G2 formation, right? No one really thought this team could do much here. In this tournament, they've proven as they can. Today especially, had some tremendous results here. Looking like a, a solid team. He's taking out Fnatic here in the tiebreakers as well. Some nice shots there from Scream. 2-1 in favor of Envious, but it is on the CT side. That's what we've come to expect here. Pretty standard scoreline. SK, as long as you get one round on the CT side, you're fine. They kick things off in an emphatic fashion with that fast outside play and got the first round, but Envious turned it on going forward. We'll switch the sides. Obviously, it'll be Envious now on the T side, looking to buy for SK. Fallen and Taco this time. So like we said, it's normally been known for Fallen and Cold Zero to be that double team orb duo, but Taco now is chiming in, depending on the map. Cobblestone primarily, we've seen it mostly used, and now Train as well. Coltera should be flashed in here by the looks of things. Oh, and just waiting. This XMS is setting to try and get out toward Ivy. The flash mistimed means he can't go as far as he would have liked. Coltera holding air, according to the graphic. That's what he needs. No gun. Okay, there it is. Magic. Just appears when he needs it. Fallen gets the shot on XMS. Trades back, thankfully. For the sake of SK. Not to mention as well, just not only does Envious go out of groups if they win this, they go out second in groups, so they cross over to play. As far as they can play. Number three from the other side, though, not number two on their side of the bracket. Means they would get away as well from G2. Phelps. Downed by Scream. He's looking good today. He got a kill beforehand, but it's Fur now that needs to be clutch to try and pull this back. Even more clutch needs to be Taco, one versus three. And this is the first half of our second half, first round, excuse me, our second half of overtime. So the AWP might be worth saving in this case. We saw Happy try and do it in the first overtime. Well, this is match point for Envious. It will be when they win this, yep. Yeah, this is nuts. Good job. Against SK Gaming as well. Let's just, if anyone's just joining this tournament today, for example. So, SK Gaming, day one, go 3 0. Some of the best CS we've seen them play in recent months, right? They didn't drop a single T round. That's, I think that's got to be some sort of record in a, a group stage set of a scenario. That's nuts in a top tier tournament. Um, they looked amazing. And then today, dropping off dramatically, losing two, both of their games, and here they are against Envious. And match point here on train, which is one point SK's absolute best map. No one can touch him, especially on the CT side as well. I still think we'll go to another set of overtime. Like, that's a an anomaly. They don't run away with things on the CT side. We'll see what happens here. 3 1. One more round for Envious will do it. Double up set up for the CT side. Still fallen attacker, like I said. Okay. Just bang in. And control of the upper platform. So we have got a player waiting for him. And that's fur. Shot from RPK to take down Fur, though. So they've got some access now to the upper halls. Well, this is a dream scenario now, right? It's the beginning of the round. You've got five players alive with strong HP as well, the five on four, and you know the CT's going to have orbs around as well. You do a full execution at this point, you've got a huge chance of winning it. Match point, pressure applied to the CTs, waiting for a reaction, plenty of time to do it as well. The reactions come in. Fallen's pushed out of Ivy, we can just jump to him. You'll see he's got full control of that position, so that's fine. And now the CTs can concentrate towards inside, so the brawl becomes towards this area. But we have full execution towards inner. Scream to lead the charge, what we can see right now. They'll drop their smokes, their molotovs. They've lost track of the other side of the map as well, so I'd say they need to execute pretty imminently if they're going to have a chance to actually overwhelm the CTs here. 
and not have a risk of a backstab coming in. And six with the AWP as well. The smokes will go in momentarily, and we'll see whether they can actually pull this one off and find themselves in the playoff. Envious, one round is all that's required. Shot Taco. Cold can't answer. He's been struggling. He, he continues to do so. You'd expect him to win those duels as Taco opens his angle toward the bombs. The bombs. The There's a double up on the retake. You're right. I was going to say at least one of them, but I didn't look to see if Fallen still had his. He does. He's tagged up slightly on the way through, but Taco's been given a lot of room. As Fallen gets previously getting even more room. Should spot shoulder baited, though. Fires in early. Puts them back toward Fallen, who's not ready for it. And this is starting to fall apart. It looked really good when Taco got up that far. He will at least get it down to a 1v1. Has to tap, but it's another Molotov. He's holding it early, but he doesn't have the health. He does not have the time. He's got to back off of it. If he'd gotten on it even a half second sooner. Oh, he has timed it well, but the pistol's there. That's it. Game over. Very Envious. Good. Who would have thought they'll be the ones in this? Tiebreaker Battle Royale to get the 2 0 against Fnatic and SK Gaming, a team that no one's really that excited about when it was first formed, have turned up in this tournament and looking to maybe take down GT going forward as well. It's quite exciting for them. Yeah, this is this is the unexpected heroes of the French shuffle. I yeah. mean, XMS has looked good in that he particular really game in the second half, of the first one he started to come to life. The first overtime, yeah. he's a little quiet. Happy seems to be more involved, I yep. guess, as a way of putting it on his lurk, and Scream has been stepping up. Things are well, Sixer. We've got lots of good things to say about. Lots of good things to say about everyone on that team, I think, in a, in, in a surprise form. They were overshadowed by G2. They now make it out of the same group. So the two French teams make it through. We will decide if it's going to be Fnatic or SK who joins them, but we'll find out after we go over to three lovely Stooges on the desk. Yes. Thank you, Matthew. I guess. Um, yeah, and he's going to go through in the second seed. Nicely done from them. And, and they put it a nice way. Uh, un unexpected. Very, very unexpected. Yeah, like I said before, I didn't expect them to perform this well, and they did, so props to them. I, I guess that's all I can say, really. One who impressed me with uh, XMS. Online, he never really stood out as a star player. Get, he was doing some chip damage here, there, and everywhere, but he, he wasn't like a superstar for the squad. He wasn't he had, like having carry performances in these overtimes. I thought he was relatively impressive. He stood up and uh, had some important frags. Well, here, here's a cool. We have a replay of, uh, of that happy one v one. So uh, one of the much be beleaguered players who faces his share of criticism coming up huge uh, in this overtime tiebreaker. So. Yeah, that flick in the end looked sick from Fallen's perspective because Fallen outplayed him positionally right here. You know, he expects Fallen to be in connector. Fallen picks out left and that was just an amazing no scope from Happy. And, you know, in that overtime, it was Envious making all the plays. Even the round that SK won was off of, you know, Envious trying to start off being hyper aggressive and, and just getting punished for it. And this this is such a long road for Envy as well, because even, even Chad, not even necessarily within the confines of this tournament, but the entire regular season as well, going into the last day, having to beat Astralis in two maps to get here, is even even that was just a tall order in and of itself to even arrive at this tournament. Yeah, they had like really good bookends to the tournament. They had the, that massive victory against G2 after the shuffle had first happened, right? And we saw that happen. That was the first time they met. And Scream, while he was still on like trial or testing out the team, if he felt he like he was a good fit, just went huge and wreck G2 and then to finish the season with the with victory of Astralis was was another great win right uh, and now to come here and qualify and go even further make it to the playoffs is definitely you know they showed that they they should be here and uh, they have what it takes to compete against these big boys any any final thoughts on those two teams facing off Envy uh, Envy going through over over SK just a great performance from them completely deserved yeah, so next up, we're all just waiting for uh, SK now to, to join the server. Or, I mean, excuse me, Fnatic to join the server to play SK. Another overtime matchup that's going to be on train. What did we see? What were we thinking in this one is going to go from, from what we saw? Are we thinking more more shotguns from JW? Think he's going to bust those out? Yeah, sure. Why not? No, give it a crack. You, just stick <laughs> with it, man. We, we're going this far now. Yanko did make the the observation that at least he always has full utility when he does that. Yeah, well, he was able to buy the same gun three rounds in a row without any dramas. That's not that You can't do that with a lot of weapons, right? <laughs> you do it with the UMP, I guess. Um, one of the things that I think was interesting, both teams were a little bit more aggressive on their CT sides than Envious, right? Obviously, Envious in that second, uh, so, uh, second match, they were... Did some aggro plays, but just like Fur, then we saw him push into the the, br the brown walls and push up behind that box, right. get completely completely isolated, give away his life basically, put his team in a four v five straight away. Fnatic with some similar stuff, you know, fighting when they maybe shouldn't have. So I think more aggressive or, or quicker plays might be on the on the case for the T sides. Quicker plays, Yanko. Is that even possible with the, with the kind of money situation that they're always going to be going against? Yeah, it is going to be difficult because the cities obviously have enough money for for all of their utility to stop that. But if you really feel like your T, T side isn't working, that you need to switch something up, then it's possible. But I think 
SK definitely because they only played one overtime. They're going to keep their standard style pretty much. Yeah, we'll be interested to see. We'll find out exactly what's going to happen. We're heading over to Hank and Sadikis for this final overtime tiebreaker. Hank and Sadikis. Hankatist. Hank. What? Hankatist. Hank or kissed. Hankatist. Yeah, the K's already there. Yeah, but where are you getting tissed from? There's no Say the kissed. Kissed, not tissed. Oh, whatever. You See, got the point. Hankist. Hankist would be. Let's move on, shall we? <sighs> yeah, Jason's over there beaking off like a bald eagle that he is. <laughs> beaking off. Beaking <laughs> off. Yes. <laughs> be fantastic first <laughs> SK gaming now. The final of the Battle Royale. SK it is. versus Fnatic. So, so there's a great, great nursery rhyme I was taught in kindergarten to help you remember these situations. Go on. 2 0, oh, you're good to go. 1-1, one one, you're still not done. But 0-2, oh that won't do. <laughs> so that's how it works. <laughs> that's how you know who's going to make the playoffs. Well, oh, that's easy to remember. I never knew that nursery rhyme would uh, get me anywhere in life, but here we are. Oh, valuable life lessons there with Hanker Kissed. No, it's not working. It's, it's all right. <laughs> <Pretty Hank>. <laughs> Let's just leave it there. We'll let that, let that, you know, rise a bit. Then we'll put it yeah. in the oven. Okay. Fair enough. Well, SK, who would have thought they'd be in this scenario? One overtime game away from crashing out of the tournament after going three zone, three and zero, not dropping a single T round in the first day. How the times have changed. It's all gone wrong on day two. Cold Zera, if there was a time, a time to show up, Matt, this would be it, right? Mm -hmm. let's, let's have to have him have a lights out game. Renan is one of the absolute best players in the world. Very quiet tournament by his standards, at least. And we're looking to see whether he can really deliver something here against Fnatic. Same story for them, of course. They lose this. They are out as well. We're trying to find the final place in the playoffs from Group A right now. SK versus Fnatic. Sounds great on paper. Sounds fantastic on paper, doesn't it? Especially Fnatic show the better side of the coin that they've uh, they've dished out this weekend. Or week. We gotta stop saying weekend. This week, this tournament. That, that's the, that's yeah. the word. Double up T side, Henry. Cold Zero. Is this his way of getting back into form? Yeah, maybe the rifles is not working out for him. He's gonna say, like, give me a chance. I'll prove myself. Sub me in. Coach wanna win. Put Booby in. <laughs> All right. What is that? Booby Miles. Okay. Oh, him. Yeah. Booby Miles. Whoever that may be, we don't know. SK. Double up setup. Unorthodox, say the least. T side, bit more forgiving in terms of the. Financial situation. We'll see what happens here. Dennis thinking about pushing in there for Deadly in this position. We've seen that before. Flash is good. Confirms do it again. It's the same spray. Oh. Does damage, but Crims takes him down. 19 HP. He survives on. Phelps will take JW. So we go level. And a head-to-head -head between two juggernauts. Phelps going in toward Ivy. Gets a shot, but comes out worse for wear. It's very... Oh. Neck and neck as Olaf actually does go back for more and wins the exchange. 38 HP remaining for him as Flusha has to fall off the spool. And Cold gets closer. AWP certainly working better. Neck and neck now. Bomb will be planted inside. That's Taco. Falling to defend him as well. And looks like this will be quite a successful situation. Cold Zero watching the flanks. Orbin inside as well. And then we have got AK47. And it's low HP as well. This is looking very good for SK. Is up with the M4. Good peak from Taco, but can't land the shot. Fallen will off the information, and it's Fallen that wins out the round. SK start, one nothing. Great start on the T side of train. Double up set up, paying dividends, it seems. Two kills for Eva Orpa. So Fallen and Colds are chiming in. It was, like I said, an unorthodox approach, especially in overtime. A lot of teams do it on train generally, like Virtus Pro famously started doing this first, and people were questioning it. They had great success with it a few months ago, and now SK Gaming, two frags apiece there. Colds are watching the flanks. Fallen dealing with the action up front as well. So great job there. Double up set up to return, though. The retort from Fnatic is JW, Glass Cannon, Olaf Meister, same story as well. Body armor for him, though, a bit more money. Round two. This is everything now. Fnatic would have invested absolutely every last dollar into this round. Lose this one. They have pistols into number three, and that could be a 3 0 4 SK game. And let's see what they do here. Standard for now, as you can see in the top left, a straight line formation, waiting for any aggression coming in from the CTs here. Fallen watching towards Ivy. And they'll be holding up. This is a classic. You can see, like, both teams line up each other. That suggests there's a default from either side, right? So the CTs straight on outside. Same story for T's as well. No one giving anything away. No sort of avant garde pushes going in at the start. Flusher holding inside, backed up by Olaf Meister with the orb as well. 
I would suggest at this point this will be an inside execution. Maybe Fur holding main and going for the backstab or stopping the rotations. So four EWPs, six rifles, one of which is an M4A1S. The other two, the birth modified versions. So baiting. The inside take right now. Smoke's deployed, flashes in as well. Force a rotation or at least keep two inside. And like the Dennis can't hit the shot. Fur takes him down. Quite snappy from Fur. Crims waits along the bomb train for them to get closer. Olaf smoked off, can't find the angle on the AWP. He's just gonna hold to make sure no one jumps over top of the bomb train, but no one's watching the rapid hitch. So they actually could push around. Cold Good. snaps back to take down Flush after he hits Fur. So it's a trade rather than a straight kill, but still quite good considering how close he was. He missed that shot. They were both down. And he might favor Fnatic to take back the round. They still may do because Phelps has got to hold this alone. Cold is so far away. Thankfully, they're not on the bomb. Phelps needs to just stay alive. He's done well. He's on 97. He's, in fact, got more HP than Cold does. He's going to go better than that with two quick kills. Pistol over. He's got low HP. And JW's got nothing he can do on 15. It's gonna be SK going up 2-0. Yeah, they have no money next round as well. He can't even think about going for that clutch. No kit, no armor. Look at that, no money as well. This is really rough now for SK Gaming. But they have nothing at all. 2K per player, he needs to save this AWP. Looks like he will. He's playing with fate a little bit there. But, okay, SK Gaming, Phelps. Amazing play there, Matt. Low HP, looked a little bit dicey at the start, but then he hits that shot, all of the goes down. This was even better as well, very calm. No armor for JW there. Could have got the third as well, but 2-0 for SK. This is looking great now. But as we always say, Fnatic, just when you think they're out of every scenario, you think they've got nothing left. The CZs always prevail, and they come out on top. We'll see where they can do it and get the 2-1. I would say surely not, but JW has got the orb. We'll see whether he can step up, watching towards main entrance for now. A fast inside play coming in by the looks of things. Target gets needed down to 56. Still going to uh, go aggressive, it appears, inside of the side and upper. Two players facing him. Flush is able to win the exchange. Phelps, he's got to be careful. They go in deep, and he gets caught up on the board and actually sets his aim off as he starts to climb halfway up the slanted plywood. And Olaf's in a great position, but cold. Better late than never, my friend. Never late is better, but he's got the shot. It's JW left against three in what could be three straight rounds for SK. First time we'd see an opening three-round sweep. Obviously, Envious did it when they... Ended up beating Fnatic. It took the three overtimes to do it. So, 3 nothing SK, one to go, and it's Fnatic out and SK through in third of the group. Yeah, looking very promising right now for SK. 3-0 on the T side, especially in overtime. That's pretty unheard of. Fnatic needs to replicate the same form just to get us a double overtime. Very unlikely, but if ever there's a team to do it, CT side of Fnatic always has been, I'm not sure, troublesome. Maybe they can get things going on the T side and maybe get some fast rushes in there. I don't want to see any more shotguns, though, Matt. Uh, I'm done with the shotguns. Mm. Are you done? Yeah. D like, completely done? Yeah, I'm going to ban them for the playoffs, I think. Okay. Gonna, um, I know you're the commissioner, maybe. I know yeah. someone who really likes shotguns. Who's that? He owns one. Uh, he might take them from you if you don't want them anymore. James Bardoff. <laughs> I knew you could say that. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to give them away, he'll take them. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Well. Dan won't, though. He can't shoot the middle. When Dan shoots them, the gun stays where it is, and Dan's body ends up about 10 feet behind where it was. Really? Can't have a look? Boom, gone. Too much. Yeah. Well. Too much for Fnatic, perhaps. SK Gaming, switch over to the CT side. 3-0 on the T side. That's pretty nuts. Fnatic, a lot of pressure here. One round against them here on the unfavored side of the map. They're going home. And they make it out of the playoff. Another disappointing tournament for Fnatic. Just as you were saying, Matt, you thought they were back. They were winning the whole tournament. Why not? Ooh, they can see each other. But they doubted it. And somehow JW misses the shot as he falls back down. And Fallen just fires back at where he saw the muzzle flash, or something like that. Great start. Fallen. Great tournament so far. Maybe not so much today. Yesterday, he was lights out. It's that first shot. Takes down his oppressor. JW. Five and four. Only AKs remaining for the T side now. Obviously, do have most of their grenades remaining here. They will edge towards inside. Taco and Fur waiting for them. Nice crossfire. I like the look of this. One towards the core's position. And then Taco watching up around for him. Just playing off each other. That's quite nice. There's a smoke to delay them as well. Just as they're getting ready. That buys SK some time here. Bleed them out. Three towards outside. Two in up. And this could be a contact play towards the other side. Flashbangs go in. will be there. Fur to find two frag. Great work by him. That's the 
the shot back in, yep. and that is it. SK, four straight rounds. Fnatic are done and gone. They will not make it through to the playoffs. You thought I was going to say dusted. I did not. They are not going to be a favorite, as you guys expected, but they did have a much better showing. I will give them that. SK, best team in the world yesterday, today, struggling tremendously. We've yeah. got an interesting playoff shaping up. Yeah. Especially if Envy is the dark horse now. Day and night compared to their performance yesterday. Absolutely. But they managed to get through. That's that's the main thing, right? It does, like obviously, it would be great to get towards the semifinals, but that's actually proven to be a curse for teams in the past. Like It's very rare for the team to go straight to the semis and actually win the tournament, right? So maybe this actually helps them out sliding that. Maybe that's uh, they don't have to go through that. Yeah, it's that's very true. Yeah. Um, speaking of going through, we've got to go through our desk before we can all take a breath and relax, calm the stress levels, look, put up with it, take some annex or whatever it is that you take for that stuff and deal with them. Here it is. Jason, it's all you. Well, all right then. Can you say about that one? Welcome back to the Xfinity Analyst Desk. And yes, SK is going to go through. Congratulations to them. They go through as a third seed, but that's kind of painful considering they, they went 3-0 and yesterday. They started yeah. as pretty much a lock, and then they had to battle through it all. Isn't that crazy how messy today got? When I woke yeah. up this morning, I was like, all right, SK, clear cut. Nice, They're gonna easy be first. day. Nice and easy. breakfast, some Looks bacon. Like, yeah, Fnatic looked pretty good for second. G2 are struggling. They'll be fighting for someone for third. Somehow, G2 <laughs> topped the group. And then we have SK coming in third and Envious from out of nowhere coming in second, right? Not that, that this group was crazy. Obviously, it sucks for Fnatic to get knocked out. But then you have to look at now the teams in the other group. You don't want to come second in that group now because you got to play SK in the first round. Yeah, that, and that, even despite some of the struggles today, Yanko, that's still got to be a little bit of a scary prospect for anyone. I mean, absolutely, but still, how competitive it is right now. You just want to make it out of the groups. You, you can't really go into that state of mind, oh, if, if we finish, like, second, we have to play yeah. SK. First, you need to make it out, but, yeah, the, I mean, SK didn't really, it was the opposite of what we saw yesterday for them. In the end, they were fighting for their lives in that overtime game. Perhaps playing the long con, trying to skip that straight to semifinals curse. The back wanted to do. Yeah, let's bring up the group standings. We'll show you exactly uh, what occurred as it all gets updated. Eventually, and um, yeah, I mean, this is going to be G2 Esports top of the group. Surprisingly, like you said, another comeback, much like they did in the in the regular season. Envy second place out of left field. SK after a blistering day one. I mean, dropping two matches today. I mean, one was in 16-3, was it that they lost the match today? I mean, that's that's crazy to think. Uh, Fnatic, Immortals, and Cloud9 all eliminated. So it's going to be G2 going straight to the semis. Envy and SK. Go to the quarters. Yeah, I have a weird thought. It just it just popped in my head. You know, these are my favorite. Give me a weird look. Yeah. yeah. So normally, what happens is when a team goes straight through to the semifinals, they like have a day break, right? Right. But here they have a two day break. I wonder if that's, that's the change. That's the curse needed. at all. Yeah, because everybody every, like so tomorrow we have the quarters, and then there's a day break for everybody before the semi. So it kind of resets that team that had uh, to play in the quarters. Of, you know, they, they have a whole day off for everybody. So maybe maybe that's what G2 need to, to get the victory. Yeah, maybe it is. Let's check out G2. I mean, they had a really good turn, like we said. They're going to go straight to semifinals. We got some highlights of G2 to talk about. Yanko, walk me through a little bit of some of the good things that you saw to these guys uh, in, in this event that helped them qualify. I think it was you know after that loss to Immortals today, you could see the change. Uh, in mentality, basically, from G2 on that cobblestone game versus SK. Very, very aggressive from the beginning, not afraid to take fights, assertive, and in even finding ways to be aggressive on Cobble City side, which is not easy to do. MBK on your screens had a great game uh, in, in the drop zone, as, as you can see. Uh, then moving on to that Fnatic game on Overpass. Again, great examples of aggression, taking fights, risks, sending four players towards, you know, the middle A, A side of the map to get an early advantage. And that's how you want to see them play. That's what they're great at, you know, aggression, utilizing their individuals in a way in which they're comfortable, basically. Not playing scared, playing to win, not playing not to lose. I, I was just interested if, you know, we could see, like, I know we can't right now, but maybe having a look at G2's round win loss. I remember last time we saw Heroic go through and they had, like, a, all their players had, like, negative ratings, right? I'd be interested to see, like, the win-loss round ratio right. for this team to go through in first place. They had a couple of games that weren't so, so close for them, so... Interesting to see how they got to this position, but it's great that they finally got firing, right? They started slow and now they've 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 got into it, into the swing of things. Are you are you with me, Chad? Are you on board now? Is NBK back? Oh, he's playing good Counter Strike. <laughs> I, I only said that just to mock you. I thought it was fun, <laughs> I know, right? I, I have nothing against Nathan. <laughs> I, know, I think he's a fantastic cool. player. Uh, either way, those are your three teams from Group A. They're going to be in Dallas. It's going to be G2, Envy, and SK. Tickets are on sale now. So if you want to come to Dallas, you want to meet the players, you want to see them up on stage, get your tickets below proleague.com slash Dallas. Uh, and then the next thing we have coming up, we actually, this is pretty cool. We got Stunna. He's back at action today. We saw him earlier. He had a little bit of a break, but he spoke with our very own NBK. And we'll see what they had to say after, the, after G2 uh, qualified. All right, hey, thanks, Jason. I'm here right now with MBK. These guys just passed through the group stages. A, a phenomenal job today. What was the difference between yesterday and today? 
Uh, it was pretty clear that our mentality yesterday was not on point. Uh, even against Envy, it was a very tight game where we had a, like, the upper hand many, many rounds. And so yeah, it was just about focusing, playing more as a team. Uh, we were not really asleep, but not in the right mood on the first game today. But then uh, playing against SK, when you play a team that is the best team in the world, uh, you have to turn up and you have to prove to everyone that you can beat them. And that's pretty much what we did. We played a very flawless game against them. And then from there, we carried on to Fnatic. So mentality, mentality changed. We had a team talk yesterday and tried to come here relaxed for day two. So, I mean, all in all, beating SK, giving you that momentum, uh, is that something that you see propel you through the day uh, now that you guys are through? Uh, yeah, it was very important, especially with the first game that we lost in a very bad manner. Um, and then, yeah, it just set up the mood. It's very good that we've managed to bounce back and that it was perfect for the game against Fnatic. We played very solid. And yeah, now we can, <laughs> we're finished up the group very happy and very relaxed. And especially, I mean, we, we had a pretty bad start. We're down one, two, and then we managed to end up first in group. So, I mean, that, that's obviously like a good momentum and, and happiness as you carry around. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of chaos right now with the, in terms of tiebreakers and, and this and that going on. But on the other side of the, the fence here, what are you guys looking, uh, or excuse me, rather, I should say, who are you guys looking to play uh, in the playoffs at the Verizon Theater? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, I would like to avoid American teams because uh, we've always been struggling a bit against them uh, because of our game style and in general, especially for instance against Cloud9 that we had a lot of troubles against uh, back in Austin. And um, yeah, aside from that, I don't know, it's mostly based on our map pools. So we want to play teams we're comfortable playing against on those maps. And, and so it, it's quite hard to say which one we want, because obviously anybody can go through yeah. steel. We can face anyone. And the ones from the quarter literally could be <laughs> any team. So um, we, I mean, we're going to wait and see pretty much and uh, prepare the map specifically for which opponents. But yeah, not an American team. Uh, I feel you. I mean, I wouldn't want to play the American teams myself. Uh, okay, so you guys got a little bit of downtime now. There's a lot to do here in Dallas. Uh, you've been to Dallas several times now. Uh, what are you guys going to do up until the playoffs? Uh, two things. We're going to make a, a perfect mix, a perfect balance of fun and practice. Because we need to, obviously, now that we pass the groups, that we are relieved off of that, we are going to yeah, go to the pool, go to Six Flags, go to do some go-kart, that kind of stuff. Just literally ease our mind, relax, pressure is off. And at the same time, we need to stay focused between like between the days, uh, between the um, groups and the playoffs, because yeah, we have two days off, and so that's a long time without playing competitive and without being in that LAN atmosphere and getting ready to to play games. So uh, practicing as well, it's going to be a mix between both and uh, and keeping it simple. We're not going to do random stuff. Well, when I think of relaxing, I definitely think of riding roller coasters. That's probably the, the, the top one. Are you a roller coaster kind of guy yourself? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I've been to the biggest one in Europe and several times. Absolutely loved it. It's amazing. Yeah, well, it is all about the thrill of the ride. That does it for us here. Congratulations again uh, and moving forward. Uh, take it away, Jason. Yes, congratulations to G2 and NBK for qualifying straight through to the semifinals. A couple days off for them. Next up, after G2, it was the other French team, Envy, that made it through. They had a big comeback on this day as well. They look kind of dead in the water when this day started. Uh, but a really, really impressive job, and especially in the tie-breaking overtimes, where I mentioned, I mean, they just seem to grind things out, just not, not really quitting at any point. Well, Xmas had uh, 16 frags in the first uh, match they played, and 15 of them were headshots. So, like, he was, you know, on point hitting shots. Precision. The was, yeah. It was pretty crisp. Um, but, yeah, it was good to see Envy... <laughs> It was good to see Envy, you know, showing a, a bit of finesse in the way that they approached the game. They they looked like they had a game plan and everything they wanted to do. In the in the first uh, match, they were quite passive on their CT side, and then when they flipped over to the second one, they tried more aggression. They tried to you know push team mid and mix it up a little bit, which is you know a really good mix up to use to, to change the pace. I think the big difference is that Envy. Even in the beginning of this lineup, you could see that they have good game plan, they have like a good structure, but it was individual mistakes that hindered their progress, basically. And in this tournament, not only have they eliminated those mistakes significantly, also their players have been very much on point individually. I mean, you saw it in that highlight, highlight reel, some of the headshots from RPK, XMS and Scream, it's like you can't do anything about it. They just peek you and you're dead before yeah. you can even fire off a shot. Obviously, that's going to go a long way into helping you uh, to secure wins for, for the team. So they're definitely playing like a you know, much, much better team than what we're used to see from them. And this, I mean, you, would you did we attribute this to the boot camp they just kind of went through? And French teams aren't really known for having any kind of effective boot camps. 
Uh, I, I don't know if it, you know you could look at it that way or not. It just looked like everybody was firing. Sometimes it's Scream who's playing well. Sometimes you see like RPK doing his job. Yeah. This time it was seemed like everybody was clicking when they needed to, and that's really important. Obviously, when you're going up against top dogs, you need everybody right. to to do their job, and it makes life easier for everybody. The biggest thing I'm interested in is the way it's changed. Happy, right? The guys had to go from I think when things were going downhill with the old Envious roster, and he was just sticking to that hard lurk style, and he was always lurking. He wasn't doing anything proactive. It's changed him now. He's not with as high skilled players. He has to be more proactive in the way that he approaches his style. And it's good to see because he is very skilled. It's just he uh, he may have lost his way a little bit before in the past. And he's, and he's beardless now. Went for the clean shave. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm yeah. never so brave to do that. So good on him. <laughs> Third team that went through in those tiebreakers was SK. That's an insane thing that they had to go through considering where they were at the beginning of today. Never thought we'd see him there. This whole conversation has been these guys are back. Is this a little bit of that stumble, Yanko, perhaps because we said one of the big question marks they had is their map pool. They don't even really know what maps they're good on. Yeah, true, and, and I think that was the, the, the cause of, you know, their problems uh, in the first map today against G2. I think they were a bit overconfident in the veto, going for that uh, cobblestone pick, and then I'm not really sure what happened in the second map on, against Envious on Inferno. They got destroyed, and they yeah. started off as CT on Inferno. Like, no matter the map, you can expect SK to have a pretty strong CT side. So maybe a bit overconfident and just having an, an off day themselves to an extent, probably underestimating Envious uh, a little bit as well. But in the grand scheme of things, this is actually great for SK because it is the wake wake-up call, right? That now they know that yeah. they can't underestimate anyone. They really need to pay attention to what their opponents like to play, what are their comfort maps, and uh, I'm still pretty confident that we are going to see SK go deep in this tournament. And it still feels like Cold hasn't really arrived at this tournament quite yet. We haven't seen a whole lot of him come out. Jen. Yeah, he was looking a lot better in those uh, overtimes with the AWP when yep. they did the double AWP on the T side. I thought he was a bit more effective. Um, usually when your teammates are a lot more aggressive and, and finding all the frags on the CT side and you're more of the slower anchor who comes in and clutches late round, you're not going to have as much of an impact, right? Because all the hard work's done right. for you. And when you don't need to clutch, you're not going to be getting many frags. It's the T side where he can kind of be, I guess, activated a little bit more, uh, but that's just basically what calls are being made and what decisions are being made mid-round. So I don't think there's anything to worry with Cold. You know, he always shows up. He always gets his his frags, always gets his stats. So yeah. uh, it's... Yeah. And, the, and the series play begins now for yeah, SK. Yeah, this so is where a whole different animal. Cool. Well, if you missed any of the games earlier today, any of the games yesterday whatsoever, you can head over to the YouTube channel, check out all the VODs, all the replays, gaming.youtube.com slash ELCS. That'll be the fun place where you can find it all and even the live broadcasts that are going to come through. You didn't like the, the gaming.youtube link? You gave me a weird look. You said ELCS instead of ESLCS. Did I? Did I? It doesn't matter, Jason. We know what you meant. We all got there? ESLCS? Yeah. I, I was We're letting you fast. off the hook. You Thanks. still knew this. Thanks, Speaking guys. Hard, I, can, I, can, I can confirm. <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, last thing, we, we touched on Immortals and Cloud9. They're not making it through this tournament. Let's, let's talk briefly about Fnatic. Are we, I mean, we knew they were going to be fighting for maybe the last spot in the playoff, which they were. It wasn't with Cloud9, but we knew that they were probably going to be the one who would be fighting for it in some capacity. Yeah. Um, them not making it. What, what does this bode for this team moving forward? They're going to be tilted off the face of the earth. They are, as, they are. Some of the tweets are really intense. Yeah. From the tweets already, it's so hard for Fnatic because this is like not the first tournament where they don't make it out of groups, but they still have good performances. They still beat good right. teams, but somehow, you know, may, losing to maybe one team that they really shouldn't or, or some of the other results that happen in the group, as a consequence of that, they end up not making it out of the group. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, it would be way easier if they were just getting blown out. And then you can say, well, this wasn't our tournament or we suck, we need to make a change. They're actually not playing bad. It's just that the small things, right? You, they, they lost to SK and they lost to G2. And that's it, and they're still out of the turn. Yeah, exactly, right? So they lost to the two teams who we would consider the top two teams in this whole tournament, you know, coming into this thing. Right. They beat everybody else who they were meant to. It's just kind of like everyone else didn't hold up their end of the bargain, and now they're the ones who get, you know, they get kicked out, um, which sucks for them. And I, I agree with Yanko. They're playing a better brand of Counter-Strike than I think we've seen from them in a long time, right? It doesn't seem as individual. It seems like they actually have strategies and a plan. Sure, there was that one blowout, that, that one blowout on Cache versus SK. But everyone, you know, everyone can have one of them every now and again. Yeah. Yeah, can't hold too much against them. Yeah. A lot of teams get blown out by SK. Either way, that's going to be the conclusion of Group A. That's it. We're going to have SK, we're going to have uh, Envy, and we're going to have G2 going through. Stay tuned. After the break, we're going to get started with Group B. Athletes aren't just born. They're molded from the core, a core of strength core of laser focus, 
A core that can handle anything. A core that sweats the small stuff. A core that's the difference maker. Game changer, world shocker. You see, hard work makes the athlete. But the edge of a Core i7 processor makes you unstoppable. Get your team apparel now at shop.eslgaming.com.
Welcome back to ESL Pro League Season 5 LAN Finals. Group A just concluded. We have our three people moving on from there. Tuning in for Group B, we're still about 30 minutes away from the first match beginning. Take you through a little bit of a preview of what you're going to see. If you didn't see them yesterday, we're going to wrap up kind of what we saw out of all these teams on day one, just to let you guys know as well. Uh, but let's just kick it right off. We'll get up the Group B standings for you, just so you can witness where everyone's at to start the day, because we know there's a lot of shakeups as this day going, as we saw in Group A. But at the moment, North is sitting 3-0 and zero in that first seed. Liquid 2-1 and one just behind them. Mouse Sports and Optic both tied at 1 and 1. Navi with 1 and 2 and then NRG with 0 and 3 down at the bottom. Um, we, we've talked a lot about these teams but guys I mean North Liquid Mouse Sports right now having a good grip on this group. Yeah good grip on the group uh, uh, definitely so but you know if you're following the trend from group A this means that North are going to go into tiebreakers. Liquid are definitely going <laughs> to make it. Like, yeah right. Who knows what's going to happen today but yeah definitely strong showing from North uh, on, on day one. I was actually really pleasantly surprised uh, from what we said from Mouse Sports. I really haven't had the chance to see a lot of them play uh, obviously with their new addition yep. Robs so that was pretty cool uh, and Liquid as well getting two W's right off the bat having a pretty good first uh, first day yeah, it's going to get a little tougher with them, but we'll start with North, the team that's top in the first group chat. They had a good day yesterday. Um, a lot of talk from this team has come out that they need to they need to fix some things, that they haven't gotten all the goals accomplished that they've set out with this roster. We've seen some underperformances, but at the moment, finally, all that talk that we've heard for a couple months seems to be panning out. Yeah, a couple of changes in their approach to the game. People playing different positions. One of the most notable that I noticed yesterday was uh, having MSL now playing the A-bomb site and having Magic server towards those B-holes on their CT side. There's a little bit of a change there. Uh, one of the big things going for this team right now, or a especially yesterday. It'd be interesting to see if he can carry it across today, but as the blistering starts from Config, that guy's getting out to 15, you know, close to 20 frags yeah. in, in the the first half of the first half, right? And then he, he cools off a little bit, but he's already done so much work. He's got his team in a great, fantastic uh, position uh, position to, to push forward. And uh, he's on fire. I think he's just, just below fur in terms of the stats so far for this yeah. event. So he's getting it done at the moment. Yeah, Vendetta, I mean, is, is North going to be this dangerous? I mean, is there any way to stop this team when Config is having a tournament like this so far? Yeah, uh, that's kind of the the curious point, right? Because what we've seen from North is that they've been able to get these Ws off, just off of the back of Config, and we haven't really seen much of Magic Boy at all uh, up yeah. to this point, so we're just kind of waiting for him. Even if Config falls off, that could be okay if Magic just steps a tiny bit closer to what he usually does, because he was underperforming pretty heavily from what we've seen in the past. So I think right now, North are in a, in a spectacular spot. Wait, where are you at in the AZ conversation with North? Because I know we, we've heard Chad's yeah. opinions a lot throughout the regular season. I know you haven't gotten to see him a whole lot, but this AZ bringing them over is supposed to be the star player, a lot of potential in this guy, you know, over the yeah. years, and not seem to be fitting in too well in North at the moment. Yeah, I think it's a case of uh, there's only so much room for uh, for certain types of players or certain types of roles that players play, and I, I don't necessarily think AZ fits that well in because you already have your, your potential star players in, in Config and, uh, and Magic Boy, right? So what kind of gap do you get AZ to fill in, in, in that scenario? Because you already have Cajun kind of being that glue guy for you right. uh, in addition. So he doesn't necessarily fill the gap that uh, Rubino left when uh, when he left the team. And uh, I think you're seeing you know a result of that. AZ perhaps not being as comfortable in his position as he would be because we did see you know in the past when he was playing with Dignitas before he got picked up by FaZe that when right. he's put in the right position, he can be absolutely lights out. But he's not in in the same kind of a scenario now in this North lineup. Yeah, next team up is going to be Mouse Sports, and they had a good regular season. The, the big story around these guys was the, the departure of Nico, losing that star player, one of the best players in the world. How are they going to make it work since then? Well, they've had Dennis step up into some of those roles, but the big one that you even mentioned just in the last team is, is Oscar. He's had a stellar tournament. Yeah, you know he is like the older version of Robs. You know he got picked up from from playing these these pugs, and that's where he really got noticed and uh, and whatnot. But his performance with the Orb is one of the best of the tournament so far. He's very dominant with it, winning a lot of clutches that we saw. Come in yesterday, uh, having a lot of impact. And this this Mouse Sports team, when you look at it, you know, we're saying, okay, well, Dennis has stepped up his game, so we're giving him a lot of props. Oscar, he's a star in his own right. Rops is on his way to potentially becoming one. Then there's like players that we tend to sleep on a little bit, right? Like Lau and, and Chris J. We yeah. know that they are very versatile in their approach to the game and they can get a lot done. Lau had like a really good period where he was topping the stats for Mouse Sports. So no one in this team is a slouch by any means. And the fact that you can say that about them when, I guess, Midway through the season, when Nico left, we thought it was all over. We thought the dream was dead. These guys were going to lose every game, but they just kept uh, impressing, and here they are. Yeah. Could, could they be, like, potentially the envy of Group B, or just a team that we've slept on kind of this whole no, way? I mean, they had a good regular team, but do we really expect them to be... The envy of Group B maybe is, like, an optic or a liquid, right? Okay. So, like, they're... Or an energy. Well, no, an energy is... <laughs> come on, don't, do, that. don't, don't do that. Don't do that. They don't come into the debate. Actually, <laughs> maybe even a Navi could be the energy, right? Because okay. this group is more up in the air, in my mind, uh, than... Group A initially yeah. felt like at so, least. So Group A ended up in a bit of a mess, in a bit yeah. of a heap, right? And, and it's unfortunate that we didn't see uh, Fnatic coming through, even though I, they did all the right things to get there, just faltered that last hurdle. Right. Um, Envy 
played fantastic, so there's no taking anything away from them. In this group, it's harder to look at who's going to play fantastic, right? Because so far, North is the only one who's shown that they're consistently show, have good form, right? I guess with the only map that Mao's lost yesterday was in overtime, right? Wasn't it on Nuke in overtime yeah, where I Austin was the knife, so, right? yeah. so Mauser would be second fiddle. Then after that, it gets a bit messy. Who who do we say is going to be third? I don't know the point at this point. Well, at the moment, it's looking like Liquid's in a pretty good position as well right now. Uh, I mean, this is a team out of North America, out of the North American region, that team that seems kind of destined to kind of finally take that mantle. And with Cloud9 not making it out of groups, this could potentially be the only North American team we see make it through groups. It very well could be. But, you know, Chad just mentioned the two of the, I, I guess, more uh, impressively performing teams from Group E yesterday. That's the two remaining opponents that Liquid has to go up against right. in order to secure their spot. They're going up against North and Mouse uh, to close things out. So that should be uh, definitely a tough test for them. And, and we've definitely seen two sides of Liquid. You know, it's the, that Dr. Jekyll and Hyde kind of yeah. feel to it where you see some maps they do uh, exceptionally well, especially when they are going up against, uh, you know, uh, other NA opponents like we see here versus uh, Energy. Uh, like, it goes well for them there, but as soon as they run into a lot of the EU teams, they tend to struggle, especially certain players seem to dip off quite a bit, actually, Twist. when they run into it. Yeah, Twist is one, right? Like, he, online for them, has had, like, really good performance. He was actually, yeah, best performing yeah. player in terms of stats. And now, in terms of at this land, he's been, like, abysmal. You know, there's no in other the way bin. to put it. Yeah. And uh, that's unfortunate to see a player, like, especially young like him, drop off, because normally with those guys, they don't have any fear. You know, they're yeah. not afraid, and they just see, they put up decent numbers. They don't usually struggle as much as this, but... Uh, oh, there, there you yeah. can see his stats from the first day, right up on the screen, I think. 47 ADR. Yeah, that's, that's not good. That's not good enough. It's not fantastic at all, really, is it? But it, he can, like, bounce back. I don't think, like, kids, like, oh, actually, now you think, now that I say that, <laughs> for kids, it's harder to get out of your own head, right? Because yeah. he, did, he did have some issues with the air conditioning yesterday. He said he's been feeling mighty chilly. In the tournament do what Jordan does. Jordan does like stretches and stuff before he plays matches. And we used to do push-ups. Yeah, uh, and I'm jumping jacks. Get the, bl get the blood, blood pump and yeah, get yeah, the blood yeah. flowing. Get all the extremities and everything like that. I mean, or or you could put on a jacket. No, he was wearing a he was wearing a hoodie. Listen, that really? Texas yeah. air conditioning is mutant Next air conditioning. It's mutant, mutant air conditioning. Wow. you will. It is painful actually <laughs> how cold it is in some of these places. I know you've got right. lots of good things to say about Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of Texas. <laughs> big fan of Texas. Mm. Um, either way, yeah, ho definitely hoping to see Twist kind of step things up. But I mean, moving on to some other North American parts of Team Liquid, a team we've kind of already written off that really hasn't shown a whole lot. I believe the tweet out of even one of their players, PTR, was, I have no words. NRG had, had a stunning day yesterday. Um, any chance of them bouncing back here? I don't want to be too harsh, Jason. Do it. Come on, Chad. <laughs> just wanna... We brought you in to be harsh. What, what were they expecting? I don't know. Like, okay. Top three. I, I, they had close matches, right? Their matches weren't all blowouts. They had, like, d a decent chances. I think the one versus right. Optic was in overtime on, on that, a 16 14. Yeah, like, relatively close matches. So, in terms of that, maybe he's like, man, we just had some... That could be implying we had some mistakes and he doesn't have words because, you know, that sucked. But at the same time, that means they've performed better than expected. Well, at least from, from, yeah. from me, anyway. So, um, it's a team where they don't have a lot of... They don't have many stars or they're not really established in terms of this land scene. They don't get to play against the top dogs all the time. This is one of those experiences where you kind of just have to take it for what it is and, and keep building and try and just get better within the North, North American region. Uh, maybe it hurts a bit more because you don't get uh, these opportunities all the time. So, maybe, maybe that's why he's so upset. Yeah, a very, very good, very real possibility. Um, and then moving on to another North American team, just the last one of this group, last one of the tournament, actually. It's going to be Optic Gaming. And this is a team that, you know, we, their, docu their, their struggles have been well documented with not having a set roster, not having a set fifth, bringing in a new coach. Jason R is the in-game leader. Um, you know, once proud team at the end of last year, really, really struggling. But today, you, you'd like to say they have a chance, but today they have just a blistering schedule. They, they face all the top dogs. Yeah, Navi, Mouse, North, that's uh, that's what they have to, to chew on, really, for today. And I think that's going to be pretty tough uh, tough hurdle to climb for them uh, especially because it's so hard to find like normally when they, or back in the day when they were playing with Stanislaw you could kind of pinpoint what their strength were nowadays with Jason R and the team they don't really have that structure or reliability to their squad that they that we saw it's in the past it doesn't really seem like they have that go guy that can just make everyone perform better uh, like they did with Stan and, and that system so that's obviously worrying especially when they're going up against what we would assume probably would be the top three of the group yeah, to build on that a little bit more, right? Today, the theme has been confidence, right? You know, having to come out <laughs> with confidence. And as much as that's silly to say, it's not really just coming out and being confident because if you don't have any strategies or game plan in yeah. place, there's nothing to be confident about other than your aim, which is not going to get you very far. Mm -hmm. They need to ha be confident in the game plan they have and, and just follow through with it. And even if, you know, things aren't working so well, make sure that you, you're happy to keep doing that because as soon as you start questioning at mid-match, that's when things fall apart. And a team like this in the past who have had good results because their players are happy to, you know, pull off these amazing 
aggressive players. I think that's the best thing that Optic do is aggressive, like even mid-round players where they just push in, get a really good timing and get a multi-kill from there. That You need to have belief in the system that's behind you to go for those plays. So confidence is a buzzword. You know, we're probably using it a little bit too much, but uh, it is what they need. Yeah, and speaking of another team that, that doesn't really have that system to rely on and hasn't felt comfortable in their system is Navi, still reeling from losing Starx as a coach, from losing Zeus as an in-game leader. If they want a chance today of moving on, it's got to be simple because we've talked a couple, about a couple star players who have had surprisingly bad days on day one. Simple's another one of those guys who just was absent, it felt like. Yeah, no, compared to what you usually see from Simple, he was very, very, very quiet uh, on day one. Uh, I guess now he's going to have the benefit of going up against probably the two easiest opponents in the group. So uh, it, he'll have full opportunities to actually get into that Wrecking Ball mode where he just goes ham and, and doesn't look back, really, just because right. the destroyer of worlds. Uh, and for Navi, obviously, that's what you want to have. You want to have a simple that's full of confidence going into a potential bracket play. Uh, but it's, there's still a ton of worries, really, with that Navi squad because they seem to falter when they shouldn't. Like they Even when they ma manage to start a game off on the wrong foot and manage to climb back and you think everything is fine and dandy, still find some ways to mess that up for themselves. They surprised me yesterday on Cobble how they were able to come back against Mouse, right? 12-3 down in the first half, yeah. and then they clawed their way back. Uh, I was just like, why are they doing this to themselves? But their map pool <laughs> still isn't very deep, right? We yeah. know they don't play cash. That's a map which they've always avoided. Nuke for them, they've dabbled with it a little bit, but you wouldn't say it's super strong, so they're definitely not vetoing towards that. If you take away like an overpass from these guys, you, that's one of their biggest strengths being gone. Um, I don't mind their Inferno. That's not a bad map, so if they can get that happening, get simple up to par, like we're saying, with Flamey and then Guardian chiming in, that's a scary trio. We've never seen that trio going off together, so right. yeah. maybe today's the day. Yeah. yeah, would be nice to that. I mean, any any kind of final thoughts? Are we thinking this is going to be like Group A? Are we going to see North drop down and have to play in tiebreakers? Are we going to see the, the massive shuffle in this group that we saw earlier today? I believe in North. Yeah, I believe in North. Believe in North. I, I don't think we're going to see as much of a mess as we saw in Group A because that was like <laughs> a special kind of soup that we got to see on day two. Uh, I think this should be a little bit more straightforward. Yeah, well, we'll find out just after the break. We're going to come back. We're going to get Group B started. The first matchup is going to be Mouse versus Optic, a match that Optic absolutely has to win if they want a chance of moving on in Group B. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, Lenovo Legion, Xfinity, ESEA, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, Logitech G, and Zowie.
Welcome back to ESL Pro League Season 5 Finals. We are going to get started with Group B now. It's Mouse Sports taking on Optic Gaming in a must-win match for the North American side. We've talked a lot about these teams. Chad kind of highlighted Mouse Sports. No slouches on this team. They've been performing so very well throughout this regular season. And we got your boy Rops. Do we have Rops Cam here? We, we don't have a ROPS cam. Here. We need to set up a ROPS cam. We I think. could set up a ROPS cam. Yeah, I've got it's the not, laptop out the back. Yeah, it's not, hard yeah. To, it's not hard to wire that up. Playing some ESEA earlier, and I thought, you know, maybe we'll flick it over the ROPS cam now. Yeah, that, that's that's quite good. Uh, stellar player. I mean, you, you quite like his mechanical skill a lot. You think he's going to be the next big thing. Crosshair placement is amazing, right? If you just watch this kid, you just see how he approaches every duel. The fact that in clutches, he can force people to make mistakes. Like, that's one of the qualities that I would never really mastered. You can't teach it either. No. Can you? And it's like the pacing, he doesn't seem panicked in situations when he's retaking. And when you come from basically not playing in a team for such a long period of time or a structured professional team like he hasn't and then get thrown, thrown into this one and then still be able to put up you know a relatively decent performance like what he's doing it's good to see and it shows that he can evolve into a star player eventually it's just going to take him a while to get this land experience under his belt and i keep harping on him but i just like think the kid's sick so <laughs> and I mean, sure. there is something special about seeing young players having composure because it's like it would have been understandable if he's playing well, you know, if he gets off to a good start, and, you know, similar to what we talked about with Twist, you know, how that can be for a young player who has no fear. Uh, that could be very easy for them to just kind of keep going on that train for a long while until they hit that brick road, and then it's really hard to dig themselves out. I think Rob's is the kind of player from what we've, the little I've seen of him, because he's so composed in, in all of these stress, high stress situation that even if he has a bad performance, that's not going to weigh him down. He's uh, he's level headed enough to actually understand, you know, the, the see the big picture and things. And I think that's going to be something that's immensely valuable for him going forward and you know in terms of just having that steady development as a player or just you know even just uh, having that progress be much faster as even right it, it's very unique to see right I, I can't really think of another player who I've in my time I've known has come up and they don't get stuck into momentum being their driving force as a star or a young player right because I remember when I was playing my first lands and stuff you get tunnel vision like you get in the moment and then as soon as you hit a wall and then like you, you just ha it have stops. a blank right yeah. it just stops and then you have no way of getting back into it like you're saying um, whereas this kid he just seems like obviously he's with other professionals so they can help him guide him through the coach right. is an example of that things have changed since since our day but the fact that it doesn't seem like that's even an issue for him. He doesn't rely on momentum because he's not an entry frag or he's not like a second in. He's like towards the end of the pack. He's the third guy. Yeah. And yeah. He, I remember an interview that I was reading with him. He, he takes his time. He's very methodical. He likes to check every angle. That can be a problem, but I uh, haven't seen it yet. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, another team that could that could use some of that momentum that is, perhaps has hit a little bit of a wall on a team level is this is this optic side. I mean, we know these guys. We know they have the skill. We've seen the players shine. We've seen Rush just be this dominant force for this team. We've seen every one of this mix well, Tarek. These guys have all had games where they've just gone off and been able to carry. But something is not gelling right in this team at the moment and they're sitting with their backs against the wall in this group. Yeah, they feel like a team without an identity as of right now and that's oftentimes a big problem where you don't really know where to go with the, with, you know, the, the utility that you have within your lineup, right? And we know that the, the core four of that optic lineup has reached incredible heights. So there's no reason that, you know, there's not a lack of potential really within that. It's just about actually, you know, finding their, themselves as, as cheesy as that sounds. Yeah, I mean, who's going to be who's going to be the impetus here for these guys, Chad? Is it going to be is it going to be Rush? Is it going to be a guy like Tarek who you'd expect to make some kind of a play to get them going? Is it going to be Mixwell with the AWP? I mean, gotta who's going to be the the guy to ignite this team? I think Mixwell is like the most consistent factor that they yeah. have. But like a player like Naf is one with a huge ceiling to make plays. And it's something which you don't see consistently if you did. You, well, to break it down even more, every player on this team can make plays it's just who's going to show up and do it and in their victories when they when they've had them in the past it's because someone's dropped 30 right and it's hard to quantify as to why uh they, they could do that but a couple it'll be an interesting map for them i think i think that's actually you no know, not too bad for them it's a map that they play quite a bit then again it's also mouse sports most play map so this is not mouse sports going into you know un unknown territory by any means they're going to feel comfortable about going into this as well they had that match versus navi yesterday yeah and uh we we saw what kind of huge first half, exactly yeah. right and uh, i th i think Optic are going to have a much harder time getting back into a game like that than what we saw Navi did. Jason says huge first half, but also very small second half. Right? Like, <laughs> you have to Minuscule. you have to weigh it yeah, up. Yeah, like no, yeah, no, it goes both ways, definitely. So, but I also think there's something to be said that I, Navi have more experience to play off. I think they have, even as you know, m much of a mess that Navi team is as of right now. I think it's fair to say that they stand right. stronger than that Optic lineup. Yeah, and now I mean the Optic can't, is it seems we probably can't expect to make the same kind of comeback that Navi did. They need a hot start here. Either way, who do you think is going to win? Optic Optic or Navi, or excuse me, Optic or Mouse Sports. Put it in the YouTube chat. Find out who's going to win. We'll, we'll bring that set up during the game at some point, see how, where all the fans are. Either way, we're going to be sending it over to your caster. Match is about to get live. It is going to be Optic Gaming taking on Mouse Sports with Blue and Days. 
All right, thank you very much, Poses. And yes, here on Cobblestone, we're getting prepped to start off Group B here on day number two. Teams still vying for their playoff spot. I'm here with Days. Days, the match is getting started in just a second. What are the initial thoughts heading into this map? Well, just just judging by the two teams and how they've been performing, I mean, you got to give Mouse Sports the edge. You know, we are going live. It is Pistol right now if we could get in game. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Sorry. They're, they're knifing. They're knifing. Actually. Excuse me. But anyways, <laughs> looked like it was just a mid-rush. But, yeah, I mean, you got to you gotta assume Mouse Sports is, is the better team, especially the way they're, like, three-headed, you know, beasts have been playing in Dennis, Oscar, and Rops. Yeah, absolutely, and as we've just been beasts. Yeah, they've been they've been destroying so yeah. far with the games that we've seen in the mainstream anyway. Whereas with Optic, it hasn't really been showing up so far, unfortunately, and, and they've been kind of lagging behind. And we really need to see those big stars coming out to play. And it is on Cobble, which is a map that, especially on CT side, you really need good communication. You really need like no confusion. Everybody has to know what they're responsible for at any given time, or else you can just get destroyed. And from what we saw on Optic, especially on Nuke, which is very similar on that CT side where you need to have everybody know what they're responsible for when somebody goes down, right? You have to have that or else you could just, there's gonna be cracks in your defense everywhere and you're gonna get exploited and you're gonna lose because of it. And so Optic needs to really improve upon what we saw on Nuke because we did not see that last night. Communication in general needs to just get a little bit better here for Optic Gaming with, with how creative it seems like Mouse Sports have gotten over the past few days. Uh, they've, they've been busting out a lot of new stuff that at least uh, the two of us haven't really seen at uh, previous events before. So if Optic hasn't really done their homework and they're not really gonna be prepped for any of that, uh, especially on CT side, I feel like a lot of that's gonna fall apart very quickly and Mouse Sports is gonna be able to abuse them on the T side. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I definitely heavily favor Mouse Sports. I think just the way the the cobble map is is really wide open on T side as well. Like you could make, uh, you know, once you take drop control, you can make a lot of plays as individuals as well, which really favors uh, this Mouse Sports team, especially somebody like Oscar who who played really well last night on, on cobble as well. Uh, another thing, like we saw them, not only were they able to play as individuals in that aspect, right, just kind of taking map control pretty easily taking drop control when they needed to, taking a holes when they needed to, but then Rops was always just like closing out rounds, just being that hard lurker role whenever they went towards A, winning 3v3s, closing it out in those situations, and just being really impressive in general. Yeah, well, it does look like, guys, we are finally going live now. So Optic Gaming is going to be starting off on the T side, and Mouse Sports is going to be jumping over to the CT side. Another area you're definitely going to want to keep your eyes on is the contestion that will more than likely be happening quite a bit over towards A long. We saw yesterday how much Dennis was able to control that entire portion of the map uh, when they were playing that there. And Optic, for the most part, when they do just kind of stray away from what you're seeing now, which is like these straightforward default plays, the more likely lead over to B, they do like to use long A quite a bit. So that's, that's probably going to get challenged if you see Dennis continue to play into that spot. But starting off with the pistol round, Mouse Sports did throw quite a few players over towards the A bomb site, which now leaves the B site slightly under defended. The good news is though is that Chris J has already spotted this little bit of a push onto the platform. So in a few seconds, we may be able to expect a couple of rotates coming from the additional Mouse Sports players. But for right now, it is just Chris J and Rops sitting in the site with Dennis on the way, being able to watch out for the drop window and easily able to rotate into the site if necessary. But Optic haven't solidified their push over to here just yet either. They're still toying around with the mid connector, which they're now gonna be able to push into. They dinked Oscar, that's gonna send him way back over to the A-bomb site. And that's also probably gonna keep a few players in that direction. So the moment Optic are keeping their options open, it could fall down if they get crunched upon like we're seeing now with Chris J going for that push up inside. But they tried it right back with Mixwell over here on A-long as he's able to pick up the kill against Lowell. Tarek still chasing down the trade against Chris J. He's now down at one HP, but just unable to find that kill. The bomb is now here, though, so they've decided to go towards the B bomb site, but they need to get in soon. They're getting low on time. 40 seconds remaining to get that bomb onto the ground, and they don't even have the whole team with them currently. They've only got this platform control. Nice shots from Jason R, though. Brings another player from Mouse Sports down incredibly low. Chris J responding with one more pickup, but not only will he go down after that, Rups is also going to fall. Rush continues to push forward with Tarek as he eliminates Dennis. Just leaves Oscar alive, who had already been dinked down to 13 HP. Tarek will get the final blow. Ends up with a 3k on the round and secures it for Optic. Yeah, and, and it looks like Optic strategy there is so you get you know Naf on that left corner whoever has the best spawn most likely over those B halls and then you flash over and if you get the kill once that player picks B plat on the CT side which is really common on, on CT pistol then you can go out B right away but if you don't then you slow it down you take A halls control and then you come back to B um, so it gives them a couple opportunities to get kills making like a 4v4 or something like that and uh, so I, I actually like that shot a lot yeah, so 
Now we are going to see in the second round here with Optic having the advantage. They're still going to be swinging quite a few players over here towards A long. Oscar and Dennis flying together at the moment to try and hold on for control of that one. Flashbang is going to absolutely destroy Oscar though, and Dennis can't do anything from within inside of that molly. He goes down at the hands of Naf, and Oscar is going to be able to retreat for right now. And oh, ho, ho, just blind firing with the Deagle through the smoke. He is able to actually trade one of their players out by eliminating Jason R. The rest of the team is now quickly trying to clear back out through mid-connector. And through that, they actually pick up a kill on Chris J, who went back in through the mid-connector through a smoke. So now it has gone back into the hands of Optic. They have a 4v3 advantage, and they're pulling most of their players away from A, possibly to go over to the other site now. And now... <laughs> Over towards B here. Ropes is going to be waiting just beyond the smoke. There's a few more players from Optic are starting to group up to try and push over towards the platform. Ropes is going to be the one thing that can possibly stop this. Mouse, Mouse Sports did have the good read on it, so they've properly rotated over here, and they have the positioning. But the gun power is still not going to be too great. Ropes, though, comes out with a big kill to start things off, and now Lowell's going to be in the party, but he can't get anything done. Both Ropes and Lowell go down, and Oscar follows through as well. He'll be eliminated by Tarek, and Optic will secure the second round. Yeah, that, that was dangerous for Optic. Uh, that, that definitely could have gone anyway there. Um, the, the crossfire by Rops and Lowell. I think Rops just needs to hide after that kill. Makes it easier on Lowell. Also gives time for Oscar to come as well uh, after that first frag. But, you know, obviously you're in that cubby. You're worried about nades, worried about Molotovs and whatnot. But at the end of the day, they're going to trade you if you do wide swing like that. Now they're just going to go with a 5 USP save. You're going to see Naf with the MAC-10 kind of scouting out middle. Four players just running out B should be an easy round for Optic. Yeah. So now Optic are going to try to swing themselves in and just clear this out pretty quickly. They're not taking this too slowly as they've already picked up two kills for them, or three kills now for themselves. Jason R netting two of them. And Naf going for the last two. He does get headshot by Oscar, however, so that'll be the one loss so far against the Optic roster. It's not like Oscar wants to continue fighting, though, even though the round itself is definitely already gone. He'll just sit out here, see if anyone else from Optic tries to hunt him down. And in the event they do, he may be able to rack up an extra kill or two before he himself ends up dead on the ground. So we can see as Tarek swings out, though, gets the headshot as he's falling down to close out on the round. And Optic indeed secure the nice 3-0 start as Mouse Sports is finally going to be able to go for their buy. And they go right to the double op setup in the first gun round as well. And we'll see how they want to take control of that a halls. If Optic does it like they did on the anti eco, I think that I think that's a good starting point for for a lot of their T side rounds. Just because Dennis has been so aggressive around there, right? And if you can, you know, isolate him, push him away from Oscar, get that kill while he is aggro, good things might be able to happen. Might be able to make it four v five. Oscar overly aggressive, Nat punishing that right away. See, he's gonna opt for the op or, you know, use the op over Mixwell this round. Chris J does trade a kill back, though, against Mixwell as he tries to lurk his way past the boxes there beyond Broken Wall, and that will get punished by Chris J. So bringing this back down to an even 4v4. Optic does have an open road through A long if they want to try to move in here and take control, just waiting for their own molly to fade so that they can move in and do that. But they're making a whole lot of noise in the process, so easily going to call for an extra player to rotate over here in the event they commit to it, which is a pretty likely event now that they've gotten three players into A long with no contestion at all. And in a moment, the bomb's going to be moving over here, too. Most of the CT defense is focused on the outside of the mid-connector, right at the bottom of the ramp, as you can see the silhouettes now. Dennis, along with Rops, trying to play this one together and see if they'll be able to hold off the defense with just the two of them. The real problem is going to be the pinch working out for May Long, but that also comes down to the timing. If Optic execute with the Long players first, this can work out, and that seems to be what they are doing. But now the mid players are going to be moving in, and so this crossfire setup can still work out great for them. Rops and Dennis both pick up initial kills, and now they have to try and trade it back. Jason R, in the meantime, has gotten all the way up to the platform because there's no actual defense set up on the site, but still, they have to battle it back and get this control as the bomb is going to be tough to actually get up here, and Jason R needs to be careful to check his backside here as Lowell's going to be able to easily Spot that shadow. Doesn't even need him, however, as Rops just grabs the kill anyway from still at the very bottom of the ramp. It's now all down to Naf alone in a 1v4. No great positioning. A lot of these CTs could have shifted around, so his intel isn't really that great either. He's basically just guessing at being able to pick up some of these frags. Nice shot. Connects on a Dennis, but it is a leg, so it's not going to fully take him down. And with five seconds left, he's just going to hunker down in the suicide steps and look to save the op. Yeah, Optic just sending Tarek out first in middle. I mean, Really just no chance, right? He has an op, he has to clear the, the tight left angle and the tight right angle. Uh, not much of a chance for him to get that. But you notice when it's 4v4, what does Chris J do? I, I know he, he wasn't the one that got any kills late there, 
but he's the, he had a big part in winning that round because he's watching E box and he's watching long B while he opts at that stair area. So he has, if they come B, he's gonna have a ton of information. They're gonna have a ton of time to rotate, and he's also watching E box as well. And they can essentially just have three players towards A. And so now Chris J is gonna continue to play aggressively here now as he goes for the early out peak. Not gonna connect this time around, and he also does not decide to stick around this time. He will be falling back further into the site as the CTs do look just to deploy normal amounts of utility to hold off the push from Optic. Well, it's not entirely going to end up working here. It's going to be close contact, though, for Lowell as he pushes himself back up onto the broken wall. Tarek continuing to try and push through early. Gets denied for a second time now. And we'll give MS Sports another early 5v4 advantage. As Optic more than likely gonna end up getting pushed back to reevaluate their strat here. And Mouse Sports will be able to continue to hold that aggressive control. Lowell's gonna change up his spot into the cubby on the platform. The rest of the team still circulating around and looking for options as they change up the main point of contention over towards Drop. Just trying to clear that out first before they do commit to it. And the bomb is being kept back, so this could potentially turn into a drop split on A as well. But that could actually be really troublesome, especially with the bomb's current position outside of the mid-connector, and the CTs have two players holding there in their own regard. The bomb's on its way back now, so they are going to try to move in here. Great shot from Chris J, though, to be able to eliminate Naf as Optic just can't find a hole to try and poke, poke through to get into this B-bomb site. Mixwell looking for more options now as he's trying to clear back out through drop, but the you know the main push force out here through the platform still hasn't even started, and there's only 20 seconds remaining. Lowell can easily swing back out. He's almost just got the double kill, and in fact, he has done it. Jason R and Rush both go down. Optic once again just not able to get anything done with their entry power, and it leaves only Mixwell alive now with the drop room under his control. He'll pick up one kill, swings around the 360 quick scope on Lowell, but then does go down after that to Rups to close out the round. Yeah, I mean, Optic, they just get shut down at B, all the nades coming out. Uh, I think it was Tarek there that died first, right? Yeah. Trying to go out through the smokes. They're, they get smoked out. They're saying, hey, you know, this isn't going to work. Let's go down drop. And then the timing really was just in Chris J's favor there, right? Naf clears that angle. He's posted up for a little bit. As soon as he goes to, to just, you know, clear more angles, a little bit closer angle, I think he was going to clear the close left of E-Box. That's when Chris J peaks, so... Timing and just working out for Mouseport's favor there. And not only that, but just really good nade usage, right? To stop anything coming out of B. Yeah, and this is the first tactical pause being used now by Optic. These first two gun rounds have gone relatively poorly for them, so they need to take a moment to sit back and reevaluate their strap. Probably won't be seeing them uh, going for a big investment on this round. They're probably going to end up like half buying or just upgrading pistols into this one. But after this is where you're going to want to pay attention is hopefully they'll evolve their strat a little bit to counter out mouse sports and actually be able to uh, get into a site to start things off here as they've been struggling right from the get go of it and have been pretty much shut down by mouse sports in the last two attempts to breach through on a gun round. And indeed, as you see, they are just going to end up with Deagles, P250s, and Tech 9s. Only two players purchasing armor as well. So, looking from the looks of things, it's probably going to be a pretty straightforward strat for Baltic on this round. Already trying to send Tarek out once more over towards the platform. He will be delayed because of the Molotov, and I'm imagining there's going to be a smoke after that, but after that we will more than likely see Optic just go through with drop control, and then make their best attempt to get out onto this B-bomb site. Lowell being the main player to hold outside of drop. He's going to have another chance to multi-frag, although Watchbang ends up connecting onto him. Thankfully, Chris J still holds good control by Coop, so he is able to pick up that kill onto Rush. So far, the only kill the T's have even gotten has come from Mixwell, but that'll change now with Jason R also stealing a frag off of Chris J. That's going to be it, though. After that, Mouse Sports do pretty handily shut that one down, and Optic again fall flat on Nico. I mean, they're just not really making it difficult for Mouse Sports. You know, you, you know if you're Optic, you're going up against a double up setup. You see Chris J with Op, you see Oscar with Op. Most teams in that scenario are going to say, hey, let's just do a little bit more of an investment. Let's get Tech 9 armor. I'm still going to be, be able to buy the next round, get some smokes and flashes, and just try to do some type of like a B execute where you could run through the smokes, maybe catch people off guard, and have a good chance of winning the round. Um, instead, they just, you know, get a couple of Deagles there, half armor flashes. It's just. You know, not really giving yourself the best chance to win the round. Decent nade coming out from Dennis here to do, to punish the aggression from the T's leading up to A long. However, they return back with a flash coming. And at the moment, mouse sports are not too aggressive in terms of actually trying to challenge this control. There is going to be a nice smoke that comes out just in the nick of time as the molly was starting to fade so that they can maintain that control. But the problem is, in doing this, they left the actual push up from the ramp completely open. So Optic just flooded the site and got it for free. They're going to have no problem putting that bomb on the ground. This is going to be a full 5v5 retake at the end of the day. And Mouse is even trying to be careful of the, the hallway leading up 
it to Heaven as their Curious and Poptic are going to try to boost up there. So at the moment, Mouse Sports are taking a risk deploying towards A-Long. It worked out. They held that A-Long control, but they lost the actual sight as they weren't able to call that out quickly enough, and the Rotate just came way too late to be able to do anything about it. So now Optic is a full five-man hold, and Mouse Sports are looking for options to get back in, but it's not great right now just because they have no intel. They have no clue where the Optic players are sitting from within this site. Rops is going to start us off, though, as he moves in with the elimination of Rush, but immediately two kills get traded back by Tarek and Mixwell. Dennis finding one more as he moves back in, but Tarek trades it right back yet again with the elimination of Dennis. A great shot from Oscar. Knocks out Mixwell over by the main doorway, and Lowell moving in just in time. Tries to save his teammate, but that's going to fail. At the end of the day, now it's now come down to Tarek. Trying to pop the head off of Lowell, but he can't find it. Now he's in the open over to the Glock, though, and he finishes it off. He'll die to the bomb explosion, but Optic do indeed win out the round. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just a great read by them. They they recognize Mouseport's trend to, to sometimes do this. They they send those two players towards long. They have Oscar watching middle from danger. He's above it. But, you know, if you smoke off danger, you just have free passage into the site. Uh, they also keep him there because they smoke long A, kind of deep. And that way, Oscar's just going to be thinking there's a little bit of pressure towards Dennis and whatnot. You saw him utilizing nades. Um, just seeing players around there, and they say, "Oh, it's a double long setup. Let's just smoke danger. Let's go up middle. We have free passage to the free passage to the site, and then from there, it's it's a really tough retake by Mouse Force. I thought Mouse Force did a really good job of giving themselves even a chance to win that situation. Rops very very careful around there. You see how methodical he is. Uh, Sponge was mentioning it on the analyst desk, and he really is. He checks every angle. He was very slow. That kill is not a kill you usually get with that guy underneath heaven. And just to get that." gives themselves a chance. But at the end of the day, Optic did win that round, but all five players died. Yeah. All five. Now look at their buy. You'll see the immediate effects of that as soon as we get the overlay back on the screen here with the pause now ending. That was the first tactical pause from Mouse Sports. Now both teams have used their first pause and have three 30 second pauses remaining. And this is where Optic, in my opinion, really shined and thrived when they had Stanislav, was when they had buys like this. They were really good at converting on these rounds. Um, with just nades, tech nines, armors, a couple AKs or whatever. And mouse sports, you know, they, they have the single off and, and you know, it's pretty even by round right now. Yeah. Optic looking to go back to their original strategies over here towards B, which is very straightforward. And these are the ones that Mouse Sports was a were able to shut down without really any trouble whatsoever. But with the uneven buys coming in from both sides, this could make this whole round a bit troublesome. That Molly missing actually could be big problems for Optic as it opens up a huge lane for Mouse Sports to rotate closer to this platform on. They change it up at the last second though to move heavily into drop, but Dennis still able to hold it. Tarek looks for his entry, but Chris J bails out his teammate there by picking up the kill first. Rops also destroying another player, trying to push out towards platform. That'll leave Naft dead, and now we're in a 2v5 with basically no damage being done to anyone on Mouse Sports. That's going to change now, though, with Rush picking up the kill on Oscar, and Mouse Sports bit fully on this rotation, so Optic were actually able to find a hole to go out of the window, move themselves over to A, and now they have a free plant sitting on this site. Jason R still has to hold off the site, however, and fend off these rotates until the bomb goes on the ground, which has now happened, and Jason R is actually being given a lot of room. He'll be moving into the crawl space. He's got to watch his flank, though, in a moment. He's going to be knocked out and completely flanked, but still able to hold on. Gets two more kills out of nowhere. Now all the Pressure shifts over to Rush, however, in the 1v2. His teammates certainly helped him out quite a bit, bringing Lowell down to 10 HP, but he still has to eliminate Ruffs. The good news is, though, is that in the 1v2, they have no clue where he's hiding out. It gets himself into the open, but looks the wrong way. So Ruffs is going to be able to shut it down, eliminates Rush, and that'll give it to Mouse Sports, but definitely a close one, going up 4-4. Four to four. Yeah, a really good decision by Lowell to flank there. Um, the the ump drop-off damage really hurting them there. Not able to, to kill Jason R when he was close, and Jason R able to get those two kills after that. But, you know, the, the, the actual take, right, the, of, of Optic, which is so disconnected, you see what they wanted to do. They wanted to go out B, and while they go out B and make a bunch of noise and make everybody look at them, then they go out drop and pinch. This is a, a round I'm very surprised that they're saving here. They so they all have around 2k in the bank. They know that Mouse Sports is on a very limited economy. Um, you know, only winning that round with two alive as Oscar makes a 4v5 right off the bat and they just go for a straight mid rush. But I'm surprised this isn't a buy. Yeah, Oscar knows his more coming, switching over to the pistol to try and hold it back off. Rush. Good trades, though, picking up both the kills on Dennis and Oscar. So that's all the A long defenders. Problem is, though, is it became very obvious that they were trying to brute force their way into the A bomb site. So they do have to hold off for a few extra seconds here. Mixwell is still going to sit back over towards the edge of A long. I think he has a vision of the door at the moment. He might be still a little bit more behind the wall to be able to actually peek out into that. But Chris J, regardless, peeking into it almost loses his life. But 
to stay close enough behind coverage to be able to keep himself in the game. Mix all after missing that shot, though, is now going to fall back, grouping up with the rest of his teammates towards the B-Halls, and we'll see in a second if they decide to follow through with that and attempt to execute into the site, which is actually now pretty undefended. Mouseports just went for a 1-1-1 split after they lost Oscar and Dennis at A-Long. So just trying to keep them evenly spaced apart and give them the best bet to be able to rotate into this hit. That's putting a lot of extra pressure on Lowell now, however, especially after Rups went all the way over towards the doorway. So he's actually pretty disconnected and won't be able to easily just hold off the door and have that position. But thankfully, because Optic are still taking the usual route with the Molly clear out of drop, it's gonna give it's gonna give Rups that extra time to be able to uh, rotate over here and actually get himself into the site where he's immediately going to impact. The double kill from him shuts down the drop play. Now it's only Mixwell left alive. Two missed shots. Third strike probably is gonna be coming pretty soon here. Now he's down to seven HP with nowhere to go. And yeah, he's just gonna give up on this one completely, running away to save with only 15 seconds remaining on the clock. Yeah, so he's going to be able to salvage that op unless, who is this, Chris J is just hunting for him. Might be able to find Mixwell here, we'll see. He's going to check that one specific corner though, and Mixwell is going to hear him coming. He thinks he's up top though, so yeah, Chris J oh gets the advantage there. And not only does he die, he dies after the timer. Yeah, so Mixwell will be down to probably a Tech-9 this round. I'm just really surprised though that they didn't buy there. I mean, they know they, they only had two alive. They know they're on a limited buy that round. That Usually on Cobble, you aggressively buy ST. Um, you almost always see teams aggressively buy, so I'm very surprised by that. I mean, they still managed to get down to a 3v3. Very winnable situation. Just props destroyed them. Yeah, they gave him too much time to rotate back over, so he was able to pretty much shut down the entire drop play. Which, if those guys got out without Rops being there, it actually probably would have been a pretty successful hold, and, and the retake might have not even been a possibility. Oscar overpeaking again towards A Long, though, is going to find himself dead on the ground early in the round with Nap yeah, but, picking up the kill. But that's a kill that he should get nine times out of ten. He was actually, he just aimed off of him, I think, mm. uh, while he was posted up or might have been moving or something, but I guarantee you he's just saying, how did I just miss that? <laughs> and it's funny because I actually like him taking that pick because, you know, he died doing it before to Naf when Naf was offing, remember? But it just shows Oscar's mentality. You know, Oscar's mentality is is he's going to go for picks. He's not going to be afraid. He could be 0-9, and it doesn't matter. Like, he's still going to be aggressive. And that's the mentality you want out of players. Well, now Optic are trying to group up to try and basically just go for a direct hit towards A more than likely in a few seconds. This is a great thing that Mouseports did at the beginning of the round, decide to go for a three-man stack towards A long, as they still have Dennis here, which can open up an early flank or possibly just take out Jason R. We'll find that out in a moment. But you also have Rups, who's rotated back over and is going to once again immediately find that impact. He only gets the one kill, but Dennis is doing some work along with Chris J. With those two combined, they managed to pick up three kills, and everything goes down to Tarek. We now have to go up against both Dennis and Lowell to try and clutch this one out in the 1v2. The good news is, though, is that both the Mouse Sports' players are going to be extremely far away on the rotate. So Tarek's going to have plenty of time to set up here. He just doesn't have any utility to play it out. And obviously has to do the guessing game in terms of finding Lowell here. But in the timing being perfect, moves out, finds Dennis. He just saw Lowell there, so now he can hide behind the APC and try to play with him like he did a few rounds back. Doesn't even need to, though. Lines himself up in the perfect angle to take down Lowell. And Optic it right back into the game yet again now, tying us up at 5-5. Five five. Good work by Chris J, though. They, they had pretty early information. I think Dennis was probably hearing them come up middle. It was almost like a full rotate. Um, and Tark just able to win that nice 2v1 at the end there. We do see a pause comes out from Mouseboard. So they're probably wondering, you know, should we buy right here? We know, obviously, once again, the money of both teams has been pretty low these past few rounds. And they know that Optic only won with one alive, right? So... Optic, though, you know, after this pistol, they've won a couple important rounds. Just to, that that round was huge. Just to put them in in this spot where it is five to five, and they do have a good economic damage or economic uh, advantage going into this round. So, Mouse Force talked it over. They are gonna buy. It's just gonna be you know two five sevens, a scout, a mag seven, and whatever Oscar decides to get, which is enough. Yeah. I mean, overall, this game has been has been pretty much neck and neck uh, so yeah. far here. You know, excluding the obviousness of the scoreline, uh, besides the three-round streak that was won by both teams, we've pretty much been going back and forth for the last four rounds now with these guys trying to stack up some uh, some points for themselves. So nobody really has a huge advantage. And it is leading to multiple gun rounds now where we have these really uneven or forced into buys in the case of Mouse Sports. Optic definitely getting the better of the arsenal this time in terms of not only the gun power, but the utility. But however, Mouse Sports still have a few tricks up their sleeve they can use. Dennis on the shotgun can certainly do some damage with Optic's tendency to try and play into A long so often here. He could multi-frag and 
single-handedly set up this round for a victory. Yeah, the flashbang's gonna be great. They're putting him into the corner, but do they even realize he's there? Yes, they do. Oscar trades it back with two additional kills, though, and brings it down to a 3v3, hurling the bomb further back, and probably gonna send it into the B-Halls, but even that area may not be safe in a moment. Here's Lowell pushing in, almost gets that kill against Rush, but he's able to maintain. Now Mixwell, seeing that the site might be a little bit more open here, tries to push out through drop, but faces some trouble against Chris J. Tags him down to 26 HP, and Chris J's gonna continue to try and move in, hold a more aggressive spot on this site. He's gotta watch out for that push from the drop room, though. He's very exposed to it, and can't hit any more shots. Great shot from Rups, though, as he moves back in, eliminating Mixwell, and certainly making this a valid 2v2 if he can set himself up well enough. The smoke moving in on the sidewalk gives him a free path to cross out onto the site. But the Optic players have also taken up great positioning to try and counter him out. He will have to take them both on at the same time if he wants to try and clutch this or wait until the smoke fades. Terra going to take a bit of a risk, though, in pushing through the smoke. And now, all of a sudden, we're down to a 1v1 with Rush having to clutch this for the T side. Ropes, though, moving in, wasting a whole lot of time trying to hunt down his opponent. And all that noise being made makes it obvious to Rush. He'll be able to take down the Lamaus and give the next round here to Optic. Yeah, really difficult situation to, to be put in if you're, if you're Ropes there. Um, just in that 1v1, you just really have no idea where Rush is. He just picks wrong, right? Essentially, you just have to pick. You have to say, hey, he's either stairs, at the box at, B or at, the box at Broken Wall, in Upper B, or Chicken Coop. And he just picked Chicken Coop and he was just wrong. He didn't even have a kit, so he had to just full commit. Um, not sure what Tarek was doing there, though. That was <laughs> that made no <laughs> sense. That move was, was, was not good. Uh, but at the end of the day, the day they, they do win the round, forcing Mouse Sports on another eco. So winning the important rounds here. Uh, Optic is, even though I don't think they've looked, you know, essentially like great or anything so far, but they've been taking advantage of Mouseport's A, to be honest. You know, Oscar and Dennis, you know, I, I know they got two kills there, Oscar did, but more often than not, this A site hasn't been, you know, the best for them. They set themselves up for success, and now they're finally going to be rewarded with the possibility to push ahead here and get themselves a little bit of a round advantage, which has been an uncommon thing so far in this match ever since we got past the first six rounds or so. Yeah, I think that Optic probably did their homework, just judging by what I see, and they have a really good idea of how they're playing. As Rops goes one for one there, they're going to molly out B and just take control. There's only Chris J here with a USP in the site. Yeah, I'll leave the rotator still another like two seconds away. And they're going to find themselves just straight out in the open against duels versus Optic players. So this one's going to easily go into the hands of Optic. Although quite a few players end up low, and they will lose Tarek there, but still four live. Gives them that extra bonus money. So in the event, well, Sports win out in this next round here. They're still going to be able to respond with another full buy in the 14th round. Yeah, I, I do think, though, just watching Optic and how they're playing, it seems like they know kind of how Mouse Sports wants to play long A. You know, that one round that they just completely bypassed it, that was probably something that they were like, hey, when they smoke off long here, they're both there. We could just run up danger and run up middle. Um, so I, I think that's a big part of why they have gotten the better of Dennis and Oscar so far this game. Lowell once again holding close to the broken wall to try and challenge the early push from Optic. It's no longer Tarek leading the charge here either. Now Mixwell will take up that role in trying to breach the site. He's having trouble navigating through it. He's definitely suspicious of a CT pushing in. Didn't realize that Lowell was standing directly behind him, however. So once again, Lowell succeeds in translating that first kill for Mouse Sports. However, Optic have been able to recover from these disadvantages before, so that's not going to put them out of the round just yet. Very similarly to the past rounds, though, Optic, after losing that player, are just going to hold, sit back here at the platform, run down the timer a little bit before they attempt to re-execute. Well, else on the A side of things is getting really aggressive from Mouse Sports either, so I think they're still in a relatively safe position. It's all about how exactly they, they uh, intend to re-execute here, and if that's going to align properly to counter the setup, which is now alive for Mouse Sports. This has pretty much happened every time they try to yeah. go B. They just get, I mean, Mixwell was getting pelted by nades. Nade after nade after nade after flash after smoke. It was just like he had no chance there. And then you saw one pushes through the smoke at Broken Wall and one pushes through the stairs. He had no chance. Just gets completely cornered. And we've seen, as you were mentioning, we've seen that happen like three or four different times now with Optic trying to go for these straightforward hits. But it's looking like Optic are going to decide to go back to it regardless of the failure there a few moments ago. And now Rops and Lowell are going to once again have their opportunity to shut this one back down. But Tarek finds the first mark. Rops now going to try to respond, though. Picks up the two for one before going down in the cubby. And Oscar finding another kill leaves it all onto Naf alone. The 1v3. I don't even know if he realized Chris J. Yeah, he saw him. So he's going to look for the trade kill now. Finds it. But at a heavy cost. Down at 9 HP. It's easy for Dennis to roll back out on the platform. Trade him out and secure the round for Mouse Sports. Yeah, but that, that B-side defense so far, you see what they wanted to do. They, they tried to do it the round before, uh, 
not the direct round before, but earlier on in the half, where Mixwell gets out. It's a very common strat that people are doing, and you get one out there uh, around that box, and then you set up the execute, and you can just fly out. You don't have to worry about checking all these different corners. Uh, but Mouseport's ready for it, and they, they stopped that twice in a row now. Yeah, and Optic is now going to call for their second pause, I believe. Since, uh, once again, things are still relatively close, and they need to try and push themselves ahead. They do have the money to be able to buy here, so they're going to end up going for it. Mixwell just bought fully in, so I think the rest are going to follow in a second. But they need to try and push themselves ahead up towards nine if they want to make this a successful half. They got to just stop stop trying to fight Rops. I mean, the guy's six. <laughs> it's a pretty, that's a pretty right valid now. point, actually. <laughs> like, just just stop it. This guy is destroying you guys. I mean, they've been they've been pretty good at getting the A long control, but they yeah, haven't really been that's, utilizing. That's it as where much. their main success has come. Is just. You know, like I said, I really do think they probably watched how Mouseports has played Cobble. They probably were ready. They, they knew Mouseports probably wanted to play it. It was a map that they could pick and really anti them pretty well. I mean, you can just look at Dennis's scoreline compared to yesterday's matches where he was, like, dominating. He's bottom fragging now for the team just because he can't get anything done a day long anymore. Optic have completely countered him out and basically made him a non-factor for this entire half so far. Yeah, and I mean, they've, they've taken Oscar out of the game as well, you know, twice now. He's pushed towards it. And look, they're doing the exact same thing. They're saying, hey, they're set up in A long. Let's just run straight up middle. Yeah, now they're going to try to move in. The thing is, though, is I think Mouse Sports catches on to it a lot more easily this time. So you already have Oscar at the edge of the alleyway going to try and stop their easy push to the platform. They're not even checking for the spot either, but Oscar a little bit messy on that first spray. They know where he is, but for whatever reason, Naf's not paying attention to it. So Oscar gets away with the double kill and stays alive. Rops again in this site, gets the double kill for himself. Everything's down to Mixwell now, and he won't even get close. Mouse Sports shut it down yet again on the A bomb site and ties up at 7 7 going into the last round. Yeah, that was just a great adaptation. Uh, from Mouse Sports to realize what's happening very early on. And you see how quickly Oscar and Dennis did get, get set up there. They they anticipated that and saw what Optic was doing and reacted to it right away and reacted properly. And that's going to put Optic onto a pretty poor buy for the last round here as a result of the consistent trading going back and forth. Definitely not going to favor the T's under these circumstances. So Tech 9s and P250s are all they're going to be able to bring. Decent utility at the very least, so they can still set up for a usual type of smoke setup or anything like that that they want to go for. But the actual execute, that wants to be on Tech 9s. And that's going to be a little bit unfortunate as they've struggled to do much on these half buy or full save rounds throughout most of this half. Lowell, though, once again, first at the bat, but oh, he eats a flashbang on the way, and so he's actually not going to be able to stop the first two or three players that move in. Doesn't even get a trade kill when he finally can peek back out. It's Chris J that is most of the trading so far. Oscar picking up one as well, but he's in an elongated duel with Mixwell. Unfortunately, Mixwell is now the last man alive, and he will finally go down to Oscar as Mouse Sports take the advantage at the end of the half. They'll lead 8-7. to seven. A very back-and-forth match we do have before us, though, ladies and gentlemen, so stick with us as the second half is coming up right at this break. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, Lenovo Legion, Xfinity, ESEA, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, Logitech G, and Zowie. We are back once again, folks, with Optic Gaming versus Mouse Sports here. Neither team really able to get themselves any huge advantages in the first half, so it's deadlock at 7-8, to eight, as you can see before you. Mouse Sports, though, their ability to consistently shut down over on the B-bomb site kept them in the game, and now they hold a slight lead coming off their T-side. 
They are going live now with the second half. So now it is Mouse Sports' turn to jump over to the T side. And we'll see how Optic fare on the defense. This one's the big question for Optic, though. How are they going to fare if Mouse Sports brings a next level tactical ability to this T side here? Tries to throw them with a bunch of fakes and whatnot. So in we go. Let's take a look at who's going to get the advantage right up on the pistol round. To start it off here, Mouse Sports are pretty much just going to send their players in a straightforward play over towards Drop. The only player that's going outside is Rops, but unfortunately for him, he's going to find himself going up against the whole bunch of CTs if he can test for it. This is going to be a really weird round just from the way it's shaping up right now. The four-man rush in Drop and the four-man push out through middle here has now put Rops in a great position because I don't think he actually revealed himself. And now we're going to have a bunch of awkward duels, but the bomb has gone down. Tarek, though, strikes first with the elimination of Oscar right outside of A-Long. Rops now striking back from the backside here in middle. He is going to funnel the CTs back into the site as they try to force their way in. Rops now down, though, so that's pulled a lot of the pressure off of Optic, and they can focus fully on this retake, especially after Tarek picks up a kill that onto Rops. This will definitely make Mouse Sports a little bit more worried about their own safety as Naf pushes in Chris J, and Naf again taking kills back and forth, but it has left it all on Chris J to clutch this in a 1v2 as he sneaks out, looking to stop the defuse. He's got the first kill. He has to race over to Naf now to be able to shut him down, and he just barely gets it there, securing the second half pistol for Mouse Sports as they're going to shoot ahead 9-7. to seven. I mean, just a straight drop rush to A, and there's like three players in middle, so it essentially becomes like a CT retake on their own site yep. with like four players alive. Uh, that, was a, that was a really odd round to see. Just, uh, just aligned in a really weird way since both of them decided to rush and go for a bit of a risky strat. Plays out well for Mouse Sports though as they aren't able to keep things together and Chris J comes in with a big 4K to clutch it out. Now for the rest of Mouse Sports though, they're keeping that pace going into the second round as they swing themselves through A-Long, meaning no contestion there. The first of it they're gonna find is from Jason R. Back on it, man, but he's got a good setup. His teammate distracting. He's already picked up the one kill after he lost Mixwell back up on top of the ramp, but he can also find this second one if he goes for it here. Having trouble though, and he will fall to Dennis, leaving it into a four. 4v3 with the rest of Optic though rotating in. Jason R did just buy a good 5 to 10 seconds for his teammates to get positions either right outside or within this bomb site to hopefully defend it and try to upset on the eco. And they may have a good chance at that, but Naf being dinked down to 11 HP is certainly not going to help their case. And Mal Sports also just taking a nice slow roll to this one after they know Jason R had delayed them for quite a bit. So they're also going to be aware of the fact that Optic is probably sitting just around this site. For the moment, though, Tarek did rotate back, just trying to make sure no one else tried to swing the bomb in the other direction and push it out onto the platform. He'll be chilling over there on B, which leaves only Rush and Naf with a few pistols to defend this entire site when Mouse Sports in a few seconds here do finally decide to re-execute and push back in. A decision to split Tarek off may end up being what cost them the round as now Naf gets aggressive, tries to go hunting for some intel, and finds himself dead at the hands of Chris J, leaving only Rush here to defend it. And not a great position either. He's going to be very exposed in going for these peaks. A good shot against Dennis, bringing him down to 27 HP, but there's not really anywhere to go from here, and it's looking like both Rush and Tarek are going to decide to fall back and just let Mouse Sports have this round. I like it by Mouse Sports. Just, hey, it's a 4v4, or 4v3, excuse me. We took a while to kill Jason. The rotate could be here. Let's just wait, let them reset, and then we'll re-exec on the A site. Um, that, that was that was very nice by them. And and you notice when they reset, they weren't like out in the open at middle. They got even more passive. They were saying, hey, if, if somebody wants to do anything for information, they're probably going to push into us, try to flank us while we're going towards B, because that's what they're going to think. And we're just going to get really easy frags. So they get even more passive. And then probably when they hit A, they can just have one guy watching the back, right? Yeah. And that one guy watching the back, like if, if a CT is flanking, he's going to get an easy kill and whatever. It might be 3v3 at the site or something like that. But as soon as that's known, you know, he can come up and fight. And they also knew nobody was coming towards the site for a while because they were watching that APC for a bit. Um, but I, I do like it by Mouse Sports. So now they're going to save the two guns and Tarek and Rush with some armor. But a really fast anti-eco around that last round. It looks like Mouse is probably going to do more of the same. Yeah, and Optic aren't going to fare much better either. Obviously, they have the two safe players, but besides that, it is just pretty much P250s and defaults going into the third round, and we can expect Mouse Sports to run through this one pretty quickly, especially with Tarek being the only one to defend Mouse Sports' uh, site of choice. He'll try his best to get some damage off, and he's actually doing a decent job. Tags two players. It's just that now the other four are completely off-site, and with Lowell already taking up this position inside of the window, 
is basically zero room for an optic response, and we will be seeing that 11th round go up onto the board. Dennis just gets tired of waiting for Lowell to get those kills, so he hops out himself. We'll pick up two before going down to Mixwell, and Mixwell <laughs> just dives in, hoping to get the knife kill. Not going to happen this time, though. I mean, all three rounds so far, Mouseport has just, like, picked right every single time. Yep. CT pistol, they just ran uncontested almost into the A site. Second round, they rushed A. I, I think they might have fought one person there, right? Took the site. Yep. And then, well, I mean, they got into the three before, but... And then there, you know, just pick right again. Just go to a solo scout or 5v1. So, so far, Mouseport's kind of winning the mind game, just being one step ahead Optic. And Optic, uh, I mean, they don't even get that, uh, a whole lot of kills, which means their utility's going to be pretty bad now going into this first gun run. You can see it's basically just rifles, and then they have a couple smokes to toss around here. They've already obviously used a few of them within these first couple of seconds of the round, but in terms of what they have to actually react to Mouse Sports' take is not going to be that much, as they send most of their players over towards A long. And even on this gun round, uh, like you saw this in the pistol and the anti ecos, or the ecos for Optic, uh, they weren't really putting a whole lot of defense towards A long, but that. Uh, that philosophy also has seemed to carry through into the gun round now, as they're keeping no one over towards A long to defend it. Just Jason R outside of the mid connector. Great flash that he's going to be able to move in, but he's got to check his other side. Lowell's given full time to recover and then peek back out to eliminate Jason R. He did get dinked, so he's down pretty low. He's kind of stuck in this corner for right now. There's the nade from Nath. Finally gets the trade kill, but still, that should have been a free kill. No room for a trade at all. Now is more move in, though. Rush able to pick up an additional find for himself, but Dennis trades out onto Nath, keeping it even into a three on three. Mixwell looking to impact as he pushes himself up the ramp, but he too is going to fall. This time to Chris J. Optic with just Rush and Tarek remaining are going to send both of them together outside of the crawl space. The Molly's going to funnel them together, however, and this is going to end pretty quickly at the hands of Oscar, who picks up both the remaining kills, securing a 12th for Mouse Sports. Yeah, and anytime you can get into that A site in like a 3v3 and Oscar's alive and he's around long A, just anywhere around that wood wall area or, or long A, like he just always seems to, to just get two or three kills and, and close out the round. Uh, Rush did a good job killing at Rops, but really that round comes down to Mixwell. You know, he his spot was not given up. Naf got the nade kill onto middle. He's got to come come through and, and end up winning that round for his team. But Chris J just, you know, running around with an ump, takes him out in, in the 3v3. And that's the big turning point in the round. Well, again, we end up in a bit of a light buy situation for Optic Gaming as they are going to try to gamble stack for yet another round, and it's not going to pay off. It's looking like for a fourth time now, Mouse Sports are going to make the right choice when faced against a similar setup like this. So it's all to Naf to defend the B-bomb side, although with hearing this Molly, he may call for the rotates. This kind of depends on how Optic have decided to play these situations, but it's not looking likely that the rotates are going to arrive soon enough. So Naf's going to get creative, and I like what he's doing. Hiding in the smoke, it just doesn't really work out, as Grops is able to spot that as he always does, eliminates Naf, and that's the round right there. The best hope now for the remaining four Optic players is to set up at exit positions and hope to pick up a few kills that way. Yeah, again, they just pick right. Yep. <laughs> like I said, fourth time now <laughs> that it's happened, so... No, Mouse Sports is really... I mean, I don't know. I, I got my first look at him uh, about, like, three weeks ago. I was watching him a bit, and they've just really impressed me, man. Like... I, I didn't think they'd play as tactically and, and as intelligently as they had. I didn't think Rops would be this, like, impressive. I mean, this guy is insanely good. And then they have good complementary pieces. They have a really good double op setup when they want to double op. Chris J seems to be, like, he's coming along really well as a caller. Like, we, whenever we're watching Mouse Sports, or what I've seen from them so far, it's usually not the craziest strategies or anything, but you never see, like, these... Terrible plays generally, where they're just getting outstratted in 5v5 CS and the rotates aren't good and things like that. And I mean, they're just a really good team. Well, into the next gun round, then Optic do take the risk this time of going for the double up setup. It is going to reduce their utility output by quite a bit, as Nat's not going to be able to buy anything at all behind his up. But they also have the extra firepower to add into it. So they're finally actually going to put some pressure over towards a long finally to just stop Mouse Sports from walking into there every round for free. But it's going to be short-lived, as after they deploy, I think it was a molly, they threw back out there. 
They'll send uh, they'll send Jason R back to defend the site as he usually does, and then just keep Mixwell here with the op. So Jason R is not taking the bottom ramp position. He did that two different rounds now, so it's going to be very obvious if he sticks up uh, sticks down there. And, I mean, already a minute fifteen into the round, Optic only has two smokes and just a few flashbangs. Mixwell also missing that first shot. That's a long control gone once again, and forced to use I believe another smoke off of Jason R's off of Jason R's body there to try and hold off the a long pressure for a few extra seconds. It'll work, obviously. But still, it's not going to leave much to defend the site with, as Miles Sports has been looking clean on their entries for the most part. And Optic, that should put most of the focus on the retakes, but it hasn't worked out so far. But this is good, though, because they have Nap with B plaque control, so that means this A rotate's going to come fast. Jason R with a nice double kill. It will get traded out by Oscar. As the hole's been opened up into the A bomb site, Mixwell now is up to bat to defend it here as he tries to play into the broken wall, and he actually gets the shot onto Oscar as well, looking for a second, and he'll hit it with the Molotov now obscuring him slightly against Lowell. It's brought all down to Rops with only 28 seconds left in the round. Basically an impossible situation before him, but we'll see how well he's able to try and play this out. Bombs on the ground as well. Actually won't be surprising if, yeah, he decides to just run back and save the AKs. There's just no way he's getting into that site in time. Yeah, and, and Mouse Sports Strat there, you know, they do the wall smokes to try to get up towards the site, but Optics, you know, set up perfectly. Jason, the first line of contact, what does he do? He gets two kills. Mixwell back into the site. Essentially, the smokes don't do anything for him, right? Because Jason R and Mixwell are set up, positionally speaking, where the smokes just don't matter. You know, those smokes are to stop the rotate and to stop anybody playing around middle, you know, not shooting them when they come towards the site. And also, Optic, not only was the first line of defense really good with Jason, but they had a really good mid-round rotation into taking that B flat control at about minute 10 or so. They smoked the middle of it, or smoked the end maybe. I'm not sure where their smoke landed. And then NAF kind of took control. And that allowed them to send, you know, that double rotate as well. So even if Jason R only got like one kill there, they probably win that round. Mouse sports are not going to be shaking too much at the loss of that round just yet, though, as they held quite a bit of cash in their reserves, so no problem at all to buy back into it. And Optic are still going to be really low, as that is brought down to just a few crucial players at the end of it. And by reinvesting back into the double op setup, it leaves basically no money remaining should they drop this round with minimal saves. Mouse sports going for a much more direct strategy here in this 22nd round, just right out onto the ramp itself. And Jason R, completely blinded and moving, gives himself away to Dennis. Mixwell's there forward in front of the APC to trade out the kill. And and he takes out Rops as well, which is a pretty big pickup. Swiping at a huge group of players, so he definitely gets the luck of the draw on that one. Now looking for more, though. Rush is going to be able to take out Lowell, and he follows it through at the second, eliminating Dennis. Great defense being put up with the delay caused by Mixwell. The hesitation from Mouse Sports has cost them dearly, as now they're in a 2v3. Uh, put apart as well, but Oscar just peeking directly inside of the crawl space to find Naf, and all of a sudden the tables have turned. It's just Tarek alone in a 1v2, but he has the bomb to play with and gets one and two kills to clutch it out and give the round to off to keeping them in this match and starting the comeback for them. Yeah, it was it fell apart pretty quickly there for Optic uh, as Chris J is able to get those two kills and Oscar just flanking the person watching their own back. But Tarek again wins another 2v1. That's pretty much the same spot that he won the 2v1 before when, uh, you know, he was a T and the bomb was actually planted. Now he does it again to CT. Salvages the op as well from Oscar. We'll see. Mouseports will probably buy here. Uh, they certainly buy, actually. They, they definitely have enough money. So Optic's not out of, like, in any safety yet. If, if they lose this round, they're most likely going to lose the game. It'll be 14-9. Yeah. They'll, they'll have no money whatsoever. Um, but this A site, it's it's a lot. Like, the rotate is just coming so fast. I mean, as soon as Mouse Sports makes contact with Jason, everybody's rotating on Optic. And one of the reasons they can do that is because earlier on in the half, Rops died to rush on that hard lurk. So they're not as worried about that, you know? After that hard lurker died that round, they're probably thinking, okay, we could just rotate and then, you know, kind of worry about that later. Jason probably saw bomb on radar, right? And they just they just flood the site and just, just not afraid to over rotate whatsoever. Well, or Mouse Sports really haven't been splitting their players up too much either. They've been playing it pretty straightforward, maybe with one or one player at most splitting up and going to the other bomb site to try and lurk. Yeah, it's almost always Rops over there. Yeah. So with that said, Optic can pretty much secure most of the time that when they do see contact and when it involves more than one player, that that's probably going to be the side that they go to. So it's it's a little bit of a heavy rotating, but it works out with the way that Mouse Sports have been playing their T side so far. And once again, what do we see? A direct play out to the platform, maybe with one or two players splitting off to draw, but still into the same site with all of them. At the moment, Optic only have three players here to defend it in pretty pretty usual spots too, so they're not going to throw any surprises at Mouse Sports more than likely. But those rotations have been keen. We have to see if they move in, if they're even needed, is at the moment 
moment. Optics just shutting it down. Rops with the only trade, and he's already dead. It's just down to Lowell now in a 1v4. The entire hit falls apart, and with Nath claiming a nice 4K from the cubby, Optic get themselves their 10th round. Yeah, huge play by Nath there, and that's the same strat that Optic tried um, on their own T side quite a few times. We saw Mouse Sports defended it way differently, right? Optic kind of let them come out. They kind of let them do their strat, and they just they just hold, right? They yeah. just get the kills. Target takes contact. Nash shoots everybody, you know, in the side with nice shots. Um, I don't know exactly where he is, just because he's on that silence M4. Yeah, and he just completely destroys the entire hit. So now, now sports are gonna have to go for just a half by situation here. It works out at the start. Low moving in, destroys Rush. Tarek now having to play both ways here, but the smoke comes in clutch and is able to keep him alive for right now. And he eliminates Rops. Now they're gonna try to swing back out and pinch this over to the A bomb site, but that may not go so well either. So they change the plan back into B with Dennis finding an entry on a Tarek. Naf still alive in the chicken coop, however, and is gonna cause massive amounts of issues. He doesn't know for sure if the bomb is coming to this site just yet, though. He knows they have to come and actually retrieve the bomb, but rare the rotates all of a sudden. They're not working their way over to this site until just now when Mixwell and Jason R go for it. Oscar trying to go for this bomb though, or trying to go for this AK pickup, is gonna be kind of dangerous. There's players sitting directly next to him. The smoke though comes in clutch and is able to hold back most of Optic for these few extra seconds that they need to get that bomb onto the platform and onto the ground. Mixwell taking up positions just inside of the drop room to look in the event anyone rotates back over towards the platform. But it's not gonna end up finding anyone. And even worse, Chris J, when he finally goes for that peak, instantly shuts out Mixwell, leaving Jason R alone to clutch this. And he'll go for the slow lurk in past up towards the pizza box here, but doesn't even check the rock. And that's where Oscar is gonna shut it down, finally giving that control back over to Mouse Sports. Just such a difficult re retake, especially in that uh, situation in, in the 2v1, because even if he kills Oscar there, Chris J is just gonna peek him and just shoot him in the side. There's just really no chance. The The only advantage they had is that they had the, you know, the mollies and whatnot, but because Chris J just kills Mixwell and just peeks them, you know, th those don't come into factor at all, right? Teams continue to use the full breadth of their pause allowance here as now Optic's gonna use their third out of four. Both teams down to one with only a few rounds remaining in the half. Optic need to find a way to get back into it as they have decided to force into this round. And it's not going to be a bad buy either. They are, for the most part, going to get full rifles with just a couple sacrifices. Tarek and Jason are more than likely going to be the ones down on their pistols of UMPs. And I mean, that round was just, you know, Mouse Wars not on a full buy or anything like that. It's just Tech 9s. They just get down drop towards A, you know, running through that door, ending it. And I think it might have ended up in a 3v3, and then Dennis went down, so. Just that drop split getting in their faces with the Tech Nines. Um, you know, it seems like on Cobble it happens with more than just about every other map. <laughs> yeah. I think this might be the map where you see the most like Tech Nine round wins. That's why I was kind of questioning Optics buying a couple of these rounds on their own T side where they had chances to break their money and instead they they played it very passively, right? Where they saved in those situations where, especially on Cobble, most teams buy there. Now we are going to see Optic buy up. They don't have an op, they just got the three M4s. Decent nades, a 5-7 and none. Well, into the bye we go, and we'll have to see if Optic can hold this off, as this is really going to be their last chance. It'll need to be five rounds straight after this, and with them already forcing into it, things are not going to look that bright in the next round if they don't manage to clutch things out here. Much more aggressive with their positioning, specifically towards A. They've got the two-man stack over at the hay barrels, another guy sitting just outside of the mid-connector, and Mixwell's probably going to be the first point of contact here to take the duel but obviously some delay will be had because of the smoke toss out from Optic. I'm just timing that right now. Dennis though, obviously is gonna be the man to challenge things here at A Long. We'll see in a moment, this has been his playground. However, it's been severely underutilized. He was completely countered out when he was on the CT side. Now we have to hope he can get a little bit more damage on the T side, especially here. If he can do it, he may be the player that ends up closing out for his team on this map. The timing would be great right now, but unfortunately, Naf is prepared. He'll shut it down. Mixwell also catches a second kill against Oscar. So just like that, down to the 5v3. And Optic are looking good to hold here as the remaining three try to group up, but there's going to be players all over the place if they even think about going towards this A bomb site. Now Jason R back down to that bottom position right outside of the mid connector doorway will eliminate Lowell, leaving just Rops and Chris J in the fight. Try to push themselves over towards B. Tarek here with a close angle could do some great damage with a 5-7. They push their way out. There's the first and second pickups to close it out and keep Optic in this match. Now three rounds behind Mouse Sports. Yeah, and Mouse Sports, like a lot of their T-side rounds, they do, they, they started out with like just A-Hall's take, right? Rob's alone on B site. They take A-Hall's, A-Map control, middle, and then they work from there. And a lot of the time it just ends in a direct A-take. So Optic kind of read that. They sent three towards A. 
the reason Lowell tried to go through middle is because that he knew two were long A. I was hoping nobody was watching that mid smoke at all, but you know, Jason R is just sitting behind it. Easy, easy frag for him. Well, now Sports are going to go for quick play towards drop this time since they are put on to just a half by slash save round here. Most players on P250s, a few on Tech 9 armor purchases, and out they will go. Rush doesn't even seem to expect it actually, so he has to do a double take there. Thankfully, things are still pretty much under their control. Three. Kills in their favor with Mosker being able to trade out the one onto Tarek that may end up being the only one they get, although Lowell's being a little sneaky here. Still doesn't play out though with Mixwell going for the final peak. He shuts down the last kill and gives Optic their 12th. I mean, this Optic CT side has been pretty good. If they didn't lose that one round where they had Tech Nines on Mouse Wards, they'd be, they'd be like one round away, I think. Game would be a little bit closer, but still, Mouse Sports. The lead could end this at a moment's notice, and they are back onto a full buy. They're back to straightforward strategies as well for this T side. Everyone. Yeah, we, we haven't seen much drop control by either team, right? A lot of it's just been these like straight up, you know, he takes one up. Wow. Tarek, that is heartbreaking. Tarek, just kidding. <laughs> Completely destroyed at the beginning of the round by Chris J again. And that's opened up a whole world of possibilities here that Mouse Sports have to now try to contend with. However, responding pretty well from back down on the steps, picking up the trade kill onto Rops, so trying to do more, but the flash hits him, and he can't trace his aim that well. Dennis with that pickup, and almost gets the second one. He'll have the assist on it as Lowell actually finds the frag, but Jason R is still in the fight. They're trying to wrap that around the smoke into the statue here. He finds yet another one, going for the third, but too low, and flashed out. He has to retreat inside of the smoke to keep himself alive and in the play. The 2v2 now going to be alive, and Mixwell's actually caught too, so now he's also low. Goodbye, Jason R. As Oscar connects another up shot, only one more is needed to seal the deal and put Mouse Sports up to 15, and once again, it'll come from Oscar as he solidifies the 15th round for Mouse Sports and puts them just one away from pushing ahead of Optic in this group. It's just so deflating when that happens, when you're just kind of just sitting behind a smoke, you're ready to stop their full execute or whatever of their strat, and then Chris J just pops you through it. And, I mean, he's 27 and 17 right now. He's been a big player, I think, on the team. When you look at Metal Sports overall, and Rops, of course, not floating too far behind. And Oscar, although he had his issues in the first half, has come back big in the second half. And they will try to end it right here, right now, but they still have to go against the full buy from Optic. They're playing into a more default setup here. They did try to rotate a few players early, which means they're going to be slightly out of position on B, but Mouse Sports are kind of, once again, just forcing their way out. And there's a lot of room for mistakes there that Optic could sort of swing in and punish upon. And speaking of which, we have Terran boosted up on top, but they were able to spot that, and Chris J strikes again, eliminating these key, key players. Now tries to take a shot at Ropes as well, and that's going to get responded to. As Oscar picks up one more kill, just two alive now for the Optic roster. Mixwell and Jason R trying to hide behind the rock and keep themselves in this match. But by going for this straightforward retake, it's just not going to work out. They both fall to Chris J. And with a 3k to seal the deal, he ends up with a 30 bomb to end the map. It's Mouse Sports that's going to take it. Ladies and gentlemen, propelling them up to 2-1 in the group. Optic, unfortunately, will now be down 1-2. and two. Yeah, Chris J really showing up. Uh, played very, very well there, especially near that near the end of the game. Um, now Sports just, just looking a bit better. Optic had a good stand on their CT side. You know, got a few rounds there. Really had a good read, especially on their A site rotates. But at the end of the day, uh, just those five man executes from from Mouse Sports just, you know, they just, they just they just started working. And that, that Tech 9 round was huge as well. Yeah, a little bit too strong for Mouse Sports. So with that said, we're gonna send it back over to the analysts to break down this first map of Group B. Yes, welcome back to the Xfinity Analyst Desk here at the ESL Pro League Season 5 Finals. Mouse Sports, a good win over Optic Gaming. That's kind of uh, what we, we talked a little bit about. Optic feeling a little bit discombobulated coming. It's a little disorganized as a, as a team. At times, it just felt like they didn't really know how what their teammates were doing during bombsite takes. Yeah, uh, you know, we saw a couple of times when they went towards that A-bomb site, for instance. They, they set up the initial execution pretty well, and they get up to the top of, uh, of the A-slope, and then things just kind of stop. You have people checking the same corners that they jump through uh, towards woods, uh, like just not necessarily having everything planned out to, to perfection. And that's obviously something you're going to get punished for. And that led to you know, just that one favorable trade for Mouse Sports that allows for a rotation right. to come in. Yeah, it seemed like they had the move down, right? Like they knew the smokes and flashes they needed to throw. Yeah. It just wasn't who's going to go where to clear what angles, how we're going to trade, what spacing we're going to have. That kind of stuff wasn't there. There's like, when I watch these guys on, uh, on Cobble, 
there's remnants of like CLG, like when Hayes was in the team, I see like little smoke plays and stuff, especially towards that B bomb site that they used to use uh, to get people out for entry frags. But it was more of a brawl for Mouse Sports than I think they were expecting. Yeah. Um, the economy first off in the first half, I think uh, eventually stabilized in the favor of Optic, but then that was like the 11th round. Yeah. So it's a pretty close half. Well, let's focus on those Mouse Sports guys really, really quickly before we had a break, just, just because, I mean, as the winners, I mean, you got to be feeling good, Chad, because you mentioned the, the big thing about these guys is no one in this team is a slouch. They have Chris J with 30 kills. They have Rops and they have Oscar sitting around with the low 20s, 22, 23 kills. Yep. I mean, that's a pretty pretty well spread effort. That's kind of what you want to see out of the mouse sports side. Yeah, and then to even close out there, Lau was having a lot of impact, right? Like he was getting a lot of uh, multi-frags there to help them get across the line. So everybody's contributing when they needed to. Um, when I watch Rops play, I wish he'd go for more exciting plays. He always does the fundamentally sound <laughs> things like 1v4. Uh, I know I should save. save. I'll just say, it's like, come on, dude, give it a try once in a while. Let's see if something <laughs> can happen. But um, yeah, like in, in terms of the way that they approach the game, I think that LMB team has prepped these guys with a really good game plan, right? Because it, the way they come in, they look like they know what they're doing all the time. And people people question why stars don't always have like why the same stars don't always have like the same amount of frags and stuff right it's because the kills aren't always going to come your way i think with a team like mouse bots when everybody can step up and be counted when they need to you can see that like that shows quite quite well that hey look the frags coming to chris j he's making the frags this game maybe next game they're going to be heading towards oscar and oscar will hit the the top spot so just one of those things that changes and if you have a very skilled team like this it definitely helps. Yeah, and I think it's also very cool to see that Chris is still able to have these kind of performances considering how he kind of was forced into the role of being an in-game leader for this team. There's just something completely new for him. Uh, and obviously you expect a dip in performance. And I think that's fair to say that we have seen that during the regular season of Pro League as well. Hasn't necessarily been, you know, online J. Uh, yeah, to, to yeah. that extent, right? But, you know... He's, he's shrugged that off, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, exactly. And now, you know, coming into into Dallas here and uh, just playing lights out, especially towards the end of it, because for the better part of the first half, a lot of this, uh, or a lot of the rounds uh, that Mouse Sports were able to get were off at the back of Rops, because he had a yeah. great start to it. Yeah, we're going to play some time to talk about Mouse Sports when we come back, um, because we're going to see them playing against up against Liquid right after the break. So, uh, must win game for Optic Gaming. They don't win it, so they're going to be backs against the wall. This is going to be a tough group for them to get out from here and out. But Mouse Sports is sitting very, very nicely. Stay tuned. Mouse Liquid when we return. You know this feeling. The moment when goosebumps take over. The moment the fans roar. The moment you can't hold yourself back. This feeling the normal human will feeling. push you to your limits anybody, 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 anybody. once again. Black Equalizer brightens dark scenes without overexposing bright areas. Use the S switch to quickly access the setting and switch between save modes. Athletes aren't just born, they're molded from the core a core of strength, a core of laser focus. A core that can handle anything. A core that sweats the small stuff. A core that's the difference maker, game changer, world shocker. You see, hard work makes the athlete, but the edge of a core i7 processor makes you unstoppable. This is your chance to actually make it into the pro league, be a professional Counter-Strike player. That's the thing that Mountain Dew League provides. Penguin, you know what? If anybody has a shot at 2-0, it's Penguin. Beautiful Counter-Strike. You usually only see that into the professional level of things. We are the one of the youngest team in top 20. Many teams can underestimate us and we can uh, surprise them with our tactics. Show our Polish power.
start your esports career now at play.eslgaming.com. Welcome back to ESL Pro League Season 5 Finals. Mouse Sports facing off a back-to-back -back doubleheader against the North American teams. They've already taken down Optic. Up next now is going to be Team Liquid. Will they have what it takes? This Liquid team is probably the most promising. We've seen them look in quite some time. And the big guy you got to talk about within this roster is, is Stan coming over, being the in-game leader, finally providing some leadership, some kind of structure that he can bring into the squad, trying to lead him forward. Um, and at the moment, I mean, one of the big things is he's one of the in-game leaders that we've talked about, has the ability to have individual impact as well. Yeah, no, he it definitely was. I think we saw it more so in Optic. I, I don't think he's quite got right. to the spot where you know Liquid as a, as a team is just uh, fleshed out enough to to the point where he can contribute in that fashion. He still has to worry about what uh, the four others are doing at any given time, uh, and but that will come with time because uh, individually we know that he can perform better than what he has up to this point. So I just think you know that's just uh, something that we'll have to wait. That's going to be a strength that's yet to come for Liquid. Yeah, and we'll get that we'll get their roster up on the screen just in case you guys uh, weren't tuning in yesterday. Maybe some new viewers out there don't know who these guys are. This is. I guess you could call them the pride of North America at the moment, if that, if that, I mean, if that makes sense. I guess they're all North American again now, right? They, they had a while there with a couple of Europeans standing yeah, they had, in. Yeah, a few of the guys. Of being. But, uh, you know, ever since Stan joined replacing Hiko, he kind of took two roles, in-game leader and the lurker role. And I agree, you know, he seemed more effective at that lurker role in Optic than he does here. One of the interesting things with the playstyle that uh, I've seen from Liquid so far is it seemed very pack role-ish, right? They're doing a lot of 4-1 stuff, especially on Nuke, with, the, like, four guys pushing around towards heaven. And yeah, that pace in. as well. Yeah, yeah. And under as well, doing a very similar thing. And uh, just something else to talk about is it seems like, well, it, it looked like they had built moves to help JDM get picks, like that boost they did outside uh, on the, the red crate so he could peek over that little that little wall uh, right. to, pick, uh, to pick the CT player. Was, it was quite nice. I like that. I hope we see more of that. Um, and I think JDM has been the best player for them at this event so far. So those are those are two positive factors. I'm just interested to see like this, this veto. I know we're still way away from it. Yep. But if they get on a map that's like not very AWPA friendly, like an Inferno or something like that, then JDM's not going to have as much of an impact, so someone else needs to step up. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting because I know I know that's always been a big problem for Liquid is integrating the AWPers, and one of the things I always talk with Zeus about, their coach, um, is his his working on very much trying to get find ways to get JDM involved, to have him have an impact. And I mean, I just want to lead that into the Mouse Sports discussion because one thing that we haven't ever really touched on with Mouse Sports is their coach. 
Now, how much how much responsibility are we giving to this Mouse Sports team? You know, we thought they were just done after Nico left. Like, yep. and, and LMBT has them playing very, very well at the moment. They obviously have a lot of skill, but we're also liking what they're looking like tactically as well. Yeah, uh, honestly, it's hard to tell, obviously, because LMBT uh, has been there. He was there. He's been well. around the block as well. well hasn't yeah, he's he? been around the block, but he was also there when Nico was in the team, right? Right. And we saw a very different mouse sports. I'm not sure if the the changes is something that he has suggested that's something that he's putting in place or not. Obviously, that's impossible for us to know. Or if just Chris J is some sort of prodigy when it comes to in game leading and just hadn't hasn't figured it out yet or didn't know until now. Right. Uh, but yeah, obviously, I think it's it's very helpful at least for. For a player who's ha having to make that transition that Christy has to do, to have someone so experienced as LMBT, because he's been around since God knows how long. And like, yeah, it's, yeah, no. yeah, about as long as you. So Great. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I know. So Unbelievable. Just, you know, Fossils, really. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. So, uh, no, he's been around. And obviously, that's going to be extremely helpful because he's uh, seen everything that is to be seen within CS. So, you kind of have some framework and you have someone to bounce IDs back off, which is always helpful. Yeah, we're about ready to get this match started. We're going to bring you the vetoes very, very shortly. But just in the meantime, make sure you get your voices heard. Bring up that. YouTube vote. Uh, get Mouse Sports in the chat if you think they're going to win. Team Liquid, if you're an American fan, root off, uh, root for the North American squad. And uh, and yeah, maps going to be coming up next. Chad, where do you where do you kind of see this one going towards? Uh, no, the North American pride of, of Cash is definitely uh, a big chance for this one. And Mouse Sports don't mind that one. Uh, if they can oh. get to, oh, okay, oh, there's a respect uh, oh, man. Right, they didn't like yeah. that. <laughs> uh, and it's an Inferno, the one where I said you know JDM won't have as much of an impact. Right. I think this map can be really good for Mouse because of how versatile their players are. And I consider Oscar like a combat orb. So he's one who's not afraid to get in the close angles and take fights with it, with the AWP, be a little bit more uh, aggressive and overextend. So that's going to be exciting to look out for. Um, I, I'm initially I just think this is like better for Mouse. I just have that feeling. I don't know why. Even, even despite well, you you I mean you mentioned it. You think Oscar's like a little bit more comfortable with the close up battles, but having almost two oppers, you could say Chris J and Oscar on a map like Inferno. You think they're going to be all right on this one? I think they're going to be fine. I don't think they necessarily want to go to double ops, uh, you know, necessarily, unless they're in a really comfortable spot where they just feel they can just pound on or right. pile on on, uh, on Team Liquid. Uh, otherwise, I don't really see any any potential for it because, yeah, it, it's such an awkward map for ops as is that I think you need to just give Oscar whatever space he, he can have instead of just having to, to bump into other oppers and being extremely static because we also have to take into consideration to, uh, to the fact that on the CT side, you need to be very mobile in that sense. You need to have rotations on point. Otherwise, you're going to get locked down and basically split apart way too easily. And that's obviously something that Team Liquid would probably be able to recognize very early on if Mouse Sports decide to go towards that double off setup multiple times. Map, map like this, if it's not going to lean towards the oppers, is this going to be something where we see the entry fraggers, someone like Nitro, someone like Elise, these guys you were coming in kind of on that front line? If Liquid wants to win, do they have to have the early success in these bombsite takes? Yeah, this is where you, when you have your executes going on to bombsites, your entry fraggers need to know exactly what they need to be looking out for and have faith in the other player coming behind them uh but that's just something which they hopefully they've dry around a lot yeah and uh okay well that that's all there is to say about that one. Oh, did you have I, a little uh, bit more i got the hand signals wrong yeah yes, no no, no. <laughs> it's, it's I all thought right you said come to daddy we'll get this, we'll you get said, this right now you said yeah. keep it going no but, I, uh, I did say come to daddy but we'll, we'll get that straight out in the break either way it's gonna be blue and days they're gonna take you away on inferno all right, thank you very much, Moses. Inferno will be the map of choice here for the next Mount Sports game. They're going to be taking on Team Liquid here now. Team Liquid kind of having a kind of a little bit of a back and forth performance yesterday, but overall kind of uninspiring based on how we thought they were going to do coming into it, especially against like bigger European teams. They kind of got flatlined by Nobby, who overall is also not doing very well at this event. Yeah, um, you know, I, I I don't know about Inferno with Liquid. I, I don't think they're the best Inferno team. They they don't play it as often as their other maps. You know, I think it's like maybe like their fourth most preferred map or something like yeah. that. Um, having said that, I haven't yet to see Mouse Sports on Inferno. This is going to be my first time seeing them on Inferno. Uh, having watched Liquid a little bit on it, you know, a pretty decent amount during the regular season though, I'm not like overly impressed or anything like that. I do like how Nitro plays the B site though, especially when they get aggressive. I think he does a really good job over there. Um, but not not sure what to expect from from Mouse Sports here. They usually like you know playing like a cobble or a cash or something like yeah. that. It definitely shows that uh, that you know that now that Team Liquid is willing to go up against it against another European team, it just shows the confidence that NA players are willing to just hop right into Inferno now and how quickly the region has adapted the map. We saw that over the course of the season actually about how maybe like some players were going to be avoiding it and whatnot for the first couple weeks, but I mean most of the teams, almost, almost every team in the North American circuit just jumped right into it as soon as the, as soon as it was put into the pool in week two. Yeah, I, I do kind of disagree, though, with, with Vendetta a bit. I actually do like double ops on a Bruno, on CD side. Yeah. Reason being is that it makes the T's have to use utility at, like, every check. Like, to take mid control, you can never just smoke off a side and just peek or anything. You have to use utility, right? 
Like when you play against G2 on this map, you know, can he ask well, op porch or something like that, or op arch, and then shocks will be off and B, and just both sides of the map, just constant flashbang, smoke, smalls out there, do so much just to get any type of map control. Well, we are going live now with the pistol, and of course the players are playing on Intel Core i7 processors. So let's jump into it now, as Mouse Sports are gonna throw themselves into the fire over here on the B-bomb site, even getting isolated by a smoke. That's gonna cause some problems for sure, as they need to get themselves past this so the whole team can play together. But still, Liquid just ripping them apart right now, and most of this pressure is coming from Twist. He'll finally go down, but the Nitro fires right back with the elimination of Lowell, leaving just Oscar alive, still behind the smoke right here at the car setup spot. He did catch the flank from Stanislaw, so I'm sure he's going to be paying attention to that as he attempts to clutch this out in the 1v4. But now, trying to sneak his way back into the site. He's got to play this oh so carefully, but any mistake is going to lead to his death at this point, and there's just so many ways for him to make that mistake. So he decides to pick up the bomb. And, yeah, and Stanislaw left watching the flank. So, I mean, if he wanted to, he could just run towards A and plant. And that may very well be what he does. He obviously is going to take himself slowly over towards the crossroads and whatnot to examine this. But I think Liquid have caught on to it now. They started to send a few players back on Banana. They're going to see this in a second. And Stan should be going into the site. But at the moment, he's still sticking over here at Arches, which may give Oscar the room he needs to at the very least get a plant, which in this situation is a huge thing to get away with. Moving in, even he doesn't believe the site is this open. Goes for the safest possible position. Bombs going down on the ground. And there you have it. The third round buy has now been enabled for Mouseports, where previously they had no room getting this. He'll still go down without much of a fight. But but still, that's a huge gain. Otherwise, it's a completely shut down pistol round from Liquid. Oh, absolutely. Nobody's spotting the bomb. Stan leaves the flank to just... <laughs> I mean, you're giving up a, a plant, uncontested plant, when, you know, obviously that should just never happen. But on the bright side for Liquid, Twist getting those two nice shots. He needs that. He has not been playing well this tournament so far. Um, definitely underperforming. Especially, especially in his role, like his role, especially you know on T side, uh, just being like that hard lurker and whatnot. He should always be putting up decent numbers, right? He should yeah. always be putting up, and and he's been consistently pretty negative so far. So they need him to to step it up. I mean, even on uh, even on his like social media stuff yesterday, if you check that out, he didn't really seem uh, too happy with the way he performed yesterday. And like, just I think I might be misquoting this slightly, but I feel I think he, I remember him saying something like, got, almost like he said like I got carried by the team today or something like that. I don't remember the exact phrasing, but uh, yeah, definitely not feeling too confident. So we have to hope that that attitude didn't get carried over into today, and he was able to get a reset last night for uh, today's matches. As today is the day where they could find themselves eliminated if they don't get things together. But the second round, Mouse Sports just as expected now with that plant is going for the full save. So they're going to take it nice and slow here. Probably just posting up in mid for a few extra seconds and then just trying to rush onto one of the two sites in hopes of getting that second plant. But uh, without any utility investment or anything, nine times out of ten, this is going to be very easily shut down by the CTs. And they do decide to take it up the route through Banana. So Nitro, along with Elise, are going to be waiting here to try and isolate this. And the smoke just immediately tossed in by Nitro. So that'll send Mouse Sports swinging the other way as they head back up through mid now to try and make a bid for the A site in this direction. Group those players up and very quickly uh, the game of mousetrap is being played here by Liquid as they try to funnel them into one area of the map. Perfect flashbang comes in. It does also hit Stanislaw, but he's able to hinder the hit for like five extra seconds and Stan gets a double kill in the process. Lowell sneaks in one kill. The way of things here, but at the end of the day, I think Stan actually ends up with the ace. Yeah, he does. He gets a nice ace there and survives the round with just one HP. So good start for him. Not only that, he gets a ton of money. All on kills, all five. Yeah, all on the uh, UMP, so he ends up with a nice little bonus off of that round, of course. But now is when things will get interesting, because now is when that third round buy does roll into the picture that Mouse Sports were really able to steal away from Liquid back on the pistol round. And they'll have their immediately first chance to contest Team Liquid right here, right now. As they do spread out, though, and playing to a default to start off this round. Not going to be trying anything crazy just yet. Just playing across the map and, of course, trying to delay and get the usual clear out into the hulls as they will attempt to set up for their take. In the meantime, Liquid's taking very aggressive control of Banana. You have that deep smoke moving in the boost up over the half wall, which Elyge is going to check for. So that's going to isolate most of the pressure from Banana for right now. And if they're able to hold that for the second smoke application, then we could very likely see the, the uh, fourth player rotate over to A and have the extra man hold off there. Yeah, a nice bit of map control coming out from Liquid, but the problem is they have no smokes now, right? So, and, and they still have two towards B. So if they do go towards A, um, it's not going to do too much. 
JDM trying to take first battle, and so does Stanislaw, but both are actually going to end up falling. Twist with a nice trade, and Elyse also picking up a third kill keeps this even down to a 2v2, especially with Elyse getting aggressive out here. The only problem is now they have to try and weigh this out properly and pinch over towards A as the bomb is going to go down. Nitro has a great spot through the mid choke point. But at least still has a bit of a long walk up there, so they're going to have to waste another well, 10 to 15 seconds to get everyone into position. Maybe even longer if Elyse does not want to give himself away too early. But Nitro wants to start this off on his own, so he is going to start to sort of just creep in. Rops is waiting back on the graveyard steps there, and Nitro's checking out, seeming to think that he already knows he's there. And in fact, Elyse did just spot him, but the problem is Rops also spotted him, so he's not only going to pick up the kill onto Elyse, but he also finds Nitro at the end of it. With a headshot, will pop him right out of the round and give Mouse Sports their first. Just a huge, <laughs> huge round by, by Rops. 2v2, 20 HP, already got the two kills to get the bomb down, plants the bomb, of course, picks the perfect spot to go. Smokes off Moto, able to walk into Graveyard to pick up those last two frags. And you saw the timing that he used, right? So he, he waited, he waited for Nitro to kind of just be out in the open, having to wait for him. Just that extra second that he waited makes, you know, allows him to get that frag. But Liquid, this is good by them. If if they can take B control like this, and they're not going to contest it, if you're Mouse Wards, you need to take it every single round. Every single round, they should be doing this. Like these, this is a this is a possible way to you know leverage round victories, yep. definitely. So Elijah is going to be able to take advantage upon that one as he'll push forward into the left side cubby. The second smoke application has moved in now. Nature is looking to respond to that blind fire from Oscar. However, no rotate to be seen just yet to add the extra man. It's definitely seeming like Mal's may want to try and contest on Banana a little bit here still as they're kind of just gravitating towards mid and throwing a few grenades in towards the choke point. Probably going to throw a little bit of pressure at it, but we've yet to see if they're going to fully execute upon this. You normally don't realize that until late into the round, but we're going to start seeing that now as we do go down to the 50-second bar. So it's a good thing they didn't rotate Nitro or Liege for that matter off the site, but the thing is Liege alone here just gets dominated by Chris, and Dennis also picks the kill onto Nitro as they're attempting to fall back. B site is wide open for the taking right now, and the remaining CTs in their attempts to rotate may just find themselves dead as Lowell's still waiting up here in the long haul. He does get actually spotted. So the CTs, as they realize what's going on, they're going to have really no choice but to sit in that site and look to save as Mouseport but just those two kills clear out an open site for them, and it gives Team Liquid just no room to respond to it at all. Yeah, well, we're still trying to pick off a few of these players as well. Perfect angle, and Twist walks right into the trap as it snaps its jaws shut. That will eliminate Twist. Stanislaw and JDM are in much safer positions, however, and they're not moving out to aggressively try and kill anyone on the T side. So they should be good to stay alive heading into the next round. But well, those are going to be the only two saves, and after just dropping the last one, there's not really going to be room to reinvest for the other three, especially with all five staying alive currently for Mouse Sports. JDM getting out there too. Finally able to drop one player because he gets a nice little upgrade for himself from the ump. He'll end up with an AK instead, but small victory, which won't really mean much going into this next round. I mean, Liquid had the exact setup they wanted. You know, Nitro's a car. He took contact. He even did damage to Chris. But Chris just peeks the corner uh, at logs, destroys Elyse. I don't even know if Elyse got a bullet off and Nitro immediately traded afterwards. But I mean, that that is the setup you want. You want the guy taking contact around car or the wall, and then a guy close who should almost always get that first kill, just Chris J just, just mans up. I mean, <laughs> that's not a kill you're supposed to get, you know? Yeah. And he just destroys the leash. So obviously with the lack of just general uh, general purchases coming out from Liquid here, they're not going to be able to hold that aggressive control on Banana any longer. They did put one of their rifles on it though, but it's only for the short amount of time. Stanislaw fully rotating off, so they've gone for just a straight up gamble towards A. And with Chris J and Oscar already starting to move up and investigate, if they just head onto the site, once again, they'll see that it's open and that'll be the end of the round. We may end up with a round having no one die upon it as at the moment. Liquid going for this five-man stack. The gamble on it is really not going to pay off as Mouseports are getting ready to walk their way onto B. And again with the Liquid, still no signs of movement over there, so that's pretty much how things are going to play out here. Mouseports walk in, still using utility for obvious reasons if they were set up here, but it's uh, going to end up 
not really being needed, and the last players from Liquid are going to end up moving into positions and maybe to exit a little bit here, but it's not even seeming like that. For the most part, it's looking like they're focusing a lot more on, uh, at least for the guys with rifles, they're focusing a lot more on self-preservation than actually doing any real damage here as everybody just kind of stacks up in mid and the blob will end up moving down. Stan's able to get one kill as he moves himself out towards CT a little bit more, and Oscar is going to have quite a few battles to take, which he can't win any of them at all. This is, uh, this is getting a little bit dangerous here now. Still, no one from Liquid is even going to think about moving in for the actual retake, though. But at the very at least they're doing decent damage and definitely trying to keep the money low on mouse sports here as they think into the future and specifically this next round coming up where they more than likely they're gonna end up investing again. Yeah, but mouse sports picked right again. Uh, I mean on cobble they picked right every single anti eco and now they're picking right again. Yeah. Both the rifles actually do make it out of the round, however, for Liquid, and they even get themselves a third one, so they end up saving quite a bit of cash uh, going into this for the going into this next gun round for them, as they're going to have to, or they're going to be able to avoid a full reinvestment across their players. The risk in the last round just doesn't pay off, and with that, Mouse Sports have now been able to take the lead away from Team Liquid, leading us into this three to two score line. However, Liquid back into the fright; they've got their chance to tie it up once again. The next by rolling in. Now sports in terms of their opening play. Just gonna send players straight up the T steps and into the halls. Chris J also finding himself in a little mini battle here versus JDM. As JDM does hear all the noise, those footsteps going through the halls though. He's able to pick the head off of Rups right at the start, taking him out of the picture. And now bringing them down to a 5v4, promptly smoking off the long haul too. They've read into this one, and they're going to try their best to delay this, but still no full rotates on the way just yet, but they're very close. There's the first drop of another player from Mouse as they attempt to try and push their way into this site at the moment. Nothing going great for Mouse Sports. JDM, despite the fact that he got advanced intel onto the push from Lowell, misses the shot. So it lets him move up. Chris J only getting away with one kill though, and now Twist also taking down Lowell. Everything's down on Oscar in a 1v4, and he's completely isolated into this corner in a second. Nitro is going to push up for mid and have him completely flanked back out. This flashbang as well, he has to dodge it. Go back into mid where Nitro is finally going to pounce, taking down Oscar and tying us again with Team Liquid getting their third round. Yeah, and, and that's what you want to do on Inferno as a CT opper. It's A lot of it's not even necessarily about making it 4v5 every round, and, and it's it, but it's about showing that presence, right? And opping everything in, in different spots so that they're always just worried about an opper being in halls, maybe even aggro halls, like you know, JW style, or opping B, or opping down middle, or opping into low mid crack, or opping in boiler like that. Just, you always want to have that threat. Chris J ends up in a very awkward spot at the beginning of the seventh round, though. Trying to push his way up quickly past the half wall and gets naded, runs into a molly, and is completely blinded. So Liquid are going to get themselves a nice free kill to start things off, and they'll promptly, with that 5v4 advantage, back up to the B site and just go into a more normal setup here. Someone's boosted up on top of Flower Box, and a second man sitting just below him to assist when that CT smoke does broil in in a few seconds here. However, Oscar getting a little bit of a peek on the Nitro is able to trade that back, bringing us into another 4v4, and that is going to launch the hit. Great flashbang against the Liege. They try to hit him again, but this one misses. However, he whips big time on his initial spray, and in the name of keeping himself alive, he has to give up on that position and just wrap back around over to the church. For everyone else on Liquid, though, they do move into this site pretty quickly. Sports is only going to get things secured now and start to put the bomb onto the ground, so... Liquid will have all the time in the world to attempt to go for this retake here. But at the same time, Mouse Sports using the last of their smoke only just now has re-secured CT, so that's really not going to be an angle that they'll be able to push back in on unless they want to wait the full duration of the smoke. Mouse Sports fully set up and Liquid finally starting to wrap back around over here in the garden. A whole lot of aggressive pressure towards the garden, and with the CT zone smoke, they are able to knock two players out of this fight temporarily. Big play coming out from Dennis, though, as he takes a risk, and he almost eliminates two of their own players, but now back and forth the kills are going to go. Dennis hoping the impact, but gets distracted. It looks the wrong way. Stanislaw going to be able to eliminate him and Twist with these big pickups here. The remaining T's try to brute force through the smoke, but it doesn't work out, and Twist, with just barely enough time, is going to defuse that bomb and give the round to Liquid. Yeah, Twitch just just manning up, getting those two frags. Both players coming through smoke. Uh, good counter smoke by Liquid on that retake. I believe it's two smokes actually. Said, or, no, maybe it's just one. But yeah, Twitch just covering while Stan's diffusing. And again, man, he he kind of needed to step it up from yesterday, and he's doing just that right now. Uh, eight kills, four deaths. Stanislaw at nine and one, but remember he did have that ump ace against the Glocks. Yeah. With those two victories, Liquid have successfully broken Mouse Sports. So as you can see, they're going to be on a pretty minimalist buy for the eighth round here. Just Tech Nines, Eagles, and a P250 sitting on Chris J. They'll take it nice and slow here. 
as they just hold around the crossroads, waiting to see if they can get any opportunities to pick up a nice headshot on a curious player from Team Liquid. But Liquid are also holding pretty passively in this round. The most aggressive position they actually have is Nitro over on Banana at the half wall. And even that's a relatively safe spot. So they'll just wait and see where Mouseboard's trying to throw this towards. And as it swings with JDM already picking up the first kill there. He actually does re-peek a little bit too aggressively, and that's where Dennis is going to be able to find a trade and an op, more importantly. But now comes the real trouble. How do we actually get this up to the site? Stanislaw sitting up for another kill here, finds Dennis. He actually does have to move his position around quite a bit, but Twist is there to assist when needed. He picks up yet another frag, leaving only two alive, both of which are just going to get bulldozed now. Oscar, actually a nice shot to respond to the push from Elige, but now Nitro's waiting for him right behind the pole. And there you go. There's the shutdown on the round. Liquid now up to five. Yeah, and mouse sports, you know, they, they look a lot better when they're, you know, taking it more slowly. The the last two rounds, they kind of tried to brute force it, right? Chris J went through that smoke, or the, the Molotov and died. The round that they tried to do that A take through halls and whatnot, JDM was able to make it 4v5 there. So having a little bit of issues, mouse sports is when it just comes to kind of taking map control. Um, and then obviously the 4v4 retake as well. So Liquid up five to three. They're in a good spot here. Pretty decent money on their side as well. well once again, Mouse Sports with the buy back in play. They are just gonna try to go straight in for Hall's control here. They actually may go for quicker boiler control because of this boost that JDM uh, did. But unfortunately, it backfires. It's gonna take far too long to try and go out of boiler. Although JDM, even though he picked up that first kill, he gets straight out a few seconds later by Rupp. So they still able to make it work pretty decently for them. Now the remaining four will get ready to push on the A. The thing is, though, is that with this kill happening so advanced into the A bomb site, is that it is going to call for the third player to rotate in earlier. So there's some hesitation from Mouse Sports in terms of if they actually want to go for this or if they want to possibly play this back and then try to swing it over towards B, who now only has one player defending it. It's going to be Nitro, who's even out pretty far, too, so they can take him down. And there we go, site's open. He did just spot a player creeping back in that direction, but for the time being, he's not going to call for any assistance just yet. Elise is... A little bit itchy on that rotate, though, and you can see him starting to shift back in the other direction. Good thing, too, is this is definitely where Mouse Sports is going to end up committing towards with 45 seconds remaining. Molly is still in play, however, so they're able to delay the hit even longer, and I think that's actually going to kill the B play. Mouse Sports a little bit indecisive with the way they try to swing towards these sites. This happened, I think, on their, uh, their first eco round earlier on in the map, too. They're going to end up being forced into an A play, but this also works out because Liquid fully bit on this rotate, so at the moment, they only have one in the site. It's going to come down to Stan to defend things here, and he's out of position originally. Still able to pick up one kill, though, before going down to Oscar. Now, the guys from Mouse Sports have control, but it's still an even battle. Loa with a big flank, though, eliminating Twist. That's the big pickup. That is probably going to propel them into a huge advantage now for this post plant. As Liege and Nitro will attempt to rotate in, but there's no room at all to trade on the Lowell currently. They'll have to wait until they can get into boiler. And now the Halls is Lowell's backing up even further to be able to properly fight against him and try to bring it down to a 2v2. And they're getting low on time. They have no utility to retake with. So it is looking like both of them are going to end up giving up on this. And they'll fall back out towards mid. They may be able to pick up a few exit kills, but Mouse Sports will be getting the round, going 4-5. to five. Yeah, I mean, again, it, it does start out in Liquid's favor. You know, JDM makes it 4v5. He gives it back up by re-peaking, though, and Rops hit a, hits a nice shot on him. As Nitro trying to get exits. Goes down to Lowell. He's able to pick that one up, though. So only surviving with the one gun. They're going to have a, a decent buy here, though. Should be able to full buy with one drop and maybe another drop from Stan. Yeah, they both have, like, 6 and 8k, so they have that extra money. So we're going to end up with a full buy here, more than likely. Yeah, there we go. There's one up in play on Nitro that ends up uh, that ends up in the fray there, but that's because they go for the bigger buy on the op for JDM instead of just giving him a rifle for this round. Mouse Sports, though, still going to have Oscar equipped with their own op as they play into this one and look to tie it. And while they're immediately going to find an advantage, JDM is going for a super wide peek at mid. Oscar does get choked by a grenade down to 63 HP, but that's going to matter very little. The elimination of JDM twists one up with the op into his hands. They're able to pick that gun, gun back up in mid. And actually, Stanislaw takes the position of his now fallen teammate, trying to watch for additional mid choke pressure if Mouse Sports once again try to breach through here and get themselves into the site. That seems to be the case, too, with everyone stacking up here, preparing to toss in smokes. Liquid going for a bit of a heavy bite. 
as they'll just keep Nitro over to defend B. It's a good call, actually, with the way that Mouse Sports are playing this. So once again, properly reading into the situation and twists. And when packing with his first pickup here, nice push from Stanislaus. He gets the double. Support from Elyse coming in from the other end. Oscar so far only able to trade the kill into Elyse. He has Lowell in the pit, which is going to be a big help to him. But I think Smokes are covering this off right now, so he really can't get much done. Twists in a battle with Oscar. Can hit the shot. He's now low and now eliminated by Oscar. And Lowell also wins out in his battle against Stanislaw. Suddenly the tables have turned and Mouse Sports have the advantage here with Nitro looking to clutch in a 1v2. But he's got a molly, two flashbangs, and now an M4 to try and play with. So this is definitely winnable for him if he plays it properly. Just going to try to go for this slow lurk around the back, around the porch over here. And the molly used in the wrong spot. Not going to get Lowell into the open. But of course, he still confirms that there's not a player standing there. That jump, though, he is going to be able to give him away as he just goes through the flashbangs. He's going to make an attempt at this one. Both flashes hit against Oscar. He has that kill, but he doesn't want to commit to it. And with that, Oscar's given the time to recover, pick up the last shot, ends up with a 4K on the round. And now ties us up with Mouse Sports at 5. Oscar's just a man. Just <laughs> stood there, <laughs> flash, just did not care at all. Oh, man, Stan had such a nice play. I mean, I, I know the replay caught those two kills, but the, the flashbang that he threw on that retake was so perfectly timed and, and just just an awesome pop flash. But at the end of the day, it's 2v3. Oscar comes up middle, just wins all the individual battles, and then you put this guy in a post-plant situation, and he just comes through every time, seemingly. Yep. And now Liquid back down in the dumps with their own buy this time. They are just going to be on one P250 and everyone else working with defaults, so... Expect this to be pretty much a walkover round for Mouse Sports. Look at this. We even have this going on right now with Dennis just trying to chase that one player in CT. He has actually trapped himself as a result of it. And we'll just get that one kill on Stan before Elise swings in from his right side to trade him back out. And is having a little bit too much fun and he doesn't end up giving himself away. They picked right again, Blue. They did? How do they always know? I don't know, man. Going back to Cobble, this is like five or six times where they just pick right. Yep. It's been literally every single time. But it's, like it's not game. like they're even sending a scouter usually. I mean, they kind of did that round where he was in CT spawn, but they're just sending like all five players somewhere and nobody is there except for like maybe one player. Mm -hmm. Every single anti Ika. I don't know. They're just geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> that are just really, really is lucky. Is Chris J the greatest caller of all time? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> That's one for the history books to decide. As Chris J does move in, picks up the last kill, and Mount Sports will now take the lead. But it's off of a uh, minimal investment round from Team Liquid, so an easy round for them to pick up there. Now Team Liquid goes back into the buy, of course, and it's going to be their chance to resist and possibly tie it up again. We could have ourselves a match, just like the last one with Optic, where uh, things are pretty much back-to-back -back for most of the half, and no one's really able to cut ahead, even to the very end of it. Things ended like 8-7 in that last match there. And you can see it's a little bit more streaky in this game, uh, with players just winning three rounds, seemingly back to back to back now. So if we follow that logic, this would be the round that Team Liquid would win. But of course, that could very much go the other way. How Mono Sports has been able to play these last few rounds. Fast haul control is going to be taken from Mouse Sports this time, though. As they do just swing in really quickly to get that in. Rops as well finds a very aggressive twist trying to push into the long haul and eliminates him right at the start of this round. So yeah, that's two gun rounds in a row. That's been 4v5. Uh, Oscar picking off JDM, and then that round where obviously Twist just kills Rops right off the bat. So early on, it was Liquid making it 4v5, getting that early on, on advantage. But And now look at them. Just a full A stack, completely giving up B. And what's Mouse Sports doing? This again. <laughs> what's Mouse Sports right doing? This is actually crazy. Yeah. No, it is. It's it's crazy. Because it's not only like these 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 random gamble stacks that Liquid are doing on eco rounds. It's actually like when they do this too, when they over rotate in the yeah. sites. So they've done this is like the second time they've done this on the gun round now. So this is pretty insane that they're able to continue reading into this. And the back of the car and Lowell even able to hold for a one to one when he gets double pushed. That's gonna that's gonna cause them to read into this play now and finally start to rotate. But it's too late. Nitro's now got the CT smoke in his way. Can't spot anything on the site. He probably doesn't even want to give himself away here either. Oscar's just like, why do I have the bomb? <laughs> you guys know who I am, bro. He's just gonna <laughs> just plant the bomb for me, and I win the round. Like, have you guys not been playing with me for this pat this whole event? Stan on the boost stuff, unfortunately, doesn't work out well for him. And now Rops coming in on this flank just absolutely dominates Team Liquid. Stan and Nitro dead on the ground. JDM can't get anything do going, and he'll be taken out by Dennis. So there we go. Mouse Sports finally getting themselves a bit of an advantage to work with, and Liquid promptly gonna call for a pause. How dare you guys give Oscar the bomb? <laughs> like, what are you what are you thinking there? I, I need these kills. Yeah, like, Oscar is going to win you the round if you get the bomb down. <laughs> it's just how the game works. 
why does he have the ball? A lapse of judgment. It's funny, like he didn't even cross. He was just, he just stood there. Been, like Spawn was smoked. He was just, guys, like, are you kidding me right <laughs> do, now? Do I, do I really have to tell you about this? Do I have to plant the bomb as well as kill everybody afterwards? <laughs> Come on. I do that all the time too. Like if I'm like, especially if I play like matchmaking or something, I'm just like, plant the bomb, plant the bomb. And I never plant the bomb. <laughs> That's Oscar when he plays. He's just like, yeah, it's the same thing as matchmaking. Well, you guys take care of this for me. I'll, I'll just, yeah. I'll just kill everyone for you guys. Yeah, exactly. So, so he does it against like pro players. I'm doing it against the uh, XX420 sniper. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Phase whatever. Yeah. People fresh off the, the COD boat. Well, now we do go back in the next round here. Unfortunately, Team Liquid is once again going to find themselves with a pretty lackluster investment. Just CZs and 5.7s are the best buys they have, with only two being able to invest into armor, and only two smokes for the entire team, both of which have just been used. Just as the usual fend-off here. Liege is in a pretty good spot, though, if they try to rush up past half-fall right now. Oh, he sees the foot. Oh, he ends up legging him, though. That was weird. Oscar not going to get the full kill there. And Liege will just barely survive, even though he made that crucial mistake of letting his foot get spotted. Rest of the team is going to start to push upon this as once again, the Mouse Sports make the right call about their situation here. There's a four-man stack over on A. They've already legged the player. The one player sitting on B, who actually, once again, also has not called for any additional support. And Mouseport is just going to take this nice and slow, lurking up to the site. They'll let Liege make the mistake of peeking into him. And basically, we'll bring this down to the very last second before Liege is able to actually get any of that intel out. Molly going to send him into the open. One HP. It's an easy kill for Chris J to get. Although Nitro, sneaking back in, actually is able to get a trade on some Lowell there. Dennis, however, not trying to battle that against Twist and pretty much just deny any attempt from Liquid to do anything about this, which is basically going to be the way this plays out regardless. Nitro already having retrieved the M4, wants nothing to do with this fight. He's sitting back trying to save as Mouse Sports is going to be able to push themselves forward to the eighth round. But what do they do? They pick right again. What? What? <laughs> okay, so Twitch just gets his cri triple kill, so all of a sudden, the round is actually possible for Liquid to win out of nowhere. Oscar's alone, and he gets completely overwhelmed, so Twist out of absolutely what? nowhere clutches out that round for Team Liquid, and he's got the time to defuse this bomb as well, so there you have it. Six to seven for Team Liquid on just a half buy with only two players investing into armor. Are you kidding me? That... <laughs> Let's see this again from his perspective. Two of them stack up, and then the third kills, what's the one that's most impressive, instantly gets the headshot all in one clip as well. And then he gets that fourth one so beautifully as his teammate distracts Oscar from the other side. All right, that was insane by Twist, but what are you doing, Mouse Sports? What are you that, doing? <laughs> I feel like at a certain degree, you have to chalk that one up to them getting overconfident here. Finally, they get themselves a bit of an advantage. They think they have an easy round, and just like that, Twist sends it in the other direction out of nowhere. If that doesn't humble you, I don't know what yeah, does. The Mouse Sports <laughs> will not be playing like that again for the rest of this game. But Dennis is going to find himself a nice opportunity. Spot Stannis up on top, and with either support or his own flashbang, completely blinding both the players in that alley, it's going to be an easy pickup for him. To eliminate Stanislaw and once again give Mouse Sports the early 5v4 advantage. That could very quickly change though with JDM having this position on the arch side. We haven't seen as much arch side opping pressure from the CTs, so Mouse Sports may not ever really try to check towards this or pay too much mind to it, which means he could very easily get away with another free kill here. And he also has the support from a liege too. A two man setup over here, which could very easily punish Mouse Sports as they attempt to move their way in. JDM does miss the note a little bit there on Dennis. He tries to go out for just a second to peek in for intel. He will end up falling back. And now the rest of the team, once again, the good read on this one. Look, they're going up towards B, and there's only one guy there. So Nitro is going to be here to defend it with the secondary up. We will see how well he'll be able to hold off upon this one. As again, Mouse Sports are doing the same thing, just a really slow lurk up to the site, not giving away any intel whatsoever until just the last moment. So they give themselves the most amount of time before the rotates move in. Nitro tries to get tricky there by going for the jumping up shot. Not going to pay off, however, but JDM back into the fray through the smoke. Steals the first kill against Lowell. A lot more fragging to go, however, as they've only just evened up the score, and the bomb now down on the ground, with Mouse Sports having full control over the site. They don't have an inside man this time, so they've got to try to work for this all together on the retake, and I think they're going to try to do this boost inside the smoke. 
Let's see if they can spot anything over top of it, but no, immediately it gets denied by Chris J. Rops also picking up another kill against Twist. Now only two remaining for the CT side, and they have to bail out as they know they're not going to win this one. They still need an arsenal for the final round coming up after this one. Thankfully, they have the grace of the CT smoke still being set up, so they are going to be able to make it out. Actually, Nitro finds himself in a battle at the end of it, and he takes it, so Rops gets himself another kill. Now only a Liege will stay alive in his attempt to make it out and stay safe to head into that 15th round. He's going to be chased down by three additional players from Mouse Sports. Takes the duel versus Oscar, loses it, and with that, no saves will be had for Team Liquid. Yeah, that never works, by the way. Like, post-plant situation, trying to boost up on the CD spawn wall on the left, it never works. They tried it earlier in the half, too. It didn't work out there, either. They didn't They didn't immediately kill the guy boosted up, but they knocked him down to, like, 40 HP when he Was that when Elyse was up there? I think it was Elyse or JDM. No, no, it's good. Go. it's good when you're up there and they're hitting the site, or mm -hmm. they're still crossing. But, like, post-plant, when people are emo, that's all they look at if CT spawn smoked. That's all people look at. It's, like, the easiest kills. N you should never try that. It, it, like, the success rate is just almost nothing. Um, but, yeah, you know, V retake, it's, they, they do have construction control, but what, what was that, 4v4, and they still had a lot of smokes and whatnot. You're yeah. probably not going to win that round anyways. It's probably better to just save in that situation, to be honest, even though you do have four alive and just play for that last round. It was the same as round 13. They they kind of just they kind of just walked up to the site and then just popped a couple smokes in, so they could move in and get, get control. And again, like because they had the read on that situation, uh, there's only one player to deal with, so it's a pretty easy clear. They don't have to use anything extra to get that guy out into the open. So last round here, and Liquid are actually going to get a pretty decent buy for just being broken out there. They managed to get at least the op and the M one M four onto the table with Twist, who's been doing pretty respectable in this match so far. Liege on the ump. Now, the only real negatives are Nitro and Stan down on those pistols there. But they've been able, as we saw, specifically with Twist, but the others have shown it as well, that they can still do some decent work with these pistols and try to at least pop up a few kills and then let the guys with the big guns do the rest of the work. But with time encroaching on the 40-second mark, Sports are going to get ready to go for a pretty straightforward execute onto A, more than likely. They already are trying to get control around Arch side here, but Liege able to hold it, catches one player with the wrong gun in hand, does good damage to two, but unfortunately is not able to eliminate either one. Nitro trying to change this, swings into the long haul. Well, he'll pick up the kill against Lowell and now finds himself an upgrade. The rest of the team trying to push in. No one's paying mind to the site, so Stanislaw gets his one kill. He's done after that, and now Twist can jump into the fray as he picks up his kill from the balcony and promptly drops down into the pit. Rops, though, changes up his luck for his team, but Oscar is not going to be able to carry that through, so Rops is now alone with eight seconds to plant to try and pull off a 1v2. He'll have to rush into this site and attempt to clutch it, but it's not going to happen. Twist will shut it down, and with that, it'll be 7-8. to eight. Team Liquid still lagging behind, but it's a close match. So second half is coming up, folks, in just a little bit. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, Lenovo Legion, Xfinity, ESEA, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, Logitech G, and Zowie. Group B continues to be a close fight between multiple teams as now Mouse Sports once again sit at an 8 to 7 scoreline advantage. This time though it's against Team Liquid, another North American team looking to claim their ranks like in the, uh, the global rankings here. So now it's time to jump into the second half with Mouse Sports going over to the CT side and Team Liquid going over to the T side. How do we see things playing out now with Team Liquid heading over onto the offense? Well, 
On the bright side, Twist stepped up and <laughs> was playing out of his mind. I mean, just the one round, right? No, but the pistol round as well. Mm -hmm. On the A site, he had multiple, multiple multi frag rounds as, wow, just a B rush comes out and they are getting destroyed by Mouse Quartz early on. JDM with the two trains back, it doesn't matter Wait, though. Is just have 5B. <laughs> Whoa, dude, Mouse Quartz just knows. <laughs> They just had five. It was a five v five brawl at B. Liquid yep. is like, what is going on? Every every call that's been made, Mouse Sports has just read into it perfectly. I think they've only like went to the wrong site in terms of Liquid stacking like one or two times out of like sixteen rounds that have now been played out. It's actually insane. They just five rushed B versus five T rushing B. I would love to see the actual stat for how many times just just today that Mouse Sports have like successfully chosen a site where there was like two or less players in the site when they executed. Cause cause they've been insane with their ability to pick that up. And so now that gives them the starting advantage for the CT side and Team Liquid's gonna try to force their way through the smoke. Christian's got a great spot that they're not gonna look towards, but he can only get one kill. Lowe able to get two more. However, it's still opened up the site. They're gonna be able to move in and try to get themselves a plant. And Oscar looking to quickly try and hold this back off, but he won't be successful in it. He needs to wait for his teammates to rotate over. They're lagging behind a little bit, but if Liquid gets over aggressive and tries to push into the church, well, he could start this shutdown pretty quickly. As he's still waiting in here, Belize though gets the better of him when Oscar finally does push out into the open. And now it's down to an even 2v2. Both the T's, however, are trying to go for a bit of a rap play. They smoked out the church, and they're now trying to swing around in the other direction. Is Mouse Sports going to be paying attention to this when they finally swing back out? Yep, they've got someone watching it. So there's Dennis with the first pickup. Now all that remains is Stanislaw, and he's struggling just to get that kill on the Dennis here. We should easily... Actually, no, Holden's going to swing up here and tries to get it, but he runs out of ammo. However, Ropes jumped off the defuse, thinking that he was safe. He can sit back now, waste time. Ropes gets the kill, but it doesn't matter as he jumped off of his defuse and gave his opponents the round. Wow, I wonder how close he was to defusing that bomb. It seemed like he was just maybe a, a second max away, right? Yep. You can see it here. Runs out of ammo, and just as he runs out of ammo, Rops gives up on it, thinking that he maybe had one or two more bullets left in the chamber to be able to finish him off. Oh, that's a tad unfortunate. This is now they're going to get traded, and Mouse Sports will have to go into a four spot to try to keep themselves in the lead for this match. No longer is it going to be that secure lead they gained over Optic at the beginning of the last map, second half. Where they had the same starting scoreline. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. It's liquid. But nonetheless, they'll make their best attempt at it. As they've already met some contact across both sides of the map, actually. Chris J. Should have been spotted by Nitro, I believe. Well, apparently he wasn't, and now he's going to realize a little bit too late. Stanislaw's already done the job for him as he kind of hops around here, and Lowell takes an aggressive position. And even though he gets the one kill on Nitro, that'll also be traded back out. Just two remain for Mouse Sports, both of which are really not going to be in great spots to have any effectiveness here, so we should expect for Liquid to get their second round in this half right here and be able to force Mouse Sports onto a save. Yeah, just, just very aggressive at B. All three rounds now, really. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know if you can get more aggressive than rushing five down banana as a CT. It's about as aggressive as you can get. And then, you know, following two rounds as well, just playing around the half wall area, trying to contest that smoke area. Uh, so far, not working out for mouse sports. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I mean, then again, the the ump round, you know, a two v three post planet B. I I think I'd take that. That's not terrible by any means. You know, that's a round you should win as a CT. But Oscar having himself a position inside of the church, he may yet open up an opportunity to pick up at least one or two kills. They've got a pinch on uh, Elyse. Oh, nice shot from Oscar. There's a one tap Elyse there in range. Finishes him off. Fortunately, there's only going to be uh, a MAC 10 to scavenge out of that one. But with them going on to a full save, that's not going to be uh, too big of a deal there. So we take another look at the situation as it unfolded here with the defuse. I think we actually got it from the perspective of Ross this time. So just how close was he? Let's see. I'm going to say a second. Two. Oh, my. Oh, oh Did he my. he had it? Maybe? God. But he might have, actually, considering it was that close. Like, he, yeah, he might have thought, like, he was going to defuse the bomb as he was doing that. That was, like, that was, like, 0.2 seconds or less. Well, Rops will have a chance to do some damage as we do jump into the next round here, as he does find a liege lurking inside of, uh, inside of, the apartment's over there. And now, well, here's a right read from Mouse Sports again. If Liquid <laughs> ended up following through with this. They've got this four-man stack, two boosted, one on one on first, one on second oranges, and then two more hiding inside of the little in-between areas. 
So let's see if this setup actually does any work. They have the two MAC-10s, but mind you, one of them is over on the A site currently, so only Oscar's gonna be able to use his. And the rest are just working with like default pistols and stuff. They spot the first player here. Oscar is gonna get pushed back down inside. Flashbangs are affecting both sides though, so no one can really take a battle currently as they push in. Nitro apparently kills his teammate. Twist is also gonna take down Oscar. <laughs> Twist almost kills enough. Twist almost kills another teammate right there. They still are able to clear out the site as Nitro oh. drops in and eliminates Chris J. He'll also find another pickup against Dennis. So it just leaves Rops alive, trying to wrap back in. But look at how low he's got all three of these players. There's a very real chance for him to actually be able to clutch this out. As he creeps back in, looking for a path up to the B-bomb site. One's going to be right in the open there. That's the first pickup. Only lost 12 HP from the duel. And the flash into Emo here. Let's see if he can finish them both off. Unfortunately, the flashbang ends up, I think, slightly behind the pillars. So neither member of Liquid gets hit by that. And off of that, they are able to clean up the 2v1. And claim a 10th round now against Mouse Sports. So close to being just a just an eco upset there. Just a couple USP shots. I mean, almost no HP on anybody. You gotta you gotta think Mouse Sports is kind of kicking themselves over that. Definitely around they should probably be winning. Let's see if they continue with this B aggression though. Oh, so we see Liquid. So Nitro just smokes off the car area. So so he's fine playing with that smoke. Maybe he gets boosted like he did before. Kind of one ways it a little bit, I think. Got Stan coming up from behind, so he's like halting there, though. So they're not moving in on it just yet. In the meantime, the other two went and just take usual halt control. Not too big of a task to, to gain there, but with uh, with free with free car area control, they more than likely they're going to end up working the rest of their players over towards B, as you can already see. Nitro having his corner spot and getting ready to deploy with the other four. Big pressure about to work its way on a Chris J and Lowell. One of them does have a Molotov to try and toss back out here, but with Team Liquid being as quiet as they are, I don't know if they're going to have the timing to be able to toss that out. Yeah, Chris J gets wrecked by a flashbang, so can't hold that one. Lowell picks up the first kill, does get greedy and going for a second, but JDM is actually going to kill his teammate on the way in here, eliminating Stanislaw with a headshot. Now Chris J trying to delay, but the nade is going to send him flying as it eliminates him. However, they now have the man advantage, and both Elise and Twist are so low. I don't even know if they're going to be able to get the plant now, despite them having sight control. Twist will make his best bet at it, has picked up one kill, and now moving in to retrieve the bomb and attempt to set himself up for the clutch. The plant is actually not going to go for it just yet. He tries to fake it out to line up a few headshots. He gets them both lined up, but is only able to get one more before Rops moves in and shuts it down for Mouse Sports, tying us up at 10 10. Yeah, I mean, if you're liquid, though, that's a good round. Like, you lost, but you, you, you stopped them from having anybody alive besides one player. You have a lot of money. You're going to be able to buy here, and I think you have a lot of money. Actually, they don't have that much. Um, I thought they'd have a lot more money than that. No. <laughs> um, but I, I would assume they buy here. They're going to have a couple AKs. Twist has AKs. We can yeah. He can draw. Nitro could probably draw. Yeah, they should have three AKs, two Tech Nines. So still a pretty decent buy. Team Liquid decided to take a tactical here, though, so they've used their second now in this match. Two remaining throughout the half. And with things remaining close, it might end up being likely that they use the other two. Both teams bought back into it, though. Mouse Sports, of course, not going to be uh, not going to be unaffected by the fact that they got brought, brought down as low as they did. As you can see, they're on three umps for this round. But their utility is going to be great. So it's Team Liquid, though. Both teams end up with a pretty even buy at the end of the day as it means breaking time for both these teams should they lose it. But Rops is going to get aggressive. In fact, two players get aggressive and a great flashbang down alt mid allows for Rops to pick up both of those kills. Immediately, they get themselves a 5v3 advantage. This aggression, though, has now Curtsell Team Liquid into throwing all their players over towards B, where only Oscar is here to defend. He instantly headshots one player with the UMP, though, before falling back behind the CT smoke. Stanislaw is now dead, so everything falls to Nitro and JDM, and Nitro almost gets eliminated on the CT cross. Great fire coming in from Mouse Sports. And even though they're probably going to let Liquid get away with the plant, they could still easily shut this down on a retake. Liquid just prioritizes that plant for the reasons that they're going to be retook upon in a moment here. And Oscar moving in gets his second on the round. Just one to go. Nitro tries to get an extra kill by lining up a headshot angle, but it can't be done. And there you have it. Mouse Sports with no deaths on that round at all. We'll shoot up to 11. Yeah, they just sent Oscar B by himself. An ump, maybe like an HE grenade or something on him. He plays it super good in that 3v5, though. Uh, immediately realizes, like, hey, I don't really need to challenge. I just need to maintain control. 
you know, he gets a really nice shot. That shot was ridiculous, by the way, on that first guy coming into the site. And then, of course, Rops just, just setting up the round by that quick alt mid push. You know, Liquid not ready for it at all. Goes into an immediate 3v5. But Oscar, that was really well played by him as well. Got to give give him props for how he played in the retake. Got the first kill. Did a bunch of damage on them crossing as well. And maintained construction control. Yep. So Oscar making sure that things don't get too out of hand on that site after the other players towards they got aggressive. Yeah, I mean, that's the way you lose that round is if Oscar you know, takes ill-advised peaks, fights too much, dies, they give up the site in a 2v4 and give up the This time though, Mouseport shutting things down relatively quickly. Already two kills in their favor. There's a three-man hold. They're <laughs> taking all three of these guys to try and eliminate Nitro, as that definitely takes a few extra seconds. But with the bomb still being down halfway on alt mid, Rops just takes this duel. He goes one for one, which is now given a leisure rifle. But like I said, the bomb is nowhere even close to him. He's probably just gonna move out, try to take this battle, get maybe one more kill. But not gonna happen. Dennis will shut him out. And that's now a two round advantage to Mouse Sports here. And again, they only lose one player, so this is great. It's given them a lot of extra cash in the event they lose the next gun round. I'm surprised they didn't buy an op uh, for Oscar there off that death. Just just sticking with that five rifle setup. JDM gets an op on his T side though. Not playing well though. He had a really good day yesterday, but today struggling a little bit. Seven and 16 right now. And Nitro, seven and 14. So, once again, Team Liquid spreading their players out across the map here. They have to be very cautious. I'm imagining overall Liquid's probably going to play this these rounds a lot slower because of how uh, successful aggression has been for the most part from Mouse Sports. And here's a great example of that with Rops. I mean, that spray through the wall, it almost hit Twist. We've seen that work out pretty well for people before. We started seeing that a lot more commonly a few weeks ago. But now the rest of Liquid's going to start to move in. Rops does finally get a kill on Twist when he goes in for the long haul push. The main pushing force from Liquid, though, is going to be coming over here on Porch side as he's already claimed a trade, eliminating Oscar. So much damage was taken by Liquid in trying to move in and take this control, though. They've got three players that are almost one-shotable now. Did you see how much damage Oscar's yep. nade did? I don't know if he even shot any bullets. I'm not sure. I, he must have because JDM killed him. My God. So all three of these players are going to be extremely fragile. And as a result of that, a liege now can has to take charge. But even he's been hit. He's lost a third of his health pool already. So Liquid has to be very careful. And they're actually taking a page out of Mouse Sports' book here, just basically creeping up to the B bomb site and delaying them making any noise for as long as humanly possible until they're right up on the site. They also don't have any utility for this execute now. So they have to somehow, with this low HP, walk in, take out two. It's going to be three players in a second on the site. Actually, excuse me, it's only one player here, but regardless, Chris J gets himself the nice double. Stanislaw and Elyse both getting eliminated, and with the rotate from Lowell, that's going to be one more knocked off. As it's just down to Nitro, who's going to prioritize the plant over everything else here. At the very least, try to get his team the extra money, but he cancels it, trying to go for a kill, and that will be his ultimate downfall. Lowell taking him out, Mouse Sports up to 13, and I believe the last pause from Liquid is going to be used, or one of the last pauses. Up to 13, and just a bunch of money on their side. Um, and Liquid with 3k a piece. So it's, it's looking really good for Mouse Sports right now. Two of the big changes at this B site um, as a CT though, you can't hide at first oranges like that. The, the player in pool just kills you every single time. Like they just see your arm, it's, you know, like 18 damage a shot or something with an AK. So anytime you hide like that, if you're Chris J, you just die from that player in pool. Obviously, he did his job already, he got two kills, the rotate game, um, really easy cleanup for his teammates. And then the other one that we saw earlier come into play is when you're on Spindle. On the old Inferno, you used to be able to jump up from Spindle, and they couldn't see you from anywhere like towards Banana or the, where those sandbags are at, except for like a tiny piece of your arm, right? Like, like, like literally like almost nothing. So you'd be able to jump up from Spindle and kill anybody pushing the site towards like first oranges. Now you can't really do that anymore either. So I saw both of those big changes come into play. Liquid again just getting destroyed by nades at the beginning of this round as the CTs double nade it. That's Chris J and Lowell doing that work. Liquid gonna try something a little bit more interesting though as they go through their own CT smoke and try to wrap around to get guarding control before the other players try to push in and they're definitely caught off guard by that. Lowell only getting one before going down and the same story for Chris J. 3v3 is the way that this post plant's gonna pay out with now Stan and JDM both picking up rifles. JDM, if he could, I imagine is gonna wanna toss it over to Elise. Yeah, there we go. Two HE grenades, two Molotovs on Oscar and Rops. Mm -hmm. So one molly into emo can completely kill this post plant hold, essentially. As one is going to work its way over to new box. That's where Stan's going to get pushed out. 
And there you go, the entire defense falls apart from Team Liquid in just a matter of seconds, not even a chance given to them because of that utility. So Mouse Sports will be able to push up to 14. Yeah, huge nade damage, making that possible as well. The start of the round towards B with a uh, Lowell and Chris J. We're going to take a better third-person look at the nades getting tossed in here now. As you can see, one, two, both of them right in the middle of the main group of three in the back there. So giving Liquid no chance right from the start of it. Even though they only trade one for one, it makes the utility cleanup at the end of the round even easier for Mouse Sports to do. And now, because they have all of this cash, they're going to end up just going straight for the double op buy now. And it still leaves them with even 10k, I think one or two players still has in the post buy. JDM tries to test his luck on an aggressive peak. Not going to pan out. Chris J immediately shutting that one down. That's just like a bad peak, though. I mean, he didn't peak that, like, good at all. I just went for it. And almost every opera there plays in an off. That was a good peak. <laughs> <laughs> almost that every was... opera there plays on an off angle as well, where they don't play at that corner, like like pixel peaking. They usually play a little bit to the left. You saw a little bit of that with Chris J. Usually a lot of times if you watch Fallen, he's even more to the left there. Just just not a good way to challenge that player at all by JDM. The nice double peek over at Long Hall, though, it does secure them the one for one, so they're going to be down at a 4v4. And off of that kill, Mouse Sports actually rotated their extra B player over towards A, so Lowell's going to be in this site, which means you only have Chris J to defend it, who at most I'm thinking is going to get really just. Yeah, he's not even actually going to get anything now unless he takes a risk on it. And yeah, he tries to fight, expecting him to fall back since we've seen pretty passive play for the most part from Mouse, although there's a good trade from Lowell, but an even better shot from Elise up on top. He can just barely see over the smoke. And with that, Picks up the kill on Lowell, so it'll be a 2v3 retake. Rob still has plenty of utility, though. He's got the extra smoke to use and the molly and an HE grenade. So this is a lot that he can try to do damage with on the retake. Unfortunately, because they only had Chris J in the site, they're not going to have guaranteed intel about where these guys have gone in the post plan. They just have to make their best guess about things. Molly against Dennis will delay the retake even further now. And Rops is basically just waiting for the signal to move into the site as the smoke has finally started to move away. He goes in, takes the first duel successfully against Twist, evening it out into a 2v2. Elige has this crossfire against Rops, but he's going to check for it. Doesn't matter, though. Elige comes out on top and transfers the spray through the smoke. Nicely done from Elige as he cleans it up for Liquid and keeps them in the match. That was sick by Elish. <laughs> that was really sick. That spray transfer into the smoke was, was very nicely done. So, putting things up to 14 to 11. As I mentioned a couple rounds back, though, Mouse Sports still had plenty of cash flow to work with, so a full rebuy is not going to be a problem for them at all. But also up to full strength here. So, this is pretty much the telling point for both these teams. Even though Mouse Sports had a decent amount of cash, they are going to have to start making sacrifices in the next round. That's where Liquid could gain their comeback and potentially tie this up at 14 to wall. But Mouse Sports shutting this one down. The reset against Liquid would be brutal, to say the least. Would all but secure the map for Mouse Sports. There's a double molly down banana here. So they'll be able to read the fact that there are two players. Nitro gets his advanced position on half, although, and double kills after Chris J steals his opponent. Oscar, full blind, though, moves out. He might have spotted Nitro just before he got hit by the flash, and he uses that to eliminate him and keep things even into a three-on-three. -three. And that's going to send Liquid hurling in the other direction towards A, as they'll try to make a take here instead. So plenty of time to play with, with all this action happening just in the first 30 seconds of the round, though. So they'll be able to play this nice and slowly. So they still had the full five-man firepower of their full roster. But they'll split up those three guys, two going over towards Rap. And Elige is going to continue forward through the long haul to try to get himself out onto Falk. Unfortunately, he's smoked off, but that should be fading relatively soon. Rob's catching the first kill. An attempted trade from JDM misses, and the bomb is now down. So the B player is going to rotate in. Elise with the drop down moves in, eliminates Rob's and Dennis. Nice pickups from him, and now everything falls to Oscar. Is he going to have to try and 1v2 this? Smoked off. He's got an AK on the ground if he wants to use that, but it looks like he's going to be sticking with the op for right now. So he'll slowly creep back in the other direction over here towards the port side. See in a second if he's actually going to go for this, or if he's just going to head out mid and save. It's looking like he may go back in, although taking a different route as he heads into the apartments. And yeah, now seems to be sort of bypassing things with time getting too low. More than likely, we'll just be posting up to try and kill one or two players moving out through the apartments now. He'll let Liquid get this round and go up to 12, just trying to maximize the damage so they can try to fully reset them. Yeah, and, and they, they have a little bit of money here. They can get a double op set up if they want. You know, Oscar could drop one for, for Chris J. He could buy his own. They'll probably have to roll with maybe two umps this round, or at least one ump. But they, they should be fine. This second kill by Elise was ridiculous. Well, that, that 
That was sick. Dennis there, all he has to do is just kind of make sure he does get that one frag. I think after Elise gets that position in pit, maybe he needs to fall back. Maybe just hide in sight there. And just guarantee himself that one frag. Well, Oscar's going to take himself a nice close-up to one. Spots the entire push moving into. Mouse Sports completely destroyed Team Liquid here. All four players on the push get dominated. Now it's just Nitro alive at Boiler. Yeah, he made up for it. <laughs> he made up for that, that mistaken say. <laughs> Definitely made up for it. Yeah, him and Oscar just <laughs> easily shutting things down there, not giving any I mean, room at all. Liquid just runs through a Molotov to try to get that trade code. Dennis is absolutely ready for that. You know, Oscar takes that one shot, he has a molly ready to save him, and then they just run through a Molotov into his crosshair. And what are you going to do? Are you just going to stop in the Molotov while you fight him? You're going to keep, like, he's just holding mouse one. Just easy kills. Well, Nitro trying his best to clutch that one out, but it's not going to happen. And so Mouse Sports are going to follow through, getting themselves to 15 to 12. Closing out there. We'll get a nice replay from Dennis's perspective this time, too, as he gets a beautiful spray. Kills three players in one clip. Yeah, and that's just a, a really early round mid walk. And that's actually a direct counter to it, is what Oscar did. We saw JDM did that, but he peaked all the way towards the T steps. Um, I don't know if Oscar would have peaked directly towards the T steps if he didn't see somebody at bench. Probably not. Usually, when you peek from that left side, you peek around that bench area, maybe towards the, you know, like, like you stop right before that mini pit area. And then it's just a direct counter to anybody doing a mid block. And he just picks the perfect time to do it. Uh, they haven't been opping too much on the CT side. You know, they brought it out later on in this half, but they've had opportunities to earlier on, opted for five rifles. So maybe Liquid just not, you know, too ready for it. And now they do have the double op set up, three rifles, pretty much full utility and Liquid on a, a really bad force buy. I mean, they just have a couple lumps, a couple tech nines, and Twist is fully bought, but that's it with AK and nades. Yeah, so moving into this next round here, Liquid unfortunately gonna have to try their best to work with it. They did just take their last pause in case you missed that on the screen. So hopefully developing some kind of strat for this round, but even so with the limited amount of arsenal they actually bring to the table, things are gonna be a little bit rough for them to actually make anything work out. They're prioritizing Hall's control early on in the round, so may try to swing this towards A. However, this could be a little bit different of a flavor in terms of what we've been seeing from Liquid throughout most of the rest of this half so far. There's Mouse Sports is so ready for this. Yeah, Dennis fully paying attention to it. Normally, they've had the stack over towards Porch, but right now, Dennis even just having the Molly ready to go to delay that if necessary, or completely kill them if he catches them in the middle of it. And yep, he spots the play, flashed out, but it doesn't matter. He's got his lock on the position, is able to steal one, goes down after that. Rop stealing two more, just seconds later, and even gets the third on the Stannis Law. That's the hit, dead on the ground. Nitro is going to try to lurk out as the last man standing. He, at the very least, trades on Rop, but he's got so much more work to do. Not dead yet, though. He's picked up two kills, spots himself a third just outside of the library, and having to pay attention for the fifth and final player. Slowly trying to wrap around him. In fact, he almost reads into that wrap too from Lowe. He's checking his backside. As Lowe, he's taking the longer path to go out around through the T-steps to try and flank him through long haul. That'll come down really to the timing of it if Nitro is going to be able to properly counter that or not. But after not spotting anything here, he finally decides to dive into the site to focus on trying to get that bomb onto the ground. 27 seconds left. This is actually quite a bit of time. Judging from his current position, it'll safely just smoke back off the other path so we can fully secure this plant. Without any risk of him being shot down in the process. Um, now down on the ground, and he'll take a little bit of an aggressive stride, which may work out moving in. Chris J ready for this one, though, and he scopes in to shut it down, eliminating Nitro. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, Mouse Sports are going to be taking control of yet another game. They'll push up to 16-12, to 12, putting them in a 3-1 position overall in their group. I mean, just great reads from Mouse Sports. Uh, especially at the end of that half. I mean, understanding that, hey, Oscar could watch all the middle. You know, he's opping it from art side. They come out boiler, he'll spot him at the very least. They're basically doubled up watching halls there. I mean, Dennis probably would have gotten a 3K himself had he just held mouse one instead of ducking after he got blind. And then Rops, of course, with that great side hold. And they played the 2v1 really well as well. I mean, mouse boards, just, they just have the reads. Like, they were, they've been one step ahead both these games uh, that we've seen them right now. Just yeah. 
absolutely wants more like three steps ahead. That's put them into a great position in their group right now. They're sitting just behind North with a 3-1 scoreline. I think North won their other match on the off stream, so they're sitting at a 4-0 position right now. I think they're almost like 90% secured at this point to move on to the playoff stages, so they're looking good. And uh, with that victory, Mouse Sports is looking really good as well. But with that said, I believe we do have the analysts ready, so let's send it over to them to break down this match. Yes, welcome back to the Xfinity Analyst Desk. Mouse Sports, another impressive showing. They've knocked down both North American opposition that they face, Optic first and now Liquid. Close fashion there towards the end, but Liquid just falls short. Talked about some of the ways that Oppers could really struggle on this map. We saw JDM have his own struggles. Oscar, though, seemed to be able to, to pull things off pretty Yeah, nicely. that combat opening I was talking about. You yeah. know, he can be a lot more versatile with it. Um, the big player for me who showed up who hadn't so far this tournament was Twists. He had a yeah. great game. You know, he was really effective. And, and then Stan as well. And the rest of the team for Liquid weren't really up to par with those guys. But, you know, they had some really good performances, the two of them. And then on Mouse Sports, a couple of mistakes. It, the game could have been over a lot quicker if they hadn't made those those mistakes, right? Obviously, that Rops defuse was a bit of a bit of a blunder. Um, uh, there was a couple of other ones like the uh, twist, uh, what did, uh, the three K or the three man yeah, CT push spawn CT. push five seconds after planting the bomb. Doesn't make much sense. Does it? Yeah, I know. It really, really, really <laughs> well, I mean, didn't. even, I mean, those are the glaring ones, right? But we saw, yeah. I know we were, we were talking over some of those rounds, one of those retakes that mouse had towards the B bomb site, uh, where it was what a four on four at one point, Chris J makes a peek around a smoke and he dies. And if he just stays alive there, then they essentially have like a four on three retake. Cause you know, yeah. his teammate had gotten a kill. So yeah, to build on that, if they, if, even if Lau hadn't gotten a kill and he just stayed alive and held control of ruins, right? Uh, the rest of his teammates would have come for a retake and it's a four V four where they're trapped in the bomb site, yeah. right? You have ruins control, which is one of the hardest parts to get when don't going for a B retake. So what's the issue? He could have just stayed alive. He didn't really need to make a play. That was an issue that they had, but they still were able to close out the game relatively convincingly. Yeah, so. and especially I think just to, to add to that, the fact that Mouseworks actually did a pretty good job for for the better part. Whenever they were rotating in towards you know any given bomb site, they had done a pretty good job of actually keeping on to their utility. So you see that whenever they tried to do B retakes, they would all just have some sort of utility, whether it be Molotovs or, or nades uh, or smokes really to just kind of narrow down the space that Liquid could actually use for those bounties. So if you're already cut off the entire ruins part, you know that you're going to have four Liquid players boxed in a very, very tight space. Right, well, what we're bringing up some of the mistakes that we saw, we actually have that, that, that the, the blunder from Rops on yeah. the defuse. So we can bring that up if you guys want to talk us through this one. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because we talked about how he is so composure for being a player. And this is a 2v2 situation. He's going to get, uh, obviously, Dennis here to help him out. Dennis does lose out the battle to Stanislaw. And if the thing is, Stanislaw at this point runs out. And I think he's already getting shot at and he's already committed like for one and a half second right. with getting shot at. Because either you have to make the choice that the second Dennis dies, you need to get off that bomb and try to find Stanislaw. Because Stanislaw has to get aggressive to actually see what's going on with the diffuser. Or you have to fully commit to the bomb defuse. Is that is that just an experience, Chad? I guess because like yeah, heat of the like moment, said, heat of the moment thing. It's just like it's it's a split second decision that's extremely hard to make. Like you could find extremely experienced players should still make that mistake. Yeah, I don't know if you can. I don't know in that scenario. NBK because, probably wouldn't. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> but if he just sat the defuse and died he would have lost the round. If right. he got off the bomb like he did, he didn't have enough time to read it, yeah, so yeah. he would have lost. So he should there, have there is only one. It. There is only one right answer, but I'm just saying, like, yeah. you will find players who still make that mistake. Because, you know, sometimes you just have a brain fart and you just do something instinctively instead of, you know, obviously doing the well the thought right play, thing. Yeah. yeah. Something that Dave was just uh, touching on there was about the reads that they had, right? We saw that pissed around in the second half where oh, it was yeah. all that was 10 like, players. Yeah, that was the was wasn't it? century. Yeah. In the first half, Mal's had these, like, when they decided to either do fakes, it worked perfectly. It pulled all the liquid players or on the anti because they were always going to bomb site where there weren't any liquid players, right? It was great to see. Yeah, and I think it's also pretty cool. Uh, this is something Mal Sports, you know, the older iterations of the team did on... on uh, uh, more so than other teams on, on CT sides, you know, like on Mirage, for instance, they would actually play aggressively towards middle. Here we actually saw something that I at least haven't seen a lot, at least throughout the regular season in Pro League in NA, CT sides being aggressive towards A. Normally you have that constant battle in Banana, just fighting for control. Sometimes CT deals uh, will play aggressively with the deep smokes and so on. We actually saw Mouse Force push down in towards second mid right. uh, with, you know, actually manpower, not just one guy going off on a bit of a rogue mission. And that's, I, I like seeing that kind of stuff. It throws a spanner into the works. They get two easy kills off of it, already cut off half the map from Liquid side. So at that point, you're leaving your T's in distress. They have no idea what to do. They kind of have to scramble. Uh, and obviously it becomes a much easier round for you to right. run as a CT. Well, we checked out we checked out the, the little mistake from the young gun over on Mouse Sports. Now this is this is a cool play. Twist finally showed up. You mentioned Chad. Yeah. This is his CZ round. Now this is also a blunder from Mouse Sports, okay. but amazing yeah. to capitalize on it. Yeah, well the fact that he hits those shots, right? Like the double that he gets there is very lucky, but then that third one is the is the the real icing You're on aiming. the cake, right? Yeah, and it's good because it, that's the pure skill that this guy has we were talking about. And then to find that last one, getting the defuse, pretty nice. We're all just asking the question, like why 
have they pushed out with so much time left in the bomb timer? And, and that's when Yanko just looks up and he's like, welcome to Mouse Sports. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's had a good time with that, so he enjoyed just, that very much. Lucky the mistake didn't cost him in the end. You know, those kind of issues. Very well could have. If you look back at that and go, God damn, we lost the game because of that. It had it been old Mouse Sports, they would have lost this game. Yeah. Like, if, because of that. It, just to quickly touch a little bit more on Liquid before we, we get off it completely, is like, I really like that pot flush that stands. Like, the, the mid wall retake, right? Inferno is a map mm. where it feels like it's taking teams a long time to transition to go for the mid wall retake again. And what I mean by that is I like a transitional defense on this map. I think the CTs can sit posturing on quad side and arch side and jiggle peeking. And then once they feel the pressure, obviously drop back. If utility comes in, you have to make a decision to fall back into a safer play. But in the old meta of Inferno, it was like pop flash top mid and take it as the tease. If teams want to do that, and we saw it happen with Stan throwing a really amazing pop flash and his arch player pushed through the smoke, you can blind up the whole team, take a fight and get some really efficient trades and crossfires there. And I want to see that come back into the to the meta a bit more because I think it's very effective for the CTs other than sitting in the site and pit. Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a very, very cool defense that they... Uh, that they that they mounted that round. Um, on the other stream, on the B stream, we had North taking on Optic Gaming. It was a 16-14 victory for North, and with that win, they have secured the first seed in this Group B. They will be moving directly on to the semifinals once we get into the playoffs in, uh, in Dallas, Texas this weekend. So congratulations to North. We're going to be heading to a break. When we come back, we're going to be having Optic versus Navi. That's going to be the match we'll be featuring. There's going to be two more playing alongside it on the other streams. But for now, we'll, we'll see you soon. Athletes aren't just born, they're molded from the core, a core of strength, a core of laser focus, a core that can handle anything, a core that sweats the small stuff, a core that's the difference maker, game changer, world shocker. You see, hard work makes the athlete, but the edge of a core i7 processor makes you unstoppable. Get your team apparel now at shop.eslgaming.com.
Yes, back again. One last match potentially for Group B. It's going to be Optic versus Na'Vi. You can have some of the other matches going on side by side. Uh, figure out later if the potential tiebreaker matches are going to come back into things. But before we begin, before we dive too deep into it, ESL Play Open is occurring on June 16th. If you guys want to get in on the action, if you guys want to check it out, esl.gg slash... CSGO dash summer 17. You guys can check it all out, get all the information there, sign up to have some fun. Play some counter strike. Dash and slash action. Yeah, dash and slash. It's good stuff, isn't it? That was best. How are we doing, boys? We've traded out uh trade out Chad for yeah, we traded our resident Australian, got our Serbian back in. Yeah, I had some fun, watched the uh, 24 in the in the break, the best TV show Jack of Bauer. all it time. Really is, yeah. One eye on Jack Bauer, other eye on the games, but yeah. Seems Always like got to keep an eye on Jack seems, Bauer. The things are a bit more clear cut in, in Group B, at least North already securing first seed, Mouseport securing the second seed, and now it's all about that third seed. Yeah. We do have a couple of teams still left in contention. Yeah, these are these are a couple of them. We'll start with Optic first, the, the, the North American squad. We've seen seen all three North American teams play today. That's quite cool. Yeah. Uh, Optic going to be coming up, and, and I mean, this is this has been um, this has been a little bit of a struggle for them. This has been a tough ride uh, for a team that still isn't very secured in kind of what they're looking for. But at the moment, I mean, they, they seem like they still have some ideas. They still have some coordination. It's just there's just something missing. It's the final touch, right? Yeah. It's that final polish that you need to, to uh, work out. And that's obviously I think that's going to be a remaining problem for them, leading all of you know all of out through the the major cycle really, for them because uh, I don't know. I, they, they haven't seemed to really have any sort of uh, evolution from uh, from the point where they picked up Jason R. They're still very much the kind of the same discombobulated team that still makes the same mistakes over and over again. So I'm not sure how much effort they've actually put into actually working out those kinks. And if you're not going to do that, then... You, this yeah, is what you get. Yeah, exactly. I, th I think a lack of clear leadership just magnifies all other problems, right? Not just in-game leadership, but having a, a leader figure within a, within the team, someone with a lot of authority, right? And then you have those small mistakes in communication, in timings, in rotations, and then everyone gets a little bit frustrated, and maybe someone stops talking or, or they talk less, and that just, again, makes everything look worse than, than it actually is. So for right now, it seems like this. They're sticking with Jason R as, as the in-game leader of the team, and they're going to have to find a way to work it out, at least uh, in the near future. Yeah, it's not going to for just a couple more months till after that major cycle. It just feels like some of the players like just haven't They've dipped individually because there's just a little bit of confusion in that team cohesion aspect of it. Uh, their opponent's going to be Na'Vi, another team fighting cohesion and fighting some issues with how this team wants to operate as, as a five-man unit. Uh, you can see there, I mean, these names, we, we've known them for so long. We've seen them in finals. We've seen them win finals. Guardian, Simple, Flamey, Seized, Edward. They've been around for a while. It's just the same kind of story as we, as we just mentioned with Optic. Something's just not going right. Yeah, and again, I think it's the lack of leadership and obviously what it does to a player when he has to adapt to a new role, I think it's it's very obvious that Seize does not the same kind of a player that we saw before. Uh, the lineup change just happened before he had to st uh, step into that role as an in-game leader. Uh, I think it's it's a shame to see because you know what kind of a top level he can have, but I think it's very far and few between Like when you see those kind of performances. in That obviously weakens Na'Vi as, a, as an entire team, so even though you have gotten a player like Simple in into the squad, who is obviously a, mag a magnificent individual performer, that doesn't necessarily elevate the, the team higher because uh, the overall net gain isn't that big. How do we how do we make of this? This is a very very curious kind of situation where Simple just seems to have dropped off, where he's not at that level that we're used to seeing him at, um, and it seems like he's done that in an effort to become a better teammate, which is like great. It's always what you want to see, but mm -hmm. has he gone too far that route? Has he has he sacrificed too much individually to try and be this kind of a better teammate to fit into this system that they want to try and make work? Does he need to be a little bit more assertive? I I don't really think so. I mean, you could you could look for maybe openings within the system, but when you look at it, you can't really expect people to win tournaments or at least to do it consistently with just individual performances or or, or a player basically carrying into that. Even New York, as as we see now in hindsight, was a one-off for for right. Navi, right? Based on individual performances more than anything else. So you need to have that structure in place. I mean, we see the you know fall of the super teams basically like Fnatic, like G2, they're struggling to even be contenders for titles, let alone like actually win a, an actual tournament. That's because we, we see a dominance of teams who have a lot of structure, who have a lot of things that they can fall back on, who don't don't have like individuals carrying them. Like Astralis, okay, FaZe probably isn't as good of an example because for them individuals do step it up when they go on to win titles, but you basically just need to have much more than just, okay, two of our star players 
players are going to have 30 frag. Sure, that will win you maybe a map, a series, probably even a tournament in the long run, but you will not be a consistent contender uh, relying on, on individuals. Well, both teams need to bring a little bit more. Give me your vote. Which one is going to do it? Which one do you think is going to bring that little extra? Is it going to be Optic? Is it going to be Navi? Put it in the YouTube chat. We'll keep track of that. You should do the I want you. I want you. Oh, to yes. vote in YouTube there chat. Go. There's going to be so many more votes now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see it. So I many see more it. votes. If, if They're just flying in. If you come into day three and you're wearing an Uncle Sam hat as well, I don't know what's going to happen. That's actually not bad. Yeah. I mean, we, are in the, we are in the States. We last actually, last we had, time we had a tournament here, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah you and I, we, we had a couple of uh, nice little props. We did have some props. <laughs> we had that giant flask. That was quite cool. Uh, God bless, put good use to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, here's the veto. We're going to have Kamal coming up. Um, oh, God, why is this <laughs> happening again? Why is this happening again? Why is Navi banning Mirage against Optic? What is no this? Why, why is this a thing? <laughs> well, remember, Mirage is a map they've had like that love-hate relationship with, where they have just looked, their defense on that map has been atrocious. And that, I mean like the worst defense we've seen on that map in a long time during different periods. Yes, and, and Optic has had a hate-despised relationship with, with Mirage, <laughs> basically. I mean, okay, jokes aside, Nuke and Cash for, for Navi are, are pretty much a standard veto these days. Yeah. But when you look at their performances on Cobble recently, and even since this team, like kind of when they switched coach as well, from, from the beginning of the roster change, basically, Cobble has not been as strong of a map, not, not anywhere close as it has been for the old roster. While Mirage, in the beginning, especially, for example, the New York tournament, it's been one of their best maps, right? So I, I really wonder what makes them go for this because Optic is definitely going to be more comfortable Cobblestone than they are on Mirage. Ben, I know you got a point to make. I got I to gotta show you some hate here. Go I'm going to take it away. I know you had something exciting. Uh, the players are getting ready. The match is about to go live. We're going to send it over to Blue and Dazed. All right, thank you very much, Moses. And yes, our last map of the day is going to be over here on Cobblestone, a battle for survival, possibly between Navi and Optic Gaming. Both teams, unfortunately, have not been bringing their best to this event, despite their best efforts. They're hanging out just below the top three currently, so still having to fight to remain in contention for playoffs. Yeah, and Optic's map pool, I mean, they used to be a great train team, used to be a great overpass team. What are they be doing here? Train and overpass. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's just really gone down quite a quite a few levels um, from from you know when they did have like a lot of success. Success. So we are going to see cobble. I think they're a decent cobble team. Um, could see a good game here, but just the vetoes, right, are just so different from when they were, you know, with the top 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 level team. Yeah. Well, now we are getting back into the swing of things here with Optic. Starting off on the CT side, we'll see how the defense fares. This is where things unfortunately fell apart pretty quickly for them in their last map versus Mouse Sports. But Navi have their own set of issues, some of which Optic may be able to take advantage upon. And we're going to start off with a nice kill from Jason R. That's going to get traded off pretty quickly, but Mixtral just getting that reload in on the nick of time. Finds the trade for it, eliminating Flamey and then following through with an additional pickup on the simple. He should be able to hear Guardian pushing him as well, but he can't win out that last 1v1 he needs. So he'll finally end up going down to him. But Guardian is split away from his last remaining teammate. His C just gets bulldozed upon by Rush, moves his way into the window flank there, taking him out and now leaves Guardian alone. Thankfully, he's got the bomb, but in a 1v3 and in a moment he's going to be flanked out. This is going to be tough. A nice headshot against Nath, opens up an opportunity for him, but as he pushes his way in, there's Tarek from the flank to finish things off and give Optic control of the pistol. Yeah, smart move by uh, Tarek and Rush there to, to retake that drop zone control away from Seize. They both just jump in there. Uh, Rush actually killed him, I believe, from E-Box. I believe that was the guy that killed them. So they, they make sure they get that kill and then they could, you know, do the 3v1 properly. Tarek moves into middle while he's coming out the long A. Good, good move by him as well. Navi, uh, despite uh, despite moving in there, uh, are not going to go for the buy again here in the second round. So probably you can expect that yeah, third round investment that again. Third round buy. Uh, every game we've watched so far on the CT side and T side. It's been a consistent thing for them, and I don't, they didn't even get the plan first round, right? So, nope. Yeah, so they're not even going to have that bonus if they don't get it here. Uh, they pretty much invested nothing, so getting that second plan is going to be a little bit tough. Jason R could be in a bit of an easier kill as he's checking downstairs here, and he's now giving himself away. So spotting the play, moving in. Still able to get at least one kill before going down and does decent damage to Guardian, who is the player that actually eliminates him. And yeah, there's rushing for the plant. They try to what deny it, but no, it does not happen. Seized, sneaks it in right in front of the shed there. They'll still get utterly shut down by Optic, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, Guardian having a bit of an awkward moment at the end there, but still, Optic are going to shut up the run, get themselves the second, but Navi get the plant, which now enables the full capability of that third round by on T side. It doesn't just do that as well, you know, they, they also get a lot of info. They know they have a Mag 7. They could use that info very well. Usually people Mag 7 drop or close broken or close long A. 
So they're going to have that information. They're going to have to watch out for that. But, you know, good nade damage maybe uh, could be a possibility here. They know they have a couple umps. And obviously they're going to have a much better buy now than they would have had. Yeah. So well, they end up funneling their players through into the B-Halls into essentially just your default setup now. Everyone's sticking together. Good nade tossed in. Guardian able to avoid some of that damage by getting out of the way, but still ends up losing about a third of his health pool in the process. And now leading the charge towards Strop, but there's going to be resistance from Optic. A mistake, though, is now it's just Nap with a shotgun, and he also falls. A huge chain reaction, which is going to kickstart this take for Navi as they attempt to move in. Jason R with a good response, though. He'll hop back in, but it's a bait as it works out. Great Edward is able to punish Jason R when he attempts to go in through the window, chasing down that kill. The trade from Tarek at the very least holds off the platform push temporarily, but he also, it's a little bit too aggressive with his play style and ends up going down to Edward. Rush is now the last man standing, surprising as he leaps out from the cubby and he even gets the second one, too. Only losing a third of his health in the process. If he can still win this one out, tries to go for the third one, but his aim is just a little bit too high, and Edward will be able to finally take him out and with a nice 3k on the round. That was just such a poor drop control strat there. I mean, if anybody's sort of dropped, they're going to push through that smoke and, and be up close and, and have a giant advantage unless you... Like, first off, the Mag 7er should have been the one getting up there. Um, not sure why they thought that was a good idea, but gets punished 3v5 right off the bat pretty much. Rush almost salvaging it, but, you know, Navi taking... Pretty early control. Yeah. And once again, winning out that third round by, which has actually worked out, I think, almost every time they've done it so far. At least that we've seen on the stream. I don't know about their other matches that have been off stream. But Naf going to be first up to bat here. He even impacts, too. Gets himself out of the molly and almost gets himself that second kill. Simple's down at 18 HP after he's able to get the trade. He'll toss the guns back just to avoid anyone else from Optic from running up past day long and to be able to retrieve that. Keeps the gun in safe territory for right now. But the rest of Navi are kind of frozen, waiting over there in the B halls for their attempt to actually make a take at this one as they sit back, running the timer down, trying to see if Optic are going to uh, play out any more aggression here. Holding out mainly towards A long, but they've also got Tarek waiting behind that box. And in the second season, I'm sure, is going to check for that on his alert here. Clearing out slowly up to the broken wall. And now Tarek in a second should be able to spot this. And there we go. It doesn't matter though. Seized on point is able to pick up the kill on a Tarek. And now that is an open bomb site for these guys to take advantage upon. The three remaining players in Optic are going to try to push on these guys that are still outside of mid. But I think for the most part, they are going to miss their Q. So won't be able to successfully take anyone down from the backside as they rush their way over towards B here. Now we're going to be able to get that plan, and now that they're set up, it's going to be pretty rough for any one of these remaining players on Optic to be able to pick anything up. They may, by the circumstance of the situation, be able to find one or two more players on the exit, but that would be it. That would be the most that they would be able to retrieve. Besides that, Navi is going to be able to make their way out of this round in a relatively clean fashion and tie this up at two to two. Already eliminating Jason R there, and that's their that's their clean route out. So I imagine most players are going to follow through upon that one. Mixwell still just waiting up on top of Frop here. He'll probably have to go in once again, looking for those additional pickups. But there's nothing really to be gained here. So he goes, thinks he can get seized, but nope. Seized once again, holds on strong. As Navi will claim that second round, and tie things up. And Navi surviving with four alive, so can help the economy a bit. Optic going to get an op onto Mixwell. Not the best nades on their part, though. Uh, Naf with decent utility, but I mean, it's still a pretty good buy. But Mixwell and Jason R, we'll see. A against uh, Mouse Sports, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mouse Sports, they, they had a pretty good A defense as well. And they were going up against these, like, initial attacks at B, and they held very well against this. And this is exactly what Navi's going to do. We've seen this strat over and over. They get one player out on the platform, and then they execute behind it. And right now, it's Edward out already onto the platform here. Tarek, along with Nav, are going to be the main people to defend this. Tarek up front and center. He has not had the best of luck so far with trying to fend off these hits, and he's even going to have a smoke in his way in a moment here, too. Right up on top of him, Edward, though, burned out. There's a great molly that gets in the way and really discombobulates the entire hit from Navi. Definitely going to slow them down by a few seconds. Buys time for the rotate. Buys time for Jason R to set up in this flight position. Tarek hasn't even been revealed yet, either. So he's in a great spot to find some impact when these smokes start to fade away a little bit. And here we go. Into the first kill. Gets the second. 
Lucky. Gonna look for the third around the corner. He'll finally fall there, but now picks up an additional kill. The trade from Edward, but it matters not, as now they're at a 2v3 disadvantage, and it's just gotten even worse. All on Edward now in the 1v3 scenario. The bomb down way out on the site. Still with 50 seconds to play out here, too. Edward, probably not a hope in the world of doing this. As you can see, he's making a run for it. Yeah, Edward was the one that was out at the platform as well at the start of the round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how he ended up watching the flank, but probably just got injured and, and kind of just bailed. But the take was just so disconnected. Um, as soon as they wanted to go out, the mollies came. They didn't have anybody assigned to sm counter smoke out the molly. And because of that, the rotates there. They're all set up waiting for the, the site hit. And you're not going to have success if that happens. Just perfect counter nades from Optic. So. Like I said before, Edward is just going to end up sneaking away from here, bailing out of the play to save the AK. Everyone else from Optic will remain on the site. Won't be able to hunt him down, unfortunately, but also only letting him get away with one AK is not going to be too big of a deal. It's only that one rifle that they'll have to deal with going into the next round. Actually, looking at the money now, I didn't notice this too much before. Navi may actually be able to try and force something up behind us. We'll see. Yeah, more than likely, it may just end up being half buys, but it is looking like they're dropping a few guns. They will decide to go for this at the end of the day. Yeah, by the time they're actually taking the site and pushing towards it, all the smokes are gone, and that's just due to just great nade usage from Optic. Simple as that. Yeah, and the split once again just into the default early on for Navi. Optic also pretty similar split to what we've been seeing so far in the half. Not a whole lot of changes in the positions that these players are going to take. Jason R up front and center at long to defend that, and have support from Mixwell right at the first uh, right at the first cross point in front of the uh, suicide step door. But for the rest of the team. They're stacking on B in their usual positions. And meanwhile, over here in the Navi side of things, once again, they're prepping up for a little bit of aggression into the mid connector, but at the moment, just noise. It's four players out here this time, though, instead of the usual 3-2 stack that they have been doing. So there is a possibility they may want to try to change the game plan a little bit and start throwing that aggression over towards A. As Days had mentioned, a few rounds back, Optic were showing great control this part of the map when they played against Mouse Sports just two games back. So this is actually going to prove to probably be a little bit of a tough cookie to crack, but Edward starts us off. He may try to push back in. Flashbang timing is perfect, though. And Jason R does get a bit greedy, goes for the second kill. That's where Simple will spot the trade and bring things back to a 4v4. I think the bomb may have been spotted, though. So we'll have to try and play off of that intel. And actually, no, with the bomb going down there, I don't think it was actually spotted out. So they should still be good on that part of intel. Yeah, but Tarek is on that, that platform. So he has a lot of information. He's going to be able to spot deep into B. That's going to allow the 2A players to be there. It's going to make things a lot more difficult for, for Navi. Yeah, and Rush should have been able to hear these guys dropping back down inside now. It doesn't matter, though. Guardian was just a walkout op kill against Rush. And that will cause Tarek to bail the heck out from his position. He'd be open right there, and he even gets hit, too, by Guardian. He's able to translate the kill, though, as Tarek moves in to take down Guardian. But just a second later, Flamey is going to move out, eliminating Tarek. And bringing this back down into a 3v2 situation. Navi with the control of the site and the rotates from Optic still very far away. Only just now have Mixwell and Naf arrived from over in mid. They don't have a great amount of angles or even utility to try and play this out with. Navi with great control, but actually wouldn't really be too surprising if both these guys just decided to bail out and evacuate or at the very worst just set up for a few exit kills. As now they've retrieved a second op, but it is looking like they're going to play the economical game here and retreat so they can have those both for the next round. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good decision by Optic to save these double ops and just live to fight another day. And that was just Navi just getting trade kills. I mean, and just as simple as that. They got every trade kill. Guardian gets the the opening kill onto Rush, really, in the 4v4 scenario after the first initial trade kill. After that, Tarek gets a kill, but then guess what? Trade it afterwards, 3vt post plant. Um, so good stuff from Navi, but nice trade killing from them. Yeah, so and we'll end up at a tie score line once again as <laughs> taking a look at the uh, the chicken wall. That always happens every round for some reason. Never understood that. Just not an important thing to fix really when you think about it, so it's not too surprising. But Naf, right up in the front and center of the push against Navi, is able to pick up the first kill. And Tarek finds himself a second one working with Rush. Now Naf moves in, picks up an additional kill with the op, and Rush also shuts down a second kill personally for himself. Simple is going to try to turn this around in the 1v5, but the entire hit just got completely decimated. So we'll have to see what exactly Simple can do, and it's not going to be much. He's completely overwhelmed with utility, and off of that optic will be able to return the favor and take back their lead. Yeah, so far, Navi's, you know, aggressive B strats where they go off 
ju just right away or just getting shut down. We saw Edward going out to the platform, the execute behind it, gets completely shut down. Now we see it again, just a, a full B-Rush there, really. And Nath just pops up on the platform, gets the early entry, goes back to maybe it was pizza or something like that, gets another one, forces Navi to a save. So Navi are going to move forward over here to the mid-choke point. And Mixalt, with a smart decision here, he just does decide to back up, as he would have very easily gotten overwhelmed if he was here for this actual push. Now on the outside, he can have a lot more impact. Already two kills to his name, and the nade moving in. They're gonna be able to dodge most of that damage, but Guardian finally trading that kill. Doesn't matter, however, as at the end of the day, it is brought down to just Guardian alone in a 1v4 scenario with only a P250 to play off of. In a moment, as soon as he peeks here, unless he can have some clutch shots against Jason Hart. They find himself dead on the ground, and Optic finally getting themselves a bit of a secure lead, going up 5-3. to three. Yeah, smart by Maxwell there. Senses that there's no nades going out, realizes it's an, an anti-eco round, just smartly gets out of there, gets those two kills. Sees exactly what the strat is, and from there, Jason R. Rush get, a, get one apiece. Now Guardian just going to try to, you know, maybe see if anybody gets aggressive, kind of chill out. Probably talking about what they, they want to do next round, to be honest. Just I have a feeling it probably won't be towards B. <laughs> At least early on in the round. Probably not. I mean... You would think. Yeah. You would think. Even A, though, they've been having their struggles. Just with the very least getting like one for one over A long. Okay. Yeah, but one for one's good. That's fine. Trade kill. You get a 2v2 post plant, you trade kill three frags, probably going to win the round. Mixel again, like we're saying, with a smart decision to back out, he was able to capitalize and get this pretty big impact from over here, and even the nade doing a decent amount of damage too. But getting back into the swing of things here now, as full investments do start to roll in for Navi once more, they will have to make some sacrifices to get that buy. As you can see, two Galils, very, very limited utility. They basically just have smokes and flashbangs. There's not going to be any HE, there's not going to be any mollies. Try and clear out parts of this site problematic for them if Optic decide to play a more passive style of gameplay, but they've been pretty front and center with their defense for the most part, so that shouldn't be too big of an issue for Navi, as they're just playing into a default again here on the ninth round. They're just kind of spreading out. Again, nobody wanting to take any risks within the first 20, 30 seconds or so. They are just kind of posting back and delaying Try to move in at a better timing here. And the boost up for Mixel is actually pretty nice. They can just spot over the top of that smoke. However, again, with everything being quiet, they do need to make sure, since they're the only two here, that they're also checking out on what's going on back over towards the ramp. And in keeping to that tradition, Jason R is going to end up getting boosted on top. Or he'll camp out and just want have his teammate to watch out for the aim along pressure. From over in the alleyway, too, which is going to give Navi a little bit more clearance to go for this push. Seeming like at this point, though, with them down at 40 seconds and the player positioning not really changing up too much, they're probably going to end up going for some sort of a drop split or possibly even just a full-on fake to B. The actual execution rolling into A. We'll find this out in a second. As now, utility starting to be used over on the A-bomb site. And Simple wrapping back downstairs to work his way through ramp. This is Jason R's territory, however. And as they attempt to move out for that fake on B, it's instantly countered. Good trade from Guardian on the Jason R. And Seized also trades the kill on a Tarek, but the ruse is up, so it's no longer palpable for him to be able to go back into that site and continue to fake it. Guardian tries to go for an aggressive peek against Mixwell, but that's not going to work out. He's able to hold, and now with just five seconds remaining, there's nothing that Seize can really do. Just picks up the better gun, and is going to hunker down in suicide to save. Yeah, and I mean... Even though Tarek only got one kill, he's kind of like the MVP of that round. He's just getting away with murder over at B plat. They come early B, he's, he's destroying them. They don't go early B, he's taking B plat control, he's playing it by himself. That allowed a third A player to rotate over. It allows more, you know, drop presence if that other B player doesn't, you know, he doesn't really need to support Tarek. He's spotting all the way to the end. And Navi was zero B, you know, control at all. You know, Tarek's just taking control of it every single round. And if you're going to allow them to just have deep info with B like that, it's, it's usually not going to work out for you very well. That's some of the problems that happens, right? You you go B, you get owned, right? Like twice in a row, basically. Those B players get confident. They start taking more ground, thinking that you're not going to come B. And all of a sudden, you're able to, to shade players over to the other site. Look, and it's happening again. I know this round's more of an anti-eco, but... This is becoming problematic for Navi. Yeah, 
Yes, they will move in, getting a few players towards drop to find control there. They even use the nade to try and obscure their jump out the window. Doesn't really pay off, though. Seize goes for the long dive into the site, and Mixel, after picking up that kill, even has time to go back outside, punishes Guardian, attempting to go up the ramp. Just down to Edward and Simple now, both detached, really with no hope in the world of pushing in. Edward's just going to go for a slow creep up this ramp to see if he can find anyone not paying attention and punish them. But ultimately, this round is once again in Optic's favor. And it's very unlikely that we'll actually see translation go the other way. Jason R already eliminating Edward. Just one remains, and Tarek's already engaged him. It's simple, and he instantly pops that headshot. Yeah, so so this is the round that Navi should know. They should be like, all right, this guy is just hes taking B-plat control every single round. We need an answer for this. Guardian's going to op up. Last time he opted up, though, he went towards A. And he was actually spamming like the door a little bit. And I think that, you know, kind of let Tark know that, hey, I could, you know, just stay around here most likely for a pretty long time. Since the offer is towards A for Rifle Peaks Me, you know, I'm fine taking a couple shots, probably staying alive. Yeah, and Avi's called for the uh, their first tactical pause here as they've fallen behind quite a bit, seven to three, and have pretty much flatlined in their ability to make any of these takes successful. It's been all optic for the past three to four rounds now. It's going to be a relatively quick pause, as we're used to, though, here on land. So already back into the action, and we'll be jumping into it once again with Navi going for another buy. Uh, a little bit better this time. They still have the Galil sitting on Seas, but there's a little bit more utility in play as well. Three Maldis to utilize, still full smokes for the team. But Optic also back up to that double op setup, so that's another thing that Navi are going to have to worry about as soon as they realize that, I imagine, in a few seconds here. They're moving straight forward to try and get out towards platform early on, or at the very least trying to counter out aggression. The nade going deep from Tarek. Doesn't really connect for all that much damage. But meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Mixwell already has picked up the first kill against Edward. Once again, securing Optic at 5v4. More damage done to Flamey, too. I think a nade tossed up over here. Sit him pretty hard. And the Molly, well, that's going to force him back. Knocks off another, like, 20 HP. So he's pretty fragile now as a result of that. They're really focusing on trying to be able to eliminate Tarek. A simple they like, pretty much knows that he's sitting in that cubby. But Flamey hit it by another Molly. Flamey, I think all the damage done to him has been just through utility so far. As he's been hit by three different grenades. So he's down pretty low as a result of that. And Guardian's a little bit angry, so he's going to move in. Catches the trade kill. He does get wasted in the process, but at the very least, a trade's a trade. It brings things back down to a 4v4. As they attempt to move in, Simple just barely saves his life in the duel versus Tarek. Takes him up from that cubby spot. But Rush trading one more and drop. They overcommit to drop, though. They put too many players inside. They do still have time, however, to get themselves back out into the open to defend the actual platform push. But they need to get here soon as Navi is pushing back in, still with 36 seconds to play with. Great utility usage of the flashbang once again hinders the Navi push. And Mix was able to utilize that to pick up another kill. He almost had himself a second one, but he did unscope the wrong timing. Thankfully, he can correct that pretty quickly and move back in to pick up the last two as well. Beautiful stuff from Mixwell. He's on a roll, just dominating against Navi right now. Yeah, 13 and 4 early picks. Uh, playing very, very well. We'll get him on the rotate. Nice shot onto Seized. That's next one. These next two are probably the nicest ones here. Catches Guardian. A quick flick onto Simple to close things out. 8 to 3. The pause. So far having no effect for Navi, and they'll be back down onto another half by the 12th round of the half. Navi. Yeah, I mean, they, they got early picks coming from Mixwell. Naf had that early pick as well on that B site. Tarek taking plat control. Uh, not much is going for going for, going right for Navi here. It's, it's multiple problems and issues right now, and Optic playing very, very well. Tarek once again sitting up behind this box and waiting for the push to come from his direction. Originally he was going to get all of it, but Rush just saw the play now. Them going outside a window to try and change up their dynamic a little bit here. That's all going to leave the defense on a Jason R though, and he's been pinched on. This is going to be rough. He's got to be very patient and try to keep his anonymity for as long as he can. I'm in this corner position, the rest of the team trying to rotate back in, but they're going to face their own string of troubles. For whatever reason, Mixwell is the first to go through the door with a deagle, and he gets pummeled on by Edward here. Jason R has moved in, though. He strikes first, taking down Simple from within this site, and now he's been able to group up with Jason R, so they have a two-man flank team working from the backside. And also, you should note as well, that there's still the two players in the site connector, so that Navi actually only has two players currently out on this bomb site. But that's going to change a uh, moment from now here, as they're putting Seized on Heaven. And that'll make the retake even harder to accomplish. Naf is essentially a non-factor here currently, still way over at B. All the pressure is going to be on Tarek and Jason R to pull off this retake, and they've already lost Tarek. 
So when Jason R attempts to go in, he also falls relatively quickly. The setup from Navi and the, the quick switch that they did works out so perfectly, and they're finally able to get another round because of that. I mean, I mean Navi, Navi needed this. Like, this gets them back into the game. It was looking pretty bad for them. Optic, unfortunately, not able to hold uh, the drop control. I believe that was Rush in there. Just yeah. happens sometimes. You start spraying, uh, you're like behind the player, and the player keeps moving, and you don't move your mouse fast enough, essentially, just to catch up with them. You just keep like your natural muscle memory movement, you know, where you're just going at the speed of the player model. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, they just run right past the screen, essentially. So with Optic still having confidence, let me try and close in on a few more rounds here and they'll have themselves. I mean, this is already a pretty successful half for CT side, but if they can pick up one or two more, that's going to basically seal the deal. Nice shot for Mixwell early on as he once again finds that aggressive pick. And once again, it's been Edward that gets knocked out by it too. I think that's like the second or third time that's happened to him in this half. Yeah, over and over again, Mixwell just making the pass. Guardian looking for the trade over at Long. This is the shot, though. Just trying to think. Oh, nicely done. Hits that one, despite the fact that he gets flashed. The perfect timing against Jason R. And he's able to translate, bringing things down to a 4v4. That's going to propel the rest of the team to actually fall back a little bit. They're working their way into the B halls this time, weighing their options over there. But Optic did rotate upon this. They've got three players over in this A site now. Only Tarek sitting in B to hold. And he doesn't have that usual aggressive spot by the box that he's normally been playing from. So uh, he also doesn't have great intel about where exactly Navi are taking this either. That's going to change in a moment, though, as Navi are not trying to hide their intentions. Smokes and everything are being deployed into the B-bomb site as they get prepped for an execute. It's a good thing Tarek did not stay up there, either in the cubby or behind the boxes. He'd be getting burned out right now and might just be another player dead on the ground. Now's his chance to shine. Simple is trying to spot him, and he succeeded in it. So now the pressure's on for Tarek as they're all going to be hunting him down on this push here. Guardian trying to move forward, tags him through the box down at 10 HP, and then uses Flamey to get the job done. Simple carries through with a second kill. Now the only one to save things so far, but he's doing work. Brings this down to the 2v1 with Guardian finding that kill, though. It's now into a 1 versus 1. Nap needs to 4K this to save it. Guardian able to dodge him for right now as he rushes past. But Guardian's running low on time. Only 15 seconds remaining, and he makes the smart decision, gets himself in a drop, and is going to hightail it over to A, where he should have it. Actually, no, he doesn't have enough time. He's got to go back into B, chase down this kill. Naf has spotted him, but Guardian only needs one shot here. Naf's just trying to hide, delay this for as long as possible, but no! Guardian gets it done with two seconds left and wins out the round for Navi. Wow, what a clutch by Guardian. Oh, man. That was so sick by Simple, by the way. I don't call like ever seen that before. He just sits there and sh jumps and the jumps. Spot yeah. yeah, that was so smart. Yeah. I mean, it, it has its wrist, right? Because it delays the take a lot. Yeah. But after he spotted Tarek, I mean... They played it perfectly to eliminate him. Yeah, that was, that was sick. So that's actually going to break Optic going into this 14th round too. So all of a sudden, Navi have their way back into the match. This should be a relatively simple round with the investment that Optic has, although with uh, the Deagles in play on Mixwell and the shotgun from Rush, that could be a few issues for them, especially if they don't account for it. But we'll wait and see with Navi kind of playing it nice and slow again, running down that timer, stacking up the exit to those B halls. Just waiting to see if they'll get any aggression from the Optic side first before they go for a commitment and having Edward toss in a few smokes to keep that second player over at A and not allowing him to rotate in the other direction. Eric is also probably going to end up being the first man at bat here for the CT side. Flash going right into his face. Gets time to look back and actually picks up the kill. Only at 4 HP though, so he needs to evacuate. And he will keep it himself alive. This Molly's actually really good too. It's, yeah, Rush is not going to be a, nearly as effective at that range. And Guardian is able to translate the second kill. The Tarek after he burns out his opponent. Flamey knocking out Jason R. Nice and clean, really, from Navi here. This is great stuff from him. Mixwell attempts to impact, but it just gets destroyed by Simple. And then Flamey finds that last kill over in the B halls. Yeah, and Navi winning those, not that round, but the two rounds before that. You know, one, one with the Tech Nines, where they go drop to A, uncontested. Well, actually, not uncontested, but killing Rush and then going uncontested towards A. And then, you know, the Guardian 1v1, right, kind of brought them back into this game. Now Optic 8-6, to six, they have no AWP or anything, which has been a huge benefit to them. I mean, Mixwell's been making it 4v5 constantly. Now they're just stuck on rifles. Navi going to end up splitting up their player count again, and Optic trying to get a little bit more aggressive for this final round, specifically over towards A. Again, Mixwell is the player trying to force himself into that mid-connector, but he can't really stay there for very long. 
due to the nades and whatnot that are being tossed in from Navi. He has pushed back outside. Still wants to play into this angle, though, and he's got to be careful. He saw that simple just barely missing him as the bullets go slightly to Mixwell's right. But in a moment, they are going to move back in. He does try to pop flash this. There was another flash, actually, that hit them in a much worse fashion. And now he's going to try to pop it off again, and it works out great. Has the angle in the Guardian, just barely gets the kill. Could have capitalized on a little bit more if that spray was cleaner, but it doesn't matter. They found the impact. Nap gets another kill into a play moving in from Drop. Mixwell is going to be able to strike once again, and that's two more to his kill counter. As now it's down to Edward, and he will get very far at all. Optic shut it down and secure themselves. A ninth round to close out the half. They have the advantage, but now they need to close it out on CT side. So Stick with us, ladies and gentlemen, to see if Optic can do it. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Intel, Lenovo Legion, Xfinity, ESEA, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, Logitech G, and Zowie. Navi are able to push through on CT side, and now they hold a decent advantage, nine to six in their favor against Navi. Jumping over to the T side, they need to make sure that they can solidify things quickly, as Navi as well could swing back on the comeback. It'll take the lead from them and possibly the map, and maybe even a playoff spot. But we are jumping into it immediately, so let's take a look and see what Optic have to offer us on their T side days. What are we going to be looking at here for the second half? Well, Optic had a really good CT half. I mean, they, they've lost a couple rounds that they really should have won as well. Yeah. Um, that 1v1 at the end, Guardian versus Naf. You know, Naf, if he stays chicken coop, wins that, right? Instead kind of went out into the open. Uh, they lost that Tech 9 round, so that could have been like an 11, 12 round half easily. But unfortunately, they end up being a little bit closer, and this is a very divisive scoreline. Navi win this pistol and don't get Eco's second round. They're right back into the match at 9-9, nine nine. but if Optic win it and clean up, they doubled the scoreline of Navi. It's going to be rough and then make a comeback on. They also find the first entry here on their T side, so that's good for them. Terra continues that conquest as well inside of that little inside of the shed to try and chase down those kills and does some decent damage to Seize. Now he's got Flamey. Perfect timing on the push. Goes for a third pickup, but finally he's going to meet his match against Guardian. He's delayed them so much, though, and he knows that there's at least one to two more players hiding in that hallway, so Optic can use that intel to great depth. It's in a 4v3. They've got the ultimate advantage. Guarding with another nice pickup against Jason Ardo. Has opened up a way for them to get back into this round. Nobody's paying attention to that broken wall, so Edward sneaks in, but he doesn't get anything done. And Mixwell cleans up on the last two kills to secure the pistol for Optic. Yeah, the, the a site defense gets breached, and Tarek is in the, you know, what we call it? Just the rattle, <laughs> usually. Yeah. Um, it's just really T-sided shots. Probably overpeaked a little bit on Guardian, but hey, they took the site, got the bomb down, and it's, it's a very difficult retake. Naf at the bottom of the middle as well, just kind of waiting for his opportunity to strike. Also watching the flank. Now we just see a drop in B-Rush right away. Naf trying to swing into it here too. Checking that corner, he's spotted C's, so down C's will go. There's basically zero investment from Navi as they're probably gonna do that third round buy again. So this is a pretty quick cleanup coming in from Optic. Already down to just simple, trying to do some work, but can't finish off that second kill. They do eliminate Naf, but he got a double kill on the MAC-10 as well, so he probably earned enough cash to be able to rebuy. Yeah, he'll be perfectly fine. And now, we'll come that third round investment again from Navi. Yeah, well, we're gonna see three Famases, four Famases. Flamey, five Famas. <laughs> they love the Famas, man. Yeah. 
Not once for the umpire, it seems. After that got changed a few weeks back. But now Navi are gonna proceed straight forward into a four-man stack on B. And even if the fifth guy, like, on just a second's rotate notice, too. Simple's gonna be sticking over by the door. He's kinda shifting around right now, but you know, relatively close to the door, which means he can be there in five seconds or less if needed. And I'll think are trying to brute force their way in here. This thing though is they should know though, they should they didn't really didn't even have to do their homework for this one. As Navi made it very obvious that they're continuing to do these third round buys, regardless of the side that they're playing on. So in they go, and it's evenly traded for right now. Rush takes additional advantage, but Flamey trades it right back. He's gonna look for another pickup, but he loses to Mixwell, leaving just simple alive in this engagement for the 1v2. Trying to creep out, but doesn't even realize that Rush is right in his face. And he'll end the round in Optic's favor as they push forward and double out the scoreline of Navi. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't know, I mean, just worked for him, right? Up until this point, you know, third round by. I mean, he even worked on T-side because they were I able to get they, that bomb down. I just, they lost it one other time that we saw. But. Yeah, I'm just, I mean, I'm not a, that much of a fan of like the FAMAS and like five FAMASs there at least. I, I just think it's a lot better if you have, you know, maybe three FAMASs, a Mag-7 and Ump, you just get more utility and whatnot and you can have a couple players playing up close more. So another attempt at a quick cleanup coming back in from Optic, although they did bite into the full five-man stack, so there could be some problems there, as they've actually got the 2-1 trade advantage. They'll slow things down a little bit now with Mixwell picking up the additional kill on Simple. They've evened it up, but hold on now, Guardian finding another frag on Jason R. This could be upset territory here, and this could be where Navi finds a path back into the match. Mixwell also down at 1 HP and Rush at 15. They've got to be very, very oh. careful now. And that's not the way to play. Rush out in the open, flashed out, eliminated by Edward, leaving Mixwell alone to clutch this at 1 HP and a 1 on 3. He smokes himself off so that Seas can't just walk right up and take him down. Definitely suspecting that he's on the steps right now. They just can't confirm that. They don't want to give him away if he's close to any of these players. Mixwell in the meantime trying to slow this down. Nicely found on the headshot there on Edward. Two more to go now, but now they know where he is too. Tries to flick on the Guardian. He spotted him for sure. Just needs to be able to push back in and finish things off. As now he's going to start to take a few more risks. Looking for Seize. He's got his head. I don't know if Seize saw him though. He's still ducking down. And no, looking the other way. Mixwell's now got the second one. Tries to bait Guardian into peeking. Hasn't gotten it yet. But oh, he spots him a second ago. Goes for this very risky play too of hopping back up. Guardian's going to hear that from a mile away. But how's he going to try to chase this one down? As Mixwell should have time to be able to go all the way over towards A and plant. He definitely will. Yeah. Guardian only really just now realizing that he's not coming back to the site. So that is going to give Mixwell the additional time to set up over an A and actually attempt to clutch this one out. Still, though, at 1 HP, Guardian just needs one bullet to close out upon this one. He's got the AK to play with now, but Mixwell so close brings Guardian down to 32 HP. But in an open 1v1 battle, Guardian will indeed win that out as he only needed the one bullet to find the final kill on Mixwell. I mean, just basically a full save coming out there from Navi. Mixwell with like 20 HP almost ends up winning that 3v1. Plays it really, really nicely. But, I mean, their anti-eco for three rounds in a row, essentially, was just rush me and drop. Yep. So Navi read right into that, full full, full five-man stacked it, and it worked out for them as uh, Optic got a little bit overconfident with their ability to win that one. Guardian at 20 frags, by the way. Yeah. Like <laughs> Nobody else even in double digits. <laughs> this is uh, some vintage Guardian right here. Yeah, Mixwell 24 and 8 though, so... To start off this round, we're probably going to end up seeing Optic try to move in for some A-long control early on. Right now they just have Mixwell on a solo lurk towards B, but he's very quickly going to back up from that one, I think, group up with the rest of his teammates. Navi, again, you have to mention here too that they're back onto the full by the result of winning out that last round. They've got everything they need not even really using a whole lot of their mollies or smokes early on in the round, so they still have a lot to try and resist Optic here when they eventually go for this push, which is probably going to be over towards A at this point. They've got Mixwell set up for the pinch and drop, but they've got also players positioned to counter that. Mixwell's hoping someone will go in to drop the check for him. He also has to watch his flank. Seize is waiting right outside of the window. Don't think he's actually going to get anyone to move inside, as Nobby have a pretty accurate read on this situation. They're even going to rotate over an additional player now, swinging Edward. Towards the A site to add a third man to the defense here. 
And in the second, and that's where they'll make a slight mistake, having seized also move over. So now Mixwell can move in and actually have decent effectiveness. Nice spot by Naf, though. Just gets that, takes a few attempts, but he does get the headshot on Simple. And he falls through the second one, too. Flamey oh. is keeping it alive for his team right now. As he's up on three kills. Mixwell gonna leap out. Bit of an awkward exchange with his opponent. Here's the thing, though. Seize is rushing up, and he's gonna get an easy kill on Jason R. So now he can just hop onto the bomb. Mixwell has to race over here. He goes on the way to first and jumps off it. That's bought the extra second here now for Mixwell. He's gonna try to take him down, and he succeeds. So Optic follows through and resets Navi. <laughs> so if he just got the kid, I, do you think he wins that? Uh, maybe. Hard to tell. Yeah, I think he does. No, he definitely does, right? Because he started defusing, he got the kit, and then he came back onto the bomb. Mm -hmm. That had to it had to have taken two seconds, and there's two seconds left. Had to have. So a slight misstep cost them the round. The round, which could have very well put them right back into this match too, as that would have for sure broken optic and put them onto a pretty uh, pretty low buy, which Navi could have taken advantage on. And within a few rounds, where it's something like 10 to 12, where Navi's right back into the match, but now optic are back into having control. Yeah, I mean, Navi shaded the uh, extra player there, too, as well. They, they basically had three players a day. Mm -hmm. Naf just, I, I couldn't even see that player back site, could you? No. Yeah, I couldn't even see his head. He just... This, it was simple. He took down behind the behind the shed there. Yeah. So he was able to spot that, and he, he even had the uh, the first bullet accuracy fall off happen there, too, because it took him, like, two or three shots to actually hit it. So that was a crazy spot for being at that long range. Nice flash from Navi. Not going to affect too much, though. Just delays them for the extra couple of seconds here. Yeah, it's going to let Guardian try to creep up a little bit closer to the broken wall. Mixwell still patiently waiting, and Optic obviously still have plenty of time to play this off. 50 seconds remaining. Guardian going to go for the peak. Does confirm the presence of Mixwell and possibly one other player, but as he moves in, he's out in the open, so goodbye to, goodbye to Guardian. Possibly goodbye to this player boosted up, too. Everyone just destroys that tree. And Simple just barely escapes, but he's not going to stay alive for too much longer. Naf has already pushed all the way up the sidewalk. He's holding in that little cubby there. Seized with one trade. That matters very little in the grand scheme of things here. It's down to Edward and Flamey to try and maximize the damage. And Flamey on that flank actually has managed to pick up a UMP. But still, the amount of effectiveness he can actually have here is going to be minimal, especially now that he's been spotted. So we should expect Optic to follow through, claim their 14th round. But just one or two more gun rounds push themselves into a victory here. Yeah, and it just seems like Navi hasn't had much of a chance just because of the economy on the CT side. I mean, they third round bought. They won the round that they pretty much full saved, but then lost the one gun round that they've had so far this half. And it's just been a lot of, you know, gimmicky type buy things or force bots. And they haven't really had a chance to play with like full utility or anything like that. So they're going to take a pause, take a time out. You know, they have to think if they want to go for overtime or not. If they full save here, they'll end with about 2,400, or sorry, 4,300, 4,400, or they could get, you know, full buy, or excuse me, not a full buy, but a little ump or pistol armor buy here. That's such a long run, though, at this kind of scoreline, having to do eight rounds straight. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like they're going to sway towards the buy. But even the, the buy is going to be pretty pitiful. Everyone's right at 2K right now. So the best they're going to have is Flamey with the uh, the ump, and they can maybe toss an extra gun over to add some utility to another guy. Quick pause taken by Navi, though, as they are going back into the round, and we'll see in a second how they're going to play this. few small investments. It looks like they're actually trying to save a little bit here. They're not going to full save, as you can see. They're going to nade stack somewhere with the triple nade buy. And it looks like that's going to be over towards B, so probably just trying to get a good timing on the... Uh, on the B play, and actually the full second again. This is where they this is where they upset before. So can this actually happen twice? Or has Optic learned from their mistakes previously? And it is looking like Optic taking nice and slow here, as they know there could be some uh, some craziness going on with Navi attempting to do something just to keep them in the game. So they'll play this back, and they'll be no strangers to wanting to wait down this timer a little bit before they go for the commitment. Jason R spotting the first attempt to try and push back up and get aggressive here. And that's a nice nade toss, actually goes way back. And 
hits pretty well on Jason R. Unfortunately, he's still alive. He's still well. And with the Dink of Edward, it's going to give him the fuel to push forward to try and eliminate some more. He's managed to take down Simple. Flamey does trade one back off of the UMP, but he's got a lot more work to do here. Finds the second kill on Tarek, however. We're even now into a 3v3, and Flamey still has that ultra-aggressive position up by the broken wall. The problem is, is there's only one more player trying to push out through broken. All the rest of them are going to come out drop. And that's where he doesn't have a great defense system set up for himself. He's got Edward to watch out and basically inform him from drop or from the rock, excuse me. Uh, but at 19 HP, he's going to be very easy to take back out. And yeah, Flamey doesn't even last too much longer after that. Naf and Mixwell both picking up those extra kills and was seized rotating in off of a measly P250. He's going to make his best attempt to clutch this one out. Obviously, the odds are not looking great. And he will just go down to Naf, putting Optic up to 15. Mixwell is just playing out of his mind. 30 and 8. Only 20 rounds into, we're not even that running that late into the half. 30 and 8. So Mixwell's been having himself quite the game. Following close behind him has been Naf, who always seems to uh, always seems to really show up actually in these like bigger matches, especially for whatever reasons I've I've noticed specifically when Optic this is like when they were doing like really well, but uh, specifically against Astralis, he's like he's really good against a lot of the big European teams. And that's, that's showing well here against Navi. But Optic push themselves in through mid. Flamey just getting a nice double off the start though, so that's not looking good for Optic. The bomb's also down on the ground. And with Tarek responding, actually a nice shot through the smoke there. It does take Flamey back out of the play. He looks for a second one as he's boosted up on top of Nap. Can't find that kill though, and he needs to make sure he stays alive. They can't have any more necessary losses. Jason R with the smoke fading. Oh, the timing on it worked out a little bit better. He may have been able to find C's, but he's now safely tucked away inside of the alley. There's so much defense set up over here on this A site. They do not want to go for this push anymore, but C's nonetheless will find Jason R when he attempts to lurk back out. This is now down to a 2v4. I think they have all the time in the world to play this. It's just their hard headed is to continue going for A is going to be their ultimate doom in this round, it seems. It's We'll still try to push into it. Nice shot from Naf again, knocking out Seized here, but heavy cost. He's now down at 10 HP after getting hit in response to it. And Tarek, still in a long as well, really just hoping someone pushes into him that he could punish with the op. But Navi are freezing, focusing on just staying alive and preventing Optic from getting control of A. This is actually smart. If they save this op, don't let Navi get it. Um, that's a, a smart play by them. Just don't die, Tarek. What are you doing, man? Just don't give him the op. And flash and Molly combo to get himself in, but he is going to go for this now and attempt to make this play. His teammate, though, is oh, way over in he's B. Over at B. Yeah, so they're going to try to fake this with one man alive. And Tarek no. making massive impact. Moving in. He does get flanked out by Simple, but Edward, so smart. He's already read into this. He's going to move in. Doesn't even let them get the plant as he denies it. Takes out Naf, and there we go. Navi still close out on the round. The fake doesn't even work. That almost worked, though. <laughs> that, that, that could have been, if he if he somehow knew that that guy on ramp was there, that could have been, been crazy. But. Yeah. The real issue would have been, I think Edward was going to the other site regardless, even if Tarek got that other kill. So Tarek would have had to just race over to the site and try to kill him before he defused again. So heading into the next round here, Optics still have the cash flow to buy in. No longer are they going to have an opt to play with. However, they actually definitely could have gone for it. So this is a choice they've made. And they still have a few players floating around like a little, a little over a little under 2K, right around that mark. Tarek, somehow that Molly wasn't hitting him. It not look like it from the corner of my eye. But he smokes it out anyway to stay safe and to not take any more of that unnecessary damage. Still, so Navi super aggressive with her mollies and smokes. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, Guardian's gonna, gonna take this B plat control, and I don't think they can stop. Whoa. Never mind, Blue. <laughs> Just a nice one tap through the smoke. Well, not really one tap, but spam through the smoke takes out Guardian. So goodbye to Guardian, as we will start to see Optic push in off of that kill. Edward's so blind, but nobody's paying attention to the steps. Thankfully, Edward doesn't get any kills, and now Seized is low as well here. Jason R and Tarek finding those entry kills, almost securing the match here now. It's up to Flamey as he's alone. Surprised up from Chicken Coop. That's the one free kill. The rest he's got to work for, and he can only get one additional pickup. Tarek will close it out, and Optic Gaming are going to take this match on Cobblestone against Navi with a final score of 16 to 8. They push through and gain themselves one more win here in the group. Yeah, I mean, Mixwell, honestly, you know, usually don't just say one player, like, won the game, but he was, he just played out of his mind. I mean, he opt, he rifled, he clutched, he, <laughs> he, he entried, he lurked, he closed out rounds post-plant, like, he did everything. Uh, he was just on fire. 
All right, so with that said, we're going to send it back over to the analysts to break down this match. Yes, thanks, Blue. Welcome back to the Xfinity Analyst Desk. Big win for Optic. No one really, I mean, maybe see it coming, but that that's kind of a scoreline. 68, that's a huge win for Optic. Navi is going to be kicking themselves if they don't make it through this group uh, based on the fact that, that that win is so, I mean, that loss is just so painful. Yeah, and the fact that they let through Cobble. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> gonna be, that's been a recurring theme. Is just like, why are they letting go? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Why is this still happening? Why? They're like the why? only. They're the only five or six people who th who think that they're. Do they're they have to lose to what energy in this group on, on Cobble? Was that what what needed to happen for them to kind of you know not play the map? <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is they had a good alternative in Mirage. I really don't know what that was all about. Well, I, I mean, uh, let's get you know. Vendetta, your thoughts on this kind of a situation. Mixwell had an incredible game. Yeah, and I, I, again, I think what uh, Sam said, you know, uh, as a, his closing thoughts, just kind of it kind of rings true. It's not often you can say one player won the game for them, but it kind of felt like that was the case. Mixwell just had an outstanding game. He was yeah. hitting ridiculous shots uh, from you know every vantage point of the map, pretty much hitting people flying left and right. Uh, and obviously, that's gonna he did so in you know the most opportune times of the game as well to you know break Navi's economy solidify optics economy in the same uh, scenario as well so uh just an overall amazing game from uh, from the Spaniard. Yeah, and, and here's here's the cool thing as well. With that win, Optics actually helped Liquid out because if Liquid is able to beat North, it's very close match down to the wire. If yeah. Liquid wins this over North, then they are going to make it through the playoffs in the third seed. So we're actually going to send it back to the boys in the studio. Take it away. All right, thank you very much. And yes, we are preparing on a dive right back into this next match here. Liquid ticking on North. It's very much in progress, so we don't know much about how it's actually going. We're going to have to basically figure this out with you guys as we do dive into it. And well, there we go. Liquid about to close out and get themselves up to round number 15. Cajun B, the last man standing, attempting a clutch, but it's not going to happen. So Liquid win it out, and they're going to push forward up to 15 rounds. Just one remains, but they are going to have to go up against the full buy from North. I mean, Blue, you want me to start talking here, but I got I got nothing to yeah, go I mean, off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Liquid are looking pretty good themselves here. Still at the bottom end of their economy for a few players, but it's still going to be enough to buy through even if North wins out this round. But they're up against the wall. A perfect group for North would be the case if they were able to close in on this match. But where has this Liquid come from is the real question. This is not the same one we were seeing before, and this is not the same North who seem to be crushing everyone in their respective group. We take a look here now at what the last round strat, potential last round strat is going to be for North. Probably just going to be pushing most of their players in through A long again. They do have a few guys set up right outside of drop and B, so there's potential for either another fake or just a usual drop split to happen over there too. Team Liquid getting very aggressive, but there is a slight overcommitment to this B bomb site at the moment that they're going to have to read into, putting a lot of pressure on Stanislaw, working on the secondary out there. He's been showing up with a really good individual performance for most of these group stages, though, so you don't want to underestimate his ability to actually hold this off, should he be the lone man to defend this. Well, they don't need to have him by himself if JDM's opting B plat. Like we saw all the time, right? You have that opera on B plat, you could shade over, put two towards A, and have a third guy, like, ready to go. That's what they're doing now, now that uh, JDM, well, he did have control, but he's leaving it to a leash. Stan spotting it here now, just waiting for them to go. He's focusing fully on the alleyway play. He has a team support coming in from both Nitro and Twist as well. Nice shot from Stan. Nitro with the second. As he moves in, it's 3-2 to two on the trades. North only just now finding a couple translated kills for them. A third will roll in from AZ, but now he's alone. And we'll have to pull off a 4K to clutch this one out. Secured himself the real estate to be able to go for the plan, at least, as Elise is taking a few extra seconds to complete his wrap over towards A long. And AZ with a pretty good position to play this off of as well. Just needs to be able to line up those last two headshots. There's the opportunity for one, but he ducks. And that gives away his post-plant spot now. He's got to get a little bit more creative with it out to the open. Brought down low, but still picks up the kill against the liege. And now he's just trying to waste time here. The nade out, trying to distract JDM so he can mask his movement a little bit. And as he pushed forward, he's got it lined up, but he bails away from it. And JDM's going to get the kill off of that. So he'll move in, grab the defuse. And with that, Team Liquid are going to win out versus North. 16 to 10 here on Cobblestone. Once again, yeah, not a whole lot to have there, Taste. Unfortunately, we saw like two rounds of action. But yes, once no, again. I, I got it, I got it. You got it? It was just great execution on the part of Liquid. Really great team play there. Not about the individual performances, but, but you know, it's, it's about the team. That's, that's what matters at the end of the day. It's the, it's the team play. And with that, Liquid have been able to win it out against North, crush their potential perfect group. So let's send it back over to the analyst to finish up the discussion on Group B.
quick return back to the Xfinity analyst desk. And yes, that's Group B, Liquid with that win. They get helped out by Optic, kind of them, the North American brethren getting that win over Gotta Navi. together. Yeah, allows, allows <laughs> Liquid to secure a spot in the playoffs. Takes two North American teams to get one through to the, to the playoffs. That's quite cool. Yeah. I mean, it's better than none, right? Yeah, it's better than zero. <laughs> Easiest prediction of my life. <laughs> yeah. You did call, but you didn't seem too confident. Confident now. How confident am I supposed to be? I told you <laughs> Liquid was going to make it out of the groups. Either way, um, that's going to be North in the first seat out of Group B. That's going to be Mouse Sports in the second seat out of Group B. That's going to be Liquid taking that third seat, as we said. And it's going to be Navi sent home. Yeah. I did not. I, I kind of had hopes for Navi. Uh, I don't know why. Don't we all? I feel like. Yeah, we all. I, kind I of don't know why. There's no reasoning behind having <laughs> no. actually having it's hope like, for please. them anymore. I, I think it's very similar to the likes of G2 and Fnatic, right? You yeah. see so much talent, firepower, individual skill on that. So much team. pedigree as well. Exactly. Yeah. So you're all kind of you think they're predetermined to 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 have success, but unlike Fnatic, for example, who he, who for whom we've been saying that they've actually looked good even in their losses in tournaments and they're uh, dropping out of in group stages. Navi actually didn't look that promising in, in some of their losses. And this is a second tournament in a row where they basically get, get knocked out by a North American team, right? They, they had that loss to Misfits in a best yeah, of three that's... series at DreamHack Tour. I mean, those are some very, very scary re results. Yeah, that's that, that's heartbreaking. I think that's the big thing is Misfits now Optic, so they're they're gonna be they're gonna be crushed for sure. Let's take a look at the standings in both of the groups, Group A and B. Now that both are completed, G2, Envy, and SK Gaming will go out in one, two, and three from Group A. North Mouse Sports Liquid one, two, and three from Group B. That means we're saying bye to the likes of Fnatic, the likes of Cloud9, Navi, Optic. I mean, those were four teams that we thought might have a chance to be battling for some spots. They didn't make it. Energy and Immortals, um, you know, just a little bit. Uh, Energy especially 0 and five. They're gonna have some some rethinking to do. When they get back home, but that's going to be your standings from the group stages here at the ESL Season 5 Finals. Anything kind of stick out as a, I know we've kind of touched on this a little bit throughout both of these days, anything kind of stick out as a surprise perhaps? I, I think Envious is the, the obvious one. Uh, I, I definitely didn't expect that much out of them, especially with how they kind of just scraped into to the LAMP Finals, you know, uh, on the very last day beating Astralis right. 2 -0. Obviously beating Astralis 2 -0, no small feat, but I definitely didn't see this coming out of uh, the Frenchies. P pretty much like the leftover squad, funnily enough, and they're still showing that they're, they can be extremely competitive when, uh, when they have to. Yeah, that's quite nice. I mean, Navi and Fnatic are probably the, the obvious ones, but we already touched on that. I think Mouse Sports is a surprise to an extent uh, that they just are confirming basically the form in which they're in and that they can actually tra translate some of the uh, performances we've seen online to LAN as well. You have to remember their one loss has been to North and Nuke in an overtime, so they yeah. could have easily ended up being first in this group. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's just very solid play overall. I, I keep, I just keep remembering when I was here over in LA during the NA regular season, I just kept seeing the updated uh, tape standings from the EU side, and I was thinking, like, that that has to be wrong. Yeah. Like, no, it's still wrong. There's no way. It's still wrong. Like, <laughs> Mouse Sports was just constantly, you know, top two the entire season. I was like, not. We thought the what, same thing. Yeah. We thought the same thing in the European division. So it, it's confused a lot of people. So this means the matchups for the uh, for the semifinals, or I mean, excuse me, for the quarterfinals, it's going to be Mouse taking on SK. It's going to be Envy taking on Liquid, and then waiting in the semifinals, obviously, is going to be G2 and North. Life is hard <laughs> for Mouse Sports. It's like <laughs> you performed great. You were a couple of rounds away from a semifinal by your reward is. Play SK game yeah. in a best of three series in a in an actual playoff match. Have fun with that. Yeah, that um, and we've we've been mentioning it throughout this group stages. No matter, I mean, SK dominated the first day, uh, looked a little bit rough today, but I mean, everything has kind of been just saying SK is a completely different animal once they get into series play. Once you get into best of threes against this team, it's not the same as playing them in a best of one. Yeah, exactly. That that I Colt think still hasn't shown up. Yeah, no, he still hasn't showed up, and uh, you know, I think it's just waiting until you know the time is right to strike. It's like that kind of a predator, right? So uh, snake in the grass, I believe. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I mean, Mouse Sports is not without chan chances in that matchup because their map pool actually fits very well towards SK. SK's strongest map right now is Mirage. That's something that Mouse Sport Mouse Sports can play really well. And after that, it's a question mark for for SK Gaming, right? Out of the other maps, they themselves are unsure what's their, for example, second strongest or the third strongest map. So th there is an opening there for Mouse Sports, even though obviously SK are the big favorite. Yeah, perhaps the slightest of openings. We'll have to see what Mouse Sports is going to bring. Uh, we'll find out exactly when that is, though. Let's bring up the schedule, let you guys know exactly when these matches will be. This is going to be tomorrow. So the first quarter final is going to be Mouse Sports taking on SK Gaming, and then Envy taking on Team Liquid. That'll be the second quarterfinal tomorrow. Did I say semifinal? I meant quarterfinal. Yeah. Either way, those are the two Definitely games that we're going to be having tomorrow. Then we're going to take a one-week break and then we'll see everyone in Dallas over break. the weekend. <laughs> Make sure you guys show up. Make sure you guys support your teams. We'll see you there.